like, well, how about I just, uh, how about I just reset? Why these bots? Not, eh, it just happens. I mean, there's not a lot of concern. Chat's cool. We get it quick. Uh, funny enough, today is a whole stream of uh, games where I can get this really, really quick. So, uh, even if mods aren't on, uh, on deck, I mean, I can be on deck. And mods are perfectly on deck, actually. I have actually been beating every ban. So, no worries there. Alright, let's see what we get. You're not a bot? Damn straight, let's go. You're not a bot. That's true. Yeah, Sister is kicking ass today. He also got us run like hell. I put it back there. Run like hell. It seems neat. That kind of looks like the a like an alien game to me, with like the monster on the back. Your meat pops. Cool. Well, that's fair. And yeah, I tend to answer as many questions as I can if people are ever curious about games. Uh, very often, whenever I'm doing grinding for speedrunning, um, I actually try to just answer questions if I can. Because very often, I'll talk about whatever I feel like talking about. Um, because a lot of people who watch the stream very often pick up things like... A good example of this is the Bobby skip. So what we do is we click on the stairs, and that's going to allow me to run through Bobby. So since I'm able to do that, I can then cancel it and continue to run through Bobby. Uh, that is a glitch. Uh, it's a little bit more input heavy than you would think. Also, an issue thing with the 200 for 18 months. Enjoy your two Twitch babies, your golden bloody scissors, and the emotes. And thank you, Nishi. Hope you're doing good today. The mods are pretty cool, I guess. They are pretty cool. But for the Bobby Skip, for instance, or this trip here that always happens, some people might not know this, and that's okay. Um, not everyone's gonna know every, uh, every trick in every game. So, very often, I actually encourage you, ask questions if you're curious about the game. I really don't mind answering them, usually. The only case of is, you know, if I just say something, or, um, if it's something really, really obvious, like, why are you shooting the bad guy? Because I need to kill them. Why, why else would I be doing that? But, for a good example, the RNG is a very good question. Uh, we also look for certain rooms. So right now, the library is the best room, because this room lets me get rid of Bobby. As you can see right here. Um, and not only does it let me get rid of Bobby, uh, the first puzzle I need to find is actually also in this room. Which is going to be this right here. This can be a dot dot dot, or a full sentence. If it's a full sentence, that's bad RNG. But we're going to continue the run, because it reset like, I don't know, ten times already. So now we're actually hitting the point where we're doing, we're full, full blown ahead. Why are you running away from the man who may, wants to make sweet arts and crafts? So Bobby is a bit of a weird character. Uh, I can kind of talk about the lore of the series as well as we go into this. But with Clock Tower lore, Bobby is essentially kind of like an enforcer. Uh, Bobby and his twin brother, Dan. Um, Dan Barros and Bobby Barros. Uh, they are twins, and they're both born, born, they're both born under a blood moon. So, as a result of that, what ends up happening is uh, they're kind of cannibalistic, and they have all these cursed rituals with using dead animals. Uh, the plot of the game is a lot in the finer details, like, you know, you can find the dead animals everywhere. Also, you can have emote-only mode. It'll last until... Oh, uh, you beat me to it. I got it. Uh, you can last until it hits 520. Post your sneakiest emote. Let's go with that. Sneaky emotes. Or any scissors if you have them. Because since it is a very fitting day to have more scissors. Bodied, except the Vulcan type. Oh, that one's horrifying, assisted. I like that one, Sneak Dust. You gotta free him, it's important. Fire along until this timer hits 520. I can grab it. I like that one. Who's that with the hat? Blush. Oh, it's shy. And then I know I see my scissors in chat. There's always good ones. But yeah, essentially Bobby's kind of the enforcer. So he is a nine-year-old boy in this game, and he has been killing the orphans that Mary brings in. The plot's kind of weird, because um, it's similar to Phenomena. Uh, the general idea is that there's a hidden, uh, I guess, treasure, the Cradle Under the Stars, as they mentioned in this game. And the Cradle Under the Stars... Also, has a going Cynical Pixel and uh, Halcyon Eyes, like your emotes. I see a punchy emote there. And the other one, it looks like a happy animal. Alright, hold on, I gotta get my... There we go. So, there, you know, there's that. But, going back to this game, like, it's the Enforcer. Bobby is just trying to, you know, kill the orphans Mary brings in so that Dan can eat the orphan meat and the family can eat. Because I guess they're satiated by cannibalism. A lot of the can cannibalistic tendencies are in the finer details. Mainly, the dad's note mentions that he got his hand bit off by Dan. 
uh because your dad actually died here uh yeah orphan meat well general cannibalism but the main proprietary meat is orphan meat and the reason why is because it's easy to get and mary works in orphanage so you know it makes sense and if you have a bountiful supply of orphan meat why not use it right exactly demonstrate also oh, those are the nub emotes those are the nub emotes all right welcome back to society chat yeah, Dan's the giant thing behind the curtain. He's the cradle under the stars. Uh, throughout the whole game, they mention this treasure, uh, the cradle under the stars. How long will this game be without the text given any other speed tech? Uh, assuming you got good RNG, probably. It's not, like, super long over it. Um, like, let's go with S ending. That's, like, a world record 12-10 right now. You're likely going to be getting, uh, like, a 20, 20 minute or so. Like, 20, 25 or something. I think world record is the PC version. I don't even remember what the fuck they got. It's a lot more, though. Like, you're saving minutes with all the tech. Whole minutes. And it really adds up for all endings, I'd say. Good. Well, it's not even going to eat the guy's daughter. I don't think they were planning on bringing Jennifer here. Jennifer was just kind of unlucky enough to go to the Grand and Orphanage. So what ended up happening was uh, there was a house call, because back in the day for doctors, they actually did house calls. So uh, Mayor, uh, Jennifer's dad actually came to this house to deliver the baby boys from Miss Mary Barros. However, um, they were born under a blood moon. All the games are known for their many, many endings, but this is the only one where multiple endings can be canon. Do I like root beer? Yeah, root beer is actually really nice. I like the birch beers and all that. I like uh, sarsaparilla. Sarsaparillas. They're good. I like them. They have joke endings like Silent Hill. No, uh, the closest you get to that is probably Buyo Buyo mode. The car ending is kind of the joke ending, where you just leave in the car immediately. And that was more of a play on the trope of, hey, get leave leave the house. And then when you do, you find out, you know, you die because you left your friends behind. Well, no, I guess since they were born in the Blood Moon, uh, the, you know, the dad didn't know. And then when he was, um, you know... He was doing the delivery, uh, one of the babies ate his hand. And then Mary threw him in the room to die. That's a stamina meter, Santa Killers. So this game actually does have a panic or stamina meter. It's one of the earliest games to do so. Uh, the general idea is if it's blue, you'll have easier panic events. However, if it's, like, red, uh, you might fail them. Hard. It might be easier to fail them. It doesn't really matter for the speedrun, but yes. And realistically, it doesn't matter. We pick the best endings for each. It's more- oh, that was fun. We're just sort of picking the best endings from that point onward. Uh, and also, like, we used to do only Jennifer because Jennifer's cool, but since there's not really a distinct canon after this game, uh, like, we do Jennifer, we do Helen, uh, we do Ghost Head, and we just do the best ending, because in all honesty, it makes the most sense to just do the best ending. Yeah. Um, in order to get the best endings, you have to learn the truth in some way. And the game was actually kind of nice in how you learn the truth. Uh, since you're starting on A ending, you may notice I'm actually uh, doing a lot of the routing to uh, go to the shed. Uh, the reason why is because A ending is limited on the shed. Uh, if you want to get S ending or other endings, you can find it out from the dad. But for A ending, you specifically have to know from the shed. I actually think A ending might be canon, if I had to take a while to guess. Uh, Jennifer knowing about her dad is rather inconsequential in all, in all honesty. Like, it doesn't really come up. Meanwhile, Jennifer dealing with the betrayal of Mary and watching her best friends die in front of her eyes is much more impactful. Oh, God, you're kidding me. Bad R... I guess it's not the worst RNG, technically, for this, but it's not good. Clock Tower as a series these days is kind of living on through Remothered. Um, whether that's good or bad, I'll leave up to you. Uh, Clock Tower also has the issue where there's just a lot of other games that kind of nailed the style. And while Clock Tower is interesting, it, they're just, you know, I think other games are doing it better, like Alien Isolation. And, you know, that's an example. You know, think about it, Alien Isolation is kind of a Clock Tower game. Uh, the general idea is that you have a pursuer and you are defenseless and trying to fight that pursuer. Uh, a lot of people kind of think about the pursuer thing with things like Nemesis, but Clock Tower really was the game to inspire that trend of gameplay. Uh, not a lot of games featured the relentless pursuer while you can do nothing but hide. What about Amnesia? Amnesia is a game that was a lot more on the walking sim of things. 
Uh, I think it popularized that trend and was probably really influential in the world of streaming specifically. And it led to games like Outlast, I think Slender, and really any game that has that style. Hell, I'd argue PT probably has its roots heavily in Amnesia. Amnesia is a very impactful game. And I have respect for it. A lot of people don't, but it's a great fucking game. And yeah, you can even say that. But also, Amnesia is not exactly the first one to do it, because you also had, uh... What's that game? Uh, Penumbra. Penumbra did it, too. Yeah, thank you. What did Yomawari fall under? Yomawari is kind of like the standard RPG Maker horror game. Um, RPG Maker horror games are pretty nice, where they tried using similar styles. And a lot of RPG makers kind of even want a style of, hey, you can't fight, you better run. And they're a lot more puzzle-oriented. Good examples of that are like Ao Oni, Mad Father, Corpse Party. And they're for weebs. I mean, I like them, but still, they are for weebs. I like Yomori, though. Uh, oh, Yumi Nikki? Same deal. Same ordeal. Oh, I haven't played Yumi Nikki, so take my word with a grain of salt on that one. Take my word on a grain of salt. Also, I want to take a moment to, uh... What is it going to say? I've not played Kuroshi. I've never even heard of it. Chat, this is going to be wildly off-topic. But I just want to bring it up because I'm really proud of myself. Guess who played bass again? Good to see me. Thank you, Gabby Fox. Hope you're doing good. Guess who played bass again? Who's the other dude in the cage? That's actually Mr. Barros, uh, the father of Bobby. Um, Mary really wanted to kind of take control of the situation and protect her boys, uh, while Mr. Barros was kind of more understanding that, hey, this isn't really normal. So since he had the signs of rebellion, so to speak, she threw him in the shed. Yes, I was slap it. I wonder, why does everybody know about slap it to base? Like, I know where that comes from. I know what movie that's in. And it's such a specific reference. I don't know how everybody knows that about base. Like, the only meme about bases is fucking slap it to base. But I don't remember that many people watching that fucking mo Wait, YouTuber? A YouTuber ripped off a movie. Right, but it's not even being 36. It's a specific movie. With, like, Paul Rudd. Why didn't you pick the shotgun? I mean, weapons are ineffective against Bobby. Some horror streamer? No. Paul Rudd's famous? Right, but it was a shitty comedy. It wasn't when he did Ant-Man. It wasn't any of his good stuff. It was. I think I Love You Man was the movie. It specifically comes from the movie I Love You Man. And I'm wondering how the fuck did everyone watch that specific movie? Big Rock. Exactly, see? There it is. I like the meme, by the way. I'm just really wondering. As I was talking to my brother, I was like, how so many people watched I Love You, Man? Like, I've never heard anyone talk about that movie outside of the singular slap it to bass man. That was a rip in. Right, the rest of the movie is pretty much unheard of. I don't even remember what the fuck happens in that movie. I just remember that one part. It's like the A.A. Ron of being a musician. Oh. Came from the movie Roll Models? I remember from I Love You, Man. I remember it very well for that. No, it wasn't in Sarah Marshall. Uh, I had the actor who was in that movie, but, um... Yeah, that's the movie I Love You, Man. How was the base session? It was... Thank you for asking, by the way. It was good. It was very good. Um, I... It's weird. So, playing bass, I, like, I don't know how to define this well, but when I play guitar, I'm always wondering, what do I want to play? What do I want to do? Playing bass, I actually felt like I knew what I wanted to do. Like, I, I not even I knew it. Like, it felt good just to groove. Like, I'm like, doom, boom, 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 boom. Everything sounds better. Smoke on the water for five hours. Nah. You want to know my actual song? Whenever I pick up a bass, I actually do have a song. It's not, it's not the most, uh, appropriate song. Uh, but I have a specific song I always play. The song's a bit raunchy and crass, uh, and a little bit wrong. But it's probably my favorite song to play on bass, and it's a really good fucking bass line. Also, A to the Prime Gaming for 13 months. Chat, does anyone want to take a guess? Really quick. What, yeah, I'll, I'll just, you take one guess. What's well, a bass song? 
It ha banned in the 90s, and or, let's say 90s, early 2000s. Uh, the title is uh, incredibly wrong, um, and it, the band's kind of raunchy at times. I like guitar, but I like I, I used to play bass in, uh, bass in a band, and I love playing bass. Is it a Guar song? No. Sounds like Red Hot? Kind of. I don't think anyone's gonna get it. When you hear it, you'll definitely think. I think we're raunchy. It's not even, I wouldn't say the title is raunchy. The band's a bit raunchy. The title is just plain wrong. Uh, like, telling people the title, you might actually be worried about telling people the title of the song. Like, if you were to say it out of context, it's really fucked up. But in context, you know, it's not that bad. Good guess, but no unnatural. Alright, so the song. Yes, actually, Blind Dragoon. It's Date Rape by Sublime. Uh, I fucking love that song in non-bass. It's such a groove. Boom, 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 boom. I always play that song because it's such a fucking banger on the bass. Oh yeah, that's always the song. Whenever I have my bass, first song to come on every time. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, that one? Nah, nah. I don't even know that. I don't remember that song's bass line. Yeah, it was "Date Rape" by Sublime though. Also, "Wrong Way" is really good. Oh yeah, that's why I love Sublime. Like, um, I got into bass by like I love Sublime. I'm a big Sublime fan. Fan. So for me, it's really easy to just play Sublime songs. It just oh, what song are you playing? I'm playing "Date Rape" the song. Oh, so you saying that out of context? It's kind of weird. Oh yeah, it's a great song though. I uh, just might want to be careful telling people the title. Oh yeah, it's fucking rape. It's a great bass line. Well, that's how you say by sublime. It's very ac very keen you add by sublime to the end of that sentence. Or the song. If you just end the sentence there, you'll uh, go to hopefully go to jail or, you know, have some strange looks at the bare minimum. What's that thing? You know the you know the anime series Evangelion? Uh, well anyway, that's an orphan meat mech. Primus is good, but uh, it's hard to nail the Primus ones without my amp fully on. I need to crank my fucking volume, because I can't really get the, uh... I can't really get all the stuff without it. And also, I can't even do all the songs. They're really hard. Get in the robot, Dan! Get in the robot! Correct, self dribble What about Evangelion? It, well, it's a meat mech. So Shin Shinji, get in the orphan meat mech. Hey, Les Claypool is great. It, it is great. Also, there's a surprising amount of people who like uh, who like knowing that I play bass. I don't know why. Primus does suck, you're right. That's true. Oh, yeah. Well, I, like, I've always wanted to learn Lacquerhead entirely. It's, just, it's a hard fucking song. Well, no, in Attack on Titan, they're just Titans. Uh, I'm talking about, like, an actual mech. Like, you go inside and pilot it. Also, Remy the Siren, while it's it does suck. And you have good taste. Also, uh, you're correct. I do have, um, slightly bad news, by the way, chat. Um, emotes might have a slight delay. Um, my artist has a slight injury on their hand, so... I just wanted to give you the heads up on that. Uh, some of the emotes might be delayed. I've seen the sketches, so progress was being made. It just, uh, they ended up getting injured. So, hopefully it'll be back to normal soonish. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna rush into that, you know? Oh yeah, um, they might have to go, like, they're seeing today. Uh, they got their, they cut their hand. Um, so we're gonna see. Why don't we have all the emotes we really need right now? Like, there's nothing pertinent pertinent, you know? So, uh, it was just kind of uh, additional animated ones. We still have the ones right now. And yeah, hopefully they recover quickly. Hopefully they do. Yeah, hopefully they get well soon. I'll let you say the kind words, Chad. Also, hey, look, it's Laura. A new jar emote, you know? It's actually closer than you think. I think the tier three is gonna be another jar, by the way. How's the internal? I sure hope nothing bad happens to Laura. 
Yeet! <laughs> Yeet! <laughs> Every time. Every fucking time, man. Awesome Mastercraft, the Mummy 2060 does suck, any of your taste. So this is why this is my favorite ending, by the way. I think ending A is probably the canon one, like, if you had to pick one and only one. I think it's this one. It's just the most momentous. Uh, you see the friend die right in front of you. Um, the birds actually help you. Um, you have more of a confrontation with Mary, and it's not just a quick, like, you kill her. Like, the birds do it, and it rewards Jennifer for her kindness, which is a very nice thing. So, of all the endings I think that are canon, I would argue it's probably this one. However, any of the three can be canon. Speaking of which, I bet you're wondering, hey, what do you mean any of them? So, Clock Tower is a bit of a weird series. Um, the reason why it's a bit of a weird series is because... Also, Silver Moon, wait, that's a new Tier 3. Enjoy the emergence of new emotes. The Scissors. And the four months, and thank you, Silver Moon. If you're wondering, I'll tell you right now, by the way. Uh, the new Tier 3 will incorporate a jar. I've talked to my artist. I have the order. Uh, once their hand recovers, hopefully we can get that done. Um, so we're not really abducted. Um, the way the series works out is that our character here was adopted, actually. Uh, you and three other girls were adopted from the Granite Orphanage by Miss Mary Barros. Uh, she actually works at the orphanage. So who better to have orphans than the... You know, the Mary. So I guess, uh, you know, nobody's gonna look at the, like, the orphanage director eating, have, yeah, eating orphans. So that's kind of the thing. And at this point, like, you know, you're supposed to meet Mr. Barros early on. It's kind of like an Annie situation. We have the nice rich man. But then the nice rich man never shows up. And instead, Bobby Barros comes down and starts murdering your friends. Now, if you're wondering, uh, there's not only really a canon on the Order of Deaths. The only reason I say that is because a lot of people always direct, Oh, but the books! Books can't do the game thing. That Books don't decide canon in video games. Also, Dora with the Prime Gaming. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors, and thank you very much. And also, Silver Moon, I hope that you enjoy your uh, jar. Is there an anime with so much similar premise with orphans? Probably. Uh, this whole movie, uh, this whole game is based on the movie phenomena, so yeah, it's definitely a fitting thing. So Bobby is a nine-year-old boy, and he loves his mother. Uh, Bobby is not the favorite of the twins, but Bobby loves his family. Bobby is most comparable to Leatherface, I think. Bobby is not really a bad guy. He's playful. He's tricky. Well, thank you, Kid Zero. Bobby's not a bad guy, though. A lot of people think of Bobby as a villain. He's more just... He doesn't know any better. He's nine. Bobby's not an evil... I mean, he has evil in his heart. Oh, wait, no. Wrong button. Wrong button. Wrong button. Wait, I can do that? Oh, God. Am I gonna die? Oh. <laughs> I didn't even know I could do that. <laughs> oh. Okay. I've never tried that. Huh. It's funny, but, uh... Okay, oh, cool, all right, I've never tried that. Huh. Neat. I've never seen that. I've never even thought to try that. I always just ran to the back, because I immediately thought that's what would work. Ah, I learn something new every day. What was released in the room? Bug spray. So Bobby was mildly annoyed, but, you know, he couldn't breathe in the bug spray. Oh god, I hate that dead end. I'm sorry to hear about that. I don't like the Floyd Rose. Would it make everything faster? Nope. You don't normally want to take this route at all. There we go. New strat? Nope. I mean, it actually might be a new strat for the other category. No, it's still not, because uh, you need to be in the room anyway. Yeah, it's not a new strat at all, because uh, the other ways things still faster. Uh, it's funny, though. Uh, that's it. It's it's funny. But I've never actually done that. He's saying, well, that's another tier three. Another tier three, but with 17 months.
Enigma Party Enjoy the emotes, run. the emergence of emotes, and the scissors. And thank you very much. How goes the run? We just started. It's going good now, I think. It's going good. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. We're having a good day of Clock Tower shenanigans. And Reese, uh, I was just actually telling the story about Bobby, because a lot of people think Bobby's a villain. Bobby's a nine-year-old boy. He's playful, he's tricky, and, you know, he is still killing people. He's aware that he's killing people, but also he's killing people for his mother's approval. I can't really blame Bobby. He's nine. And, you know, he's definitely, he has a, let's say, a bad heart. I'm playing this on the original Super Famicom. Uh, this is the original version of the game. Bobby is indeed a demon child, but Bobby would a lot closer be to, like, Leatherface. It's not really his fault. He wasn't raised better. Hell, even at the end of the game, if you kill Dan and you do the C ending, which we'll see, uh, Mar one of Mary's final words is, Bobby, or, uh, yeah, it's like, Bobby, you have to kill him. Or you have to kill her. She killed Dan. Bobby is loyal to his family no matter what, and that's his main thing, but loyalty to family, uh... You know, it's pretty severe at that point. Because that does lead to the death of others. Also, Bobby is still a demon child. He was born under Blood Moon. And he does have powers. Mainly, uh, I guess, teleportation and it does seem to be endurance. Bobby's main mechanic is that he's unrelenting. Also, I just realized, how close are we? No. Oh. Alright, cool. I wanted to check the sub goal really quick because we're still doing the September thing for the rest of the month. And, uh, we'll see if we hit an emote slot, but we're getting decently close to the next goal. I think we're only 40 or 39 away. I don't want to entirely dwell on that, so I'm just mentioning it once, but I just kind of wanted to check the progress for today. It's always weird because it goes up and, it goes up and down. Alright, let's see what I get. Good or bad? Good! So, funny enough, PS1 version is going to be a little bit different. Bobby canonically dies in this game. Bobby does not live during this game. He dies. Um, the whole point of Clock Tower PS1 is really weird, and not a lot of people realize this. Also, how's it going, I Zombie? Also, congratulations. You know what I'm talking about. Big congrats to you. But with Bobby, uh, when I, oh, Bobby, with the PS1 Scissor Man, the whole purpose of the game is you don't know who the Scissor Man is. The game was actually released as a whodunit, and it could be anyone. You don't know, uh, while playing the game, if it's just a prank, or if something really sinister is afoot. And then you find out, uh, a little bit of A, a little bit of B. Could be both. And yeah. Is Bobby like Naruto? Yeah, he teleports behind you and says, Nothing personal, kid. There we go. Bobby needs a better family. No, I think Bobby likes his family. He loves it. He's very, very, Bobby's very happy. He just, you know, uh, very unlucky. He was also born with like eight tumors. Now, if you look at his face, those are all, like, fucking tumors. They're all bulb- he's bulbous. He's gross. He looks like that- yeah, he's a demon child, and he looks like the baby from Phenomena. He was born deformed. And he- I think he genuinely has tumors. A lot of people like to mention, oh, he- he dies by sound? How did he die by sound? That's so dumb. No, it's not the sound killing him. It's the fact that you learn during the game that time will cause adherence, meaning that time is the starting- restarting the clock tower so you we stop the curse. Which is really fucking weird that that's the plot point to beat a blood moon, but who am I to disagree? Later on, you learn that it is just indeed a cursed family, and they, I guess, stem from the power of clock towers or some shit. Either way, though, restarting the clock tower allows the, you know, clock tower to kind of get back to some sense of normalcy. Which, that's why Bobby dies. He's essentially undergoing the equivalent of, like, eight heart attacks at once. Could you imagine getting eight heart attacks? Like, holy fuck. Also, here's a fun fact. Uh, on the SNES version, or the Super Famicom version, uh, you don't need to talk to this dead body. Every other version, you need to talk to everything in the room. Uh, and this one, you only need to do this. And yeah, uh, I've seen bits of it. I still need to watch all of it. But I know, uh, it's been, pretty much it's been a while, but yeah, I know the, uh, I know Phenomena, or Creepers, for that matter of fact. Personally, I'm, I like Susperia a bit more, though. I think Susperia is... Goku can't even survive one heart attack, damn. Also, I hope you're doing good today, Issei. Hope you're having a nice day. Did I miss anyone else? I said hi to Doral. How are you doing, Blind Dragoon? I don't think I said hi to you yet today. 
Well, yeah, I mean, uh, this game came out as a whole inspiration of the director, Hufumi Kono, just enjoying Italian horror media. Uh, he enjoyed Suspiria, which the ceiling death in Suspiria is the same in this. That is a reverence. Uh, this whole plot is supposed to be essentially phenomena. Hell, it's even to the point that Jennifer, uh, her name's Jennifer Simpson. I, I wonder what the name Jennifer can be relating to. What, uh, you know, hit actor during that time period might be named Jennifer. Jennifer Connelly, cough, cough. Oh, right, Veritas. Ha ha, the elevator... No, the elevator sedan is not RNG. I know you're memeing, but in case anyone thinks that, it's... The elevator's not RNG. No ending in this game is actually RNG on how you... Like, endings aren't decided by RNG. You can 100% pick the ending you get. Yeah! Jennifer Connelly also starred in Phenomena, giving that a lot more credence. Yeah, it was Jennifer Aniston. I can't believe you figured it out. This is actually modeled after Jennifer Aniston. If you kind of really liked Friends. That's what happened. He heard the... He heard that and was like, fuck it, I gotta go with it, man. One, two. Jennifer Lawrence, that'd be 2000s. Jennifer Lopez's work, he really liked the movie Selena. That's what happened. Time travel, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, Friends actually was huge when this game was made, funny enough. I think a lot of people don't really realize how big Friends was. I wish people mentioned that, like, oh, I can't believe he'll enjoy Friends. Friends was fucking massive. It was one of the earliest sitcoms that really picked up and kind of had that simplicity. And surprisingly enough, people like terrible people. Hell, Seinfeld was popular. I like Seinfeld. I think it's fucking funny. But also, I like shows about terrible people. I think it's fun. I guess it's the whole, like, it's kind of relatable sort of deal. And then sometimes people will try to compare a show from the 90s going like, Oh yeah, like, really? You just... I'm not gonna lie to you. There's a perfect formula. Make a sitcom, sitcom about terrible people. Friends isn't really about how they're shitty. Right, but they're all terrible people. They're all shitty characters. But being shitty incidentally is still, like, that's the point. You can root for the characters and their goals, but overall you know their goal, like, you know, they might be terrible. A good example is also kind of like Always Sunny. They're not actively terrible. Right. It's not the point, but it's still, that's, it still definitely helps. Oh, I love Always Sunny. I think it's fucking hilarious. The general idea about friends is that they're not perfect characters and they are relatable. And people, like, that's what there are a lot of top people around that time. Apparently it worked out. These orphans are making me thirsty. Uh. As in Glorical, that's a smug emote. Your emote. I like your emote. Nice emote. Smug emote. I like smug emotes. They're nice. I was ass. Who's emote? You are emote. Yeah. Yeah, who's a Maki should be good. We're doing B ending, by the way. Unless they're created from. Uh, hold on. People and friends show because uh, they don't care about people. They're not written that way. Purpose. Most of their reflection of the place they're created from. Well, I think that's part of the gen uh, genuinity of it. It's weird because apparently genuity isn't a word. Genuineness? I thought genuity would be a word, but I guess it's not. I actually looked it up. I can't find one. <laughs> that's really fun one in Greek. Hey, see that works right there. I used to show the names, by the way, but due to the racism lately, I've had to remove the names. But thank you for following. Oh, so I think this way's nicer. People can take care of they want to, or they can be that way. Yeah, a lot of the shows that are quite successful with sitcoms I end up having terrible people. I'm sure there's a reason for this. But you never know. Oh, it's going on. They saw Sunny. Oh, yeah. I 
guess it's fair. But also, I think Friends is one of the early adopters of that type of 90s sitcom. Like, I know a lot of sitcoms end up stemming from Seinfeld. Especially with a lot of sitcoms prior to that were a lot more good family values. When you had shows like, let's go with, uh, what? Happy Days? God, I can't remember. What's the show that goes Dino My? Uh, Good Time? No. What is it? It's not Good Times, is it? It is Good Times. Oh, it sure was Good Times. No, no, it was Good Times. Okay, I was right. Full House? Yeah, Full House, Family Values. Or the fuck, uh, family, uh, what was, what was Gary Coleman in? I don't even remember what he was in. So I was around Good Times. I actually watched Good Times as a kid. I didn't watch Happy Days. I just don't like it as a Fonzie. Boss well, is bad. Different strokes? Yeah, different, yeah, thank you, that's, that's Gary Coleman. Family Matters was also in the 90s, and Family Matters is nice. Oh, I'm kind of, I feel bad for Family Matters. I like Family Matters, I feel really bad for it. It kind of suffered from, uh... There's a word for it, flander flanderization. The Cosby Show has aged really poorly at this point, unfortunately. Gary Coleman also had a sad life, yeah. MASH is nice, but I always remember MASH being that show that was on. But also, I guess you had, in the 90s, you had other shows like Married with Children. Also, I love Lucy. But let me tell you about Family Matters really quick, because that's just kind of sad in a weird way. So Family Matters was essentially just supposed to be, you know, you had, uh... You had the guy from Die Hard who played the cop. Uh, you know, he's, he's playing the, uh, you know, uh, responsible dad cop. Uh, they have a, you have a nice family. Uh, they all love each other. It's supposed to be just a normal sitcom. But then... But then... They bring in Steve Urkel. Motherfucking Jaleel White. Yep. A lot of you guys who... Do Wait, did I get the key? A lot of people didn't realize that, did I do that? Steve Urkel was never meant to be the star. I think he was like a fucking random- yeah, he was supposed to be like a random. That's exactly right, Zimtado. Steve Urkel was never meant to be- well, thank you, gamer guy. Steve Urkel was never meant to be the, uh... The main character. The main character is supposed to be the guy who plays Carl. He's also Sonic? He was Sonic. Pretty much that team. That's fucking funny, Scooty. Let's see. How's oh, Unsaro? I've been doing good. The loss sucked. That was alright. I don't know much about it. Oh, exactly. How's oh, it Barbie? So, I don't know. I, something that just kind of makes me think like, you know, you're having set for a whole fucking deal. You and having just like essentially getting as good as like fucking full house at that point. What would be, wait, what would be comparable? What would that be comparable to? I guess full house would be the other 90s family sitcom, right? And then you end up with a Steve Urkel show. You're the first voice of Sonic. My favorite part is that you know, I think Donkey Kong is voiced by Double D. Home Improvement? All I know about Home Improvement is something about cocaine. Yeah, there's like a Donkey Kong Country animated show, and it had the voice actor of Double D do Donkey Kong, I think. I think it was. Right? Yeah, it was like the weird 3D one, and the only reason I remember that is the fucking, uh... The, the you gotta send me back song or DK's walking on the ceiling and shit and like it's weird I like the nanny actually I used to watch it a lot as a kid and like I, I like because he's singing like a great like 90s R&B like you know like smooth black guy voice and then later you hear him speak and it's fucking double D and like why why not get the same guy to just do the fucking voice actor why not why the fuck would you swap it over to double D why the fuck would you do that? It's not a good choice. His R&B singing is good. 
I don't know the robot song. The only songs I remember is that when Donkey Kong crashes the economy on Congo Bongo, and the one where it's like, uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, I don't know the robot one, though. I might have to look that up later. Oh, wait, we are. We are, Iris. We absolutely are. It's really weird as well, because there's certain voice actors you always notice. Uh, my favorite one that I notice is the guy, uh... What's the word? Zim. I always notice Zim. Psychonauts, anything. When I hear that guy speak, it's like, you have one vocal range, and I'm so sorry for you. But I'm very happy you found work continuously, and I love what you do. Yeah, Invader, Zim, Raz, and Psychonauts. Whenever I hear it, I only hear Raz. I'm like, Richard Horitz? Yeah, I think him. I only think of him as Raz from Psychonauts. I watched Osmosis Jones last night, and I was like, oh, that's Raz! I know that guy's voice! I play like a random character in front of like a movie theater. I didn't know he did, Billy. I got Psychonauts too? Honestly, I should. I should. By the way, it's always surprising when it ends up working out. Anyway, what the fuck was I talking about? Friends? Oh, this all came from a joke, because people were mentioning that Jennifer Aniston was the main character of Clock Tower. Yuri Lowenthal. That might be the actual name. There we go. I do remember that. Oh, yeah. I like his voice, it just wait and you you only ever think of that stuff. Also, I do try to be careful with conversations like these, because after a while they just become nostalgia dumping. So I wanna be a bit careful on that one. You know. That's pretty funny though, Zimtado. Dude, Nickelodeon's All-Star Brawl is going to bomb, unfortunately. I am very sorry. It's going to bomb. But not for the reason you think. Why? From my understanding, there's no fighting sounds. In a game where it's all about cartoon characters and your personalities of them, uh, yeah, they don't have voice acting. That's confirmed right now. They might add it later because they didn't have the budget for it, but... I hope it succeeds. I really hope it succeeds, but for the fighters, yeah, there's no voice act. There's no voice clips. Can get the actor? Apparently, I, I don't know. I really don't know. I imagine I was probably get the allocation of budget. Or maybe they're seeing how it's going to go. And it seems like it's going to be well-programmed. It's going to be quite fun. But from what I've been hearing, that's going to be a major thing missing. And when you have a thing that's kind of based on that whole personality, it's like, yeah. Well, yeah, getting someone like Tom Kenny is probably going to be a pain in the ass. Not that he wouldn't do it, it just, you know, I imagine he definitely, he definitely, oh shit, I'm gonna go on. Oh, oh, okay. No VA? I think there's no VA in the fighting portions. And they're considering in the future, but on release, apparently it's gonna be a bit limited. From what I've heard. Hopefully, hopefully the fighting game community will pick it up. Hey, honestly, I might buy it. I heard Ren and Stimpy are a tag team, too. I said if Ren's in the game, I'm going to play it. So, I'll probably buy it. You have Clock Tower and Wonder Swan? Why would you do that to yourself? I feel like the main thing of how it will succeed is that the Smash Pros end up try picking it up. I guess that's fair. I, I saw the Marvel one. I'm, I'm excited for Marvel to come back. Marvel 2 has Venom. And I fucking love running. That Rocco? Not I'm aware of. They've been announcing characters. Well, there you go, then. Also, Sam. Marvel's back. Uh, I think Capcom and Marvel announced... Or Capcom and Disney announced they might work together on something. Or they there's potential. So, Marvel 2 might come back. It's Marvel, baby. Oh, by the way, I'm missing items, so you can read dialogue. Shit. Uh, God, I hate this. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I saw the Run and Sippy announcement. I thought that would be different, but I'm cool with them being the same. All those things are racist? How is that relevant right now? I'm talking about a fighting game. 
I'm not talking about Walt Disney's anti-Semitism. That's not real. That's not relevant. You're going to a weird territory. I don't really want to discuss here, nor is this the spot. Also, we're talking about fighting games. It's more just the case that Disney has licensing for Marvel, because you know they own Marvel properties. No, they're not horror adjacent. So snazzy. Here's the thing with the canon of this game. You don't really know what the main ending is, because all that happens at the end of the game is that Jennifer is the lone survivor. There are three, three areas. Three endings that allow Jennifer to be the lone survivor. And there's no confirmation which one it is. No, it's not Disney versus Marvel. It's Marvel versus Capcom. It just Disney owns Marvel, so Disney is Marvel. So they'd have to give the license for that. Although I'm wondering with Marvel versus Capcom, how the fuck they would even do it, because there's a strong amount... It's not really... Again, you're like... Your last comment, it's not really much of a joke, it's just kind of weird, champ. Oh yeah, you can play about Disney, but I don't want to hear about the racism of Walt Disney in my stream. Especially when we're talking specifically about Marvel vs. Capcom and how they're just being allowed. And we're getting a surprising duck. Yeah, exactly, you need the X-Men. Dude, you need fucking Wolverine. You need, uh... You know, you need Storm. You need Sentinel. Well, Spider-Man, yeah, you need Spider-Man, but, like, you need all that shit right there. That's what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about Marvel 2. Shumagorath? Was Shumagorath in Marvel 2? Because I remember loving him in Ultimate, but I, I think he was. I really think he was. Also, the good version of Jill and not the fucking RE5 Jill. I want good Jill. I don't want RE5 Jill. I want fucking RE1 Jill. Give me the, uh, you know, the big bulky rocket launcher. Give me the herb assist. Give me Venom back, by the way. Yeah, RE1 Jill is in Marvel's Captain 2. That's what I'm saying. Well, no, but they gave you RE5 Jill in 3. Well, no, but the Disney has to approve of it, though, is the thing, Kylo Ren. That's kind of why Infinite ran into some issues, because Disney really wanted to, uh, you know, uh, throw in the Marvel Cinematic Universe into that shit, which is the issue. You know what? I think it'll look as good as it did in the last game, last time it happened. Well, Infinite's thing was that, you know, they couldn't get a lot of the X-Men characters. Like, trust me, X-Men's really fun for that. Like, a lot of people like the X-Men characters. It's hard to imagine a Marvel vs. Capcom without the X-Men. Oh, I don't even think about the X-Men outside of the concept of that game, like, but, you know, I like them there. I like fighting Wolverine. I like fighting Storm. I like fighting Magneto. I like Sentinel. But no, they decided to diversify a lot of the things by adding in the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe characters. Oh, yeah, they did. Berserker Barrage. I like fighting Magneto. I like fighting Magneto in the vein that, like, it's part of the experience. You know? No, I wasn't going to do Dead Rising 1. I, like, I'm, I'll be running a game soon on my show, but, uh... No, I try not to run too many games on my show. It's not one of those cases, though. Yeah, that's the case, though, Sir Royko. That is the case. It's more the case it's not the same. Also, Ashburn with the Prime Game for six months. Enjoy your green, green scissors and the emotes, and thank you. Wait, what? How did it go, Scooty? Well, I mean, that's fine, though. I wanted to show games I liked. I didn't have to do the Rising 1. I will say for the Hispanic Heritage Month, I guess I'm doing a run because I need an extra runner. So, it works for me. So, I'll be doing it for that. I'm actually organizing a Hispanic Heritage GDQ, or Latin American Hispanic Heritage, which will feature runners of many different backgrounds. Well, I guess, you know, many different Latin American backgrounds. Yeah, El Bleed was great. Yeah, Juo did great. I'm happy with Juo. 10k? What do you mean 10k? 
Also, we are now done with speech. All right, uh... Uh, my Spanish is really fucking awful. Uh, I, I know enough to survive in a Panamanian airport, uh, but I'm Mexican-American. I just, you know, while my culture on that's rather, rather uh, diminished or minor. My family celebrates Day of the Dead. I ain't playing, like, you know, we make plenty of food. I mean, I know a lot of the cultural aspects, but not, I know Justin Wong, but I'm wondering why the fuck it's going to challenge him to game. It's more just, you know, I'm not quite on the, uh, I miss some of the aspects. And yeah. Hey, Coco's a gr dude. I fucking cried during Coco. I'm not gonna lie to you. I fucking cried during that movie. I cried during that movie, and then I think the day after, when New Year's came around, I talked to my grandma for like an hour about her growing up and, sh and stuff. And my grandma. Oh, funny enough, Chad. Funny enough, I uh, uh, because of my background, I actually have a really weird bias. And I think it's great. Uh, by the way, do we want to do Japanese or do we want to do English? That's my question. How about we do Japanese? How about we do Japanese? Last time I did English. My hardware. Where the fuck did it go? See it, right? Uh, that's fine. Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Chat, where do you put my phone? Where did Where did you hide it? Where is my phone actually? Hi, chat. I know you're hiding it. Where the fuck did I actually put it? Your phone? You can't have my phone, Sophie. It's my phone. Also, no death house for you either. Also, god damn, I hate this so much sometimes. My chair is doing the thing where it's like running perfectly over the wire on my headset. And I don't know why it does that. I know I did this last time too. If I were a phone, where would I put you? Like, I actually do need my phone, funny enough. That's a sad ending? What, Jennifer being the lone survivor? Well, yeah, it's a sad game. No, no death house. Where the fuck did my phone go? Alright, chat, I'm gonna say a phone number. Someone call it. Oh, I found it. No taking my phone number today. By the way, the number is gonna be 86753099. But not actually. Kind of. Oh shit, it fell, didn't it? It did. I see it. Now, perfect. Perfect plan. Uh, yes, but that's not the canon ending diet adventure. Oh, there's going. Exceptionally rare game. You go in your exceptionally rare case. Alrighty. Hunts Ligma? Ligmacon. That's what it is. It's like Sawcon, but Ligma. Right, where are you? Not that one. I know you're here. Where are you at? There it is. Uh, 
Maybe? She has to be an empty plug in it here. What the fuck is it? Is that it? That is it. Cool. I think last time I did this, I used emulator, by the way. It is, Wolf, it is. Oh, yeah, I didn't plug in the cable, that's right. Oh, God, my neck definitely good. Your number is 555. 555. 5555. Perfect. Perfect phone number right there. Immaculate, even. Alright, now your turn. Oh, hey, my four minutes of time save is paying off, chat. Cool. Alrighty, so now we're hopping into Clock Tower 2, also known as Clock Tower PS1. Why well, is a band number? What? Oh, 867. Oh, it's not really like a band number number. It's banned because, you know, it was the, the Jenny number. Also, I like how there's not another Clock Tower 2 category, so I guess I'll go fuck myself. Alright, I guess we're just keeping the category. I don't remember which one's which. Measure Haunting Ground? It is. It is. I don't remember which one's the fastest speed. I think it was this one. Yep. Okay. I hope that's right. Oh, I hate, I hate the Japanese cases so much. I don't know why. For some reason, they just pop out easier. Maybe it's because mine has a giant hole in it, and I think about it. Maybe I should get better cases. The guy who sold me this case, like, fucking bit into it. Where's my headset? Where's my headset? Okay, phone works. By the way, chat, if you didn't like my Instagram post, I'm getting more likes every day. We're almost at 300 followers. I'm trying to surpass my brother's accounts. My older, my older brothers, not my younger brothers. I'm here at, I'm at 280. One. Uh. Okay. By the way, I think this is the one where I go... Hold on. I go... Here. Yep, there we go. Let's actually move windows a little bit here. There it is. Hold on a moment. I want to test something. Does it matter turn? Yes, but one moment. All right, that actually looks good, by the way. Cool, we're good. All right, chat. Now the question is, do we want Buyo Buyo mode? Do we want to do Buyo Buyo mode? Absolutely not. Yes. Ah, the duality of man. Please don't. The duality of man. The duality of man. Made for Helen? That's like an hour of it. What's that? How would I show you Buyo Buyo before we actually uh, decide on we do it or not?
Wait a minute. We will be we riot on their biddies. Thank you, Solkis. I don't actually. Uh, Botsky probably has it. Professor Barton. Professor Barton. Professor Barton. What on earth are you doing, Professor? All right, hold on. That's it. Wrong. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yes to Buyo Buyo. I feel like I could want to do a little bit of Buyo Buyo, but not all Buyo Buyo. You know? Is there, a, is there a medium we can do? Is there a nice medium we can do? Is it Clock Tower 3 time? No, it's actually Clock Tower, uh... Clock Tower PS1. Buyo? You know, Buyo would make sense as an emote, actually. Just bouncing up and down. We do Jennifer Buyo Buyo, then Helen No Buyo. Right, but it's still like an hour of Buyo, and like even an hour like gets people sick, I think. I do both runs anyway, that's the that's the case. I already do both runs. How about this? How about this? To appease the people who don't like Buyo Buyo. And but also to appease people who do. How about once we get to, uh, university, we do Buyo Buyo. Like, at the end of Jennifer's date or something. All right, from Jennifer's date to the end of university. How about that? Sounds good? Helen, the clock tower murders are fascinating research material for me. I must know the truth about what happened. Oh, it's always, it's tough reading Rambo. Rambo. I, I can't toggle only cutscenes. I can't toggle only the cutscenes. Oh, I can't even toggle right now. All right, but remember one thing, Helen. You may be Jennifer's guardian, but you are also my assistant. Yes, Professor. But yeah, so this is Clock Tower PS1, also known as Clock Tower 2. The thing about this game is this is actually a direct sequel to the first game. No, because, you know... Also, hold on, just to show you what it is. Uh, what Buyo Buyo Mo does is it allows the characters to bounce. Uh, Buyo Buyo is essentially the onomatopoeia for bouncing. I'm just showing you what it looks like. Now, the smart decision, the 300 IQ move, would make Buyo Buyo cost money. But to show you what it looks like, that's what it looks like. Why was this added? A lot of older games in the 90s like joke modes. That would be the smarter decision now I think about it. The big brain move. Cost whole dollars and cents. Uh, fast disc speed is going to make the run faster by far. So playing in Japanese is the fastest you can do for these games. So I'm probably going to be saving a lot of time on all the games. By the way, Buyo Buyo makes every single character in the game bounce, and it's actually pretty funny with that. And yeah, you also have other modes like giraffe mode and stuff like that. So that's all fun. But I do acknowledge that like an hour of Buyo Buyo does make people sick. Um, and it's enough that, you know, like, it's usually split where some people like it, some people don't. Also, it doesn't really matter what they're saying, because I'm skipping over it all anyway. And, uh, it's still English voice acted. So it's kind of weird on that one. A lot of people are like, oh, why do you play the game in English? I'm like, it really doesn't make a difference. I'm skipping everything anyway. Also, a lot of people don't really know about Buyo Buyo mode, because Buyo Buyo mode is actually limited only to the, um, Japanese version of the game. So if you're playing this on the English version, uh, you wouldn't actually know much about Buyo Buyo. Also, to get Buyo Buyo, you need to uh, beat every single ending in the game. Uh, five on Helen, five on Jennifer. So yeah, what do you guys think so far of this game, chat? This game also came out the same year Resident Evil did, believe it or not. Same year as Resident Evil. 
Also, another cool part about this game is that it featured multiple characters. So while we're playing as this guy right now, this guy is, this is a prologue character. Uh, once you get to the main game, the character that you end up picking uh, actually depends based on how much you talk to this guy for some reason. Uh, nobody ever thinks about it, but this one character is how you decide uh, who you play as for the whole game and what decision you get. Well, this game's going to be a little bit weirder because um, it's going on the point-and-click style. So I think it just has more to kind of work with in that aspect. Also, Clock Tower P um, 2 actually wanting to strip do its thing. Also, Net of the Sylveon. Sylveon. I always mix the two pronunciations, but I know it's Sylveon. But it's Tier 1 for 21 months. I hope you're doing great today, Sylveon. Hope that you are doing well. And thank you very much. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors, and for the 21 months. Nope! If you're soft locking the game, you fucked up. That's the fun part about Clock Tower games. Uh, for the first two, if you soft lock, uh, you... You fucked up. I've been doing doing good, I think. Today's been a nice day so far. We're having a good time in the Clock Tower Marathon. Oh uh, yeah, I gotta celebrate my dog's birthday today, chat. My mom wanted to throw my... Our dog a birthday. He had a cake. I didn't know they made dog cakes. How's it going, Longest Name? Great to see you. It's real cinematic? Yeah. Well, this game it still stays with the point-and-click style. So, you know, you control a cursor. Uh, they kind of just updated it for the PS1 graphics. Yeah, he had a little dog cake. A dog was born at some point? Yeah, I didn't know they made cakes for dogs. No, it was like a peanut butter thing, I think. It smelled like peanut butter. I didn't try it because it was a dog cake, but, uh... Yeah, it was a cake made for dogs, apparently. Some dog place made it. I didn't know they made cakes for dogs. I'm almost half tempted to say my dog got a better birthday than I did. <laughs> I know he didn't. But still. Yeah, it's it's trippy, uh, Symphonics. It's trippy. I didn't know they made cakes for dogs. He turned two. No, not out of dogs. Four dogs. But yes. There we go. Oh, I actually have two Twitch managers open. Alright, chat. Time for my favorite part of the stream. Do I have unban requests? Let's see. Is anyone asking for an unban request? No. All right. No, no. No, we're not out of four dogs. You can't be unbanned. You weren't banned. You have to be banned to be unbanned. And you, Franz, you're good. Have any ban requests? I'm not banning anyone. Everyone in chat's proper. I already banned a few people today for racism. People in chat are good. Surprisingly enough, I don't have to ban people that often. I think he did, Trekkie. Yeah, I think you're right. Also, this game's speed tech is kind of weird. So if you're wondering, what kind of speed tech can a game like this have? Uh, you have to, like... Don't type the racism box? They were here earlier. About uh, ban requests? I actually have had that. People kept asking, Oh, what band? Do you, you played in a band? What's the name? Nobody will ever get my band's name. Never. Nice, Azekiel. All you'll understand is that I played bass. Hey, I've been joking. I want to. I want to start a Twitch ska band. I gotta find some trumpet players on Twitch. Make a ska band. You know. I can play the bass. I wasn't the bassist for Weezer. I have tried Dishonored. No, I'm not gonna say the name of the band I had. Oh, that's so fucking hilarious, Luxy Doodle. Yeah, I played the Singing Fish. You got it. Hey, bass is fun. I like bass a lot. No, I'm not going to tell you the band name. I'm not giving you any hint whatsoever, by the way. Mainly because it doxes myself. I I'd rather not dox myself, you know? Because my actual name is tied to that band, so... Yeah. I know you're thinking, but at Dices, people can find you all the time. I, 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 I prefer people not try to dox me actively. 
I don't know if I wonder wall. You'd have to give me a few minutes, but I probably could. The only song I feel like I can play well on a guitar is the song Self-Esteem by The Offspring. As I, too, have no self-esteem. Oh, wait. <laughs> also, look how short these boys' shorts are. It's just a square. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's the band name. I'd rather not dock myself. Surprisingly, Von Razzle's not. They're comfy and easy to wear. I feel like every time you see this kid, by the way, they get smarter. And also, I flew chords of Megalovania. Megalovania is all like single notes, I think. What do you mean? Notes, right? Like the main riff, the doo 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 doo. I play the intro to Megalovania. Quite fun bass, the whole thing's really just boom 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 no, by the way, look how fucking fast it was. It saved a minute being on Japanese. Even with the buyo buyo fuckery. Can I pause the game? No. Wait, there. Oh, there. Perfect, Wonder Greek. Perfect. Oh, yeah, I like how Deltarune came out, by the way. You sort of know drums? Apparently, Ral ever knows drums. She told me she was a drummer. I actually know a lot of drummers. Maxi played drums. I have an IRL buddy of mine who plays drums. Nah. Nah. It's chemistry. Also, with drummers, I'm very picky. I'm very picky about drummers. Why? All right, chat. Let me tell you one thing I learned from being in a band. Let me tell you one thing really quick. Which two members of, a, like, a standard band do you think have the most chemistry between each other? Which two? You had to pick two. Drum and bass? You're damn right. So I'm going to be very picky about who I pick as a drummer. I Meaning I'm not going to pick a drummer because I'd rather just not do a band. But no, it's uh, drum and bass. It's actually really annoying, too, because you have to be on the same wavelengths and groove lengths. So I gotta learn a lot about time signatures. Yep. What's a time signature? Now I know. We're only playing in 4-4. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck your... Your, uh, what? Your, your, uh... What? I'm only gonna be playing... I write all my music in 4-4. When you think about it, all music's in 4 4 if you, if you don't want to complain, if you really want to get into it. Now, nah, rhythm's a fun thing. Alright, demand eight key changes. Did I play in a band? Yes, I played in a band. Oh yeah, time for my favorite part of the game, where this game gets really creepy. Let's actually go back to the story of Clock Tower for a moment. So right now we're playing as Jennifer, and Jennifer's story is actually kind of weird, and I think more of a product of the 90s and product of its time. Uh, so, uh, Jennifer's love interest is the 25-year-old Nolan. Nolan's a reporter. However, it's kind of weird on how it's written. I think it's a lot creepier when you just say it without going further into it, but... I, Nolan's an asshole, uh, let's just put it that way. He's portrayed as, I guess, part one of the heroes, but, uh, yeah, he's an asshole. Don't worry, though, because the, the game does mention dating underage girls is creepy when the 35-year-old man wants to hit on the 15-year-old girl. That's the difference, Chad. That's the difference. I'm not kidding, by the way, that's an actual plot point. Also, Scandinavia. They spelled it wrong. Scandinavia. So, the plot point that I'm talking about is that Nolan wants to go on a date with Jennifer because Jennifer, you know, knows all about the clock tower case. Nolan isn't really going for a date. Uh, it's weird. He He's an asshole, but he's not... Uh, it's weird mentioning this. I don't know how to exactly word it. He's using a 15-year-old girl's affections to get a scoop. But he's not... 
being a pedophile, I guess. Is, it, is that just manipulation that's fucked up? Like, I don't know how to word it. No, Nolan's 25. The villain is 35. Yeah, he wants knowledge. Correct, he's emotionally manipulating her, but not for sexual purposes. That is, uh, that's hardly grooming. Pro yeah, I definitely, it's definitely, he's definitely a shitty person, but, um, he's getting info primarily. He's not trying to, you know, go for it. By the way, let me show you something funny. So, if you turn on Buyo Buyo mode here, just watch the box. It is the Scissor Man case, because the media blew it up. Ooh, perfect hiding! Where she go? <laughs> Perfect hiding spot, Jennifer. Blends right in. Alright, I'm only doing this for the university, because the university is short. It won't be on too long. It's short fun. Trust me, this is a really short level, and it's funny to watch. Chat, enjoy your bounces. Post hypers if you want to bounce with us. Or other bouncing emotes like, I don't know, Bone Zone? But it's bouncing. Anyway, this level's really quick, actually, which is why we're doing this one. You're gonna hurl. It'll be really short. Don't worry. It'll be really short. I mainly want to show off this thing because uh, his body's segmented from his fucking head. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. You know? So dead things can't bounce, but living things can bounce. So the head's dead, but the body's alive. And then last but not least, I want to show up the ladders. I'll turn it off once we get to the uh, the old man's house. Just because I can't turn it off during the dialogue after that. They were following. So, by the way, if you're wondering how short is this level, uh, alright, we're almost done. I just have to leave. Correct, Mandalore. Alright, and that's the level. Check that out. That's the whole level. But, I bet you're wondering, how does Jennifer climb a ladder? I just say Jennifer's extreme. Jennifer's really extreme when it comes to climbing ladders. Just watch. <laughs> oh, God. I love it so much. Just... <laughs> And then the fast disc speed makes her do all the panting at once. I think it's pretty great. Alright, so we're gonna have it for... Because I don't think I could pause it here. So, once I get to the mansion, I'll turn it off. Once we're at the mansion. There's also a good scene of the mansion, too. I promise that much. Uh, if you're wondering where the mansion is, uh, it's at the, uh, probably about, let's say, six minutes away. Actually, less than six minutes. It's probably like five, because I realize, uh, d fastest speed. They're bouncing. Mellow, it's buyo buyo mode. You bounce. So this is a joke setting that you're able to turn on. Uh, if you got in every single ending in the Japanese PS1 clock tower, or Japanese, um, you know, clock tower 2. Uh, this game. Um, games back in the day really like joke settings. Uh, they're quite fun. So this game ended up uh, adding this in as a kind of little joke thing. And it's nice. A lot of old games did this. Like I mentioned Giraffe Mode in the Crow City of Angels. We have DK Mode in like Goldeneye. Uh, many old games were kind of known to have these, you know, silly modes if you did everything or, you know, the more you beat the game. Ween is fun. No, not in this game. This game added Buyo Buyo Mode. The only thing, though, is that a lot of people don't actually know about Buyo Buyo Mode because it was exclusive to the Japanese version. It never happened in North America, and I don't know why. Deer Simulator? I suppose Lexi Doodle. You say it? Perfect. Can you get a Buyo Buyo bread? You know what? Fine. You can have bread. There. An Oingo Boingo spirit? Exactly silent. There you go, Healing Mind. Remothered is, or at least I do it, Mizurachi. It's the closest we're getting to it, so I count it for my marathon. Realistically, the Clock Tower series ends at 3. 
However, uh, there's a lot of games that kind of get featured in this because of their histories and ties to the Clock Tower series. And that's the main idea. No, it's just different ports. You know, it happens. All right, now here we click on Nolan's ass for three minutes. All right, a minute. We are doing Nightcry, yes. We're doing uh, Clock Tower 1, uh, you know, SNES to 3. After that, we're doing Haunting Round, Nightcry, and the Remothered games. I was doing Chemical Chocobo. You see, chat? You're welcome, by the way. I didn't even make this a sub-incentive. I thought about it. I thought about it. I was going Abacus. Hope you're doing good. Yeah. Oh, I actually learned about this mode from Botsuke. I could have made this a monetary incentive, chat. But I didn't. Anyway, the only reason why I haven't turned it off yet is I physically can't until I'm back in gameplay. Which will not happen until we're at the old man's house. Also, there's a funny scene in the old man's house that I really like, so I think it's worth it. Also, if you're wondering, uh, you can actually get a bad ending here if you pick the wrong spot. So earlier in the game, I sent a statue to a certain spot. I sent it to the old man's house. So what you want to do is go to the right spot. Um, the old man's house is always faster. The library just takes too long. I'm going to wonder, Regan. Thank, thank you all for the followers, by the way, chat. For anyone who did follow, it is appreciated. I am sorry if you missed the names. I used to allow the names to be on screen. However, uh, lately I've been getting... Uh, I, I'm tired of seeing Lord racial slurs on follows. So I, I just kind of made it a basic thing. Anyway, I like this mode because they see, sink into the couch. What is the ending? Scissor Man kills you in your house. That's it. By the way, for Resident Evil fans, uh, this old guy right here is Barry Burden. I'm not kidding. Uh, you're going to hear his voice acting later, potentially. Hopefully. Uh, but this old man is Barry Burden. And he's bouncing his couch. Some bouncy couch? I mean, you know, when it's bouncy, you gotta bounce. It, it just makes you want to bounce. Sitting? Exactly. I mean, they're sinking into the couch. They keep having to try to get out of it. So, funny enough as well, uh, you actually get to play as the character that... Um, is technically the quote the love interest i guess of each of the main characters we have jennifer and helen so for jennifer it's nolan um i will acknowledge as well that the game uh fumi kono has uh gone on record saying no it's not broken this is buyo buyo mode how long today's stream be well the speedrun's about 11 hours so long <laughs> it's gonna be a long day today so any support's appreciated as always i'll say it right now we're going long today, chat. We're going long. We are going long. It is. At least I hope it is. Thoughts on being cute? Cute chat? I think cute's fun. Yeah, we're back in business uh, at the cash mode. We're back in business, and it's good stuff. Anyway, I just want to remind you that people only bounce if they're alive. So if you see someone bouncing and they look dead, they're actually alive. Just remember that. Anyway, here's Barry Burden. Nolan, I was given this chandelier as a farewell present when I retired. Hmm. So it used to hang in the Barlow Mansion. By the way, What wonderful times those were. Also. Except for... Hey, look, a chandelier! Oh, no! I can't believe it. I can't believe the chandelier would fall. I just stared at it the whole fucking time. But look at it. He, he's lying. He's still bouncing. He's still bouncing. What a liar. What a sack of shit. Actually, hold on. I have one more thing. I have one more thing really quick. Hold on. I swear I'll turn it off after this one thing. Just trust me when I say this, it'll be funny. It's gonna be really funny. Okay. 
So, uh, Nolan's strategy is actually going to be hiding. Because hiding in this room is only stay in this room where I can get the Dion item. So, I'm gonna hide in this closet. Just, just watch what happens. Nolan's also a master of stealth. But you know, he has to peek out to make sure the Scissor Man's actually gone. <laughs> he has to peek out. Exactly, it's like the submarine periscope. Alright, so those of you who do not like Buyo Buyo, it's okay. We're back to normal. There you go. And just make it, it has started making me a little bit queasy, but it's okay. Oh yeah, it gets a bit motion sick, so. And that's why I don't want to keep it on for too long. It's fun to show it off, but I don't want to keep it on for too long. I found out about Clock Tower because I was in high school shooting the show with some of my... Or I just graduated high school shooting the show with some of my IRL buddies. We're talking about horror games, and uh, one of my buddies mentioned a game where you get chased by a guy with a giant pair of scissors while he played as a teenage girl, and I thought that was the funniest shit. So I was like, I want to play that. And then we did. And then I have a reference to the series now because I had good times. All right, I want to show you something funny, though. I'm going to get four attempts. Two. It's horrifying, Femme Jesse. It's horrifying. So this game takes place one year after the previous game. So Jennifer is now a 15-year-old girl, and it's, she's kind of dealing with, um, you know, the... The trauma of the, you know, the murders. But she was the lone survivor of clock. All right, we need to get it. Uh, maybe we'll get in during the next run. Who knows? I didn't. You know, fuck. I, I have to go for one more. I, I'm gonna regret if I don't do it. I doesn't believe things. I'm gonna regret it. I'm gonna regret it. Yay! I knew it. See. Remothered counts. For our purposes. Anyway, here's Scissor Man watching cartoons. What's going on? Scissor Man's watching cartoons. Why? He wants to watch cartoons. That's why. Survivor's Guild. Is this, is this Buyo Buyo? I turned off Buyo Buyo. Because it gets people motion sick after a certain amount of time. You get it on for this, for that, like, I don't know, I've been on for like eight minutes or something. Eight minutes is plenty. Bonk. You missed it again? Rewind the VOD. I'm not gonna do it again unless I get money. That's, that's my way of putting that one. Just because it makes a lot of people sick. So the fact that I kept it on for as long as I did, that's like, I kept it on for a while. It was on for like 10 minutes. Like, from essentially, yeah, from, yeah, more than 10 minutes. It was on from the beginning of university all the way to uh, old man, like right now, essentially. Well, there you go, Mandalore. Well, no, the thing about this game is that Bobby Barros is dead. You don't know who the Scissor Man is. Uh, this whole game's a whodunit. You don't know who done it. The whole point of the game is to find out who done it. So we don't know who done it. I mean, I know, and a lot of chat probably knows because we do this. We do this pretty often. Nope, Bobby died. Bobby is no longer in the game. We don't know who the Scissor Man is. If you don't know, you genuinely don't know. Uh, you're not. That's the whole reason why it's terrifying too, because there's been a lot of people who have been trying to, you know, publicize it for the media. Um, a lot of things like that. You don't know who the Scissor Man is. And that's the whole point of this game. It's a whodunit. It's kind of like Scream. There could be. There could be one. There could be two. You don't know who did it. Do you miss Booyah Booyah mode? You just missed it. Your Scissor Man. Pick up the, pick up the thing. Pick up the thing. Thank you. Good. By the way, the Dorito Demon is now dead. Imagine going to the fridge, and then they take it all. 
Yeah, it's kind of like Scream, where it's a whodunit. You're not so you're not sure who exactly it could be. It's me. Oh, thank you. I mean, I guess I am the Scissor Man. Chat, can we get some scissors in chat just to, to talk about the Scissor Man? Just a mask? Yeah, it's a demon mask. It guards the location of the uh, Barrow's mansion. Also, Nolan being an even more heartless man throws poor uh, soap in this poor dog's eyes. I can't believe it. Can't believe he would do that. Pocket sand. <laughs> we die if we don't do that, by the way. Wasn't the Scissor Man a curse? It was, but, uh, you know. That's a large point of the game, I guess. There we go. Also, to keep the Who Done It theme, uh, our current mission is recruit every single main character to go to England, so you don't know who it can be. It can be anyone in the main cast. That's all I can really say. If you don't know, you'll you'll learn in due time. But yeah, that's also why this game kind of got weird in North American releases. A lot of people don't really understand why it was made the way it was. Is it Barry Burden? Barry Burden died. He died by chandelier. I, I don't think he launched a chandelier on himself and then snuck away. That was going to Sam Shan, by the way. Hope you're doing good. Brand managers, hope you're doing well. It got to be Jennifer. That, that is actually a fun idea that Jennifer could become, become a scissor person. But no. There's a chance. Can I read Japanese? No. My Japanese is piss poor, but I've played these games enough that I know most of what's going on. I was a stream pretty good so far, I think. Nope, this game actually takes place in Norway. We're going to England, though. Because the original Clock Tower Mansion's in England. However, uh, the first game took place in Norway, as does the majority... Well, I, I want to say the majority of this game, but it's funny because it's actually split down the middle. No, so the Scissor Man thing's actually really funny. Scissor Man is uh, media naming. The original killer was just named Bobby Barrows. People named it the Scissor Man because the media wanted to publicize a cool name. There's actually no Scissor Man. It, that's a name the media gave it. That doesn't smear. A lore run through of the series? Maybe. I've thought about it. I have thought about it. So Jen dies in 2? We're currently playing 2. Watch what happens. Like, I, I, it doesn't make sense to ask for spoilers in a game that's actively happening. When she's standing right here. Like, ask and, like, you know, watch and find out actually does make some sense in this context. But I can't read Japanese. Yeah, I'm explaining every single facet of the story so far. So there. Hmm. I need water, by the way. I've been talking a lot. Ooh, it's gonna be a long stream today, chat. It's gonna be a long, long stream. You need a clock tower? Oh, well, yeah, but I mean, like, it's... It's right here. Like, I understand asking for, like, you know, certain things, but, like, if, if it's like, oh, does blank happen? Like, if you watch, you'll find out, like, quite actually. Well, this isn't what Clock Tower 2 actually is. What Clock Tower 2, the struggle within is, is that is Clock Tower Ghost Head. Bobby doesn't... No, Bobby's dead. Bobby does not fit into anything else. So, Bobby was the killer in Clock Tower PS1. He was the main, you know, quote-unquote, Scissor Man of that game. Scissor Man ended up being a title that the media gave the killings because people started, you know, wearing a mask and, oh, the Scissor Man. And kind of making it a, you know, hoaxing and making pranks. It's just a prank, bro. Exactly, Raiko. Like, it'll come up. Right now, we're recruiting everyone to go to England, because Jennifer's stupid. That's actually why. I don't know why everyone wants to go to England. I, I mean, they're all bad. The only good one, really, is the SNES one. I love this game, but... Really, the only good one's the SNES one, and Haunting Ground. Most Clock Tower games aren't very good. I love the franchise, but I'm not going to lie about that. Night Cry is amazing? No, it's passionate. 
Have a good one, Myson. Have a good one. Correct, Jet Set. Oh, yeah, I love the franchise. I fucking love Clock Tower, but I'm not going to deny I'm not going to sit here and deny that it's terrible. No, Clock Tower 3 is uh, arguably one of the worst. It's the, in the bottom two of trash. Second best is not good. Also, look, see? Oslo? To London. Heresy? No, it's really bad. I think Ghost Head's probably the worst of the franchise just because of all the shit behind it, but Clock Tower 3 is right, right there with Ghost Head. Clock Tower 3 has a lot of issues. I like it, but uh, it has a lot of issues. And nice life PB. Nice. Mainly in the scaling. That game scales like shit. And this game is a standard fun romp. The main issue is just kind of localization. Nightcry is the best clock tower. No, the best clock tower is uh, Clock Tower SNES. Again, a game can be funny, but that doesn't mean it's good. Also, though Scissor Man the whole time was actually. Who is it? It's. Harris. Why did you look like he told me to? He said I should have you. You would be mine. He told me to dress up as a and kill people. It's funny because the Japanese uh, English voice acting is actually better than the English voice acting. They did two different takes in English, and I don't know why. By the way, I like how the scream shows up way before he dies. By the way, the actual secret is that there's two scissor men. Someone called it earlier at the scream twist. I wasn't trying to totally give it away for those of you who didn't know, but it's kind of like Scream. There's actually two Scissor Men. Double the Scissor Men, double the fun. What a twist. Hey, back in 96, this is a great fucking twist. Who's Harris? Harris is a 35 year old man who wants to ram a teenage girl. So obviously he had to die because Scissor Man doesn't like pedophiles. See, that's, that's fine, Velcro Zippers. That's fine. Oh, do be careful. Do be careful with ASCII art, because we're, we're kind of on watch of that right now. There's been a lot of bad ASCII art lately, so just do be careful. Uh, we've been having to ban a lot. Of, yeah, yeah, you're, all, you're out of trouble. Just There's been a lot today we've been having to ban immediately, so uh, keep that in mind. <laughs> like, I've been having a lot of... Uh, surprise, the last one was in a racist. The ass was like trans. I'm not trans. That doesn't canon. Oh, I've been getting, um, I, I don't even know it's hate rate. I'm pretty sure it's one person making dummy accounts. And I'll say I like your ASCII art. I think it's absolute weeb shit right there. And the good weeb shit. I don't think it's hate raiders. I think it's one person. Like, it's a very specific person who I've banned, and I think they just sort of been, you know, obsessed. You know what we say about that, right, chat? You know what we say about that? Rent free, baby. Rent free. Well, yeah, it's definitely not more than one, because, you know, if it was more than one, we would, uh, be getting a lot more. Oh, it's at least someone who's, like, a stalker sort of thing. Nice. Oh, you're doing good, Canon. Exactly, rent free. Also, we got the sun tablet. Okay, it's gonna be sun. I'm gonna ask you later, what's it going to be? The answer is sun chat. Look, it's Gots. By the way, it's funny because you don't need to talk to any of the survivors. This game came to North America? It did, but that's the problem. This game came to North America, but the first game didn't come to North America. What happened? Nothing real. So, since the first game didn't come to North America, a lot of the plot twists and a lot of the stuff in this game kind of falls on deaf ears. Also, as you want to permit, planet? No, it can only be st uh, star, moon, and sun. And the answer is sun. Remember that. I'm going to quiz you later. If you get it wrong, you die. Also, we're saving every, we're saving all the people in each scenario.
It's dog? Oh, perfect. Yeah, it's dog. You got it. Star is not correct. It's sun. Actually, I don't even know why I grabbed it. I can't read Japanese. It says sun play, but I can't read Japanese. I'm not sure what the fuck I grabbed it, but I grabbed it. Wow, what a mansion! Same year as Resident Evil. By the way, if you ever play a Clock Tower game, Chapter 1's the most important chapter in the, in the game. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you ever play a Clock Tower game, any type, if you ever see a game made by a man named Fumi Kono, Chapter 1's the most important chapter of all. This is not RNG, it's all set. This, this RNG, is, uh, it's all set. There's no RNG. I mean, there's minor RNG, but nothing significant. The only RNG is that Bobby can spawn, or not Bobby, Scissor Man can spawn every now and again. And yeah, it's a fun game, Eyes on Me. I really like this game, actually. Uh, this is the game I first played again in the Clock Tower series, because this one came to North America. And then later on, I ended up playing the other game, because, you know, we learned about it. Alrighty, now we're going down. Yep. But even if we get RNG, it won't really matter. I know the route pretty well these days, for both, I think. My Helen routing's a bit uh, rusty, but my Jennifer routing's really good. Alrighty, let's go through. They're all bad. Also, funny enough, there's like a fight on this desk. You don't even do the fight. It's just, there's a book here. A lot of people don't realize this on Jennifer's route. You don't have to do that fight. And then they get into a fight and they die to like a roach or a hand. And it's like, oh, well, GG. I know that feeling all too well, Crimson Cody. I know that feeling all too well. Alrighty, hold on. Cool. Alright. By the way, the reason why I go in there is because I wanted to make sure he was alive. Yeah, he can possibly die. Not careful. Also, I think I may have gone the slightly wrong way. That's okay if I did. It's a very m minor route change. I don't remember everything. I know the general wh wherewithal I should be going, though. I need a pee. And also, my favorite part of this game is the fact that you have to learn everything. Oh, there's a tile on the ground. Oh, there's a button in the wall. What if I press it? Just press the button, Jennifer. Come on. It can't hurt you. I don't need three actions to push a goddamn button. I guess I do. So yeah, most of the game actually takes place in this mansion, funny enough. And if you mess up your timing or you just don't do certain things right, you'll actually end up killing a lot of your friends. Because uh, you can actually save all the friends as you slowly narrow down who is the Scissor Man and who isn't. We know the Scissor Man is not Harris because Harris is dead. I mean, he was Harris, but it's not actually Harris. Someone else is pulling the strings. That being said, Helen's route will also have a traitor. Uh, every route has the traitor and the main villain. So it's not K. Did you get a star at the second floor? Why do you want to go up there? There may be an escape route. There's no way to escape, but if you want to go, take this key with you. I need the key. I don't know, but it's worth what you can probably use somewhere in this mansion. Saving all the friends fast? Uh, I think not saving the friends is slightly faster. How many different endings are there? Five. However, friend count can also vary depending on how you play. In total, you can save seven, but I think it's slightly faster to kill Barton. And that's it. For the most part, not really. Like, we started doing Jennifer low percent because we, you know, 100% used to be the stand ever percent, but now we're like, yeah, Jennifer, just, just save all the friends. It's fun. But even then, no matter what, like, we, we made the category for the other one too. So it doesn't really matter all too much. Yeah, 
There we go. Alrighty, now we have the key for this. By the way, so I mentioned earlier, chapter one's important. Why? In chapter one, I picked up an oil can. If you didn't pick this up, you can't get the best ending. Clock Tower games always pull this shit. Nightcry does this too. Chapter one's the most important in almost any Hufumi Kono game. If you don't do the proper thing in the beginning of the game, too bad. So... That's pretty frustrating. Well, I mean, it rewards looking around and actually taking your time and getting re as many resources as you can. I get why they do it. <gasps> Another scissor man. A mummified scissor man. Did you even use the item? Yep, I just used it. So, you do. Also, here's bats. It's bats. And who can it be? It's... It's Helen. It's the... Helen in a box. It's kind of like the song by Alice in Chains, except with said man, it's Helen. Are you all right? Yes, I hit her girl, that's all. Um, a man in the box. Exactly, exclusive. She's a legendary. I mean, it's a nice spot, Iris. I like the box. I've been locked inside your Helen-shaped box for whole weeks. Aww. Alright, we're all good there. Alright, Helen's portion is done. There we go. So, funny enough, you actually have to translate Latin in this game. You need to find a character who can do it, which is either Helen or Barton. You can actually pick who you want. A lot of people don't realize that, but you can do either one. It is possible with softlock here. Technically, someone mentioned it, but that's only if you killed Barton and you didn't get the thing to save Helen. So, that's what I'm saying. You should probably, you know, just reset the whole level at that point, because you're really fucked up. And it's not even really softlocking, you're just locked out of the best ending. I think you can still get endings, you just can't get the best ending. How's it going, heckin' gosh? Hope you're doing good. Also, you wanna see what a good jump scare looks like? That. That's a fucking jump scare right there. God, it's fu so fucking well timed, too. Just boom. You're making progress, you entered a new area, just. Boom. I think that's one of my favorite jump scares in any game I've ever played. Was that hard? It's a good one. It's a really good one. It is a spooky game. Also, here's dead children. All right, let's check Instagram. Anything good on here? Ah. No. How about Twitter? Is Sega still following me? Someone asked earlier. I'm going, Ellen. Sega, do you follow me? Chat, good news. Sega still follows me. They love me. Dead orphan meat? Uh, these are bones. That's not even meat anymore. It's fucking bones. Snip, 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 off goes his head. Bright, red, bright, red. There isn't two of the best jump scare. You mean the jazz? You mean the spooky jazz? Open the door. Nice stuff. So ghosts exist? Well, these are the ghosts of dead children. What was that? You saw them too? They started appearing a while back. They must be the ghosts of children who were killed here. So many. No, they're singing a, a haunting song of the Scissor Man killing children. As apparently they've been, you know, getting children for years and just fucking murdering them. Also, no one's gonna chill in the dead kid room because I guess that's what he, I guess that's what he does. What about a normal room? No. The dead kid room. 
Nope, this is the different mansion. This is the mansion uh, in England. The first game, that mansion is in Norway. A very Nolan thing to do? Exactly. Hey, free yeah. range? You know, they just might be. Well, I mean, at that point, Fumi Kono stopped making it. They kind of just wanted to make more games of the IP. And also, I'll talk more about why Clock Tower uh, The Struggle then failed. Or Clock Tower 2 The Struggle then, or Clock Tower Ghost had failed. Now, that game failed for a very particular purpose, and I mention it all the time. A lot of horror games tried doing it. And you try doing it, it happens every fucking time. Okay, chat, and I'll ask you a question. Sun, moon, or star? What was the answer? Sun, moon, or star? Sun, moon, or star? You can't say the sun is a star. If you're picking semantics, if you pick semantics, you died. If you pick sun, you live. If you pick dog, you also die. But actually, it's star, because the sun's a star. You died. There we go. So you can't pick yourself? I mean, you... Uh, there's RNG that can make it any of them. So that's actually one of the RNG bits we're talking about. Uh, it can be moon, it can be star, and it can be sun. But this time around, we actually got s s sun, so... The answer is sun. You know the other ones you would just, uh, you die. Uh, I think rats eat you or you drown. I think Helen gets rats and I think Jennifer gets drowned. No other way around. Uh, Jennifer gets the rats. Helen drowns. That's right. We'll talk more about that once we get into Clock Tower to the struggle of them. Scam train yet? Uh. No, I, I think we got two two times we were close to the hype train, but I, I don't think we hit the hype train today. There you go. Also, I'm not I'm not gonna heavily two push it. Damn. I mean, I guess you can make the wave to start. I, I don't really know what to tell you much more than there. Like, that's it. Hey there. Damn. It happens, Lord Khan, and it's kind of unfortunate too, because a lot of people, you know, um, a lot of the game is kind of based on the previous game. So if you don't really, a lot of the story beats are kind of weird for a lot of people. But overall, it's a fun game. I think when I first played this, I got Helen B ending, so me and my friends didn't do that bad. Man, they're trying to survive in the mansion, hanging out. But yeah, like, you know, it is the September thing, but I don't want to heav too heavily push it. Hell, that's also why I offer sub goals or rewards for that, because if people do want to, you know, be generous to that degree, I'd rather you get something in return for that. Which in this case would be, I guess, the game incentives I have. But also, I, I don't want to go like every hour. Oh, guys, it's September. You know, I could, but... Unless prompted, like, or, you know, unless it's been, like, a few hours or something, then it's not a large deal. And things, I think, stream-wise, we're doing pretty consistent. We're doing pretty good. Our time will come. We'll say that much. Our time will come. Alright. You know, I'm surprised I didn't get a random Bobby spawn. Or, pff, Scissor Man spawn. See, now you got me doing it. You want to hang out in the Haunted Mansion? I think it's dumb. Hell, earlier this month, I got 100 gifted subs. So, I'm pretty happy with that alone. You know? And that's uh, quite a hefty amount. There we go. Cool. The main thing I stress, not only here, but for any Twitch channel, by the way, chats, always make sure that if you're doing any kind of gifted subs or subbing or anything like that, make sure that you are taking care of yourself first. 
If you're hurting for money, if times are tough, don't feel obligated to tip or donate to anybody. It's appreciated, but a large part of the streaming is that, you know, it's an, it's an endeavor. It's like, you shouldn't harm yourself to help someone else float along. Are you doing it right? I suppose you are, Iris. I suppose you are. Dude, a sub sandwich actually sounds pretty fucking good, not gonna lie to you. I go for a sub sandwich. I already had dinner, though, so. There it is. Almost done with the first run, by the way. Almost done with Jennifer. Exactly, assisted. And also, I'm thankful for what we do get, so. Just saying that, chat. Just saying that. There we go. I don't know how many other streamers share the same sentiment, but is wire graphics, aren't they great? But, if, like, also, another thing, like, it's always weird because people come in and go like, oh, Dices, I'm so sorry for blank. I'm like, why are you sorry? You don't need to be sorry. You're the viewer. You're the one watching. I'm sorry for being late. I'm not taking an attendance sheet. You watch at your your pleasure. If you like watching, fuck yeah, man. That's great. But I'm not gonna count points against someone for not showing up. I'm not gonna count points against someone because they wanted to, you know, oh, you, you didn't you didn't drop thousands of dollars on me? Oh. Well, I guess your your points are fun no. Sorry, you're fine. Ship posting's fine, dude. Your ship posting's fine, at least. Saw an ad. It'd be like that. Anyway, going back to the story really quick. Before I go back to that rant, the scissor man was actually Edward, the little boy. Johnny Jukebox, the tier one. Welcome to the swarm. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors, and thank you. By the way, Edward's actual name is Dan. So, this is what I was kind of mentioning. So Dan's oh, the orphan meat baby, but he's he's actually this size. He's actually the same size as Bobby. He's in a mech. I'm not even kidding. In uh, other in, in other um, versions of the game, like the Wonder Swan version and the PlayStation One version, they actually show him rise out of the mech. They show him walk out of it. So you can see his actual size, and then he ends up getting revenge, and he also survives. So it's Dan. Oh yeah, thank you very much, Johnny Jukebox. I am glad that, uh, it's very kind words. Is that short for Danfred or Danithy? No, she doesn't do Kamehameha. She does Uha Ishu. Anyway, we're almost done. It's a mech? That giant orphan meat baby was a mech. Did you? Look at that music. There we go. That's the good shit right there. All right, chat. Good news and bad news about the Japanese version. Good news. It's mostly faster. Bad news. I can't skip the credits. So, after the ending, what happens now is I need a fucking pee. But we don't really do beer at backs traditionally during games like or during the clock time marathon. So what happens instead is once we hit the credits, I'm going to be right back. So let's enjoy the ending. Let's see how it is. So quit worrying. Okay. No, he got sent. I guess to the moon. I don't. They, never, they don't talk about where he sent. He sent to the same place Pyramid Head sent to his people. That's my guess. Also, here's Jennifer kissing an older man because I don't know why they ended the game this way. Horny jail? That's accurate. Yeah, we're in the, the haunting ground one. It was made by uh, one of our resident viewers, a thousand dead Draculas. Uh, she does absolutely great stuff. So, Alan. FBI, open up. Alan. In fairness, Nolan's pretty much never, you know, apparently he's never heard from again. So, it all worked out. Anyway, that's the ending. Uh, we'll confirm whether... Yeah, Nightcrawler's on the list. Really quick, I need a pee, and these credits are unskippable. Enjoy the fun music, the fun tunes. 
I'm going to be right back. If you've been enjoying the stream thus far, feel free to shoot us a follow here on Twitch, as you do a lot of horror games and horror game accessories and stuff like this. Uh, we probably end up doing more marathons as time goes on. We have a lot more in this marathon, but it's just credits. I recommend this is the time we stand up, touch your toes, stretch your legs, do what you need. We also have things like Discord, Instagram, and Twitter, which are great ways to keep up to date. Twitter, I post updates. Discord is a great community place. And as well, Instagram is a lot more personal stuff. You can see my base where it says, be kind to prostitutes, or be nice to prostitutes. Anyway, mods are in charge. I got a pee. Here's an ad. I don't have a MySpace. All right. Follows. There's more than one. Let's see. Hey, thank you.
Missed two games, still at 2.5. Anyway, if you're wondering why are you still waiting for the credits, uh, there's actually an ending screen. Okay, it's ending A, seven survivors. Bada boom. There we go. Is Jen dead? Yeah, did, did did you see her die? You did did you not see what happened? Like, no, she didn't die. Uh, how long does it take me to skip this? By the way, I can't even fucking remember. There we go. Like at that point, I don't know what to fucking tell you. Did she die? Did did you, you didn't watch the game? It's not even Japanese text. You can physically see that she doesn't die. <laughs> like, that's just straight up not paying attention at that point. Which, you know, more power to you for that one. It's not a test or anything, but... If you're gonna ask the question, did she die? Like, no! I don't know. She lived on. But she, you know, she was in England, so she wasn't actually living. There's a test? No. But there's always a certain thing where people ask questions for obvious answers, then, like, I don't know what to fucking tell you. You die off screen? No, she didn't die off screen. We don't know what happens to Jennifer after this game, but she does live during the events of this game. She was making out some old dude, and then she reunited with her mom, Helen. That's more important. No, because I always get that every now and again. It's like, oh, but what about Blank? It's like, are, you, you you paid attention, right? Like, you, you weren't... I think about Juo every now and again, where I'll tell him something. He's like, I wasn't listening. I was like, I'm not going to fucking answer it next time. What the fuck am I giving these answers for if no one's going to listen to them? Eight man How's it going, Eight man Eight man Like, I'm not saying people have to listen to what I say, but if you have a question and you don't hear it, then I don't know what to fucking tell you. Right, I kind of mentioned that. This is the last one that has Jennifer. The story really doesn't exist out of that. Dave's tied my world record? Yeah, he's been grinding that for, like, fucking ever at this point. I'm not surprised. See, there's Duo. Like, Mel, I do, I do Dead Rising... Hell, I haven't done it in weeks at this point. <laughs> Like, I think, uh, yesterday he had, like, what, a 12-hour stream or something doing it? And today he's probably going for, like, 12 more hours? I just sure man hours at this fucking point. I mean, I have to do more- Wait, is he doing- is he doing this- Hold on, wait. Did he do the Kent file? If he did the Kent file, I don't really count it. I don't count it. If he didn't do the Kent file, I count it. That was an echo Well, there you go, wait, man. Poor Juo, he died. Was my favorite Dead Rising? Probably one. Well, there you go, Juo. Good job. I don't believe you. Alright, I gotta get two pieces of dialogue here. I'm the bad luck? I lived in my games. Sounds like a personal problem, Drew. Sounds like a personal problem. Great to see you, Yasha. Hope you're having a good day today. Hope you're doing well. Hey, assisted living in the game. I played with them. We've been playing a lot more Dead by Daylight in Discord. It's fun. We have a lot of different groups. I think if we get enough people, what I might just do is I might just uh, play as killer. Craig, this part's in Oslo, Norway, like I mentioned earlier. All right. This time we only talked to this guy once, by the way. My posture ain't too bad, I don't think. Maybe it is. Take it easy, Bullseye Duck. Take it easy. Well, it's not even just have a custom. It's rotate out customs, you know? I just have multiple groups of people. I think it'd be a fun idea. 
Left 4 Dead 2? I mean, we could do that if we get enough. Uh, Lauren Hill like to play Dead by Daylight. I had a lot of fun yesterday playing Dead by Daylight. I played with, like a lot of different groups of people, actually. Got to play with new people. Got to play with people I've played with. It's good times. DVD? Yeah, I've been enjoying it. I've been enjoying it. Tournament Night DVD. And then I get my ass kicked when I play Killer. So that's what happens. But yeah, I don't see though Dead Rising is more competition. I'll not have to grind it more. That sucks. Oh well. I mean, it's not a real record right now, technically, but still. Still. No, it's called Clock Tower 2. I mean, I guess that could be a reason, but no. I mean, it's called Clock Tower 2 because it's the sequel to Clock Tower 1. That's how sequels work. What comes after one? Two. There. That's how it works. Diet Adventure, you're asking a lot of easily answered questions today. Actually, this is the first time I've ever been to the stream. Yeah, a lot of your questions are easily answered. 1.1. 1. 1, perfect. 1.1. 1. 1. I, I can't believe it. 1.1. 1. 1. Like, I understand the asking questions to make conversation appeal of asking questions, but, like... Yeah, it's called The Clock Tower 2 because it's the sequel. It's late for you? I don't know. Is this a video game? You know, Lord Khan... It just might be a video game. It just might be, in fact. You might be right on that one. Just might be. Alright, back we go. Additional life? Could be. Really depends. Out of the way, now we're back to the game. Doing the intro all over again. But this time, we're going to Helen's route, which is slightly different than Jennifer's route. There we go. Perfect. And also, I guess I have to do Dead Rising 1 again. A lot of people have been running it, so I guess I have to get a new world, world record again. Does that make more sense? Exactly, Aburi. You, you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly right. And that cries people crying in it at night. Dead on. Good shit. Good shit. Okay. So, funny enough, uh, for Helen's route, we actually go to the old man again. You almost always go to the old man. But you never want to go to the library. The library is slower because it's just a much more difficult and arduous process. Meanwhile, going to the old man's house is very simple. The map is significantly smaller, and there's just less shit you have to do in general. Funny enough, though, um, the library has an actual clock tower in it. Meanwhile, uh, the old man's house and the mansions don't have clock towers in this game. So... Yeah. <laughs> you know... Exactly, Trekkie. Exactly. Gas? I can't believe it, right? Now, Jennifer's and Helen routes, um, they're slightly different. Um, they're going to be the same set of levels, but the goals in each level are going to be different, as are the story motivations and the answers. So, a good example is we're not going to get the oil can this time. We're going to be getting a flashlight. So, Helen's route actually makes you play in the university. You can't immediately leave, and it's kind of funny with that. Library sounds cooler. Oh no, I kind of I like the old man's house. You get Barry Burden. Otherwise, you don't get Barry Burden. People like Barry Burden. He's cool. Clock towers are pretty cool. Unfortunately, we missed the clock tower entirely. By the way, back to Red Blue. Look at me. I just saved a minute twenty six. Yay! It's perfect. 
I can't believe it. It's perfect. It's perfect. So yeah, now we're playing as Helen. Helen's uh, the girl in the pink shirt. Uh, what Helen's role in this game is, she's a new character. Yeah, Shadewalker. I uh, announced the whole week we're we'll doing the Clock Tower Series Marathon. Oh, it's not even just a stream tonight. It's a big stream. Dub. Deebs, did you use the uh, the new thing or no? We're tied? Well, no, it's uh, we are tied, but like... Nope, thank God, God damn right, good shit. We are tied. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. Sounds good. I have to go back to Dead Rising, by the way. Yeah, okay. I was about to say, I'm putting a I was gonna put an asterisk on that if you use the new mo uh, the new form of that skip. I'm like, all right, you're missing zombies. I know it's minimum, but it's literally tied, so. And eight maps, uh, question of opinions. What am I take on craft beers? They're tasty, but a lot of them are people huffing their own shit. Take it with a grain of salt. Try things you think are interesting, but don't, like, uh, jerk off because you really want to get craft beers. I can also answer for the ape man a bit here, because I know for a fact that guy likes to get drunk for the sake of getting drunk. Craft beers are pricey, and very often, like, you know, they're nice every now and again, but the general medium should be... Remember, the best beer is free. If, if someone throws you a natty ice... Dude, I'll drink a natty ice. Fuck yeah. Three acts in the tier under two months. Also, congratulations, Deebs. Big congrats to that one. Wait, we're not even hop over to all bosses, by the way. I'm cool with the tie world record. Have you never tried all bosses or uh, Psycho Skip? They're pretty fun. It's a bit tougher than Dead Rising 2 all bosses, but once you get the... Uh, you, it sounds like you have the boarding down already, so I think you can do it. I free Zima. What the fuck's a Zima? That's my question. I just don't know what a Zima is. I never heard of Zima. I know Steel Reserve. I don't think. Oh, I. I I'm. Ah, eh, fuck it. Works. Like Mike's Hard Lemonade. Eh, it works. It works. Exactly. If someone throws me a Steel Reserve, I'll drink it. Zima's White Claw in the eighties. All right. Neat. But yeah, I know the Eight Man's recipe from that as well. There we go. Good shit. Also, Deebs, what's next on the platter on your end is the question. Are you going to keep going to try to get that, uh... What's the name of that? I don't know what a Hassie is. You gotta explain that to me. Alright. There we go. I have Dragon Steel Reserve in college. Oh, wait. Light, light, light. There we go. They do have something like that. Uh, to catch mode, they actually do. It's called uh, Strong Zero. Your version of Steel Reserve apparently is Strong Zero. I learned about this from Swordfish and Selena. So if you want to drink uh, and just get fucking hammered for cheap, it's Strong Zero. Oh, I don't know about that one then. Oh, yeah, I'm not saying it's absolute trash. I'm really just saying it's getting drunk for cheap. Yeah, Strong Zero. It's kind of like the Japanese Steel Reserve, but it doesn't suck. Apparently, it's actually pretty good. I play a lot of video games in college. I played video games pretty much my whole life. So, yeah. I did. Collage. I don't know if Dave's in school here or not. By the way, he's definitely been a great Dead Rising runner. I look like a TikToker and call the Dices. You know what? I may have been told that before. I may have been told that once or twice. And that, that is accurate. I think I do look like the TikToker known as the Dices. And it is, uh, Gordon Nemo. It is. I don't post enough on TikTok. I just keep getting, I just keep forgetting to post. You know? It happens. All right, let's do the fun part now. Hold on. What floor am I on? I think I may have messed this up a little bit. That's okay if I did. I did, I did. Ever been to Japan? Nope, I just have a lot of uh, Japanese friends who are speedrunning now. Or I'll say friends, it's probably more akin to... I don't know how to word it. I really don't know how to word it. 
You know? Acquaintances? Streaming buddies? I don't know how to word it. I'm sure there's a way. But I don't know how. <clears throat> but I know people who are Japanese. Yeah, Remother sent some Nightcry, and Nightcry is pretty much Clock Tower. Buddies? Yeah, buddies. Dude, absolutely. Like... Oh, come the fuck on. What bad RNG? Desperado, the host. The host. And I beat my mods. I can spell. I can spell. I beat my mods. Fuck yeah. It is fun. You guys know Desperado? Yeah, we're doing a Clock Tower full series marathon today. A lot of Clock Tower games, a lot of time. It's not Clock Tower? Yeah. Hope you're all having a good day, though. Welcome, people from Desperado Stream. I am McDysis. I did a lot of spooky games. If you're into that, you're in the right spot. I was going to rent Crown. I hope that things have been treating you uh, well, Mr. Desperado. Hope Phasmophobia has been treating you well. I heard they're adding, like, a new thing for the anniversary, right? Hey, thank you for the host as well, boss lady. Oh my god, you're gonna see it! Hold on! Best scare ever! Desperado, this is for you. Kill! 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 He's fucking... Oh god, the 90s CRT monitors all saying kill. Kill! It should be a movie? This is based on a movie. It was based on the movie Phenomena originally. This is the sequel. This movie's kind of based on Scream, of all things. Oh yeah, Clock Tower is a fun series that's decently campy as well. There's another fun one. The fax machine does go crazy. Uh, and he can fax you, I'm going to kill you. Uh, funny enough, I actually made that my donation alert. So, uh, for actual dollars, I, that's where I made that one. Also, going to the table. But yeah, he can, he can send you a fax on the fax machine that says, I'm gonna kill ya! And it's fucking hilarious. Like, this is why Nightcry is dead on accurate. But yeah, if you guys know Desperado, by the way, he's an absolutely great dude. Phasmophobia, retro games, and horror games. There we go. Hold on, do I get a show to you? I think I might. Hold on, I think I can. Oh my god, I can fucking do it. <laughs> I'm coming to get ya. Oh no, effects. Uh It's fucking great. Also, I'm kind of sad you don't get a lot of the university. You get a lot more in Helen's route, luckily. Uh, but you don't really get it in Jennifer's because you leave immediately. What's the very horror game other than Clock Tower? Sonal too, easily. Easily Sonal too. Or Dead Rising. Actually, I don't know if Deebs is still around or not. I asked him the question. I don't know if he is still here or not. Streaming action, I think, but I might be streaming stuff. I'll see. All right, there we go. But yeah, this chapter is actually really fucking busy. Funny enough, uh, you have to do a lot for it. Let's see. Oh god, that's fine. Oh yeah, he is still streaming. Oh, so he just like dipped. Oh, okay. All right, that makes more sense. My case. Oh, that didn't break. Nope, we're good. It's already kind of busted anyway. Cool, there we go. Not that bad. You like the movie sound too? No, I didn't see it. 
It happens to the best of us. Alright, I'm gonna put this back over here, by the way, because I don't break my case. Yeah. Alright, then I guess it makes sense. Didn't see it? Yeah, the Silent Hill movies are shit. I don't wanna watch them. I watched the first one, and that was horrible, and I heard horrible things about the second one. First movie's bad. First movie's still bad. I've seen that one. The second movie I hear is much, much worse. There we go. Also, I lose a little bit of time. That's okay. You're wondering why am I losing time? I, uh... Hey, there it is. He told you. I'm going to pay you. <laughs> Thank you, Wonders, for the one dollar. See, I wasn't kidding. I made it so on the facts it did the donation message. By the way, that's fucking crafty, and I'm glad you finally, like... I'm glad you'll actually understand the context for that now, because it's funny. Alright, thank god I didn't get the jump scare. Well, I don't like the first one because they ruined Harry Mason, and Harry Mason's amazing. Nice, Abrix, very nice. Oh yeah, I don't like that they made Harry Mason a woman at all. They ruined his character entirely. And this isn't me being a gamer. This is me saying the reason why they made Harry Mason a woman is because they believe that a dad can't love their children. So it wouldn't make sense to have Harry Mason be a guy. So they made him a mom instead because only a mother can love their children. And it didn't make sense for Harry Mason to go through that journey. So that's why I don't like it. I don't know. Maybe. I, I don't know what you, people are into it. I really don't know what to tell you. No, Harry Mason was a guy. Only a woman can be a good dad, exactly. According to the director of Silent Hill 1, the movie. There we go. Right? I can't believe it, anymore. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Who would have guessed? You're telling me that Harry Mason isn't Chris Redfield? See, if you're not, like, if you're not just Redfield, clearly you, you, you can't be a guy. That's what happens. That's why Harry Mason had to be changed. Are you gonna get food, Darth Vader? I can't even imagine the hat today. I'm like, my stomach's been fucking killing me. If I got the hat today, I'd be fucking dead. Well, that's we're skipping most of the events. Like we're not reading, anything. we're not reading it. So like, I have fast disk speed on. Uh, it's in Japanese. It is way faster. We have for dinner. That's actually nice. It's like a uh, steak. He did, didn't he? Steak and potatoes mainly. Oh, the fries are not awesome. I just, you know, the my fucking body. You love the new follower. Yeah, I had to change it because we kept getting the... I, I'm tired of seeing the word racial slur on the follow alert, and I figured it was enough time. And if they want to pop on the screen, they can pay me five bucks. That's what I'm, I'm thinking. They can pay me the five dollars to pop them on the screen. Thanks for the money, chump. Yeah. Man, for sure. Yeah, some of that. It's good. Uh, I don't want the Elvis sandwich. My body would die right now. Again, I don't want my body to die. I've been eating a lot over the weekend. Today, I'm just going to eat dinner and then, like, nothing else, really. Also, police. Because we're going to the police station. You know, the Fool's Gold Loaf is 8,000 calories. It's an 8,000 calorie sandwich. I do not want to eat the 8,000 calorie sandwich. Thank you very much. I feel like I, you know, I, I would not be in uh, good shape if that happened to me. Not sure, Havrix. We had a few pop in today. We're need for money? No. Because I don't have. I would have to make my own. Also, the amount of money I even mentioned, wouldn't even, you wouldn't even pay it. So no. I have to make it on my own. I mean, I have to make all the ingredients. I mean, the labor is gonna be intensive. The sandwich alone is like two hundred bucks just to buy it, and you can only buy it in Colorado. No, there's no feasible way I can do that, even even, even hypothetically. Also, I don't eat bacon. That's the most important part. Right, but people still do it though, Devastator. Yeah, it's a two hundred dollars sandwich. It's eight thousand calories. 
And exactly by my kitty. Uh, it's a very big sandwich. It's like a pound of pe uh, a jar of peanut butter, a jar of jelly, and a pound of bacon. So, um, I do not want to eat that much food. How can we trust me? I'm very transparent about me not eating bacon. I would want an eighth of one. I mean, it sounds really gross in that. Apparently it's good, Ferris, but I wouldn't want to eat myself. I'm not really a bacon kind of guy. If you're wondering, by the way, like, you know, I'm not opposed to eating bacon. I just... What's the word? Well, thank you, uh, Takesh Mode. I mean, obviously, you know, my GDQ presence is fine, but I, I like to be a lot more professional there. Uh, my general presence is way more blunt, yeah. <laughs> also, here's Barry Burden again, if you don't know this guy. Yeah, I don't really, I don't eat bacon, though. Uh, I think it's meme food. I, you know, if you enjoy it, more power to you. But even if you eat pork, like, there's better versions of pork out there that you can eat. That's my opinion. That's my firm opinion on that one. I mean, even then, I just think there's better meats. That's a good way of putting it down there. I think it's a meat garnish. A pound of it's fucking uh, terrible. I can't imagine eating a whole pound of just bacon. That sounds hor- even, even with turkey bacon, that sounds awful. I feel like you end up eating a pound of bacon. You don't willingly want to eat a pound of bacon. Ah, perfect. What's the most exotic meat I've tried? Probably frog. I guess it really depends on what you mean by exotic. Because I've tried a lot of meat, but for the weirdest one, probably frog. I know I don't know a lot of people be eating frog legs. Because they just don't want to try it. Like, I've tried, like, octopus. I've eaten squid. Oh, yeah, I've had a balut. Probably balut. Uh, fertilized duck fetus. That. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I guess it's Balut, yeah. Balut, Balut. No snake or alligator? Nope. I don't live anywhere that I can get those. Yep, frog is bendy chicken. That's what it is. It bends more, but it's just chicken. When I ordered it too, the frog, uh, not the frog. The chef actually came, like, to my table. Was, like, he was looking at me, like, really eager to see what I was thinking about. Like, it's funny, because like, it's good, man. It's fucking good. But no, like, he's out like, it's good. Yeah, frog's good. It's literally just chicken. Also, a gun does not work on the scissor man. Fun fact from the last game, by the way. Now you can tell who this scissor man is, because one scissor man's weak to bullets and the other isn't. So you can guess who this one is. How do you eat the balut thing? Uh, I don't actually know properly. When I ate the loot, I ate the wrong end of it, and then I got laughed at. And then I guess you eat it from like the bottom, it's kind of like a soup and you bite into it. Honestly, it tasted like a better hard-boiled egg. However, my body did not want to swallow it at all. Like, my, my body almost forcibly threw it off, and I've never had that. Uh, it wasn't bad, I just, it's weird because I don't have a lot of food I can't keep down. And that was the real first time my body physically wanted to reject food. It's really weird describing that, too, because a lot of people like to bitch and moan about food. Like, oh, this is awful, I can't eat it, when really it's not that bad. On my own, though, I had an actual time where my body wanted to refuse food. And it was like, it tastes fine, but why? What type of restaurant did you loot? It was a Asian night market that happened in Los Angeles. Oh, shit. Cartoons are back. Also, just to make you laugh... Oh, I can't pause the game. Oh. Well, I tried. I was gonna show him bouncing, because it's funny, but no. By the way, if you're wondering why is this Scissor Man watching cartoons, think about who the Scissor Man are, and think why this one might be watching cartoons. He is Iglopop. He is. Asian as in Filipino? Well, I mean, that falls under the general umbrella, but, you know, like, Los Angeles has a lot of different, um, you know, Asian populations. So, oh, wait, I can just do this. I have to leave the room anyway. So what happens is there's a night market where they have a lot of different stands. You know, there's uh, Japanese uh, sellers, um, a lot of local businesses, um, and just a lot of different cuisines. So uh, the place I did sell was a Filipino um, storefront. But the whole idea of the night market is to kind of celebrate the local neighborhood. Which generally happens in a lot of uh, Asian neighborhoods. There we go. 
The sheet's pretty deadly. So that's how I tried it. And you'd be correct. Yeah, uh, Balut is Filipino. Oh, no, it is. But, like, the whole thing, though, is it's actually accurate for this. Because the it is the 626 Night Market. Yeah. And the 626 Night Market, like, it's a lot of difference. It's, like, you know, it's pretty much a bunch of different Asian cultures around that region. Because it's from all the local shops. So, you end up having Filipino storefronts, Japanese storefronts. Uh, you know, Chinese storefronts, you're, you're going to get a Korean, uh, you end up getting a lot of different areas that, that work, uh, sell that. I've had Balut, it's not terrible. It just, hard, hard to swallow, I think, is my perspective. I've had durian, I've had dur, uh, kind of, uh, it tastes like gasoline to me when I've tried it. Filipino food is good. And I regret it, because I can no longer eat Filipino spaghetti. I had it when I was in high school, but I stopped eating pork in the year of 2017. So I cannot eat Filipino spaghetti anymore. Nope, I love cilantro. I slap that shit on fucking everything. Not everything, everything, but... I like it. Tripe? I've never tried tripe. I've had intestine, but not tripe. Why I stopped eating pork? Personal reasons. I like pigs. That's it. I don't really care if you do it. This is also why I say bacon's a meme food. Whenever I tell people I don't eat pork, it's always, Oh, but what about bacon? Dude, bacon's ass. Bacon fucking sucks. You know what I miss? Chorizo. Pastor. Hell, even fucking just general sausage is better. Like, clock... Like, not clock tower. I maybe read that one, James Moore. Bacon's not the food I miss from pork. Hell, pepperoni is more universal. Have you ever tried ordering a non-pork-based pizza? It's fucking hard with people. I want pepperoni. I can't have pepperoni. I'm just gonna get plain cheese, dude. It's cool with me. Oh, wait. Wrong room. Yeah, bacon is a meme food. I don't know if you have the, sta the statue. We're good. Also, just in case... Ooh. Turkey, yeah, turkey, like turkey based uh, meats are spawn. Oh. Yeah, cheese, margarita, that's what I'm about for pizza. I mean,. Why would it only be Muslim? You know Jews can't eat pork, right? Traditionally, they cannot eat pork. Someone in chat's going tell me, but, but blank... No, no. Traditionally, they cannot eat pork. There are some subgroups or some people who, you know, who do it, but... Most Jewish people will not be eating pork. Only if they keep kosher. Most pork will not be kosher. Kosher. If anything, they'll probably be subgroups. I met maybe one Jewish person who said they ate pork. I remember my boss was uh, really into the culture, and he pretty much explained a lot of the thing to me. Yeah, it wouldn't only be Muslim, though. Oh, well, yeah, but that's kind of all going to the whole thing of that one. Which is, to, I guess, to a different level of that. Veal? The only thing I know about veal is the fucking... Uh, Eat veal. <laughs> From the crow. Well, right, but I'm just saying, in most cases, with that blend of culture, they're not going to be eating a lot of pork. I just said there could be examples where people might, but I, I literally explained it before saying it. I literally explained it. This is the exact thing I just explained. There may be subgroups that don't, but the overwhelming majority will, you know, they're not going to really be eating pork. I'm sure you can find kosher variants, but in most cases, if you go, like, let's say if you go to a Jewish deli, you might be a bit hard-pressed to find pork. Correct. Also, in terms of uh, the actual, you know, racial background of Jewish people, I think there's generally two types, which I don't remember both of them, but one's Ashkenazi and the other's something else entirely. I don't even fucking remember. And that's the racial background. That's usually applied since, you know, the conversation is also about Muslim, you know, Muslims not being able to eat pork. It would go back to that example of religion. 
So you know what I'm talking about. I don't hear the semantics. You get the point is what I'm making. You get the point. <laughs> Right, but in the context of the sentence we're saying, it's a very obvious point we're making. And you want more points? Well, you got what it, that works. Isn't arguing fun? It's not even an argument at this point. What I like to try for food? I don't even know at this point. I'm pretty content with all my things. Usually, you're just like, well, that sounds neat. Sure, why not? Also, the whole reason... How's it going, Naramal? Hope you had a good stream. Hope you had a good one. Hope you had a fun time. Let's actually even talk about why they don't eat, they don't eat pork. Hell, a lot of the rules in the Old Testament were specifically just so people wouldn't die of fucking diseases. Keeping things like shellfish and pork back in the day wasn't really easy. It tended to make a lot of people sick. So they wrote it down in the Old Testament saying, Yeah, uh, maybe we don't do that. As a way of telling people not to eat food that's not well to keep. Because they didn't have the luxury of modern refrigeration. That's also why you can't eat meat and cheese together. You can't eat shellfish. It was generally people were eating these things. And the reality is a lot more complex than this. I mean, that's pretty much why they did that. A lot of the Old Testament stuff was literally just ways to live by. So people wouldn't be having too many issues. My source for all this is my Jewish boss. All right, that's not to Nolan. I did. Exactly, most of the laws are very practical things. All of scholarly, right, but this is literally just the basics of it. This is a basic conversation. Right, and I've actually studied this shit. I have actually studied this shit. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, I actually do know a thing or two about this. And the point I'm making is a very specific point, and a generalization. As I when I mentioned certain things of law. Like, this is how this exactly was panned out and worked. Like, that's the law, that's the food rules. The food rules are straight up just practicality. I tried Rocky Mountain Oysters. If you didn't tell me about, uh, what they were ahead of time, yes. Exactly, we're not trying to get in the weeds. I'm simply just mentioning I don't eat pork. And also, it would not only be Muslims who don't eat pork. There are plenty of Jewish people who do not eat pork as well. Notice I said the word plenty and not all. Specifically, I said plenty. Key word. Plenty. What does the word plenty mean? Several. A large or sufficient amount of quantity. Which should be correct. Kosher pepperoni does exist, but it's a pain in the ass to get it. Eating chicken raw gives you salmonella. Oh god, chicken's fucking horrifying for that one. I don't like the idea of raw chicken. That's become a trend, and I'm not a fan of that one. Why is chicken kosher? Kosher is the preparation specifically. It's not just eating chicken. Hell, no one's gonna tell you to eat raw fucking chicken. That's stupid. Kosher is a very specific type of uh, preparation and butchery. Hell, a good example I mentioned earlier. Do you know cheese and meat together isn't kosher? If you have kosher eating, you can't eat meat and cheese. I know you're doing the semantics right now to try to argue this, but that's not the point I'm making. I'm making a general point where you're getting into the very specific annals of this conversation. I'm not getting into the specific annals. And does not make it fun when merely I'm saying I don't want to eat pork. Anyway. Wait, we're not salmon? Also, now I hope to God I know where the fuck I'm going. What's the risk combining meat and cheese? I think it was mainly, uh, cheese was hard to keep back in the day. I don't actually know the specific one, believe it or not. I went to the floor, it broke. Hold on. Ah! Oh my god, please, thank you. Any meat and dairy combo? Yeah. There we go, thank god. Anyway, enough of that rant. The general idea is I don't eat I don't eat pork. Wait, can I not check this out? 
Oh, why the fuck can't I check that out yet? Oh, God, I hate this game sometimes. I'll do it later. No, we're not going to talk about boobs. We are changing the conversation. All right. God, where do I go is always... Helen's route's pain in the ass. Yeah, I don't eat pork, though. I don't, I don't I, you know. I don't want to eat pork. That's it. It's a very personal choice. I don't care if you eat pork. That's my whole point, too. Like, I, that, that seems to be missed on a lot of people's radars. Like, I, I'll mention sometimes that I don't eat pork, and then people will get really pissy, and I'm like, I, I don't care if you do it. I just don't do it myself. I think that's fine. He has a gothic mansion. It's cool. It's a very cool mansion, too. You don't really like pork? Oh, you might decide to eat pork. I realized I didn't really I didn't, I didn't eat pork all that much. It was something I could pretty easily give up, and I wanted to give up. Also, you're wondering specifically why. I don't like the way pigs are treated in comparison to other animals. They kind of got the shit end of the stick. And technically, I should become full vegan at that point, or full vegetarian at that point. But... I <gasps> exactly said why. That was my main reasoning. I thought pigs got the shit under the stick on the butchering. No idea. That's a Twitch problem. I'm not entirely sure why. Twitch is dumb. Let's go with that one. Take it easy, Gert. Have the rest of the day. Alright, there we go. Get an item from that, right? Just go Chick fil A. What'll happen? No, that's fine at that point. I don't know much about that. Alright, I killed the hand. I don't remember how to kill the hand. I thought there was an item I needed. Yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah. It does come up uh, decently. All right, I guess I got what I needed. I don't even remember. I thought I thought it was like a paper. Yeah, sleep well. Ha ha ha, I get it. Hand. Are there any plants I want to eat? I, I don't know. I don't think about plants. I guess plants that would kill me? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I'm not thinking about plants. <laughs> what kind of plants are you hunting down? I don't know, man. They're plants. <laughs> I, I'm not going to eat poison ivy. That's a plant. <laughs> like, I know you mean well. I just... I I don't know. All, there's a lot of plants out there, man. <laughs> there's a lot of plants. <laughs> and uh, a lot of them are deadly, actually. <laughs> So I, I, I'm down with edible plants, but uh, not inedible plants, or plants that are likely to kill me. You know? Plants are people. No, plants are not people. They're plants. Yeah, I don't want to eat dead plants. I don't want to eat death plants. I ate a durian? I think I've tried durian. It tastes like gasoline. By the way, I love the take of, I'm not a vegetarian because I love animals, but because I hate plants. <laughs> How does it go, Young Stylish? Have I had okra? I have. I managed to get past the smell. I think they're in a wafer form. They still taste like gasoline, though. Surprisingly, it's rather hard to get durian in the U.S., It's Tim! I tasted gasoline? No, but I can smell gasoline and I can, uh, you know, assume how it tastes. Have you never huffed gasoline? Have you never been to a gas station? Have you never pumped your own gas? Believe it or not, your nose is a strong sense. Come on, I listen to Primus. How the fuck do you think I know what gasoline tastes like? <laughs> uh. Exactly! Huffing on cans of gasoline. Ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba exactly. Exactly, Mike Mega. Ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. It has been. I said I play bass. Come on. Exactly, Crimson Decoded. So there you go. That's how Dorian tastes. Tastes like gasoline. 
See, that's why I don't ever say some, you know, things taste like shit. I don't eat shit. Nor am I trying to heavily whiff it. Also, it's just a poor description in general. I guess saying, like, ass is fine, but with the current trend of eating ass, I don't know. Actually, I don't even know that's still a trend. There you go, DeGroff. Perfect. Exactly assisted. Okay, but make sure you come back out. All right, she waits. I hope I did that right. But yeah, by the way, Chad, just to kind of exemplify some of the points I'm talking about. So when I worked at my old job, um, my boss was like heavily, heavily Jewish. Um, like he, you know, went to church all the time, uh, took all the holidays, uh, practiced everything. Um, he was really into the, uh, the culture. I don't know if into the culture is the appropriate term of phrase, but he definitely, uh, you know, he, he did a lot of the practices and such. As well, I'm the guy who likes to ask a lot of questions whenever I'm curious about things. Devout? Yeah, there Devout. He was a very devout man. He spoke Hebrew, too. By the way, I can fuck this up with an accent. I'm not careful, so let's do this. Orthodox? I don't know which I don't know which type, but I know he spoke uh, Hebrew. And I, like I know he had, he had like a kid too, and like he was like sending his kid to like a. How long ago was this? Uh, back when I worked at my job in like the past few years. Because I went full time streaming recently, so I'm a full time streamer, Chad. Right now, if you're wondering how does Ictisis pay his bills through support of viewers like you. He spoke Yiddish or he spoke Aramaic? I have I have no idea. I'm not really that keen on the language. I just understand he was able to converse with uh I'm guessing Yiddish. Thank you for the one bit. Wait, yeah, I like to ask questions though. I, I I'm very curious on this thing on these things. I always try to make sure that when I ask questions I word it politely too. Like I'm wondering like it's like, oh hey, uh why blank? And I try I try to make it as polite as I can with that. Because sometimes I am genuinely curious. And I try to do that in many cultures I don't understand. The best way to learn something is to ask. Surprisingly enough. But there's a difference between being rude and asking and, like, other things, too. That's the major difference. You know? Alright, I get the batteries. I did get the batteries. Yep. Exactly. How you phrase things. Here's a good example of a very common question we get in this community. Ecdysis, are you trans? Versus, are you a woman? There's a difference there. Also, how it's worded. Or, how is, what are your pronouns? Some people are really polite about it. Some people are really judgmental about it immediately. If you're wondering, I'm, I'm not trans. I'm just a cis dude. No, so she doesn't end up in the box in this scenario. Jennifer's the one we have to save this time. Someone asked me that? Oh, I get that question very often. Uh, some people immediately can tell that I'm a dude. Other people are kind of mixed. I have no idea what the presentation I give off is. I'm guessing I... Lesbian why not? That's the frequent comment I got. This is the best clock tower? No, we did that one earlier. It was SNES. 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 I have long hair? Nope, I actually got more comments when I had short hair. Believe it or not, me having longer hair was actually a great uh, development for this. Wait, do I not do this from this side? No, I guess I don't. Mind to throw you off? Wow, you're trying to look at my Adam's apple right here? Bop, bop, bop. Sorry, my Adam's apple hangs right beneath my chin. That's how it goes, see? It's hiding. It's hiding. Oh, I'm kind of wondering, how the fuck do you, like, how do you, how do you get it? Wait, do, do, diff, do Adam's apples lie in different areas? Like, not no cap? There we go. What flag do I have behind me? French, actually. 
Oh, right, I need the key. I know where I'm going. Like, hold on, I'm actually really curious about that, because, like, oh, I identify using the neck. It's like, wait. Like, I can see mine, but, like, with the way my, like... Yeah. Really, I didn't know it could even be different. No, I'm not trans. No, I'm not trans by any degree. I'm just a cis dude. Believe it or not, by the way, the more I hear the comment, the more I realized I have a neat opportunity to help defend trans people. So that's also why that subject does come up sometimes. I don't mind it. Like I actually like I really don't mind being called trans. Uh, I, I can immediately just kind of ban people or tell them to piss off, or I can ask them, "Oh, wait, you trying to fuck me?" That's usually my favorite answer to go with. At that point, why, why do they care about what's in my what's in my pants, right? Why would you care? It's the real question here. And then they say yes, and like, well, I can do better. See, you always have to come back. Anyway, for, oh, hold on. Uh, in the fire. Good. Good, 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 good. There's a lot of shit I gotta do. But yeah, uh, sometimes it comes up. All those are an Adam's apple. Well, I do have an Adam's apple. They're just underneath my chin, I guess. I just, you know, like, see? Boop. Oh, thank you, assistant. Perfect, yeah. perfect. I get you. I get you. I suppose. But yeah. Personally, my end as well, I'm very much keen on the play the hand you're dealt. Um, it's kind of funny because with a lot of the stuff that happens on Twitch and a lot of the various backgrounds, I can kind of mention... Um, I know a lot of what people go through and you wouldn't expect it looking at me But I've had a lot of different areas on Twitch that I kind of been through to some degree and many different like forms of uh, What discrimination? Anyway, uh, the answer this time is actually based on noise. So wet bad dry good Wet Good question, Bump Queen. I don't know. So yeah, surprisingly enough, I'm pretty accepting of trans people because I get I get called trans plenty. That's good. The first one was very, very much so. And you know, like, I think you should be accepting people in general, but there's definitely a personal relation you can kind of give to that, or personal, uh, what what's the word? Empathizing. It's a pretty nice empathizing. It's like, yeah, I know what it's quite like. You shouldn't be treating people like shit, but I especially know you shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, some people are fucking mean. There's no point in being mean. People are just trying their best out there. Be kind. That's one of my major rules. You gotta be kind out there. I just jealous of my presence. Well, some people I think are actually. It's kind of weird. Presence. But what if it was presents? Like you know, gifts. Also, normal. I forgot to ask. But what are you doing today? Oh, it's really easy to be kind. There's a lot of ways to be kind too. Uh, it's kind of surprising. I'm not saying all you need is love. I'm just saying be kind. Give people the base amount of human decency or respect. You know, if they're an asshole later, fuck them. But, uh, yeah, I got one. basic you know, decency I give to most people. I assume most people are probably going to be fine. It's funny, too, because some people take the don't be a pushover as a don't be nice to anybody, but no, it's, you know, with most people, they give a base amount of decency. If they, oh, fuck, I'm lagging. It's fixing itself, yay! No, it's lagging again, no! Why is my internet going down? I think nothing's happening right now, right? Tells my thoughts on this game. It's lagging. Lag. My sound robotic. It's because my I'm dropping frames again. Why am I dropping frames? Fuck you, AT and T. I mean, no, you're fine. Don't ruin my internet again. Looks fine to you. I'm glad. Well, I see it hemorrhaging frame. Yeah, it's choppy. I bet it is. It's AT and T though. My internet's working fine. And just my upload. Maybe I pause the game. By the way, it's not really doing anything right now, so it's all good. 
See, I learned this from Mr. Enigma. If you don't move, it's all good, chat. So before we continue the run, let's wait for it to settle. We have plenty of time to save. It's okay. What do you want to talk about? Right, but we have different internets and we're literally across the continent from each other. But what are the odds, huh? What are the odds? Anyway, once we're back on at least orange, I'm going to be going. Uh, we'll continue. Right now, uh, let's talk about our feelings, chat. How are you feeling today? Hopefully good. I'm not even downloading anything is the sad part. I don't know who's downloading shit. I don't think anybody's downloading anything. They're just they're fucking with me. Boo, AT&T, boo. All right, chat, while I'm waiting, let's check my Instagram. Here, you can check me out there. 20% remaining, oh fuck, that's bad. I need for a Halloween costume? Hell yeah, I do. I've actually already bought all the supplies. I'm waiting to, waiting for Halloween to pass by. Also, while we're waiting, I'm gonna plug in my, uh, my phone. Because it's on 20% right now, I'm gonna need it live for later. And you are still dropping for dealing fleas? How did you get fleas? I hope you're okay. That sounds horrible. Watching all drawing? Drawing's fun to me. I do like drawing. Oh, you're booting up Dead Rising 3, right? Seconds to follow me? Yep, checked earlier. They are. Also, this is a we have to wait patiently thing. It's not a restart the router, and it's also not another issue. The reason I know that is because I can still open plenty of other web pages, albeit a bit slowly. Yeah, I'm wearing my Haunted Ground shirt today. It's a nice one. I've dropped a lot of frames today, and AT&T... You know what? Can AT&T, like, pay me for this shit? I'm gonna fuck with my internet. Can I, can I get, like, free days? Now comes the lag wave? Yeah, we're still on a lag wave. That was gonna be bad. So we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. Also, I don't local record, so... Am I Steam doing any... I'm not even logged into Steam yet. <laughs> That's how I know. I'm not logged into anything. I have Discord, OBS. Believe me, I, check, I I always think about Steam, like, how about Steam? Oh, there we go, we're back in business. Back in business, chat, let's go. Yep, it was just a wave. I have no idea what was it. What time is it here? It's like midnight. There we go. Back in business, chat, my internet fixed itself. Thank you, internet, very cool. Yeah, at and was fucking up today. It happened at the beginning of the stream, too. You make a fuss? Yeah, I might make a fuss. I don't know, let's see. Like, there's been a non-zero amount of days where they've been fucking me here. They're fucking me, chat. at and does not get to do that. Alright, good. Alright, I have a gun, I have a key, I have a lot of the shit here. Cool. So, I actually make a save here, because Helen's route can get a bit dicey if I'm not careful. So, what we're gonna do... ...is this. No, this is actually a different one in the UK. This is British. There we go. Alright. By the way, I hope you're ready for... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Chat, I'm gonna turn on Buyo Buyo again because I have to. Oh, wait, no! Oh, I can't do it. They didn't, Wonders. They didn't. I can't. Oh, I tried. It's fine. It's just funny to watch uh, Helen shoot with the uh, with Buyo Buyo on because she's bouncing the whole time. And it's really dramatic while she's just... There we go. Soul for geomagnetism. Oh, well, it normally works fine. So. Ask 18 polite questions, they can definitely reimburse me. Oh, cool, I might actually do that. I might do that on the, uh, fucking, I don't know, Monday? In the morning? I have a hard week coming up, chat. I'm busy this week. Uh, because, like, I'm planning my reload the save. I could, but there's another gunfight later we can do. So we'll do it there. 
All right, time to find out who the Scissor Man is. Chat, who is the secret Scissor Man? Is it Harris? No, we actually met Harris. Who is the secret Scissor Man? It's... A mask. It's blood. It's... Barden. <gasps> oh, they're fun with fastest speed. So in this, in this, in Helen's scenario, it's actually Barden, because Harris and Helen don't really have a connection. They don't have anything, like, that relate to each other. And this one is all about Barden, because Barden is both a mentor and a former lover of Helen. Former lover's putting it kindly. I think it was like... You know how boss kind of, uh... You know. You want to be involved in the case from the start? Did you not? Yeah, it's it's, it's a rough story, let's say that. No, Scissor Man can bounce if it turn on Buyo Buyo, yes, he can. I wonder why it's so specific. I'm wondering that I don't think anyone's downloading anything. It's fucking 1 a.m. I'm going to be downloading things. Weird. Weird. Anyway, what was I talking about before all my shit died? I don't even remember. Before I complained about AT&T. Let me go back. Oh, yeah. So, that's... I, I'm kind. I like to be kind to people. I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. I don't like to really, you know, judge based on any pre-existing characteristics as much. Now, I'm not going to be a fool. I'm not going to, like, again, I, you know... I'm not going to trust everyone with open hands very easily. But, you know... I don't assume the worst of people immediately. But also, I'm not naive. Let's just, let's say that, like, if I'm going down to Venice Beach, I'm, I'm not going to, like, have roommates. I live with family right now. I did have roommates in college. Uh, originally, I, actually, it's kind of a weird situation. Either way, it's pretty legit. I'll just say that much. Also, I'm in the family that's, you know, rather well-knit. Any kind of them hurts anyone? Yeah. Like, a good example I'll probably mention to people is if you go to Venice Beach, probably watch your pockets. There's a lot of people there who might want to pickpocket you because Venice Beach is a very happening spot. Like, that, that's just a good example right there of, like, being in L.A., so if I'm in Venice Beach, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna, like, rub up against every single person I see there. Uh, I'm probably gonna watch out. Wait, can that happen to the Louvre, really? Good to know. I went to the Louvre once. I try not to rub up against anybody. Oh, yeah, just really any tourist destination. Like, if you're a tourist going anywhere, fucking watch out. I'm not gonna, like, you know, yeah, any major city. I think any major city anywhere, really. Don't just deal with scissors in the hands. Yeah, there, there's a lot of con artists, thieves and such, like, it happens, and, you know, there's a lot of stuff like that. So, like, if you're in Venice Beach, I'm not gonna, like... Yeah. I went to Europe, I wasn't just, you know... Oh, you're you're selling me a rose? Wait, I have to buy for $50 the rose? Oh, no. Alright, we got everything we need. Oof. So there's no sense in being naive and being kind. That's the difference. There we go. I went to the Louvre, though. I should really like the Louvre when I went there. That was a nice spot. Now it's going to be on mix. Hope you're doing good. Oh, is that the smile emo? Yeah, more on, more than others. Well, I mean, when I went, I went to Berlin, I went to Paris, and I went to Stockholm. Oh, I want to say about Berlin right now, dude. I thought like for fucking Berlin, I was like, holy fuck, this place looks awful. And then actually being there, I was like, wait, this place is great. And then I realized the graffiti was all historic, and I was like, oh shit, this is cool. You know, <laughs> it's a fucking trip. And then Paris literally just reminded me of Los Angeles. Like, that's it. It's just downtown LA with the Eiffel Tower. Stockholm was great. I love Stockholm. One of the favorite place? Honestly, I want to go with Stockholm a little bit because I really like Stockholm. Pretty much wondrous. How's it going, Katrina? Hope you're doing good. 
Well, not Berlin was great. I liked being there. That was a fun place. I enjoyed my time there. What about it? What's Stockholm? I like Stockholm. Neat place, neat weather, neat people. Are the people rude? Know where I went. People in Berlin are nice, people in Stockholm are nice, people in Paris are surprisingly nice. Might have bad times. That's good, pretty damn great. Oh, I forgot to turn on Booyo Booyo for this. Eh, not the end of the world. I've already done it earlier. And, boom! We did it. Yeah, scanning is nice. Alright, it's time for the greatest cutscene in all of gaming. The world's greatest gunshot. You only get one. I just love how dramatic it is. What's next on my bucket list? I don't really have a bucket list. I sort of just do things because someone says, Hey, let's be playing. I'm like, sure. Look at him go! There he is! Guns out! I don't know what I need to buy. I, I guess different scripts. Look how long he's aiming. I mean, he had to get the perfect shot. I get it. That was that hole. Uh, the portal to hell, I guess. They don't really explain it. Don't upset yourself, Miss Maxwell. It looks like we're probably too late anyway. Hmm. I'm telling you, Jennifer's alive. Hey, exactly. Also, Helen's route's cooler because you don't get the weird thing of Jennifer kissing Nolan. The ending makes sense. What do you mean? You find Jennifer. Jennifer's the daughter of Helen, although they're more like sisters. Because Helen's 30 and she's like 15, but... They love each other. It's sweet. I mean, the story is presented makes perfect sense to me. Like, I get it. I can explain it if need be. But, uh... Yeah, it makes plenty of sense on my end. Anyway, really quick, while I'm playing out the credits here, like I mentioned, credits have to come up. Why do they come up? Because, uh, well, I can't skip these, and I need to get the thing here. So, what's next is... I don't know why I have to stand up for those, right behind me. Mr. Ghost Head. Clock Tower Ghost Head. Oh, well, you learn from, like, alright, so you learn that with the Barrows family there was a traitor and that, you know, you can send him to the portal to hell or something like that, and that's how you stop the Scissor Man. So, you learn using the power of Latin and shit. It's a cursed family, that's really all that needs to be understood. Clock Tower Ghost Ted. What about Clock Tower Ghost Ted? Anyway, Clock Tower PS1 went really well so far. Um, while we're gearing up for the next one, uh, I'm a bit worried about Clock Tower 2 The Struggle Within. Uh, hopefully that won't be too bad. It's, it's, alright. A lot of games did this Iglo Pop, and it's not exclusive to this one. Clock Tower Ghost Head, actually it's weird. So in the Japanese version, it takes place in Japan. In the United States version, Clock Tower 2 The Struggle Within takes place in California. The same California that Phoenix Wright takes place in. Eat your hamburgers, Apollo. Eat your hamburgers. A lot of games will call places California when really it's just totally Japan. And a lot of games will pick random cities and go like, oh yeah, it's totally this place. Also, Mr. Kabi, thank you for the tier one for 17 months. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors. Oh, thank you, I hope you're doing good. Also, I'm saying Ghost Head because I'm stupid. It's Ghost Head. Ghost Ted. But it's funny, it sounds like Ghost Ted. 
Yeah, we just finished both campaigns on uh, Clock Tower PS1. Uh, we are going to Ghost Head. Uh, I'm getting my guide up for that, by the way, because Chapter 3 in that game fucking sucks. Phantasmal Theodore. Anyway, if I upload this to YouTube, I'm taking a moment to say, if you uh, are watching this on YouTube, let's say I uploaded there, hypothetically, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I post things there. I post a picture of my base, chat. You can look at my base. How many likes did it get? It has 116 likes. People like my base. Clock Tower really came into its own with Ghost Tad. Base reveal? Yeah, you can look at it on uh, Instagram. Here, check it out. The second one. Like the instrument. Also, what if I showed you Froggy Chair? Any fair point of the game's clock tower? <laughs> there you go! Clock tower. Honestly, though, if you don't count that, I have no mouth and I must scream. Is the other one. By the way, it looks at me 14 minutes ahead. Clock tower should be an FPS? No, it shouldn't. There's no guns. There's barely any guns. Well, the next one gets guns, but that's not very good. Trust me, you wouldn't want that. You would not want that one. Froggy chair? Hell yeah. Oh shit, I just realized something by the way. Hold on, hold on. I, I just realized with all the lag, there might be a delay now. Like a slight delay uh, more than usual. I was like, wait, why are people just talking about froggy chair? It's not like chat's a little bit quicker. I'm like, oh yeah. Some people aren't gonna have the same uh, time system right now because uh, my net was fucking up. Maybe it's just my man. Maybe it's just the delay then. Eh, it should be all fine. Either way, we're almost done. Also, just prove my point. Can't skip it. You can start skipping when it comes to here, though, I think. That's the end. Alright, let's see. We have all seven ending A. Alrighty, so now what? Now. Sony Computer Entertainment. A clock tower escape room would make sense, but I can't imagine licensing is the issue with most escape rooms. Yeah, Kuon's a pricey game. Pricey, pricey, pricey game. Beatrice, Bobby, who we got? Uh, Bobby. Bobby can't really die, Bates can die. I heard that until I got my copies of the game. Alright. Good? And let's throw you back. Alrighty. Time for the next game, chat. Let me swap over the Twitch title. So now I can finally do that. Alright, hold on. Are you ready for banger alert? Are you ready for the banger alert, chat? Are you ready? Because there's a banger on the horizon. I want to see some bone zones with this. If you don't know what the emote looks like. It's like this. Bone zone. 
Just like that. Look at him dance. You'll see him come in a moment. You'll see what I'm talking about. Never heard of Hell Knight. No, this is a spinoff. That has no relation to the series. It just lose the name because money. I love the Skeleton Man so much. There we go. Bonnie's ready, I'm glad. There we go. It has one relation. That's the demon idol. That's it. But I'm not kidding when I say it. It's fucking great music. Alright, now we're officially in the bad games. Let's go, baby. You really like this one? Me too, but this game's still shit. I love the game, though, but I can't deny that it's bad. What do I mean, bad games? Well, this game is actively awful. Like, at the very least, with Clock Tower PS1, you know, like, it does have its issues, but overall, the game is rather solid. With this game, you kind of hit the area where the games are actually kind of bad. This game's confusing. People generally don't know how to play it. There's so many endings. They kind of really went into the idea that, oh, people like the Clock Tower endings, right? Uh, that's not the point. Uh, it's not so much on the idea that people want more endings. People want more content. Content doesn't mean you add 13 endings. Also... Oh, it's in Japanese, right? It's not a human torso. That's right. Is it so bad it's good? Uh, a lot of people have warm memories of this game, but I'm not going to uh, sit here and tell you this game's good. Uh, this game has a lot of flaws, and I know what those flaws are very well. Well, no, I mean, I can enjoy a game that has passion in it. Like, a lot of games have a lot of energy and passion put into it, and I'm not going to hate a game because um, they wanted to have that, you know? Also, be doing good, Mr. Maxi. May I have to look into Hell Knight. I've never heard of it myself. Like, a lot of games have a lot of effort. It just, you know, around the product of their era, they do run into some issues. Uh, you can get soft-locked in this one if you uh, do anything slightly wrong. Anything. Also, this game is quite actually a JoJo reference. If you're wondering what's Bates, uh, our show in the Japanese version, uh, Bates is uh, Alyssa's JoJo stan. She gets purple energy around her and she gets the power to be mean to people. And use guns. Yep. And also, like, there's just a lot of, this game requires a guide. I mean, it doesn't require one. But you'd be wise to use one. You know? What are you supposed to be doing here at the start? I'm doing a lot of little things. You kind of explore the house, look around the bodies and shit. And um, you kind of came home and you're not sure what your, fam what your family's been doing. Your Uncle Phil and stuff like that. So you're trying to figure that out. Luckily for us, this game is actually really good as a speedrun moon brick because I can skip all the dialogue and the cutscenes. I'm not required to look at that. It's not pee, it's yellow blood. You're looking at corpses that are bleeding yellow. The plot of this game is stupid, so I wouldn't really pin, um, you know, account for too much on this. By the way, here's how you prevent. Uh, here's the chapter one thing you have to do talk to the statue. If you don't talk to the statue, you die in chapter three. You just die. Also, if anyone wants a fun reference, let me show you. She says this isn't a game, but it is a game.
I'm not gonna be too worried about the voice acting though, just because, uh, you know, we're just gonna get a good speed run this done. It's much faster in Japanese, by almost every margin. Alright, there we go, good shit there. Exactly forgot password, we're going hard today on the clock tower stuff. Clock tower full series marathons, like good shit. Music? There's not music in this game. You don't get it very often. A lot of Clock Tower games are really quiet. That's just sort of the deal of Clock Tower. I don't know why. No music? It comes up during chases mainly. They kind of want you to be a bit more, uh, you know, on, on edge. The game wanted to edge you. That's what I'm saying. There we go. Sides 3 in the car ending. I heard that. Okay. Alright, let's do this now. So I'll just show this cutscene off to kind of show you what show our base is kind of like. Unfortunately, we don't get all the dialogue, but you can still enjoy this, I think. Do -do -do -do. See, look at the JoJo stand. It gets better, Iris. Bonk. So there you go. So yeah, I am kind of sad though, because you know, um, while the Japanese version is faster, the English version does give you the fun uh, dialogue. Also, devastating thing with the Prime Gaming for seven months. Oh, perfect. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors, and thank you very much. Hope you're doing good. Yeah, Clock Tower said yes to the first one you do. I always go in chronological order. English Bates is definitely the one thing that I think is absolutely, like, worth it in the... Like, the best part of the game is English Bates voice acting. Japanese Bates is fine, or, you know, show. It just... Bates is so fucking good. Like, I think English is the way you have to play this. But for speedrunning it, since we're skipping all the shit anyway, it doesn't really matter. And, uh, I kind of felt like doing original hardware today. Uh, normally for the English versions, I just, you know, I, I'd be, uh, other means for that. There we go. But for Japanese, I just, I pop in my PS2 and it's nice. And I, I was feeling that today. It's good stuff. I mean, we're gonna get better than the kick later. All right. And then, we get to keep moving. They remember an old cutscene this in English sometime? I have. I have previously. It's long for the whole franchise. Uh, it took a long fucking while. Also, oh no, the samurai. Also, I bet you're wondering right now, hey, this game doesn't seem that bad. What's the problem? So the main problem is the main gimmick of this game. So this game uses a gimmick that you go between Bates and Alyssa. Or, you know, uh, I can't remember, Show and something else. I don't remember her name. But the problem with that mechanic is the only way you can become Bates is by in you and Show. Yeah, thank you. You and Show. Um... The main issue with this, though, is the only way you can go between the two is if you don't have the amulet on as you, or, you know, what's the name? Alyssa. And you take panic damage. So you have to get into combat with an enemy, or you have to get into, like, a cutscene of some sort. So while a lot of the game wants you to swap between the two, there really isn't an ease of access of doing so. Also, thoughts on Spirit of Comic Book more and more user friendly while seeing payments and publishers promote their game over every other game on the site? Spirit.com is going to fucking shit. That's my answer. It's going to shit. I use it mainly as a way of storing my speedruns. Outside of that, I really don't care anymore. There's no glory to be had. It's just a website for me to put speedruns on. If the formula became Google Documents, I would use Google Documents again. It is merely a means to an end for me. 
I have no loyalty to speedrun.com, and they don't have loyalty to me. And speedrun.com has been hitting a lot of shit lately. What happened? Speedrun.com got bought out by a larger site under the guise of saying, hey, we're going to add improvements to the site. None of the improvements actually happened, but instead what's been happening lately is we've been getting uh, sales for uh, fucking like random ads for games. Which, it's funny because, believe it or- Oh, hold on. I need to do the statue first. Don't be wrong. I, I don't mind people wanting to get a dub on money. Uh, that's not really an issue with me. It's fine to, you know, have ads inside your site. But the thing is... Hold on. There we go. We have to do this in order, by the way. It's a puzzle. It's gonna be statue, a gasoline, and then the lighter. Also, enjoy the music. S SRC speedrun.com. So, the main issue is like, alright, like, playing an ad, having ads on the side of your page, that's not the end of the world to me. But it's mainly they're really pushing certain games, and like, they're, you know, still writing other things. Somebody even mentioned they wrote a review article for like a new speed game, and I was like, that looks awfully fishy. It's like, no, no, I just really like the game. Two weeks later, oh hey, here's an advertisement for this game, you can buy it here, you can do this. We're advertising it above all other games. And it's a bit invasive, so... Not even kick the child, stab the child. And that's the issue. But also, speedrun.com really hasn't fixed any of the major issues either. There's still just as many issues as there's been. It still lags like fucking hell. I still have all my issues. Finding things sucks. Hell, they actually ruined a lot of things for me. I used to be able to keep count easily on how many games I had. I could look at the different users of the site. Also, this is a cursed child and the best idea of this whole game. Uh, this is Alyssa, or Stephanie. Stephanie is easily the best part of the game, and I'm really sad that her development doesn't go any further than what we get. Because Stephanie is so fucking cool. That kick was hilarious. It is. Also, be careful with links. Although, I think you just type speedrun.com, but still. Nightbot mops immediately, because we've had too many bots come in. And I'm like, alright. She's a JoJo reference, I told you. Oh yeah, Stephanie's great. Like, honestly, I think what they should have done with this game, if you're wondering, how would I fix Ghost Head? Demon Idol curses those around it. If you're around the Demon Idol, it will curse you in the same way that Bobby in, like, you know, the Scissor Man get cursed. I think the Demon Idol should be a corruption. It should not be what the actual plot twist of this fucking game is. That being said, uh, I am obviously leading to minor spoilers, I guess, with that, but uh, the plot of this game is really, really dumb, because they wanted to ride the coattails of Resident Evil. Remember what I always say? When a game tries to be Resident Evil, and it's not Resident Evil, it runs into issues. What do I mean by that? Just watch. Who's the main enemy of the game? Well, what if I told you it was zombies, and you have to kill them with chairs? Hey, Resident Evil, the zombies, can we do that? Like jazz? Yeah, I wake up to jazz radio every day. I've been jamming a lot of Nina Simone lately. This is WWE. My god, it's a it's a Alyssa with the over the head with a steel chair. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The floor ate the zombie? That's what happens when you get hit with the chair. You just melt into a puddle. By the way, you're going to laugh when we actually go uh, for the speedrun route of this game, by the way. You're going to laugh. How's it going, me, Jessica? Great to see you. Hope you're doing well. All right, good. Good. I need that later. I was a stream going great today so far. It's going great. All right, chat. So I'm going to do this like eight times or some shit. Maybe not eight, but like five. This is called the cheese. Watch. Watch. Bonk. Oh, 
Oh no, another zombie. Whatever will I do? By the way, I can skip these. I want you to know that right now, I can actually skip the bonk. But I'm not going to. Whatever will I do? I sure hope the zombie learns this time. Bonk. <laughs> they didn't learn. Don't worry, I think the next zombie will do better, right? I'm sure it will. There definitely won't be any issues with that zombie, right? Watch. I think it's the same push broom each time. So, I bet you're wondering, how does this relate to the speedrun? Well... Remember how I mentioned that one mechanic where I kind of can only turn into baits if I have zombies? Baits can't actually really kill the zombies right now. Uh, baits is unable to. Only Alyssa can kill zombies. So I need to remove all the game's zombies by bonking. Because of Eclipse, game, Eclipse Gaming. She doesn't think. Hold on. Bonk. <laughs> Every time. As in Rand, good to see him. And this happens every zombie. I can't leave a single zombie up, or else I won't be able to actually progress through the game. You can softlock the game during this level because that mechanic between Bates and Alyssa. Now, if you're wondering why can't Bates kill zombies, um, oh, a Bates and Alyssa, a Bates and Alyssa can only use certain items. I think Bates actually can kill zombies, but if you somehow manage to not get a gun. Um, and you were Bates, you can't find a gun. So you would have to find the gun in a very specific spot, know where to shoot the gun, because actually, you don't, I don't think you even can, because you have to know where to shoot, and the game doesn't teach you how to shoot until later. So I don't think the mechanic even exists in the game. Also. Correct, we are sending him to Bony Jail. That's better than Horny Jail, it's Bony Jail. I mean, you have the bonk? I think four total. One in the hallway, one in the nurse room, one upstairs, and one in the first hallway. Bonk. By the way, in order to beat the level, you have to get four events that are seemingly random. Watch. You get whispered to. Some, uh, you know, a, a soft voice tells you something. You have to get all those events. If you don't get them all, uh, you can't beat the game. No stop lock. Because remember, you can't really go back and forth that easily. Also, there's a gun in here. Now, if you're wondering, why can't you go back and forth easily and why will you softlock? Because Alyssa and uh, Bates have unique events. So, events for Alyssa are not quite going to be the same as events for Bates. Bates can only have certain events, and Alyssa can only have certain events. Meaning, if you missed one with Alyssa early, you'll have to go back onto Alyssa, and then you'll have to be able to do that. Meaning, if you killed all the zombies and you had to go back to Alyssa after being Bates, well, you can't turn back into Bates, meaning you now can't beat the game. Because you need to become Bates at a very particular time. Which is why I had to remove the amulet here. This is PT. No, this is better than PT. This is actually a fully licensed, uh, you know, fully released game. Anyway, I've left one zombie alive. And it's this one. Here's how you transform into Bates. A PT is not a fully released game. It's a tech demo. It's not a game. It never came out. It was a demo for a game. This game actually came out, so therefore this game is officially better. I was a Norwegian dude. I hope you're doing well. And it is Clock Tower 2. Or Clock Tower Ghost Dead. I hope you're doing good, other man. Alright. So, gun. Oh no, it's a better game. That's all I care about. I don't care about the second part. I think this game, I think it's better than PT. You know why? This is a fully functional and playable game that I can play right now.
This is a finished product. I can currently go out and buy this game. Did I play many RPGs? I, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Wait. Oh, right. No, yeah, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Ah. Exactly. In theory, they can also remove it at any point, so. Alright, so, first things first. I need to go back here for the tool. Also, another cool thing about this game. Different characters have different reactions if you talk to them as... Yeah, Dead Rising. Let's go with that. Dead Rising, I guess. Parasite Eve. I mean, I, don't, I really don't know. It seems like you're just... Like, that's all I got. I don't know. There we go. Also, you guys want to see cock and ball torture in this game? Kadalko? Kadalko is fine. <laughs> it's CBT. Although I don't, I wouldn't use torture though, exactly. I don't think torture is the appropriate word. So this isn't actually a panic event. Watch. You can see both my hands. <laughs> Kick him in the dick! So he gets kicked in the dick and then he starts vibrating. As they say, it gets him going, what can we say? And then he continues vibrating. One swift kick to the dick, man. Oh yeah, I agree. I agree, Vexia. I entirely agree with that. The key voice? It's even better in English, actually. Like, the one thing I give this game credit for is the English voice acting. It's really fun. Um, we don't get it for the Japanese version because, I mean, it's faster, but still. Exactly, the CBT. Alright. What's the best tech demo? Parasite Eve. It is. I like Parasite Eve. Alright, I own the gunshot. Nope. Okay, that's fine. It was? Parasite Eve was a demo for Final Fantasy VIII. It was the, uh, it was essentially, uh, testing out the engine. Another thing to mention about the world of tech demos, by the way. Tech demos aren't always going to be completed projects, and as well, sometimes there are completed projects. The normal goal of a tech demo is that they want to try, um... They want to test out an engine for something. So, for PT, that wasn't actually at all related to Silent Hills. We don't know what that was going to be. It was just kind of an individual game that's not tied to Silent Hill. It's called PT. And the whole point of it was that it was supposed to test uh, Kojimbo's engine. That sounds about right as well, Moonbrick. And very often, they release games that are kind of a bit more, uh, you know, the, like the debut game to test out an engine. What does PT stand for? Playable Teaser. Because it was a teaser for the game engine. Yeah. Fuck! I can salvage this. Okay, we're good. I can salvage this. Oof. Remember how I mentioned this game is confusing? What happened? I messed up. They're not making a new game. You have a shred of evidence for this. A single shred of evidence. Well, I think I showed chat the artist pro uh, process. And they didn't announce an error, then how are they making a new game? There's no evidence? Ah, perfect then. There you go, perfect. You're memeing, I see now. Alright, memeing's fine. That kind of memeing's fine. I was like, are you actually are you actually trying to be serious right now? Because I know there isn't.
You work for Konami. Perfect. It's pinball. Perfect. I'm glad I figured it out. Kick him the dick. So, like I mentioned, every every time you want to transform into baits, you have to get into combat and then lose the combat. How's it going, it's X. Hope you having a great day today. This is the major issue of this game. And I... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Cool, I'm eating a death. Well, good news and bad news. I just have to kill this guy and I win. Come on. No, I saw it, I saw it, I saw it, I saw it, I saw it right there, right there, right in the dick, right in the dick, shoot in the dick! Please aim in the dick. By the way, this game has a shooting, believe it or not. Because it wanted to be Resident Evil. Alright, this should be an easier dick shot, I think. Good dick shot. See, I wasn't kidding when I said it, too. That was straight up a dick shot. Alright, so if you're wondering what did I miss, uh, I missed this. Check it out. So, you have to, as Bates, go into this random hallway. Go into the second room. Make sure the light's on. And talk to this nightstand. If you don't do that, you you can't beat the game. If you turn back to Alyssa before doing that, you better hope you kept at least one zombie alive, because you will fuck you have fucked up the whole game. I am serious. Very serious. That was a coin operator. The game required you to get what does it actually do? It summons a character that saves you from another character. But you have to get all of her uh, triggers. Uh, some of them are got most of them are gone as Alyssa, but I think one of them needs to be got in his base. Does she actually talk to it? Uh, she looks at it and then she gets whispered to by a voice. And that's your cue that you got it. There's nothing that tells you you have to do all of this, by the way. But you have to do all this. I knew I forgot something, by the way. I was like, I forgot something. Well, better here than later. No, it's not possible. That's cryptic? This whole game is cryptic. But if you interact with everything, you can also lose the game. You have to both interact with everything and not interact with everything. Here's what happens if you got it right. Hope they don't die. I might be I might feel the panic event. Nope. You get shot. The only way to get that bullet. Is by getting all the dialogues I mentioned. There you go. Maybe. Who shot him? It's like your sister. It's a fucking stupid plot point. Oh, I forgot to slip out of them. Again, don't worry about the plot of this game. It, it's not really major. Also, here's Hank Hill. His name's Hank Bowman. Technically. As you control a different character in Lifeline, so. Toss will make zombies? No, the plot of this game is stupid. Really, Again, don't invest too much into it. it. It's not really worth it. At all. The less you think about it, the better. Just trust me. 
Well, the reason why it comes across as gibberish is because, one, it's, you know, essentially times two speed Japanese. Anyway, enjoy this cutscene. You don't have to know what's happening. Just, just watch and you'll see what happens. Alright, does anyone like House of the Dead, by the way? And can anyone count to 30? Uh, very slightly better than Ghost Head. Clock Tower 3 is still bad. I lost you at part 2? Okay, so this guy's gonna get out his shotgun. It has infinite ammo. Now, how do you beat this section? Well, I hope you like cock and balls again, because we're shooting them all in the cock and balls. The best place to aim is right at the growing for every single enemy. So again, cock and ball shooting for about 30 zombies. Now, cool parts about the zombies. Let's talk about them really quick. One, um, in order to shoot the zombies, you need to find a pressure point. The easiest pressure points are, again, going to be on the cock and balls, because that's right, um, there's two right there, as you can see, when it comes up. Uh, you can tell they hit anywhere on the body. If you want to go for the feet, you can. Uh, going on the actual, um, you know, the waist, it's better. Now, the cool part about this game, uh, the zombies can't attack you, uh, out of order. So watch, the doctor's gonna walk up to me, but he's not actually gonna try to kill me until it's his turn. Uh, they're not programmed to do that, so only the zombie who's at the front of the line can do so. The order is always the same. It's doctor, nurse, patient. This is a lot harder than it seems. Uh, this took me a lot of practice to get down. Uh, this is an actual section, and it is actually 30. Uh, this is kind of want to mention that this game wanted to be Resident Evil so badly, and it didn't really succeed. They're polite zombies? They really are, but they're fucking endless. By the way, this is straight up zombies. You learn later what the plot point will be, which is essentially saying that these are zombies. Which is stupid. You need a shotgun? It's infinite loading, by the way. Just infinite ammo, infinite loads. Alright, now comes the worst part of the game. It's going on forever? Well, I did say 30. I didn't say like 5. I said 30. <laughs> 30 is a large number, Moonbrick. It's a very large number. So, what's worse than that? Well, Endgame Labs. Because you need to blow up a laboratory because it's Resident Evil. Now, Resident Evil worked pretty well because the lab was surprisingly small, believe it or not. Resident Evil is not a large, large map, and it was actually really unique on how it worked. Uh, this game, all the lab looks virtually the same, and it's a huge pain in the ass to make your way around. Uh, players very often get lost very easily. I actually have to take notes for this section because very often I get lost quickly, quickly, quickly. But this is kind of what I was talking about. A lot of games sort of ended up, uh, you know, failing because they weren't owning themselves. Uh, Clock Tower wanted so badly to cash in on the Resident Evil uh, fame that it didn't really understand what made Clock Tower work, and that's really unfortunate. Because Clock Tower is a great game in its own right. It just, you know, I get it. You know, you have the brand new franchise, it's super popular. Go on, cash in. However, I will say right now, this game is not all bad, because you're about to meet the greatest guy in the world. Alright, chat, time to get Pepe D's. Time for the best song in the fucking game. Bone Zone D. Bone Zone. Oh. There's actually a law of Clock Tower games, by the way. The worse a game, the better the music. Clock Tower did predate Resident Evil, but this game came out after Resident Evil. A lot of games that, you know, weren't exactly totally doing the Resident Evil thing wanted to be Resident Evil, and this is no exception. So, this is the main villain and also the best part of this fucking game, because he wears the, like, the, the Oni mask. And I fucking love him. If someone wanted to buy me a giant knife and an Oni mask, I would cosplay this. But I don't have those things. Well, actually, the ghost head, funny enough, is actually Alyssa. 
Don't tempt us? I'm absolutely down. If I don't have a giant knife. My, gr my, my, my great knife. Are they a cosplaying DVD? What do you mean? Also, I got the key. Cool. Does Ghost City actually have a clock tower? No. It doesn't. Ponya mask? Is that the actual name of the mask? I thought it was an Oni mask. Doesn't make sense. All right. Anyway, now here's now comes the fun part. So they decided uh, to have 13 endings. 13 endings, right? Now, most of those endings are glorified game overs. What does that mean? If I talk to that lady as Bates, I got it. I got an ending. You can see the dilemma here, right? That's not an ending. That's a game over. Sorry to hear about that, Darth Vado. Sorry to hear about that. I will say that Japanese uh, copies of this game tend to go for a bit cheaper, and they are in English, but you wouldn't have to have a Japanese PS2. Is Alta 4 in the game center ending? You know, it just might be. Alright, alright, hold on. Let's continue to move. Let's go. There we go. Best any percent? Well, that's what the any percent category, like there's a G ending, the word, the M ending, the worst ending that people do. And it's literally like three minutes. Also, here's another neat fact. Also, how's it going? Is that uh, Zenice? Hope you're doing good. Zenaself? That might actually be your name. Zenaself. Hope you're doing good. Fun fact. No, I was gonna say. Forgot entirely. I had a point. I lost it. I'll come back to me. Oh yeah, I remember now. So I guess it's kind of weird. Alyssa. All right. So this game has restrooms, and for a puzzle that's added onto this. I guess it's politeness or something. Alyssa can only go in uh, the women's restroom, and Bates can only go in the men's restroom. I don't know why they specified that. I guess it's because um, Bates is the cruel male alter ego of Alyssa. But yeah, if you try enter, like you just can't have the option to go into the men's room as Alyssa. The game will not let you. Good shit. Okay. Let's head back. No, women, uh, bathrooms don't tend to have enemies. I guess it is courtesy, but still. Isn't PS2 emulate, uh, what, what do you need? this game count on the PS1. And also you can buy PSN versions of these games and they're actually not bad. But that's only in the JPN uh, versions. I have no idea why. I really don't know. There we go. Exactly, Centran. Exactly. And leave the room after transforming? I, I actually have no idea. I've never tried it. Also, it's a really good range shotgun. It is. Good to see you, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a nice day today. It's the Azon boy. Correct. I mentioned that earlier. That I made that uh made the joke a bit earlier. It's the JoJo stand. All right, so you missed the horde mode? Yeah, you just missed it, in fact. The 30 zombie horde. It's all good. It's all good. We saw the magical girl coming up. All right, I'm actually doing surprise. I haven't even really used my notes so far. Oh, this isn't the section I get confused. I just get confused on the upstairs part. All right. By the way, if you didn't activate the samurai statue, you would die right here. It would immediately kill you. And it'd be GG. Okay, hold on. Uh, let's head back. Please go.
Hold on. All right, did that. That's good. I forgot to split. All right, upstairs baits. That's right. All right, I'm, I'm in the right order. Cool, we're good. Oh, thank you, Ellis Loss. That please restart? For you? Maybe. Wait, did I need that zombie? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have to double check. Because I always get confused here. It's really, really confusing. Yes, I do need to be baits. I may have just wasted a gun bullet I needed. Oh, I'll be fine. Not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. I was like, wait, I know I'm missing something. So let me double check. Because this part sucks a lot. Okay. Uh, go left to door. Go all the way right. Get the amulet back. Okay. Okay. Poor Flanders. I did this last time where I really messed it up. I was like, wait a minute. I have to do something else first. I know I have to do something else. There we go. When did this come out? I think 1998. Yeah. I had things with the fall. All right, let's make sure we're good. Weird, I wonder why. There we go, perfect, okay, that's right. I was like, I know I'm missing something, but I don't know what yet. It's that one. Okay. Get the chair. By God, it's Alyssa with a steel chair. But yeah, that was kind of the Resident Evil effect, though. I think Resident Evil killed the Clock Tower franchise. So did Capcom. I don't know why. They just did. Hold on. And I think we go to the middle one. Yes! Got the key. I think we the follow. There we go, and leave. Good shit. Alright, now I know what I'm doing. Yep. I mean, Resident Evil 1 was successful. Yeah, so Clock Tower came out, uh, the OG one in 95, and then PS1 Clock Tower, um, came out in 96. What's the build of this game to me? I like trash. I like the Clock Tower series. Yeah. It's campy. There we go. Cool, and that's good. Alright, now we should be good. And I was like, wait a minute, I'm missing something here. I don't know what I was missing, but now I missed something. Luckily, I didn't waste a bullet improperly. Yep, that's a horrible ending. And a lot of people end up getting that. Okay. By the way, now we get to become Detroit, become Bates. Also, I just like horror games and neat games in general. There's not like a lot of cool games out there that tried. I kind of wholly appreciate people who try and fail but not try at all, so. I have some respect for this game and I enjoy the series. Also, you get to see them. Oh. There's not a lot of way people get to see different games, which is a bit unfortunate. Okay. In here. And that's just how it goes. And yeah, you see a lot of neat games you wouldn't normally be able to see. And it's worked quite well for us on Twitch, I think. They're cool. Oh, and that's kind of the nature of horror games in general. Alright, hold on. Is this right or left? I think this is right. Hold on. I want to pause really quick. Let's pause. Uh... Leave back a little to kill. Yep, right, cool. 
I'm being really fucking cautious this time. Last time I did this, I got like totally shafted for like hours. Like, God, this is horrible. So this time, just going. This is a new horror game? Yeah, Ghost War Tokyo. I'm looking forward to that a lot. I really want to play Ghost War Tokyo. There's another game I think called like Deception or something that's looking neat. I'm kind of into that. I would say those are the main two, though. I think those are the main ones. Alright, hold on. Can you shoot? Thanks. Alright, I want to say it's this door. Hold on. Uh, hold on. All the way left. Uh. All the immediate right door back. Wait, this door? No. I suppose this door. I hope it was this door. It was. Okay, we're good. Thank God. All right, I think we're finally at the point where I don't have to refer to my notes anymore. There's like one eatsy bitsy point where I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? And it's always in the middle. Uh, once we're past that point, though, we are good to go. And bada boom, we're out of here. Sounds good, Game of Darius. Get some good rest. And hope you do. Hope you have a good sleep. Or, you know, a good lurking sleep. Oh, the RE1 clone setting. Yeah... I mean, that's kind of also the issue. They decided to make this more like, again, Resident Evil. So they gave it the lab. That's really confusing. I'm excited for Ghost War Tokyo. I'm really excited for that game. I got, I got a pistol. Uh, I should have gotten the shotgun. Pistol's fine. I can make do with this. Is in the middle of the game? No, we're nearing the end game. I'm in the middle of this level. Although what I'm going to do, so I don't totally fuck up my progress. I am going to save it. Because honestly, that's the smart thing to do. Cool. Just in case. There's an easy, there's a lot of easy ways to fuck up progress. I'm gonna make sure I don't. Is that a horror movie? Oh, no, it jumps around a lot. Scream, carry, the thing. Those are pretty good examples, I'd say. Probably more, but... There's a lot. I don't quite know immediately, though. That's the only issue. Anyway, uh, time to meet up with the ghost head. If you talk to this guy as Bates, you instantly die, by the way. So don't talk to him as Bates. That's the moral of the story. I don't know if it's based on a game. There's a lot that are based on games. Which one do you mean? You can stay alive? That game's aw that movie's awful. I like it, but it's not very good. Oh shit. Video game movies are not good. I, I'm, fr I'm free to only going to mention that. I don't care if I like the game. Video game movies are almost universally shit. I tried to play Psych. I've heard of Psych vaguely, but I, I don't know. Uh, Sweet Home came out in tandem with the movie, actually. So, they're kind of like tan release. Also, Sweet Home itself is an okay movie. Yeah, again, those are garbage. I like Mortal Kombat as a movie, but it's still bad. Silent Hill is a movie's total shit. At least Mortal Kombat's fun and all that, you know? I think it's here. Yeah. I guess Sonic, yeah. Sonic would be the best one. Remember the Doom movie? I didn't even see the Doom movie. Final Fantasy haven't? I haven't? I don't play or watch Final Fantasy. So I don't really have a opinion nor do I really care. Uh, my favorite Final Fantasy game is Dirge of Cerberus and I can confidently say that's the best Final Fantasy game I've ever played in my fucking life. I have never played a better Final Fantasy game than Dirge of Cerberus and that is a factual statement. 
A favorite factual statement, in fact. True story? It is a true story. No lies. You love Dirge of Cerberus? Me too. I enjoyed it. No, I'm not going to stream Dirge of Cerberus. It's not a horror game. Wait, I don't think it's you. I think it's the other one. There we go. Those and evil movies? They're cheap fun. That's about it. They're not really good, though. Cool, that was the right one. Again, video game movies really aren't that good. I'm not going to try waiting every example. That doesn't sound like a fun time. That sounds awful. Talk to him. Talk to him. Thank you. All right, good. Like, at a certain point, and this always happens with certain topics, it just becomes people listing things to me. I'm like, yep, nope, and I do not like that uh, dynamic of questioning. It's not fun for anyone. There we go. That sounds about right, Wondrous. That does sound about right. All right, now, the thing that sucks here is I need to make sure that I... I should just grab the shotgun. That's okay. Stay Alive's fucking funny. I like that movie, but it's bad. Oh, wait, I have to die anyway. That's fine. There we go. Hey, look, Uncle Phil is back. Goodbye, Uncle Phil. Is there a movie about a board game than Clue? I don't know, how about Battleship? I know it's not good, but it's funny to think it is. Okay, good, I hope that works. I think that was red, by the way. Yep, red. Good. Oh, well, recently, in terms of watching things, by the way, I, I, you know what I got recommended, by the way, chat? I'm wondering. I'm going to ask you a per, I'm gonna ask you a very important question. Your answer here may determine uh, how, how my life goes uphill or downhill. I got recommended a K-drama. I had the point of the life where, uh, you know, I actually got recommended a K-drama. Do I start watching K-drama? Which one? Oh god, I don't remember. I have it. I have the link open. The penthouses. Ah, uh, the penthouse or the penthouses. And I know K drama. I know people get really into K drama. I know they're not bad. I know they're good. It just uh, I'm hitting that point. All right, please go around. Hey, I got it. Second try. Fuck yeah. Look at that skip. Apparently, it's a bunch of rich people killing each other. It sounds like fun. Is a K-drama? Still watching K-drama? I never watched K-drama. It got recommended to me. It's like watching soap operas, but they're Korean. There you go, Independent House. That's why I got recommended. Apparently it seems legit. Play a rep. I've seen it, but I enjoyed it. It's okay not to be okay. Oh, now you're gonna recommend K dramas to me. K dramas, meh. It's all about taste of opinions. So like you know, it varies. I'm not opposed to really, really anything. I'm kind of an open dude when it comes to many different uh, branches of media. You might buy the bullet. How do you watch it, by the way? Oh, for shot. Holy shit. Is that going to use some cycle like Zika? I don't know if that's the site. I think it is. Anime. Is it real life? Headshot? Dude, headshot all fucking day long. Badass. Okay, I'll take that. We're actually doing really good right now with the ghost head, by the way. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm stupid. Hold on, hold on. Have I been in any haunted areas in real life? I don't know, maybe. Probably. I really don't know that often, though. I don't really think about it. I try not to fuck with spirits. I've been on the haunt. I've been on the Queen Mary. Does that count? I count it. But yeah, as much as I like horror, I try not to fuck with demons. I saw uh, Vic. I saw the uh, Viki one, and I might try that. 
Also, here's an example where you need to be Alyssa so you can turn into Bates. And if you don't be if you don't be Alyssa, you can't win. So you have to be Alyssa so you can turn into Bates. If you don't do that exactly, you lose. And that's why this ending kind of sucks. What's the Queen Mary? It's a boat. It's a haunted cruise ship. And then, uh, if you're Bates, you only get one chance to go back to this. Uh, you have to cut the body open beforehand before getting your amulet back. A little dark tourism thing? I mean, again, I'm winning Rome. That's my general m uh, mindset. I try not to actively fuck with demons, though. Surprisingly enough, I don't get haunted or anything, because I'm not trying to fuck with anything. I want to mind my own business. That's my jam. By the way, we're at the point of the game where I no longer need notes. It's really just that one elevator section. Well, there you go. I don't know if I hear things about it, but I don't know. Again, it's not really on the mind right now. You know what is on the mind? Me shilling myself. Chad, you know it's September? Ha ha ha, get it? It's a play on words. Anything happen on the Queen Mary? Oh, I don't know. Probably. This is easy. Like, at that point, like, I don't know. Look it up. <laughs> Apparently, it's haunted. I don't know what haunted it. I wasn't there. <laughs> I'm assuming something did it. September. Yeah, subs are 20% off. New subs, gifted subs. So, there you go. We're also uh, a little under 50 subs away from getting RE6. Do I get scared easily? Ah, depends. Summary sandwiches are great. Exactly, Rand. September's actually haunted. Perfect. I can go for a Jersey Mike's, not gonna lie to you. Go for a nice Joysy Mike's. Am I doing it solo? So far, yes. Oh, I forgot to split. Sounds spooky, Oracle. There has to be a better way to get haunted up here, by the way. But yeah, I'm gonna take my moment to chill it. Alright, I think I go here. Then, should be right here. And I said I even speedrun it, too. Dead. By the way, if you're in red, you'll always die. It doesn't matter. So if you're in red, you will always eat a death. Perfect. Glad to hear Wondrous. I mean, we'll play it if we hit it. Let's stay man. Agony. Oh, right. I forgot to get the kill. Hold on. Can I fire this awkward angle? I think I actually can. He won't come into the staircase. Is Penn Station like Penn Island? Because no thank you, sir. I do not want to go to Penn Island. Not my, not my type of island. I'm assuming you're just going to hit me with a Ligma joke, and that's okay. Why, wow, dude, they're all... Oh, wait, hold on, there it is. Kill shot on the shoulder. Got it. Pen15? Dude, you're telling me I can join the Pen15 Club? No way, where do I sign up? Do I have to put it on my wrist? On my arm? Tell them I'm the Pen15 Club? It's like Jersey Mike's? Oh, that's also good. What's Pen Island? Try, uh... It's, it's Pen, not two N's. It's one N. One N on Pen. Type it out and see what it says. Type out Pen Island one word and see what it says. Thank you, Moonbrick. Thank you. Correct. It's Penis Land. <laughs> well, there you go, then. It's a website. Do not go to penisland.com. It will not get good results there. You might not see something you like. Don't forget. Don't forget the Pen Fifteen. Oh yeah, the the, the exclusive club on Pen Island, the Pen Fifteen. You can only join the club if you write Pen Fifteen on your wrist, or in your arm. 
All right, in big letters, though. They really sell pens? I'm not going to look. I'm going to take your word for it. I'm not going to go there. I don't recommend anyone else go there either. Any lemons? No, we're not doing that one. I know that one all too well. I know that one all too well. Alright, we're almost done with the game, though. We're almost done. Anyway, at least Ghost Head's near, uh, near the end. And again, without all the cutscenes, you're kind of missing a lot of the context. But it really doesn't matter, because, you know, the story's not really good. Well, I mean, they would both be boats, so that would add up. Let's try to let's try to move away from by the way the baiting sites. I don't I don't want Chad to become too disgusting. Cause now now it's just getting kind of gross, Chad. Let, let's stop that. Penn Island's funny. I don't want to read every disgusting site to exist. Thank you. I'm from Ohio. You see, I don't think it's not really people aren't from Ohio. I think it's people don't want to admit they're from, uh, they're from Ohio. And if I live in Ohio, I wouldn't want to advertise that. That sounds awful. Shot. There's the little shot. It is awful. See? Although I have heard that Ohio is for lovers. I don't know why they say that. I don't know who the fuck's loving in Ohio. Uh, but there, that is a statement I've heard. Well, CBT is funny. That's allowed. Yeah, CBT is fine, but it all depends. Ohio is the best state named Ohio. I can't believe it. I thought it was going to be second best. As a therapist? Oh, yeah, all the... Uh, that's right, actually, yeah. See, CBT is... Yeah, cognitive behavioral therapy is an actual thing. So keep that in mind. It's actually a really good thing, too. It actually really helps people. What's wrong with Ohio? It's Ohio. I was going popes. I don't know much about... I, like, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't really think about Ohio. The only time I ever think about Ohio is when I hear the phrase Ohio is for lovers. and That sounds really depressing. That's not an explanation? Well, I mean, Ohio doesn't really get an explanation. I imagine if I lived in Ohio, I'd really be into emo music. Yes, I get to decide what's okay and not okay. That's absolutely the case. Switch if you're wondering why, here, I can tell you this one. Watch. It's that badge next to my name, and once it's broadcaster. Yes, it is. I don't need a reason. You can say it's boring. There. That's bad vibes. It's boring. It doesn't sound really entertaining. I have no idea why I would ever want to go to Ohio. How is Ohio Midwest? I don't know. Apparently it is. The Midwest is apparently everything that's ever existed. I have no idea why the fuck that's considered the Midwest, but apparently it is from what I've heard from people. The only thing I actually know about Ohio is the Buckeyes. Anytime someone's defending Ohio with me, they don't stay very long and they tend to get banned. Not even because they don't like Ohio, there's other reasons. The last time someone heavily defended Ohio, they pretty much ruined near the Discord. So, you know what? Maybe Ohio's not a good place. The more I think about it, it's actually worse than I think it is. Don't kill me! Yay, I lived! Holy shit. Yeah, apparently that's considered the Midwest from what I've told what I've been told from people in Ohio. I don't fucking know why. But apparently. 
See, whenever I think of Ohio, I think about Chicago, but I think that's actually in Illinois. So, yeah, I don't even know what the fuck to think about. What's Ohio have? I don't even know what the fuck they have. Two O's? Yeah, Chicago's Illinois, and I know that one. What the fuck does Ohio have? Cleveland? Did I win? Oh, shit, I won. It does have Cleveland. What the fuck happens in Cleveland? I don't think about Cleveland, I think of Cleveland from Family Guy, which I don't think anything about that. Yay, I did it. See, you're really not helping Moonbrick. That's actually, you're making Ohio worse. You're making Ohio a lot worse here. Like, the more people, the more chat's typing, the less I'm liking the idea of Ohio. A zoo? I can go to a zoo in, like, any state. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? That kind of loses its flavor when I kind of see all the bands that wanted to be in L.A. It's pretty? I feel like there's pretty areas in Ohio. I want to look at flat land. How about I go to Nebraska where there's more corn? Exactly wondrous. Doesn't Michigan also have Lake Erie? I don't know. I don't even think about Indiana. So you got me there. I, I don't really think too far outside of my zone, Chad. I'm not really trying to. Unless there's good reason for me to travel. Which, uh, I travel for events and shit. Nothing happens in Ohio, to my knowledge, so... Oh, I've been to Minnesota before. Because they had an island event out there. Minnesota seemed okay. In the Mall of America. It was cold. Some guy spoke in a Canadian accent and told me he doesn't have an accent, but I know he had an accent. And, uh, that's about it. Been to Texas. Texas was nice. I like Texas. I was Waffle House? So does the entire of the U.S. South. That doesn't help at all. That really doesn't help in the slightest. Or right, been to Europe? Yeah, I've been to Stockholm, Berlin, and Paris. I liked all three of them. They're actually really good. Stockholm's cool. There you go. Question? Sure. What's your question? Can I actually make it quick? Because I need a P and these credits need to run. I have a mod. Remember, uh, I was wondering. Go ahead. What are you wondering? What do you want? Make it quick, dude. Make it quick. I need to pee. Make it quick. Come on, make it snappy. I think even all female speeders in the crypt? I don't know. I thought that was already happening for like years. I think it's called Frame Fatales. Anyway, who are you banning? No, you're not banning. Mods are in charge. I need to go pee. I'll tell you my answer when I get back, Joe. Really quick. These credits are rolling. I can't skip them. Enjoy the banger. No, I had a clock tower take place in Paris. No, Joe doesn't get banned. He's fine. Anyway, be right back really quick. If you've been enjoying the stream so far, feel free to shoot us a follow here on Twitch. Next is going to be Clock Tower 3, which everyone seems to love. As well, we have things like Discord, which are, is a good place to be. Uh, here's Twitter, and uh, there is uh, Instagram, which is a good way to keep up to date there. I'm going to go pee really quick, and I might grab more water. Actually, that's... Um, I'll, I'll finish that first. Uh, I'll grab more water, I think, after Clock Tower 3. Uh, but I'll be right back really quick. Also, Ohio is for Lovers is a song. Anyway, you think about that, enjoy the song here, enjoy the credits, I'm playing ad. Man stands.
fucking great time. Look at that shit. Ending A, baby. Look at that. Perfect timing. Let's see. Okay. Time for the game swap. How you liking the stream so far, Chad? How you liking the stream? Look, it's a PS2. You gently go there. Hey, look, another PS2. Oh, yeah, by the way, fun fact, I have, like, three PS2s in my room. It is, Maxi. it is. All right, good, 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 and... I turn you on. And then I gotta change the title to Clock Tower 3. Thank you for anyone who followed, by the way. It's appreciated. By the way, if you're wondering why I have so many PS2s, um, so they actually were kind of weird for me. Um, originally, oh god, what the fuck, my head like fucking zoned out for a moment, I got like vertigo, I'm like, ooh. Yep. Region coding? I have region coding. Uh, one of them's also a PS2. Hold on, I want to take a little aspirin. Why? Hope you are doing good. Oh, water too. I think putting my head up and down all the time is weird. So, Joy, what was your question now? On all female speedruns in the crypt? So you pretty much mean the GU Hoppix before he came into business. As now I mainly pick primarily on game. And people don't very often get to show game. Also, that w that's not a bad idea, but yeah, Fran Vitals is that situation. And, you know, during that time period, I would probably want to run a, a Fran Vital show. I think mean, that happens. So, remember, wait, when Frost Vital? Wait, Flame or Frost? Frost? Ryle Lever, also known as Weaver. With the raid. I see I beat my mods. How was the stream? Hi there, Natalie Beach. Hope you're doing good. Also, however, when are you forming a band? Clearly, you said you played drums. You had a really big PB. Proud of you. Good job. Welcome, everyone. I'm McDysis. How's it going, Shanks? I do a lot of horror games and horror game accessories. Today, we're doing Clock Tower full series and all the games and spin offs. It's fun. The problem with Sonal 2, though, is I think Cinematic did that really recently. Or Oh My Queen did. Start a band for sure. Damn right. You're a drummer? I'm a, we can do two drummers. Actually, I know three drummers. I know a lot of drummers. See, Maxi, the fun part about that is I actually could make a band with you. Like, with with Rylever, it's a joke because I can't actually, uh... What's the word? I, I can't really make well, I can't really make a band with Rylever. With Maxi, I can actually make a band. Just because Maxi knows why. I'm not gonna say any more than that, but I actually can. I think it's not mainly we want to do different music. I'm more of a ska jazzy sort of fella. Nothing wrong with that though. Alright, we're gonna have a bunch of drummers. We're gonna have Maxi, Juo, Relever. 
Oh, I liked my drummer. We just, you know, we don't play him. We, you know, we don't play anymore, really. I liked my drummer though. And learn trumpet. I like bass. I actually still have the grooves on the bass. But yeah, for anyone coming in though, I do a lot of horror games and horror game accessories, so it's all good stuff. What's the name of my band? I'm not gonna tell you. Nobody gets that information. Nobody. I'm gonna tell nobody that info. Mainly because it'll dox me. Yeah, I don't want to get doxed. You're not on guitar? Poor Juo. Poor Juo. See, Devious, Devious, that's the idea right there. Yeah, I don't want to dox myself. Any bad news? Anyway, here's Clock Tower 3. I got asked about earlier and why this game's kind of weird and do I like it? I like this game. I like this game a lot. Uh, I just think this game has really hard uh, power scaling. That wasn't jammy. Trying to sound play? Oh, I bet. Like a hardcore band? What, you mean like a metal band? Metal bass is boring in most cases, unless you're really tentacle. It really depends on the type of metal you're doing. And very often it's not. How's stream been? Stream isn't popping off today, I think. At least, you know, like, we've been doing pretty good on our parts. Haunting Ground does count, and I'll explain why once we get there, but, um, so this is Clock Tower 3. With Clock Tower 3, we're kind of hitting the last official Clock Tower game, and the reason why this is the last official one is because after this, they didn't really make any more Clock Tower games. She's a mage? No, she's a rooter, which essentially, she's a magical girl. Imagine Sailor Moon, but now it's a horror game. He will try telling me, by the way, that Sailor Moon is a horror franchise. I don't know how much I believe that, but at the very least, I will say I, um... You know, I like Sailor Moon. Fat Shade from Moto's dirty grease stained clothing and nasty coke habit. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Perfect plan. The band's already broken up. I can't believe it. The band broke up before it began. Yeah, streams are good though, I think. Streams are good. But Capcom worked on this game, because they uh you know, they licensed out Clock Tower at this point to um uh, they end up getting the license from a company called Sunsoft. Uh, the official owners of the Clock Tower licensing today is a company called Sunsoft. Uh, Capcom decided they wanted to make a Clock Tower game to try experiments with the franchise. Now, what that means is it's going to get a little bit dicey. Why is it going to get dicey? Well, because of this, uh, the next you know few Clock Tower games aren't quite going to be what you expect. Mainly, this game bombed pretty hard, uh, so when they wanted to make a new Clock Tower game, they really didn't want to pay for the license again, so why the fuck would you play for a license for a game that you know is going to bomb? When a game's not going to do well, normally people want to, you know, normally people want to make money off video games. No, this is Clock Tower 3. But yeah, I've been enjoying bass though a lot. I might actually play bass, uh, I don't know, some of my nights, now that I have the hookup for it. Grooving on the bass has been fun. I'm fun of that. Yeah, I'll play more. Yeah, I'll try to, I don't know, master my grooves. Well, uh, well, this is England, so they're British. So, yeah. I, I don't know why, I don't know why you're so fixated on Paris right now. This has nothing to do with that. This is England. All the characters are British, in fact. They're British. Also, here's a glitch. Watch out from really far away. Exactly, they're all British. I can't believe it. What if Clock Tower was British? Anyway, this game loosely tries to connect to the first game. It doesn't really succeed, but it's very loose. I was gonna do this more. That's London? I mean, it looks like a London. Specifically, this is, uh, England around 1942. It's whatever time the Battle of Britain happens, and it's around Christmas. It's World War II Christmas time. Is this one of the people dying in it? That's every game. Nope, Bobby's not in this game. Bobby died in the first one. When this game released, 2003. Uh, it came along uh, five years after Clock Tower 2 The Struggle of Finn. Well, every game we're doing today, you know what I meant. Like, is this, like, if you ask, is this the one where people are dying? Like, all the games we're doing today have people dying. What do you mean? 
None of the games I'm... They all have people dying. There's a lot of people who are doing the semantics bullshit on me to this, uh, today. Messing with me? I don't like semantics, it's annoying. Especially happening today. I had a long argument earlier about, you know, the rules of Judaism and eating pork. I don't really wanting another one. I don't like semantics. That too. I know what you meant though, and it's fine. But still. That's true, Wondrous. Oh, there you go, there it is. No. Yeah, it sounds like the stream went well, rather. It sounds like it went well. People are dying? Yeah, you're gonna see a, a lot of people get absolutely fucking decimated in this game. Right, the Portugal pulsating green hot pepper. Oh, that's some that's the panic meter. If that fills up, my character will panic, which means I might die. I have to avoid that. Oh, hold on. There we go. You're wondering something? Go for it. Anyone speed on tormented souls? Yeah, several people have. Day one speedrunning is legit. Alisa. Nice. Hey, good stuff. It should be my time. I don't run any percent anymore. You can do it. I believe in you. Alisa, where are you? There we go. Alright, not too shabby. Not too shabby. Are you tormented souls for funsies? Is that the, like, or from what I learned from you specifically, Tormented Souls has that weird tech where you need controller and keyboard, right? Because that's fucking wild. I feel bad for Tormented Souls as well, because the unskippable booba kind of prevents it from getting into any events. Let me, does this game have titties? Yes. You don't have the ugly bastard. Hey, you can't skip the booba? People told me you can't. Booba where? In the game Tormented Souls. Trying for the cheesesteak? I oh, hope pastrami, man. I know what you're talking about pastrami. You can? Yeah, dude, everyone was telling me you can. I was like, oh, okay then. Why the fuck are people telling me you can't skip it then? Are you can literally see the cutscenes? Oh, never mind then. I guess that's fine. Never mind. As I'm coming to this Yeah. Full frontal nudity? It's like the like glass staircase. Oh, does I want to see Bob's? Maybe there's Coomers. They're actually saying you can't skip it because they were compelled to never skip it. You don't see getting into GEQ? Is it because of the titties? And you're out? Okay, I take it easy. Thanks. Dude, you know what game's gonna get in? Fucking Clock Tower. That's my. Actually, I know what game's getting in, and I hate it already. I already hate it. Fucking. The Crow, City of Angels, already got in the event. Opix, definitely? What do you mean, definitely? I'm not gonna put it on. I don't have it on Tormented Souls right now. Yeah, I'm not gonna put that game on. I haven't played it yet. Why the fuck would I put it on a game I've never played and have, you know, no one interest in? Wait, what? Um, they're talking about GDQ hotfix. No, I didn't get it into GDQ. I'm being a confident asshole. Because that game is so awful, I'm willing to bet it's gonna get in. Like, I'm sure I'm willing to bet this. Wait, now? No, I have it. I have it. Nope, not yet. Not yet. Keyword yet. Like, I have a deep feeling that game's a lock. Like, I haven't even submitted it yet, so I'm just having to that fully. And the Chrome mainstream again, one can only hope. One can only hope. Yeah, I, I am a veteran Bay of awful games done quick. I'm a veteran of awful games. So kinda hoping I get uh at least the crow. I doubt I get the ring in because they don't seem to like the ring. Which games? I did Night Cry and the Mummy. And technically Night Trap, if you count that. Hell, over half my GDQ appearances have been awful. Or silly. Like, I'm surprised. Yeah, Night Cry was, I think, one of the large reasons we even developed a Twitch presence. 
Thanks for the follow. Oh yeah, I had to change that to just thanks for following, so we kept having awful names coming in. I was like, ah, fuck it. So you accept what for my trap? I ran Haunting Ground, you degenerate! Mods, time out Juo! Break Juo's legs! Time him out now! I ran Haunting Ground, you degenerate fuck! Thank you. Uh, I was gonna say do it for 10 minutes, but you're kinder than I am. If it was me, I was gonna make it 10. I trust your judgment. Exactly, Fifty Shades. Exactly. Or Juo? It's well deserved. It's well deserved on Juo's front. Yeah, there you go. Well, I couldn't see it, Juo. Yeah, I ran Haunting Ground. Oh, I think Haunting Ground was one of my best ones. No, Haunting Ground's a really good game. Haunting Ground is definitely the best of the games I've done, I think. Honestly, I rank Haunting Ground above Sonic 2 these days. For me, at least. There's a personal playing. I love Haunting Ground. I think it's one of my favorite games. Ever. This game that killed the franchise? Uh, yes. However, I don't blame this game for doing it. It's not really quite the feeling of the game. Also, take it, he's dead. Now. It's kind of more the fact that the franchise was already kind of dead with uh, Ghost Head. He didn't really know what he wanted to do. I'm not going to the hat, but have fun with the hat. Enjoy your pastrami. Unless you mean you're going to the hat, you're going to turn on stream there, which at that point, I guess, have fun with that. Free Juo? Mods can unban Juo, or untime out Juo whenever they want to. This game is rough casually? It is. The hat? I fucking love the hat, still. I hope you're doing good, Yarts. There we go. Joe gets a timeout remove. We do not take Haunting Ground slander here. And the world needed Juo most. He vanished. I don't know. Juo keeps getting invited back to speedruns from the crypt. I think he knows a guy, chat. I think he knows a guy. Juo should not keep getting appearances. Every time he comes in, I keep asking, how do you keep getting invited back to the show? And then he just shrugs me. I was like, oh. It's a mystery, I tell you. I'll never, I'll never truly solve it. I mean, it's no real ever. Nah. Fantastic. Drew, the ten dollars. Oh, there we go. I will take my time out and still Honestly, I think my you're in band. You are in band. Thank you for ten bucks, though. <laughs> ten dollar ruse. I seen his chat. I mean, have you seen my chat? I ain't vetted weekly, and I mean. Like, I, I honestly think that, all right, my favorite argument for GDQ being strict, and this is a factual statement, by the way. This is a factual statement. Hear me out really quick. If anyone ever tells you that GDQ is strict, one, I get vetted weekly. Every single week I'm vetted by GDQ. Two, I have posted on all my social media that I made a video about foreskin. And I actually talked about Ethan Winters' dick. I have also uh, tweeted about my ugly bastard emote, my 177013 emote, and my jar emote, and I don't exactly try to hide where these are coming from, and what they reference. Where am I going? Going good, man. Of course, you're doing good. I thought it was an emote. I made a video about fucking foreskin. <laughs> like, I'm just saying, like, it's pretty easy not to get in trouble. <laughs> Just don't pull a Papa John. There you go, it's that easy. It's that simple. No, no, we weren't talking about docking. I know what you're getting at, that's cursed. I was not Ethan Winters' force getting using his brief, uh, you know, an adjective. Not a verb. Incorrect, please. And, well, kind of, Kylo Ren. Kind of, I suppose. I don't know if I'd use that term exactly, but I guess it is fitting to some degree. Also, cool thing about this game, back to speedrun-wise, uh, I actually like this game speedrun a lot because you're able to actually do things while being chased. That was a giant bananas. And also, yeah, the freemium one. I like the free one I made. It's actually a really good emote. The only reason I never made it to tier one is because I'm worried that Papa John will try to sue people on Twitch. I feel like he's the kind of guy to do that. I'd rather not, uh... I'd rather not try. 
you know? But yeah, that's kind of the whole case right there. Anyway, I hope all my GDQ shit's gonna be good. I still have to worry about submissions. It seems like it. My Papa John. Yeah, he does, he does, he does. Well, we'll have to see. I imagine it goes well. Samurai Man always chasing you? Yep. Well, I mean, you can get rid of him temporarily, but he'll come after you every few minutes or so. And he has jump scares as well, so. Oh, yeah, also, this game's a magical girl game. What that means, if you've never seen it, I'll show you. Well, actually, this is the where we get the magical girl emote, too. So let's see how it goes. Let us see how it goes. So it's Sailor Moon. Um, I think this actually predates Son Hill 3. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I think this game had the original idea first. I could be wrong. I'm actually gonna look this up. All right, here you go, by the way. If you've never seen it, if you've never seen it, just watch. March 18th, 2003. Oh, hold on. Wow! Uh, yeah, Silent Hill 3 ripped off this game. Holy shit. That's an actual fact. The Magical Girl concepts, this game originally. Heather Mason ripped this game off. By two months. This is actually the original for this shit. I and mean, it's all copying Sailor Moon, but... Horror game Magical Girl? Yeah. And honestly, I think this one does it better. And I don't know what you mean revamped. Alright, let's go. Let's go. I mean, she does that later, but for right now, it's Magical Arrows. I'm just gonna Fortnite. I have heavy doubts on that. It's also lazy shit posting, so no. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Yep, time to judgment. So the way this works, uh, I'm going to channel a bunch of arrows into this man so I can get spirit bombs. One, two, three. And here's a spirit bomb. This is how you beat all the bosses. I'm not kidding. Now, a lot of these fights are a lot harder than you imagine and a lot harder than you look. It's an actual spirit bomb. Also, you can push the seed and magical girl, you know, it makes sense. And then he dies. So, fun fact about the arrows, you can't aim. There's no aiming allowed. Maybe it was, Aoi Senpai, maybe it was. It's judgment in this game, judgment. This game was made before uh, aiming existed, so you're not allowed to aim the arrow. Wherever you aim, you're, getting, you're shooting that arrow. So that's why the combat kind of sucks in this game. Also, a lot of players, what they'll do is they'll use the good arrows early and they won't actually learn how to do the fights. So the problem with that is this game really gates you because the final boss is a massive uptick in difficulty if you don't know what you're doing. Most players don't know what they're doing because why the fuck would you practice this game? The only way you really get good at a game like this is by practicing it. And you wouldn't think to practice an obscure, uh, you know, as I say Japanese, but apparently just, let's just go with an obscure PS2 horror game. You don't really practice that. You just sort of, you know, try your best. Yes, that did say Dick's room key. Uh, Dick Hamilton. Uh, we're going to his office. You're correct, Caloran. That is the Dick room key. We're going to the Dick room. And with the follow. By the way, sometimes games just don't get into GDQ. I thought for the longest time this game would have a decent shot, but, uh, no, it hasn't. Get Dicky Room? Nah. That would be funny, though. I, I'd be careful with non-mana core just because the plot of this game is that Alyssa's 15. And also, uh, this is her grandfather. 
And also, the major plot of this game is that her grandfather wants to rip out Alyssa's heart and become one with her. Which is kind of just a very metaphorical thing of, uh... Haunting Grounds, uh... Let's go with that. Yeah, just be careful, be careful. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> You're all good, though. Holy fuck, it's already 2 a.m.? What the fuck happened today? That's fair. Anyway, chat, it's the 2 a.m. vibe check. It's only 2.40 a.m. in my time zone. I almost never realized that. Jesus Christ, I've been up for a while, haven't I? Hope you're all doing well today. Hope you're all having a nice day. I almost missed it? Nah, I'm perfect. I got it. We good, we good. What I think happens? The clock really flew by. Or should I say the clock tower? That was gold, I'm just saying right now. That one was gold. Come on. Absolute fucking gold. Hold on, maybe I'll save an hour of time and not dying. Fool's gold? No, that was like the good shit right there. I'm doing a full 11 hours? I'm doing until the ending of this game. You can actually make it 10 hours if I go faster. I did feel the earthquake. It shocked my house. I was attacked by an earthquake and made my house vibrate. Although nothing bad happened. My room shook. You didn't feel a thing? Well, there you go. You know, Jennifer, we truly are inside the clock tower, the first fear. Not only is that a clock tower, that's a clock tower too. That one was good. All right, let's go back. Oh, we good. But yeah, I'm glad to hear it seems like everyone's vibes are well. Now this game, I enjoyed this game. I used to put this game to GDQ, but then it just wasn't getting in. And it's still not getting in. I'm kind of hoping someday maybe we'll get in. I think Demonic's still trying to submit this, and I hope he does. Either him or Swordfish. Really, either one, at this point. I just want this game to get into a fucking event. I'm not gonna submit it, but I wanna get into an event. The clock Tower 2, ho ho ho. That time made a good joke? Well, thank you, ho ho ho. I get it. Also, for people who are asking about speedruns in the crypt, I'm actually gonna be doing a special speedruns in the crypt episode for the next one. Like, I have the speedruns in the crypt episode on deck, uh, but I'm doing another special episode. It's funny because Jewel mentioned doing all, you know, doing old chick version of the show. But that actually, you know, kind of already happens. We're actually doing a similar thing to that, which is going to be um, Latin American Hispanic heritage uh, runners. Yes, Remothered counts as part of the series for all intents and purposes. It stems from Night Cry. Yeah, so we're doing Latin American ones right now. Also, Kylo Ren gifting a sub to Mr. Merlion. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors, and thank you. Thank you very much. He is much appreciated. Alrighty. Now we leave. See, it's nice and easy. Also, I'm glad people seem to enjoy Clock Tower. It's a very, it's a franchise that's very near and dear to me. That's what I'm kind of hoping. Maybe they take Clock Tower for uh, GDQ. Also, we're playing both of them, Andy Moogle. Are they worth? Oh, are they worth playing? Um, Tormented Fathers, yeah. Broken Porcelain. If you really like the story for some reason, sure, go for it. But I think Tormented Fathers is genuinely a fine game. Hell, I would argue Tormented Fathers was the best horror game of 2018. Someone's gonna be like, no, Blank came out. And then you're just like, what came out? Uh, that's right. No fucking games came out that year. I think good. If you're wondering, what was supposed to be the big game that year? Agony. And Agony was a real agony to play. Uh, 
You know what? I actually offered that as a sub goal previously. I forgot all fucking about Agony. I'm kind of down to a place of uh, uh, Agony with Alone in the Dark Knight, think about it. Unfollowed? Because I heard uh, Agony was total shit. And I kind of want to play the Alone in the Dark game. You know what? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, I mean, uh, if we hit the, what, 1,600 subs, I'll play Agony. Was it 600 or Oh, it's 400. 1,400. I'll play Agony. I forgot about that. Yeah. Do you have Clock Tower yet? Never got into a main event. It's been on my show, but that's because I put it there. The suffering, more like Ives. In fairness, I'm gonna fix the suffering. I'm gonna try getting that right. It's gonna be like the suffering, more like Ives. You mean where I make the dumb joke the whole time? Yes. However, I heard Agony was terrible for other reasons. I heard it was just boring, actually. Can I just do an RE marathon like a- no. I mean, isn't RE6 the RE marathon technically? So actually, yes. There you go, it is actually. I'm gonna reinstall the suffering. It was working until- I think it's my hard drive that was having issues. I've never played- I mean, I can always change- we don't have to do Agony if you really don't want to, chat. We don't have to do Agony. Like, Dysis, I'll pay you not to do Agony. Oh, thanks. Cool. <laughs> I'll take that deal. <laughs> I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna play Agony! I'm not gonna play I don't wanna play Agony, actually. It doesn't have- it sounds like most people don't care about Agony. I thought it was like a shitpost that was funny, but I actually don't know. I've never played it. I don't know what Ringo's best song was, Octopus's Garden. You can actually play Gex at 2,200 subs. I actually made that a goal. Or if I get Twitch and Bass, type some timer, you'll see it. Oh, the Dark Game is pretty special. Well, I, already, I already have Galarians and the uh, Run Like Hell on deck, so we'll be doing those regardless. Uh, Alone in the Dark is debatable. Uh, I feel like I just want to do that, but I didn't have a goal there, so I guess uh, that's what I'm saying. Agony can be the goal there, because I kind of just want to play Alone in the Dark 2008. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, I forgot to split. Uh, does that make sense? Like, for that game, I don't exactly want to sub block that, because. I kind of want to do it. Oh, there we go. But we will see. You have this game? Nice, Mr. Graham. This game used to cost 20 bucks or $15 a game shop, so now it's been up to like fucking 70 because people kept buying it. You know, I kind of take sole responsibility for this. Or not sole responsibility, but I take heavy responsibility for this shit. Yeah, Alone in the Dark 2008, I don't know what I'm going to do with yet. I'm going to see how the month plays out. Uh, if, I can't, if I don't come up with another goal, I, I guess that stays there for now, but it's one of those things that we might do it. I guess the other option is I can do Hellblade, uh, cause that's been on hardest hell, and that was actually the previous sum goal. You do Hellblade at 1,400. All oh, right, hold on. Galarians will be fun. I actually have that in my room. It'll be nice. I also have Fatal Frame 3, so I should be in any start getting to those games. I have a lot of games I have to get to. I have not a lot of time. We're gonna be busy, busy, busy. Anyway, chat, I'm gonna show you the greatest cutscene you'll ever fucking watch in your life. Are you ready? Are you ready? This is called the acid bath. Alright, right, Alan's sleeping in line. I've already played it. Maybe the new one. No, I'm not. I don't want to do fear. No fear. Five. You know what? Five K subs was a lot for me to stomach fear. But that's like 5k subs, and we're never gonna hit that, so... You know what? Yeah, sure, why not? I'll do Fear at 5k subs. Some new toy that'll have the local kids a gog, I bet. Actually, I've been busy. Left. UK. Tier 1. For two months. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors, and hope you're doing good today. Thank you very much. Also, look, it's so sweet. She has sticky eyes. He made her a shawl. So sweet. Also, Ralph Ever with 10 gift so subs going to Jarno. Now! It makes you feel like this. It's so sweet. So much. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> anyway, if you've never seen this cutscene, you're in for a treat. You're in for a treat. Also, I fucking love that part. This is the acid bath. I 
Riddle and from the tank of itself. Going to Jarno, don't cheese me. 8v1. So here's Riddle. Estosh, Giddens, Kyoto, Scott DM, Vitamin B, and Ram. Joy the US and Sir Lee Roll ever. It's the acid bath. What, you don't yeah, yeah dude, I admire his passion for the job. Like, every day I want to go to work feeling like this. And screaming makes me feel like this, so I think it's pretty good about that. I have a lot of good laughs here. <laughs> you know this guy was based on a real serial killer? It is mocap, actually. It actually is Holocaust. This is all mocap. Want to join them? The anyway, that's the acid bath. But luckily, uh, Corroder's actually a Smash Brothers player. So whenever you throw water on him, he can bust on fire because he doesn't shower. Alright, back to the game. So Corroder's our new enemy here. Uh, his ability is throwing acid at us. He also butt slams. You might see it. Yeah, it's all mocap. It's really funny. Like, really, I like this game. I'm just gonna say in a casual setting, it is a bit more rough than I think all the rest of the series outside of Ghost Town. Just because this game has really horrible endgame scaling. This game scales like shit. Also, here's a speedrun skip. What I'm going to do is once I hit the corner, I'm actually gonna throw the water. That's going to prevent him from hitting me, and he'll be on fire once again because he's showered. He's just living his best life. I bet he's a fox man. Actually, is he a fox saying? Who's the dirtiest smash with Kirby Man? No, Kirby Man's a chance. Oh, so you just run through him. Who's the sweatiest mains? I don't know. I feel like someone with a sword. No, Suicide DK is funny. Or Meta Knight. Someone here's on no smash, and you can tell me about if you know it. Anyway, let's see if I get this. I might get butt slammed on accident. <laughs> All right, I got the good RNG. Marth? Maybe Marth. You think he means Bayonetta? I can see it. All right. And then we'll be good. See? So how do you like the acid bath? Also, I do want to say thank you again. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, God, he ass slammed me. Let's play it safe. Well, oh, God. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Get off me. Thank you. Booty dry. I told you, he slams you with ass. You thought I was kidding. Manicore, we talked about that earlier, funny enough. Uh, I have my doubts right now just because they have no VA. Well, it is my. I just want to mention, it is much appreciated. Also, if you have a preference on name, do let me know. Because it's one of those things where, like, the whole time I'm calling you Ryle Ever, but I know your name's Reliever, but. I, I, some people have seemed to prefer the, pro, the previous name. So if you want to be called Reliever, I'm more than happy to do so. It's just some people think it's weird my pronouncing things correctly. I don't know how you feel about that, but let me know. As originally, I actually know how to say Kyo's actual name. Like, when I mod's uh, Kyo Ryo Hunter, that's his actual name. But he told me, don't call him that. Call him Kyo. Because for, like, over a year, I was calling him Kyo. So I said it was odd. There we go. Let's go. Alright, hopefully the fight goes well. The water loss isn't all that bad. Our lever? Okay, sounds good. I'll keep saying that way. Uh, so I'm sure all good. Oh yeah, that one's bad though, Mr. Kai. I'm not gonna do that one. Kyuyo is my favorite one. I like Kyuyo. He's a good dude too. A lot of fun streams. Lately he's actually been doing a really creative stream. He's been doing like Friday retro uh, gauntlets. That's one of the better uh, versions of that gauntlet I've seen. Which is like, he pops in like, I think like an Everdrive and like keeps swapping games every 20 minutes. So you kind of get like a big feel of how far he can get in various games. And it's actually really neat. I, I don't mean to give him a huge plug right there. But yeah, his Friday Sega streams are really fucking fun. I've been really enjoying those. If you guys don't know who I'm talking about, it is this guy. Alright, he's a great dude. Good friend of the channel, one of our mods. 
I watched him grow entirely as a screen. Also, fight time. Hey, Rio? So calling Rio, though, is gonna remind me of Duran Duran. Maybe not Jar- I'm not playing Jar- You know what I think about when I think of Duran Duran? I think of the best of the 80s. Also, not this bad. Smell like a sound, I'm lost and I'm found. See, that's my problem. Whenever people talk about making music, I want to make fucking Duran Duran. I want to make uh, the B-52s. Nobody wants to do fucking New Wave. I want to do Uncle Boingo. It's bouncy bass lines, they're fun, they're groovy music. I can play hung Hungry Like the best around? Hey, Duran Duran, Hungry Like the Wolf. Oh. Best of the 80s. And nothing's ever gonna keep you down. Oh. There she is. Oh. oh god, I got hit. There she is. Some sloppy fight, okay. Oh. Oh. Good. There she is. All the notes are nice. Oh. Prepare to die! Good. There she is. Walk back into it. There she is. Fuck her. Prepare to die. Yay! Chip damage. Got him. New wave is rad. So yeah. I know you're. I know that song, Silver Moon. There are a lot- Dude, you spin me round and round's a good fucking hit. Also, I heard Twitch is removing DMCA stuff, or like, they're working on a music deal. And I was gonna say, right now, if I can play a substantial amount of music, licensed music DVD streams are back. I actually really like listening to music while playing DVD and just listening to licensed music the whole fucking time. Like, I am going to throw on Hip to be Square by Huey Lewis in the News. And I'm just gonna go like, well, uh, well, what's he say in the movie? Uh, try getting a reservation now, Paul. No, we're not gonna do Dad Rock Thursdays. They're probably a weekend day. Just doing what now? They're working on a deal uh, to help against the DMCA issues. Patrick Bateman for DVD? It would be great if it was. Devo party? Exactly. Ba 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 da 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 ba 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 ba. It's an RPG? No. <laughs> this is a horror game. So it all works out. They have something, but they're working on some kind of deal right now with a uh, record company or something like that. Sir, this is a win, news. <laughs> Alright, by the way, we're about to hit the best chase music in the whole game. So I hope you enjoy it. I actually really like this game. If you're wondering why don't I run it all the time, uh, speedrunning this game is kind of a pain in the ass. Really, like Genesis? Wait, why Genesis? Doesn't Genesis only have that one song, but it's not actually by Genesis, it's by Phil Collins specifically? What did Genesis do outside of Phil Collins making In the Air Tonight? This is a sincere question, I'm not trying to shit on Genesis. Exactly, Troy, thank you. I'm glad you understand. Land of Confusion? What fucking song is Land of Confusion? Ariel, hold on, we got it. Nice trick, uh. Also, we have the nice, nice trick. <laughs> land of I don't know Land of Confusion, I don't think. See, for like... Is there you're stuck at? Well, I guess you can get unstuck soon by watching the stream. I went the wrong way. That's fine, though. I mean, I went the right way, I just... I want to get this first. I don't even remember that one. I don't even remember it. I'm not gonna lie to you. Oh no, there he is! Thank <laughs> you. 
I got hit. Fuck, I greeted so hard for that. Let's not greet. Stop it! You can't get away! Alright, I'm gonna greet again. Fuck it. Yeah. Kratos, right? Tonight, tonight, tonight. You see. I think I can name another 80s band that I prefer much more. You know which one it is? In Excess. I fucking love In Excess. I listened to a lot of In Excess in high school, oddly enough, because my mom was in In Excess. So I was like, I know this, I know this band. They're fun. Like, The Devil Inside was on my rotation all the time. Correct. Need You Tonight's also a fucking banger. Shuba Shuba. I have a lot of bangers. This rock band? I didn't even know- wait, they, I didn't even know they grew up near you. I had no idea where they were from, but that's neat. Don't dox yourself, by the way, but that's really neat. I like that. I fucking love In Excess. Alright, not In Excess, not Lin Excess. I keep doing the thing where I read something and it confuses my perception of letters. One. It's fine. There we go. Promoter for DVD? I doubt it happens. For DVD, I'm gonna just do Bobby. Bobby Barros is better. Or, you know, damn. Make it damn. Very specifically, if you want to make DVD chapter uh, for Dead, uh, Dead by Daylight chapter Clock Tower, hear me out. Make it Dan Barros. Make it Edward. Make it Dan. He disappeared into a black hole and you know what happened to him. And then after, just make Jennifer the Survivor. It's really easy to do those two things. The powers already kind of make sense as well. To a degree, at least. The weapon's obvious. Make it scissors. The powers the only thing I don't really know. I really see the best power he has is jump scaring. Or corruption, I guess, but still. Stealth killer then? Yeah, he would definitely be a stealth killer. Now the best way of doing it would be to kind of allow him to access items that you like lockers or something. Or allow him to kind of like you know how, like, ghost facing can peer behind things? Make it so he can pop out of things. That'd be the best. But I don't know how to make that consistent without being broken, but he does- he needs the jump scare. He does need it. Maybe we can hide in lockers? That'd be neat, but I feel like it's too situational. I feel like the Demogorgon kind of already has that power, though, you know? Like, it would be essentially the Demogorgon. So, there's not really a good way to do it that's not already in the game. Hell, oh, Pinhead does it too. So. Summon an orphan meat mech. Perfect. Alright, I'm stunned. <laughs> Fuck, that's bad. When the Demogorgon license expire? It's already gonna expire. Don't hit me, please. Thank you. Yep. So in November you can't buy it anymore, but the Demogorgon will still be in the game, so you can't really make the Demogorgon again. That's why Survivor can teleport into the lockers and stuff. Right, but there's too many lockers. Also, like, too, I think, like, you know, like, Freddy can do that kind of. Like, teleport to gens. Demogorgon can teleport around the map. I feel like there's too many things that are too similar that already hit that point. I'm sure there's a way to do it that would make more sense. I just don't know myself because I'm that, you know, I need the power of game design. Oh, the locker interaction. I hear that. Also, chat, do you know that Alyssa has really long arms? Check this out. She has really long arms. There's an arrow underneath the stairs. However, Alyssa can actually reach it. She has really long arms. That's all I can say. Her arms aren't actually short. They stretch. She's the Stretch Armstrong of the Clock Tower series. But yeah, you need a scissor man of some kind to that'd make the most sense. Actually, you know what would work? Make a panic system. 
So make them reward chases or something like that. And then if people are panicked, they're likely to trip or something. Add tripping. There you go. Add tripping to Dead by Daylight. Make it similar to Bloodlust and make it tripping from the survivor side. Because the only idea is that he's an unrelenting killer, so how do you make him unique? Realistically, the best idea is to make survivors trip. Oh, yeah, survivors would bitch about it, it'd be funny. And I would like it. And it'd be, ac it'd be more accurate, too. No worries. Yeah, how the rest of the same guy. We had a good time. Oh, good fight. Holy shit. Good fucking fight. You gonna try all bosses next? Because I heard you, uh, you still have a tide, right? Any PVEs? Yeah, he tied world record earlier today. So Deeb's. Well, I don't know if he beat it after that, though. But I know he tied world record. Nice? Yeah. Dead Rising is getting way more active. I was asking earlier, though, do you try out Psycho Skip yet or all bosses? Personally, I think all bosses is cool. A lot of people seem to like Psycho Skip, though. I think that's a more competitive category. Then, no one really did new games, the problem. Ty, do we go in for Step 29 first? See, now you're gonna make me do the game again. That's not, that's not, I don't wanna do the game again. That's the problem. Not to do the game again. Can't just say that. You gonna grind? I don't think you're gonna grind. See, my problem is I'm jack of all trades, yep. Well, it happens. I have a very strict code of ethics. That code of ethics, I don't do shit offline. I don't wanna do anything that's offline. The DVD is equal to the DVD? Yeah, you got it. All bosses are off the record and then Dead Rising 1. I'm not gonna lie, by the way, Dead Rising 2 off the record any percent. I know you already have world record in that, but the new strat for uh, Brandon's pretty good. And Echo Ball Trades? Well, I mean, yeah. And well, that's also been the case with all the games I do. I, like, I try to not run a game more than once a week because I burn out way too easily that way. I don't think it's fun. Eventually, you burn out. I remember I tried grinding world record in this game, it got boring. I, got, I tried grinding world record in Haunting Ground, and at a certain point, you know, everyone burns out. It's still fun to do, but I don't want to do it in a world of record progression. Or fashion. While you switching, I hear that. Like, just keep being careful not to burn yourself out. That's all I'm gonna say. Burnout's a very real thing with games. Like, for your instance, for goals, like, it seems like after sub-29, just like... Yeah. Or in general, you can always mix things in. Yeah. Really, you know yourself better than I do. That's the important part. That's always the thing there. Cool, good shit. Yeah, we're talking about, uh, I guess, Dead by Daylight, and technically, I mean, they could do it. It doesn't really seem to be the case right now, but Sunsoft's open to licensing video games, and Clock Tower... I mean, cult classic, but I don't think it would do really well. I'm not going to lie to you. I feel like Alan Wake's the smarter idea. Make him a survivor. Make him just an individual survivor thing. It makes a fuck ton more sense than doing uh, anything else. For Like, for fuck's sakes, Alan Wake's powers flashlights. Like, come on. A whole game about flashlights and you haven't brought in Alan Wake? That's what I think, at least. That's what I think. Exactly. There's so many ways to make Alan Wake a survivor, too. If you really want to have the killer, you can probably find some way to blend in the darkness. More like Alan Slee. Exactly, Andy Moogle. Thank you. Thank you. Also, that's kind of the case with speedrunning as well. You know, I kind of wonder how guys like Karen my manager would burn out. So League of Legends is fun because it's actually competitive. They update the game all the fucking time. And uh, in addition to that, hold on. Mr. Scratch would be funny. <laughs> it's Alan Wake, but uh, he's wearing a black suit. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. 
I can't believe it. It's Alan Wake, but it's a black suit this time. Get through. But yeah, with League of Legends, though, in games like that, I kind of get a lot more how it's easier to avoid burnout. Like, think about it. Every game is different. You have climbing progression every season, and they're fucking great. And nice Devil Hunter, that's good to hear. Also, sorry for that weird mosquito noise, this little sucks. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that, that's really nice. I'd love to see it. Worrying me stressful? It can, but like, you know, I, I like playing League for seasons, like, I best able to play it a lot. And that's kind of what I'm mentioning with that. Like, I, I understand people like the ranked competition. Also, you have rewards. And then, as well, being able to stream League is probably a fucking blast. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, on my end, I don't really burn out because I play a lot of different games. Oh, wrong there. I play a lot of different games and I try to be competitive and, like, I'm more of the jack of all trades. Oh, when I play League, I play that way too. I always play what I felt like. I don't like doing one thing. If I keep doing one thing, eventually I'm like, I want to do something else. Oh, the Jacko pose trade. So it's all ass? No, no, I'm not thinking of streaming League. Um, I, I tell I got into streaming with League, funny enough. But no, my brother streams League. He's a League of Legends streamer. And he's been doing that for years now, and he's pretty good. You little Jacko? I appreciate all the fine ass posting that's been happening, but I don't know jack shit about Jacko. He's really good? Jacko or, or my brother? Because, yeah, he is. I'm not going to stream League personally. I don't want to do that one. I'm assuming you're talking about League. Yeah, I'm assuming you mean that. Also. No, I like playing MOBAs. I stopped playing League because I got into World of Warcraft oh, nice uh, And I didn't like the fact that League decayed me on a fucking diamond. I got kind of pissed at that, in fact. I don't know, this game. Like, dude, give me, like, 30 days. You can't give me, like, less than, like... Apparently it's stacking 10 days for League, which is stupid. Why the fuck do I need to play 10 games to wait 10 days? I don't have, like, 10 games for one day, so I can just have to wait another 10 days. That's like challenge level. Give me a month. Make it one game. Oh, nice make it trick. one game every 10 days. If it was one game every 10 days, I would totally do that so I can post. But, yeah. It's also not even challenger. It was fucking diamond. Well, I mean, for Dead by Daylight, I've been recommending a lot of people do it with Survivor Friends. I'll be doing good double game. I'm not gonna make a Jacko pose emote. That's too cursed. You know, friends, that's fair. Don't kill. Oh god, he's gonna kill me. Don't kill me. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Whip it. Whip it. Whip it. Keep whipping it. It does go out. It's great music. Keep whiffing it. Don't do it. Get away from me, pervert. Throw. Throw. Shit, I'm panicking. There it is. Don't hit, don't hit, don't hit. Don't trip. Get on the point. No! Fuck you. Oh my god. Oh, how's it going, uh, Kali? Hope you're doing good. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. Uh, this game has a good autosave. Well, I mean, good is relative, but... Chopper is awful? No, I got unlucky in the sewer tower. No, we're not going back to Clock Tower SNES. Alright, let's try this again. Let's play a saver this time, I think. Yeah, it was like right at the ending. She froze up. I got I got bad RNG. Ah, have fun with that cattle run. Enjoy the lurk. If you wonder what the RNG was, there's RNG that while you're running away, you can pause. There's nothing you can do about it. You just fucking pause. Good. He actually hit that one, though. Right, there's no butterflies. What? Where are the butterflies? 
Huh, weird. Ron's not dead. Actually, this might be a better idea. I didn't get the oh, butterflies nice this time. Oh, I mean, nice trick. Oh, I love when he does the double. He can cut himself oh, off. Nice oh. Trick. oh, there we go. No, it runs fine. It's absolutely fine. Shit. Let's play it safe. Let's just play it safe. Oh, nice trick. Nice trick. <laughs> oh god. How many nice tricks did we get? Five that time? I once had him say seven in a row. I've not, I only have ever beaten that. It makes me sad. Alright. So this is Chopper. This game uses something called subordinates, because there's like an entity. And honestly, it's kind of like uh, Dead by Daylight in a way. Alright, we're good. He's Where's your axe? Here. Alright, don't go hammer time. Just fucking chill. Chopper, fucking chill. Good. See, why can you do this the first time, you dick? What an asshole, chat. What an asshole. Dead hard for distance? I wish I had dead hard. I only had invisibility rings. There we go. There we go. Oh god. But yeah, the more I think about it though, yeah, the best way to do a Dead by Daylight or not a Dead by Daylight Clock Tower Killer, you have to implement a panic system. And then I think maybe if you make someone panic enough, they get exposed or something like that, or maybe they start tripping. You have to make it a bar that you can fill up by chasing, or by doing other acts. So maybe vaulting through windows and doing, like, you know, leaping out from areas causes the panic meter to rise up, and that makes them more, uh, clumsy. But survivors would bitch way too much about it. I know for a fact they'd bitch about it. There's not an easy way to make that system, unfortunately. But that's the best way to do it. Like, people mention, oh, what a clock tower killer. Yeah, it's like something between exposure to the doctor's madness, but also like the problem is people hate the doctor because uh, of his madness. So you want something kind of akin to that, but mainly through I think vaulting and shit like that. So it makes it harder to vault against him. So you have to more run away as opposed to anything else. But the only downside is he would absolutely be an M1 killer. So it kind of sucks. You love the doc? A lot of people do not like fighting doctors. I know this because I play doctor. It's sad, but I like the doctor. It's super slow. No, I feel like the exposed mechanics already kind of been done by Myers and uh, Ghostface. I think a more interesting thing would make survivors clumsier. Like maybe make it so if they hit a full panic meter, they can only slow vault or something like that, or they can't like they're they're clumsy vaulting, they're clumsy doing things, so their uh, coordination is off. Make it so it's like maybe you move not exactly. Sh make him kind of like how the killer wiggles, something like that. movement's a bit more shoddy. But then the problem is people would bitch a lot. They regularly make skill checks. I mean, I feel this would be a combination of things that culminate up. But then you have the lower panic by, I don't know, taking medicine or something. Or waiting. Literally just waiting in lockers. <laughs> and rewards waiting in a locker. Anyway, hopefully this fight goes well. I think it will. That would be funny. I mean, this is the best idea I can think about. Dude, I saw some of the other ideas. People are terrible trying to recommend Dead Bow Daylight shit. They always overtune it like fucking hell. I'm like, no, you can't overtune this shit, man. They'll be busted on release. Although, chat, did I ever tell you my best Dead by Daylight idea? Because I have one. And I think it's the best ever. Catch! Well, the way to reduce panic is normally hiding in lockers, taking medicine, or standing still. Well, like, you know, waiting. It could be like walking, for instance. Maybe you're forced into, like, you know, walking, or renovating some kind of Oh, it's 
good. Fire. Come on. Come on. Run. I fucking got that. Okay, perfect fight. Literally perfect fight. Is it re uh, reduce the time from boot to the first game? Then three minutes going before many is ridiculous. What do you mean? You mean Dead by Daylight? Cause yeah, it's fucking long. I hope that's- I hope that'll be okay, I wonder. So hopefully that's not gonna end poorly or anything. Yeah! Fuck yeah, good fight. Alright, the boss was actually really good. I lost a lot of time earlier, but you know what? We're not that far behind. We're not that far behind. Alright, thanks for the follow. Oh yeah, dude, DVD is a pain in the ass to get going. Ah oh, shit! I knew the safety strat. Uh, I know. I, I know where to find it. We're good. We're we're, we're good. We're good. We're good. We'll be aight. It was. Yeah, you got it. It was one of the worst leveling systems for new players. It really does. Hey, I played back in the old days. I got my prestige Meg and my prestige my my legacy prestige That's Meg and my me. legacy prestige Trapper. I kind of wish I would have done more and got a Neo one, but, uh eh. Or maybe just get Trapper or Legacy 2. Is that Ron Weasley? Yeah, but he shit, he shot himself. So his name is actually, uh... Budget Ron. Metal? Alright, you gotta be more specific. What do you like? Metal's the worst genre for this shit. What do you like? What are you into? Name bands. Metal's the one genre you have to work for it. What are you into? What do you currently listen to? You gotta tell me. Usually when name other genres, I can name things people don't know. But with metal, people are like, Oh yeah, I love that band. Oh yeah, that band's great. I love them. And then it's just me listing bands while they go like, Oh yeah, it's great. I have never heard of any one of those. What are they like? What are they similar to? You know, I want to name a band and hope to God you don't know it. Uh, I love this one, actually. They're fun. Oh, God. What are they called again? Oh, Woods of Yipress. Woods of w Yipress? Yipress? And then the song I like is called I Was Buried on Mount Pleasant Cemetery. If you know them, I will name another band or try my best to remember. You might not know them, though. They're fun. They're a very fun band. They're one I go to for metal bands. You know them? Fuck yeah. Check them out. Woods of Yipress. So, like, you know, Y-P-R-E-S. And Ari can just look up I Was Buried on Mount Pleasant Cemetery. Let me know what you think. You have to get the blood point part of your character and the part of your good for the coach survivor. Oh, yeah. It's good? Yeah. Necro Goblet. Oh, that sounds cool, Wonders. Oh yeah, Wonders, question for you, by the way, if you don't mind me asking. You do not mind me asking. Do you know what time Spectralite streams? I feel like you would know. Yeah, they're fun, I like that. They're very fun. I feel like her hours shifted a bit, and I have no idea when she's there on anymore. You are. There you are. Please move. By the way, chat, here's my favorite part of this game. So this is the Scissor Woman. Do y'all know what her name is? Could you imagine a horrifying, a terrifying name for uh, a woman called the Scissor Woman? Guess her name. By the way, you're gonna be hearing Snippity Snap a lot. Jemima? I said, get, you're not allowed, if you know what you're not supposed to guess. Her name's Jemima, like the pancakes. My other has been 9 to 10 p.m. Ah, gotcha. I hope she's been well. I hope she's been doing well. That would make more sense. Yeah, I'm always streaming during those hours. Alright. That would make a lot more sense. Wrong door. Fuck. That's fine. It's... It's showtime! Now, do you like to know the name of the Scissor Man? If you know it, don't guess it, by the way. The name of the Scissor Man, right here. Come on, Alyssa. 
is Ralph. No, it's Ralph. Ralph and Jemima are the scissor twins. Come on, I actually really am terrified of Ralph. He's a really good uh, character, actually. Uh, Ralph's probably one of my favorite parts of this game. I just wish his name wasn't so stupid. But genuinely, he's fucking horrifying. Jemima's rather sad. She's pretty easy to avoid. But Ralph is actually deadly. Really deadly, in fact. So be careful, this man. One. Two. Good. Good shit. Good shit. Well, see, Jaguar, I understand the uh, I understand the joke you're making there. I understand the, the meme. However, uh, the problem is, uh, she really likes her brother. She really is into her brother. Like, really, really into her brother. What's their story? Uh, they are subordinates from the Orient, quote unquote, and they've never been used by. Uh, they love each other very, very much. That's it. That he stays in the family? Exactly. Cool. Correct, the final boss's name is actually Dick Burrows. This is the only game, uh, the final boss is named Dick Burrows. Are they the Scissor Twins? Yeah, they wanted the, they wanted the Scissor Man back. So they wanted to make, uh, Scissor Man Ralph and Scissor Woman Jemima. They wanted to, you know, have the scissors, because Clock Tower is all about the scissors, really. And that's why. Oh, actually, I don't know about bonus twins. I guess twins are just cool. Ah! Fuck, I didn't do that right. Hold on. Alright, that works. We're good. I don't have to worry. Yeah! Piss off. Yeah! Not bad. Ooh, that's bad. Hold on. Perfect smiling thing, perfect. Yeah, I don't really know why I wanted to make them twins. Oh, I actually really like the concept art for this game, too. I feel like this game was made, like, maybe five years later. It probably would be fucking great. Because if you ever looked at the concept art of Scissor Man and Scissor Woman, it's so fucking good. And they had a lot of good ideas on what to do. Like, if Although, I guess in fairness, if this game wasn't made, we wouldn't have Haunting Ground, so I guess all the quality went to that game. Also, now it's time to look at the, the girl with the strongest legs in the world. Look at this. You want to see core muscles? I'll show you core muscles. It's better than Solid Snake. She is going to crouch while uh, shimmying. Imagine holding this pose. Do you realize the kind of leg strength you need for that? Holy shit. Without falling off the face of the fucking wall. Yeah, Alyssa has never skipped leg day in her life. I was going to Alyssa would be doing good. She does leg workouts on every day that ends in Y. She's all the time. Good for you, Alyssa. Good for you. Also, there we go. Alright, I think we should be good for the rest of the game. and dice. There it is. Oh god, I got slapped. Holy fuck. 
Exactly. Hey, I mean, preparation's key, you know? You know the safe. If you prepare for when, th when bad things happen, you're prepared for them. That sounds right. At least I think so. You miss Huey? We haven't gotten to Haunting Ground yet. We're on Clock Tower 3. That would be next. I need two waters. I have two waters. Oh, never mind. Like, I need two waters. I'm glad everyone's favorite seems to be Haunting Ground, by the way. I know a lot of people who specifically love Haunting Ground, and that makes me very happy. It's also why I wore my Haunting Ground shirt. I fucking love Haunting Ground. Slice and dice. <laughs> no! but yeah, kind of going into the history of Clock Tower, though, a lot of you start to, start to wonder at this point. Hey, wait a minute. So you you done Clock Tower stuff, right? Why is Haunting Ground here? Why is Nightcry here? Why is your mother here? That will be explained in time, but Haunting Ground, when we get to that game, is going to be a lot of the culmination of what this game was meant to be. Uh, originally, I'm pretty sure Capcom wanted to continue working on Clock Tower-esque games. However, it's a bit pricey to license out an IP. As well, when you know that IP has a chance of bombing, you really don't want to invest too much funds into it. Haunting Ground kind of became the, uh, I don't know, the recycling of everything in Capcom. The recycled assets from games like RE4 and Devil May Cry, the recycled assets from this game heavily. Uh, a lot of Haunting Ground's aesthetic and design there choices were just absolutely the uh, mark of the predecessor. Oh, no. And it ended up working really well. And they were able to make, a, make another Clock Tower style game as a result of that. Soon. Well, not Ricardo CBT, Lorenzo CBT. Ricardo gets the suck. He gets the gachi gasm and the gachi base. But it will be coming, don't you worry. The real question is though, do we rock the frog uh, Kigurimi? Do we rock the do we rock the frog onesie? We could. We could. I do have it readily available. But it is hot. And mildly inconvenient. Let's need more water. It's a long night. Right? I can't believe the frog one's in such a scandalous outfit. Uh, doors are always going to keep you safe. Exactly, though, Phoenician. Exactly. The socks are one of the most important parts of Haunting Ground. Like, the absolute most important, I think. And let's go. Alright, good RNG or bad RNG? Let's see, I'm gonna go for the yellow, yellow knights. This is a strategy I came up with, chat. Your very own Ignisus strategy. So, what's Yellow Knights? Yellow Knights means you say fuck all the cycles. Uh, you have to go as quickly as possible, you cannot dilly-dally in the slightest. Once I'm in this room, there's a universal cycle of these knights cutting and moving. So, what does that mean for you, or what does it mean for us? What that means is that if I get hit by the knights, it will one-shot me. There's no way to survive. So, if I mess up my movement at all while I'm down here, the knights will actually be able to go fast enough to kill me. However, if I just yellow it and go as quickly as I can, in theory, I should be able to do something like this. And that is Yellow Knights. Now, that didn't look like much, but if I was thinking even like one or two seconds off, the Middle Knight would have sprung and instantly killed me. Uh, now, not only do I have to do this once, I have to do it twice. So I have to make sure I move fast enough for both cycles. Uh, the old strat was just wait for the Knight. It's slightly shorter. It's slightly longer, not shorter. Yes. Now that Yoko. What the fuck happened to my audio? There we go, holy shit. By the way, I want to show this off because it's really fun. If you've never seen this cutscene, this describes the game perfectly. I love this cutscene. 
so fucking much. Oh boy. Oh no, they killed Ron Weasley. But don't worry. I know he was speaking and moving. But don't worry. I'm sure it'll be fine. Welcome, Alyssa. That was just a dress rehearsal. Now let the show begin. Lights, camera, action! It was actually the decoy Ron Weasley. The real Ron Weasley was under the table. <laughs> Why would they make a living decoy? By the way, I really love this game. As much as I like Forget crash on it, I really do love the game. I think it's really fucking fun. Run, run. The main reason is for casually this game has horrible power scaling, and most people don't get to this point. By the way, I like how they're saying they need an answer, and they're kind of just dancing around her. And use styrofoam? Well, how the fuck was he moving and talking is my question. Also, you know, let me show you more batshit insane plot points in this game. Like, I love the delivery, I love the acting, like... Here's another one. Into a scream metal? Define scream metal, but probably not. It depends for me. I like nice voices. I like really nice voices. It was like Banshee met. Oh wait, oh wait, you're doing another song in Korea. Hold on, watch this cutscene really quick. Watch this cutscene. I don't really do scream metal much. Uh, I, I, you mean like heavy? I usually call it like Cookie Monster metal because it reminds me of the Cookie Monster. Well, thank you, Delicious Mist. So I, I don't really do much of that. It was like Banshee. I guess it's slightly better, but even still, heavy metal. But I don't all heavy metal though. Also, you're gonna brain the pool of heavy metal. I know my basics, but again, it hurts the point where like, I'll recommend something like Children of Bodom. I know, I just watch. This kind of explains how batshit insane this game is. Want to scream and growls? I mean, I'd prefer just actual singing if I can. Like, I like Symphony X. Let's go with that one. If you don't know Symphony X, let's go with that, Deebs. Lord Burroughs. Of Sins and Shadows by Symphony X. I think. Hear me. Why not that one? You know, go with the. Uh, I know of your pain and Go with Inferno. Beloved daughter Annabelle. Symphony X. Let's go with that. Just before the ritual of engagement, my love for Elisa led me to kill her father, Philip. Oh, Entity watch. was everything you're doing. Is it all oh, because gotcha, of gotcha. you? Yeah, I guess it Do makes you sense. you want me to resurrect Lord Butters after 400 years? Yeah, the entity. To unite us and to enact the ritual of engagement with Alyssa's blood? Is that what you want? Do you truly want me to stab my dearest granddaughter in the chest? <laughs> well, that doesn't sound bad. Once the deed is done... I will be with Alyssa forever. Return to this earth, Lord Burroughs. Join with me, and we will complete the ritual of engagement. Well, there you go. Enter my body. Yeah, so this game is more than weird. This game is kind of weird. The whole idea of the game is that you have two things. You have entities and rooters. Um, the magical girls are rooters, and if you have the family of rooters, you have powers from like the age of, like, I don't know, 14 to 20. Well, your most powerful is at 15. Now, the way to become an entity is to stab the rooter, you know, to rip out the rooter's heart and, like, eat it or some shit like that. And then you become one with the rooter powers and you get the power for, like, a while. So it's actually a really dark game because the plot of the game is that your grandfather is trying to rip out your heart and eat it. Or become one with you, which, you know, I, I don't want my grandfather becoming one with me. That sounds kind of creepy. I mean, kind of like how Haunting Arnold that might mean. What does it mean in Haunting Ground where someone might want to be conjoined with another person? It's kind of that level creepy, I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a horror game, and it's kind of, it's supposed to be kind of creepy, so I, I get it. Also, I think I'm dead. Nope. Really got. We just walk into Clock Tower 3. It says in the title. But that's the plot point of the game. They use the concept twice? I mentioned Haunting Ground's literally just reusing every single asset they can. I love the game, but... It is a big smorgasbord of reused assets, concepts, and ideas. 
like, Hauntagon being so good is kind of a surprise, actually. Like, I'm actually not sure how they manage that. But I love the game, but, uh... Yeah, it is a great series, but still. Also, time for the only easiest boss fights, and one of the Pepe Jammers, or the Cat Jams. I was Rat Jam. Or Bone Zone D. We need the, the frequency of Bone Zone D for this one. Here we go. By the way, enjoy the song. It's going to last for all, like, maybe 30 seconds. It is fine in the game. One. Two. All right, song's done. Back to the normal song. Correct, Halo Crew. Correct. By the way, when you kill her, she just explodes into, like, confetti. It's fucking funny. And now we fight the Scissor Man in the actual boss fight. It's fine. Come on, Alyssa. Oh god, I have bad RNG. It's fine. Oh, no, that worked out. Okay, that's fine. I made a hit, but you know what? Ooh. Don't do it! God damn it. Ralph, you suck! Don't yaha! Don't do it! I said don't! God damn it. Horrible RNG, by the way. Alright, cool. He gets Spirit Bomb? This is really good. That's fine? Good. Alright, I think that actually wins the fight. So he has... Like, I really got unlucky because he can also arc them, which is like, alright, that's fine. What do you mean they'll never get the rights to use the Clock Tower characters? It's easier than you think, uh, Zealus. The Clock Tower characters are currently up for licensing. They can actually do that, believe it or not. Oh, you're not dead yet. Holy shit. Yep. Is there a Clock Tower a period piece? What do you mean a period piece? It was based on the movie Phenomena. Yeah, the issue is I don't know if they want to do it. Clock Tower 3 is pretty much entirely unrelated. They made this game because they want to use the IP name. And again, nothing relates. Correct, this is the Sailor Moon horror game. Uh, Capcom didn't make Clock Tower. I mean, they don't own Clock Tower. They made this game, but Capcom made a lot of games they don't actually own. Game devs do that all the time, or they'll make a game uh, by getting the license license that licensed out. But the owner of the game is still not going to be that, or the owner of the license still won't be that. The owner of the license is a company called Sunsoft, and they do VR games. However, they have a website where they list Clock Tower under license properties, so you can license it. It just, I don't know if it'll actually work. So, man, is woman engaged? Uh, they're brother and sister, but let's say they're Alabama brother and sister. So, you're not going to work. Correct, they're they're real Kakona. Correct, Agony. Oh, very correct. And of course also by cursed, it is cursed. I can miss the whole game? Oh my no. Oh I made something. Exactly. They're, uh, they're really friendly, which I'll say that. Capcom also made the video game, The Nightmare Before Christmas, with his revenge. Also, chat, you know what's funny? Alright, I have to ask if this is a petty move. I have to ask if this is petty. So, my YouTube video that I uh, got on my actual TV from Nightmare Before Christmas, um, hey, I'm glad you liked that. It's a, I love Symphony X, they're a really good band, I've only seen them live for a while. So on the Nine for Christmas speedrun leaderboard, for some originally the rules you needed physical hardware because you know that's smart, and they get separated by emulator and hardware. But for some reason they later made a dumb rule that wrecked on that. I have no idea the fuck why that was made. So they added an emulator and uh, console leaderboards together. 
So this means that my year old emulator times that are worse than my actual console time uh, ended up being the better runs for my submitted runs, right? Is it petty of me to remove all my emulator times from the leaderboard and only then my console and up there? Let's fuck that. Put that up there. Eric Tarlow, no? I have some choice words. I don't say that much right now. I have some choice words about that situation. Alright, so now it's time for the final boss. So, the final boss is actually really easy in this game. Exactly. Nuke the board? I already wiped out my emulator runs and put in my console time. It's last, but I already did it. I already, I already did it. <laughs> anyway, here's this fight. Check this out. Every time he says blah, I'm gonna hit him with a five charge arrow. One. I wanna count this. This is Dick Burroughs. Uh, Lord Burroughs combined with Dick Hamilton. I think Dick Burroughs. So the way the strategy works, I want to hit him with about six five charge arrows. That's going to cause a binding to happen. I want to bait out each one because if I get binded by three, I fucking die. One more to do it. A perfect fight. So, uh, what's this dude wearing? He kind of looks like Cervantes from uh, Soul Calibur. I was wearing Dan Jackie. Going into this now, it takes three spirit bombs to kill him. The correct Sinister Six. Uh, the SNES version or the Super Famicom version never came out outside of Japan. Now, here's round two of the strat. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna run against this wall. Bait the hit, and we're gonna buy him again. Now, it's gonna be really easy. I'm gonna pelt his back full of arrows. Wait, I didn't hit him? Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is awkward. Weird, I wonder why I didn't hit him. Anyway. Worked out anyway. So, there's actually a strategy in this game that they never tell you about. If you angle or get the subordinates in the right chain, you can instantly get a binding. Where's the green top? She imagined the girl did away. And by that, I mean the entity decided to change us out of our clothes and give us a Roman toga. One more. One, two, three. I might get hit. Nope. Okay. And then, pump him full length. That might hit. Okay. And GG. Well, not GG just yet. Not GG just yet, but that wins. I also have good sleep, Deeves. Congratulations, and sleep well. Ooh, crack. Ooh. Anyway, we're gonna watch the final cutscenes. I always fucking do it. Runs not over yet, runs over after the cutscene. Yeah! Check it out. So here's the climax of the game. I just beat the final boss, game's not over yet, we lost our weapon. Heat of the moment, how do you think it's gonna end? Gonna be dramatic, hanging from the cliff, granddad over us? It's definitely gonna be something really, you know, badass, right? Oh, it doesn't gonna be weird pictures of an old man, would it? Dearest, Alyssa. Always were a spirited child. But that's it now. Oh, is this one? Now be a good girl and grab my hand. What's the matter, Alyssa? Don't you want to live happily with me for all eternity? Never! <laughs> Why the fuck would they Alyssa! show those? You belong to me! Why would that be the subtle little moment? It's a fucking, like, fucking PowerPoint. Alright. I do like the ending of the game, though, because it doesn't actually end on the boss fight. It ends right here. Today is Alyssa's 10th birthday. And... GG. I fucking love those pictures. It's better than the Dead Rising Jazz. Alright. Also, here's the ending. It's like a Saturday morning cartoon. It really is Sailor Moon. Give up. 
grandfather. I won't allow the ritual to happen. Over it. Never. I play. Why the fuck does he make that noise? This goes from badass horror game to like Saturday morning cartoon. Oh, it's the end of the episode. You gotta finish it up. Yes, those pictures are the game. In fact, they're about to come back. Watch. No hands. No hands. She is rude. I wasn't kidding. Watch. You can see my hands. No, she just got the sword, because she put together her mom's necklace, and that made a sword. Also, the clock tower three is broken. Oh, there it is. Why the fuck is that picture a major thing? Okay, so this is the ending of this game. Uh, it's a pretty fun one. Uh, and for us, we still have four games left, actually. We still have a good amount of games. Uh, the next two games will be a bit shorter, though. So that's going to be nice. Like, all the other games are sub one hour. I think this is the longest game in the whole marathon. So, what does this mean? Well, first, you're going to enjoy our ending. Next, I need to plug in and set up my PS tri triple. Let me actually do it right now, in fact. I'll part of that right now, at least. It is fun. I have no idea. It's all mocap, though. So, possibly, actually. And then we get the ending. Dennis! Alyssa! Dennis! Hmm. Mom, we did it. We did it, Mom. So right now, the plan is we're going to be moving over to Haunting Ground. You still have a lot of game left, so plenty of time. I do need a pee, so I'm going to stand up and be right back. That being said, I hope that you've all been enjoying the stream thus far. If you have been, feel free to shoot us a follow here on Twitch. As well, we have a lot of social media like Discord, Instagram, and Twitter, which are great ways to keep it up to date. I'm going to do a quick be right back. I recommend you stand up, touch your toes, do what you need. Um, I, no, her, her mom came back to give her a hug. That's it, Butterfly Outlet. As well, uh, before I go really quick, I'm going to say mods are in charge, and I'm just going to throw out the whole September shillings, why not? Subs are currently cheap. If anyone is interested in helping with that, you're more than welcome to. Otherwise, I'm going to be right back. I need to pee. How's it going to play the mailer? Next is going to be Haunting Ground, so enjoy the credits while I go do that. I'm going to play a brief battle waiting it's just credits, nothing else. Be right back. Mods are in charge. I'm watching you. As you hope you're doing good, though, Vlad the mailer. Hope you're doing good. Haunting Ground.
Pensame. Is that the fucking game music? What the fuck is that noise? Why is that the mu- Why was that the music? What the fuck was that? Nice lad emailer. Nice. I'm glad you enjoy that emote. It's a nice emote. Precursor to dubstep. I thought like I thought like my TV was fucking breaking. Like holy shit. Clock Tower. All right. So that game was developed by Capcom. The series is owned by a company called Sunsoft. Alrighty. One moment, I need to do some plugins. Luckily, we're uh, back to the area for using headphones. A few outs. I say, don't you know? You say, you don't know. I say, take me out. When the fuck is my controller? Do do do. Do 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 do. There it is. And take me out. Is the next game good? Uh, this is the best game in the whole franchise. So you're damn right it is. Why, why is there a Fez Redemption? Because we have a Fez. However, chat. Instead of the Fez Redemption. It's been a while. It's been a while. I know. It's been a while. Hold on. Please don't break. I hope that was the right thing. Hold on. Yeah. Nope, that was me. Yeah, I don't know why I was popping. It's my capture card. <sighs> cool. There we go. There it is. Sweet relief. I apologize, chat. I apologize. We can do Sire House of the Dead 3, Infamous Festival of Blood. Ooh. Ooh, I'll have to close that and reopen it, but that's fine. For right now, open up Demento. Hold on. Nope, it's, uh... It's something weird. Thanks for the follow. There we go. I hope this will be fine. As in Zanga. Alrighty. There we go. So, time for my personal favorite. And uh, a lot of you might know this game quite well. If you don't, well... Still staticky. Should be staticky like that. Oh, hold on. There we go. That's better. Hopefully, it's not too loud. By the way, I do need to re-audio balance this because I've been jumping a lot. Uh, chat. Let me know how the audio is. Uh, actually, for those of you who are here, for those you're still around, how's the audio? It looks like it's at a decent level, but can possibly go down a, t a notch. So let's try this out, like maybe out here. That sounds like it might be good. I hope he doesn't grow a fob. By the way, apparently Ricardo flicks are most used emote. So it's good for you. Good to hear. I mean, the intro gets louder. It's about to get louder. 
There it is. I fucking love the intro of this game, by the way. She looks like RE5 Jill? RE5 Jill looks like Fiona. They made this character first. You can see a telly. Thank you, Lestrix. Demento, also known as Haunting Ground. Perfect, okay, good, 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 good. Yes, everyone's gonna say this reminds you of Jill. This character came first. Jill reminds you of this character. Fiona's the Chad, Jill is the, you know, if Fiona's the Chad, then that means, you know, Jill is also the Chad. Anyway, correct, uh, this model happened first though. They reused it for RE5 for some reason. Yep, this is the end of the life cycle PS2. All right, chat question. Do we do the frog suit? I think my room might be too hot for the frog suit. Maybe the in-game frog suit. Yes? I don't know. You know what? We don't do this often. I haven't done it in a while. Okay. Okay. You know, cowgirl can't be used. Only frog. Only frog. At the very least, I'll do it like this. Right, it's a frog hoodie. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll be a frog hoodie. Or a frog sludge. A frog, let's go. It's gonna not sell well. End of the life cycle, PS2. Frog cape? No, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm wearing the sleeves. I even have little frog hands. We don't get to do this often, so. It's been a while. I like the frog. Hold on. I fell back. Alright. Good, good, good. Now, in exchange for me putting on the frog suit chat, I'm just going to say that it's current. <laughs> any, any form of. What the word? Do you guys know about Twitch Prime? No one has to do it, but I'm gonna say it. Anyway, let's go! Buddy Geisus, why are you shilling? Because I'm doing this frog incentive for free. As I want to wear the frog costume. It's been a while. But I will. I've leveled up. It's the frog costume. You see, back in the day, I used to uh, make this go for money. Oh, Prime Gaming. I remember Prime Gaming subs. Who, who could have forgot about Prime Gaming? But yeah, normally I made the frog suit a thing where it's like when I played Haunting Ground, if it was like, oh, if we hit a certain amount of subs, I'll just do that. But I haven't done Haunting Ground in so long that I, I'm down. Like, it, it's fun. But thank you, Assisted. Very much. I think it was subbed a frog. Well, thank you, Never Milk Wire. Also, if you're wondering why a frog costume, well, let me show you. If you don't know anything about Haunting Ground, Haunting Ground is a game that features a variety of New Game Plus content. The New Game Plus content is absolutely better for running the game, so we are going to be doing that. Why do we do that? It, trust me, it's just way, way better. So she wears a frog costume. I, too, am something of a frog myself. Normally, you, some of you might know, I actually don't like New Game Plus. I actually like New Game normally. Why is Haunting Ground different? Haunting Ground's New Game Plus gives you, like, two items, and they're all quality of life upgrades. So, that's why. That is the reason why. Alright, time for our first fight. I like this fight a lot. Exactly, Manicore. Also, chat, feel free just to spam frogs throughout the run if you like. Post frog as much as you want. She is cute. I don't have a cowgirl outfit. And the cowgirl outfit we don't use because the major thing we need for the speedrun is the ability to kick. 
Um, the gun kick just isn't good enough for what we want. Uh, all the costumes actually do have uh, upgrades and such. Also, hold on. Um, let's do this. Meth. We're gonna make some meth. Frogs, exactly. Uh, next will be Adamus. It will then be Morgan. And Powder. Alright, after that will be Salt. By the way, this is really my favorite part of the run. Salt. Sulfur. Yep, you just tackle. Uh, you can actually beat the first enemy with stamina, although you might run out. Uh, salt, sulfur, mercury, RL, and then uh, salt again. But it's actually saltatio. Alright, so if you guys don't know about, uh, you know, uh, currently what will happen. Chat, I'm going to give you a PSA. This is what happens if you try going clubbed dur uh, clubbing during the era of COVID. You see, it's actually uh, one of the saddest stories ever told. So we're going to go meet this golem, and we're going to give him saltatio. This is what happens when you go clubbing during COVID. Having a nice and good time, doing your dances, doing your little dances, you know. You know how this goes. Because I wanted to buck an L. However, once you get back home, this happens to you, as you decided to go outside with a deadly disease in the middle of a packed club and took meth. So what happens? This happens. The moral of the story is don't do meth or you'll fall apart and die. Meth, not even once. Exactly, Poltrixie. Not even once. Don't do meth. Now I tell- Well, you're gonna fall apart and die. It's too late for you. I'm sorry. You killed him. You wanted to dance, and you killed him. You're laughing. You've murdered a meth golem, and you're laughing. You think that's funny? Killing an innocent golem? I do. And I'm tired of pretending it's not. Yeah, so the golem lore. Why does the golem just fucking die, you're wondering? So, this is actually based on uh, Hebrew lore, believe it or not. Uh, if you guys do not know, uh, there are a few ways of bringing him to life. Uh, there are two words, uh, emeth and meth. Uh, in Hebrew, I don't know the exact specification, the word emeth means life, meaning to animate. Um, believe it or not, there's a lot in the, uh, the Old Testament about Jewish golems. So, emeth will bring golems to life, and it will allow them to uh, be your friends. However, there's also meth, which is death. And, you know, inserting death into him allows him to die. What does the golem drop if you kill it? Good question, actually. He drops a necklace that I think helps prevent panic to some degree. But we're going to be getting better accessories later, so we're not going to worry about that. I actually really like this game. And you can kind of tell right now, you know, you see the castle assets. No, not Emet. Emeth. And uh, in Hebrew, it's a reference to life. Like I'm not even I'm not kidding when I say this. Like in in Hebrew lore, there is actually just the idea of sent, uh, you know creation, creating sentient golems. And I think what they do is they help uh, protect them. Oddly enough, I learned about that from I have no mouth and I must scream of all things. So there's that. Alright, now you're gonna meet Huey. Huey's a good boy. He's also that dog in RE4. Yeah! So now the game can officially begin. The early game is mostly the same. Well, right, but it's an Easter egg if you end up knowing about, you know, the, the lore. Like, you end up knowing about, uh... I guess, Jewish phrases, words, stories, you actually get rewarded. You actually get a stronger weapon, because you know about the, you know, what E-Meth and Meth mean. It rewards the player for weird knowledge. Anyway, this game's kind of weird, because this is one of the only games that exist that have a, uh, a dog. Alright, 
I may have fucked it up slightly already, but it's okay. So, Huey is a pain in the ass to control. Uh, the way he works is I'm going to be giving Huey certain commands at certain times. Uh, Huey's brain will overwrite if I give him too many commands, so I don't want to spam it. I want to tell him every now and again, hey, please do blank. Go, Huey. Go, Huey. There we go. Go, Huey. I think it was here, actually. Go, Huey. There we go. The more you play the game, the better Huey will be. But in the early game, Huey actually doesn't listen nearly as much. Exactly, RPG for life. Huey. So a large part in breaking into Haunting Ground speedrunning is do you know how to control Huey? Do you know what you're doing? And part of the pattern is you notice I'm saying Huey at certain times. I can't stress this enough. Like, watch, he'll just stop right about the corner. Once I go up, once he stops, I'm going to call him again. I want Huey to hit certain points before I'm spamming orders. Uh, this is actually a manipulation I ended up finding for the game, and it helped quite a lot. Uh, there's also RNG values that you need to pay attention to for Huey. Um, depending on how it goes, no. it can vary. You actually should Come scold on. Huey as well in the early game. No. Come on. Come on. Bark, bark, bark. Hold on, where's your bark? Huey. All right, God. I also had bad RNG. A lot of people don't want to scold the dog, and they don't realize that you can't have a good Huey if you don't scold him. Uh, the way the mechanic works is the more you play the game, the more you uh, give Huey orders. If he has good orders and he respects you, uh, his dog skill Go goes Huey. up. However, uh, there's also ways to kind of buff it faster. A good example is if Huey doesn't do a command, you can scold him, and then he will listen to the next command ideally. And you can actually try to make that work in your favor. Also, in accordance, if he does a good command and you uh, compliment him, or you, you tell him good boy, that will also give you points. It's a weird invisible point system, but everything we need Huey to do is very specific. And the skips in this game are actually really neat. This is actually one of my favorite games of speedrun. I just stopped grinding for old record because it was really a pain in the ass to get everything right. Namely, Debilitus. The early game Debilitus sucks. Yeah, it's a really cool speedrun and a really cool system. I'm happy they took it for GDQ a while back. Yep, you have to train Huey effectively in a minimal amount of time. Yeah, and you make Huey jump down the ladder by, uh, you know, telling him to come here. Right now, Huey's following me. Bad RNG could make Huey bad. Let's hope he doesn't. There's backup strats and everything, though. So right now, the strat we're going to be doing is this might not work, but we're going to crouch right here. I got it. Wow, first try. So if you crouch right there, Debilitus won't hit you. You walk out, and then right when you get to the new screen, you just run. Now, there's moments in this game where you need Huey, and you don't need Huey. Also, this game heavily relies on audio-based RNG. So, what's going to happen is right now that panic music is going. Unlike Clock Tower 3, if I'm currently being chased, I'm unable to do anything. So, uh, that's bad. Uh, if the music stops, you're actually able to ram the store. It's slightly faster. However, the music's going, you cannot ram the door. Uh, depending on what the music's doing at certain times, you need to be very careful. However, uh, the setup's really consistent that I have, and you can always make it to this door. Uh, this door is exclusive to uh, New Game Plus. However, uh, the new game door would be the room I was just in. So, I'm now going to take the Adamus, Morgan, and Powder stuff. And that's going to make three items for me. Uh, this is kind of the new game plus. Now, if you're wondering what do these do, uh, Powder gives me a random chance to do more damage. Adamus gives me essentially infinite stamina, so I don't have to worry about the stamina system. And uh, Morgan lets me be invisible if I stand still for long enough. Uh, this makes the run mu much more consistent and marathon safe. Adamus as well is a major quality of life shift because uh, the alternative is grabbing like eight chamomiles, and it's fucking awful. Uh, just trust me when I say that. It's really fucking bad. Outside of that, there's virtually no uh, difference. If you're wondering, oh, what about new game, new game plus eight chamomiles and less RNG. My darling. You change your name, Crestfallen. Now you're Stinky Whistleteats. Also, we are the Frogman. Hope you're doing good. Also, that is I I know that I know that uh, that artist right there. That is a degenerate artist, my friend. That is a very degenerate artist. I'm just gonna say that right now. I'm not gonna say any more than that. But that is a degenerate emo right there. I didn't know they streamed on Twitch. That's neat. I love them. Same. Same. Yep. Or them? Or them, yeah. 
We're currently in frog mode. Anyway, the just doesn't matter either because kicking out all summon. I, I don't know what they, I don't know what they are. That's why I'm saying them because I don't know. I just know they generated a lot of interest in mines, and let's not go uh, much further than that. <laughs> I was to say that. And for the follow, by the way. <laughs> Uh, uh, oh, you're, there you go. Alright, anyway, we have a bit of RNG. Let's see how this goes. Let's see how this goes. Oh, open the door. Holy shit. There you go, Muse. Oh, God, it's the emote. It's too perfect. I'm glad those are animated emotes. Okay, that's good. That's good. All right, he was in the room, by the way, so that's good. Those mimes. I know the mimes very well. They're good emotes. They're really good emotes. Yeah, I go sub. We gotta get the mime. I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of debating on subbing. <laughs> I like having mimes. Anyway, back to the game really quick. I also hope you're doing good. So now we're back to Huey sucking. We get rid of Debelitus by using Huey, and now we have to rely on Huey to hope to God he follows us. Uh, Huey's values are really weird. Sometimes he listens. Sometimes shit like that happens. For the most part, you need Huey to consistently follow you. If he get trails behind, that's really bad. Uh, this is kind of what happens to a lot of runners. You can get a really good Huey's or really bad Huey's. Huey. But you essentially want him with you the whole time. Alright, here's a strat I found. Huey. Call Huey, wait right about here, and then oh, you're going. For some reason, standing right there works. I don't know why. Uh, a lot of the commands for Huey are based on position. So if you stand at a certain angle, Huey will almost always do it in one to two commands. Well, Huey's a lot better now than it used to be. Huey. Like, me finding manipulation on Huey was very important to the run, I think. Oh, those are going malice. Uh, I don't actually know how it's uh, going up and it's really hard to knock him down. Correct black hole in deep space. I wore the frog onesie free of charge. However, I'm hoping to accepting any incentives to wearing the frog onesie. Go, Huey. Go, Huey. So I'll say any incentives are appreciated but not required for the frog. That is my cost of wearing the onesie. I'm going to plug that. And my Instagram. Follow that. I want to get more followers on Instagram. Almost at 300. And I think that's fair. I don't think anyone's gonna complain. Maybe you're doing good at Black Hole New Space. It's okay. My Instagram or the frog? Oh god, assisted, you got it. So there we go. Go, Huey. That's all mimes! See, if they stream, obviously we have to raid over to them. That's what I learned. We have to raid over to them, clearly. That's the plan, right? Hey, Phoenician. Thank you very much for the two gifted subs. Going to uh, Hell Kid Monus and the Gib. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors, and thank you very much. It is much appreciated. I'm glad that you enjoy the frogs. Oh my god! Zanga, thank you, by the way. I saw that. I saw that. It's fucking degenerate, but thank you. I wonder when they stream. I don't. I didn't know they even were on Twitch. I thought they were on like the other uh, art sites. I mean, like actual art sites, not like you know anything dirty. You came back to Froggy. You did. I decided to put on the frog because it'd be fun. I did get gifted a sub to them, correct. Slap, 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 clap, 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 Thank you for the hundred bitties. Slap, 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 clap, clap, yeah, Zanga did it. Zanga gifted slap, me a sub slap, to Derpixon. And it's a power, we'll give him a sub. Two. Three. Yeah. Welcome back, Relever. Welcome back. And I decided I haven't worn the frog costume in a while. I haven't ran this game in a while. 
You know, I'm kind of missing Haunting Ground a lot. Why did I stop running this game? And then I run this game again, and I realize how fucking much it sucks to not, uh, to grind for world record in this shit. I can imagine. I can only imagine. Alright, do I get the RNG? That's an Ender Source. Oh, I don't know when they're on, that's the problem. Like, it, you know, I can only raid people who are on when I finish streaming. And it's not really I raid whoever, like, I can't raid someone who ends before me, for instance. I don't know when they stream, that's what I was saying. I didn't even know they had a channel. By the way, I already got gifted a sub, so I can probably- Yep, there it is. Cool, I'm gonna- Oh, I just hit follow, fuck yeah. There we go. There's an AR getting data, hold on. You start some shit? You did. You absolutely did. It is a beautiful PS2 game. Uh, the reason why is because this is kind of end of the lifespan PS2. So, it's not exactly uh, early. This is like, I think 2006 at this point. You know, Clock Tower 3 would be 2003. Like, 2006, we're already kind of entering the next gen. So, a lot of games just didn't really flourish that well on the console. Well, there you go. There you go. Well, then we have more anime emotes coming our way soon. I have some interesting ones, interesting ideas, but we just have to get them uh, worked out. Although, uh, we do have the issue of my artist got injured, so I'm, I guess we're kind of waiting on that currently. Which is unfortunate, but, you know, it happens. And I'm going to tell them about your sympathies, chat. We need some little eckies? Well, we're currently waiting on that. Also, we have some. We have some. Unless you mean like a run emote like that. Currently, I was going to make a dance emote. Uh, I was going to try a ring style emote, and then... Uh, I think a days as I made the last one. I'm currently waiting on my artist, and she got injured, so we're, we're waiting. I should run this game more often. I, I, got, I got kind of burned out. How's this game reconnected to Clock Tower? I mentioned it earlier. This game is Capcom's answer to wanting to make a Clock Tower sequel. Uh, they didn't want to make a direct Clock Tower sequel because, well, the license costed money, and the Clock Tower 3 fucking bombed. So this is kind of a uh, smorgasbord of assets and was meant to be a clock tower sequel. But now this is kind of an original story that's entirely based on the clock tower style and the clock tower way. Also, God, I'm remembering why I don't wear frog suit all the time. I'm fucking bo I'm boiling like a frog. I'm dying out here. <sighs> not you. Ah, uh, they're Boiling like a frog. There we go. Man's croaking, man's croaking. It's the game she- what do you mean, Juho? Where's Yasha? I oh, don't know, she probably went to bed. I mean, there's always VODs. Yeah. Alright, good. Is she missing? That's all good. Haunted Ground probably returns back to the regular schedule in all honesty. I kind of had a nice break from this game that it's ready to come back, I think. Because, like, Clock Tower SNES, as much as I like the idea of the 10 for 10 grind, I'm, I kind of, you know, I, I got my world record I really wanted, and then I got a few others, and I'm like, ah, I think Haunted Ground might be coming back next. And it's kind of weird, because we always hit certain moments of certain games. Like, I know Dead Rising's coming back... Haunting Ground probably comes back. Especially since Swordfish beat my C ending. I don't think he beat by much. I can probably get that back pretty quickly, I think. I haven't done it in a hot minute. And it's funny, too, when I talk about this as a speedrunner, very often I paint a target on my back. Like, there's a permanent target on my back for speedrunning. If I get a world record, I, I, I'm going to lose it eventually. I don't think I've ever held a world record, like, you know, that people weren't trying to beat, like, to some degree. I see a lot of games have, like, these world records where, like, nobody touches the fucking game ever. And then I finally get something, and then it's like, oh, nope, 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 nope. Mine. We might be having boiled frog. But here's the thing. That's a double-edged sword. Well, you know, it's not nice to have a target painted on your back. It's also really good. Because one, it means that people don't like losing to an ape. Two, you know, it's kind of an honorary thing that people really like competing with my times. You can wait for Remothered? I don't want to grind Remothered. For Tormented Fathers, the I, I, the weird, uh, the guy who moderates the leaderboard never made the fucking load remover. 
So I, I don't want to do uh, Tormented Fathers. Broken Porcelain. I might do that. If we mothered? Oh, what do you mean? I'm confused. I don't know what you're talking about, Joe. And yeah, healthy competition is definitely something that exists. And then the more you speedrun, the more, you know, you kind of adapt to it and all that. At this point, I, I firmly understand if I get a world record, someone's going to try beating it in due time. And yeah, that's fine. Goulash? Alright, good shit. Alright, time for the Huey fight. This actually found, I think, like, right when the GDQ run happened. It was found by uh, someone in the Clock Tower Discord. Good RNG. Don't beat me. Don't. Alright, cool. So the strategy is going left first will always lead Debilitus to hitting. Uh, and you can get pretty much that fight instantly. Um, I say it happens like 80% of the time. It's very infrequent Debilitus will actually fuck up. By the way, you might be wondering, why am I running in a weird path? I'm running in a weird path because there's not actually a floor here. Uh, if you try going straight down the middle, you'll die instantly. The game has a lot of death traps that they kind of want you to use Huey to bypass. And the only, it kind of rewards exploration and reading. So that's one of the death traps that you might run into. You know? Good RNG or bad RNG? Bad RNG. Oh. 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 I went the wrong way. Wait, no, it's the right way. I'm stupid. <gasps> he does it. Can you believe I got this game in a GDQ chat? I can't believe it. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you, chat. If it wasn't for Haunting Ground, I, uh... I think I'd be a lot more worried about how, we, uh, how we're doing on Twitch. That doesn't really count us. Like, Haunting Ground, I think, straight up is a game that defined this channel. Hard. And it's always the Clock Tower stuff, too, funny enough. Like, Haunting Ground, Night Cry. Oh, Huey's great. Oh, there's a lot of dog comments and a lot of frog comments. The dog and the frog. Hell, the run was near perfect until Carlito happened. Exactly, chat. Thanks to Haunting Ground, I don't have to. I I don't have to worry about taking raid money. Oh, everyone loves Daniela. She's fucking great. I might play out the cutscene later. It is her. I'll play out her greatest cutscene. I'll play it. Don't you worry. Oh no, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah, Raid keeps offering me less money each fucking time. And you see, Garrett, originally, I remember back before I actually got the offers, I memed that like, oh, this is uh, Raid Shadow Legends. And then I actually got an offer, and I actually had to think about that. And it's really weird. My heart doesn't want me to take Raid for multiple reasons. And when it push came to shove, I didn't take Raid. How's it going, Hudson? Hope you're doing good today. I've been offered raid multiple times and varying amounts of money. I'm not saying I won't ever take sponsorships. So I've done a couple sponsor things. I'm sponsored by Sneak. I uh, had the Square Enix sponsorship. I like things that only be transparent, open, and who knows? I actually like the product that they're doing. I don't like Raid Shadow Legends. Now let's say what the amount was. What, for Raid? Raid offered me 1,250 at the most, and they've been offering me like fucking 500 lately. Uh, $1,250 for two hours of stream for Raid. Dude, Raid Pesticide? Maybe for the meme. Like, Raid Pesticide's kind of funny. Although, I feel like it's kind of antithetical, because my whole thing is cicadas, and doesn't Raid kill cicadas? Oh, she's great. I wanna, what did Ninja have? I'm confused. It kills bugs? Right, but I like bugs! Chat, why do you think it's called the swarm? It's a swarm of cicadas! 
Oh god, not all missions. You... Yeah, my, my icon's the cicada! You... Well, I mean, still, though. Like, you know, people do it, like, you know... It does make you think about it. Come on. Also, time for the March good of the Good Boy. Boys. Hazard Norton, good Come to on. see you. Good, good boy. boy. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. Good, good boy. boy. Come on. So this is actually training Huey. Good boy. Remember I said Come good on. boy can help too? Good boy. Come on. Good boy. Come on. Out of the way, Dick. Come on. Good boy. Good. Oh, there you go. Hold on. Exactly wondrous. I hope you're doing good there, Norton. I mean, it's accurate. Also, we do have a quote saver. I think it's exclamation mark add quote or something. I don't remember the exact command. I mean, it's it's really it, it's very it's very uh, comforting. Like, dude, if I had someone like Fiona tell me "good boy" after taking four steps, I'd be fucking happy. Good boy. You got out of bed today. Good boy. Yeah, I think it's exclamation mark add quote, and then you type it in, and you can add to the quote saver. We actually have a whole list of quotes. And uh, it's kind of like a time capsule, so I like it. But a lot of people don't know that. Uh, it's free to add things to. I can just kind of remove them if people be irresponsible. So just don't be irresponsible and we're fine. You know? It might be one word I don't remember, but feel free to play with it. Yeah. Also, anyone ever seen the movie Air Bud? Right, Striker? And that's an accurate quote. It's an accurate quote right there. Huey. See? Here's the best dog moment ever made. Oh, it's great. Her frog outfit. That's why we have the that's why we also have the frog outfit. See? It has pogging, it was pogging. I mean I didn't get to see the air bud air bud theatrics, so I get it. I get it. I get it. Alrighty. One. Well, that motivation sometimes? Exactly. You see, chat, you need the the cutie girl to tell you good boy for getting out of bed. Or good blank. You woke up in the morning? Good boy. Got dressed? Good boy. Just the absolute bare fucking minimum. I like Dead Rising a lot. Funny enough, Clock Tower is the first game I played on the channel, but uh, I do like Dead Rising. I don't need to do the chess piece anymore. Alright. How's it going, Andrew Cupcakes? Hope you have a great day. Didn't wallow in self pity today? Good boy. Maybe we should make that an alert. Just get the good boy sound effect. I mean, I like that alert. Huey. Anytime I do anything remotely positive. You didn't cry yourself to sleep today? Good boy. Come on. Come on. Hey asshole dog, come here. Thank you. Huey? Huey? Hold on. 
God, this fucking suck. Here we. Wait. Boom, baby. Holy shit, that was hard. What? It... Shit, that's bad. I might be dead. No, I'm not dead, dead, but we'll see. Hold on. Thank God. Oh, don't show up. Don't show up. Don't show up. Oh my God, it worked. Get out of bed. Got out of bed. Saw trap. We don't have a saw trap sound effect though. That's just me saying it. Oh well, hey, that's all I'm saying. Also, with the raid thing, I feel like there's a personal responsibility on content creation. As I said, mine. Like a lot of people do believe in get the bag, and I agree with that. Like with many creators I watch, I'm happy if they can get a spicy dub of dollar roonies. However, like, all right, I mention this frequently. Chat, I would feel like shit if I promoted something like Raid and someone here got addicted to it. I'd feel horrible. I, I don't like handing the whiskey bottle to the alcoholic. I'm, I'm not a fan of that. Exactly. Alright, not bad. It only takes one person. You can buy your own whiskey? Well, there you go. How do you know someone here get addicted to Clock Tower? I feel pretty fucking good about that one. Oh yeah, I mean, it's still down to each individual to control themselves. Again, like a good example is you don't hand a you don't hand a whiskey bottle to an alcoholic. You're addicted? It happens, life PB. It happens. Like that's kind of the whole thing right there. In theory, by taking that, it is kind of the equivalent of, you know, waving and go, hey! I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying there's anything, you know, like, you can't really be, like, tied morally, like, you're not morally obligated, really. Why they carve an ass on that? He's Italian. How, how about a vodka bottle sub to a diet? What do you mean? It's a good game. It's a very good game, Driver Source. I like this game quite a lot. Also, there's the meth. He died by meth. All the go all the all the golems are addicted to meth. They're, they're dude, it's the fucking Jersey Shore! I can't believe it! I did say meth. They're all dying. They all stay up they stay out all night. They're partying. They're addicted to meth. They're Italian. It's the Jersey Shore. I can't believe it. That's who the golems have been this whole time. Large asses. They're ripped. We figured it out. I can't believe it. I can't. No, I can't. I can't imagine them playing this game. Not at all. Subduic Dysis may cause an addiction. I don't know about that one. Oh, ho, ho. oh, in terms of subbing as well, I try to make very often, I, I try to tell people, uh, you know, make sure to take care of yourself in any in many cases. Like, I do enjoy getting subs as much as many other people. Also, have a good, uh, time home from work wonders get home safe but i always make sure i want to tell people that you know do, do be careful not just here but anywhere in the world of content creation i was in a stream the other day and i saw someone mention they got laid off and i saw them gifting subs and you know i'm not going to tell someone how to live their life and how to donate their money that's up to you but do just take care of yourself it's important By the way, you know damn well this cutscene's playing out. You know damn well it's fucking playing out. Right, what's that emote called now? I gotta check. What the fuck's that emote called? Wait, I have more emotes than their Pixin does? That's fucking hilarious. Why do I have more emotes than them? That is trippy. But now I do have this one. Oh. Uh... 
I like Chew. Oh, this cutscene's fucking great. I don't mean you're talking about the cutscene. How's it, Patrick? So we're doing good. God, I fucking love this cutscene, by the way. We're gonna enjoy it. No, I don't wanna do that, because that, that's their idea, you know? It's nice, but I just, I think it's their thing. Forgot this vibrates. Forgot that vibrates right there. Oh, it's fucking great. Have you never seen how creepy this can get? Really creepy. That's glass. What's happening? Uh, she's a bit obsessed. Uh, she's... We don't know what is behind Daniela's incentive. We just understand that she can't quite feel properly. So in order to become whole, whole, she wants to rip out her uterus and, uh... Yeah. I like how she's wearing the frog suit with it. Oh, this game's fucking amazing. I love it. Frog hands? I also have frog hands. See? Little little frog hands. See? Little frog. By the way, when I fucked up my eye, I was wearing this frog suit. Daniela can make a cool Dead by Daily Killer. I agree with that. Gets It gets creepier, by the way. Remember the glass? I like the door, right? All right, let's go. Oh, she does. She does. Uh, like, she, like... Oh, God, I whiffed it entirely. That's bad. How did I whiff that entirely? I oh, shit. All right, good job, Huey. Keep attacking. Daniela just being a little bit silly. We like to have fun here, chat. Huey, attack. Sick balls. Thank you. Daniela likes to do a little trolling, if you know what I mean. You know? Huey, Huey attack. Good. He likes to have a little fun around here. Huey, you're in really bad shape right now. I don't know why. Daniela's also really fucking aggressive. That's bad. I'm getting the absolute worst possible RNG right now, by the way. Sick balls, Huey! God, Huey, thank you. Daniela, you're behaving proudly. Huey's being an ass dog. So, the fight isn't do damage. You have to get the uh, light in the middle to show up. That's fine. Actually, let's do this. Attack, 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 attack. Thank you. Good. Good. Do you take her down? I'm actually kind of cool with that. Maybe? I'm gonna agree. I went out of the way. I went. Alright, GG. Cool. Hard fucking fight, but we won. I got horrible energy right there, by the way. That's like the. If I would have reset that, I was doing fine. By the way, chat is now called the Flicking of the Ricardos. Please spam Ricardo Flick, that emo right there, to your heart's content. Uh, we're not redeeming emote only mode during this time, because emote only mode does not work during this. 
And if you want to bring good luck, you are allowed to make pyramids with Ricardo Flick only. Spam that emote to your heart's content and keep spamming it until we escape Ricardo. This is by far one of the hardest parts of the run, but one of the most fun. It is now time for the flicking of the Ricardos. You see, I'm telling you, they gotta replace the audio in this game. Instead of Ricardo's regular chase music, you gotta make it You Got That, Ricardo's theme song. God, I miss the flicking of the Ricardos so much, by the way. Just... It's good. It's a good dance. Same, Seventh Seal, same. The flicking of the Ricardos. It's a good time. And it does bring us luck. So those of you who are new to the stream and don't know, maybe you don't remember Haunting Ground, the flicking of the Ricardos is the luck that we do uh, in order to bring good luck for the Ricardo section. Uh, Ricardo is definitely one of the hardest stalkers in the whole game. Uh, we just finished up with Daniela, we did Debilitus, and now we are on Ricardo. Uh, the reason why Ricardo is so hard is because he is one of the only ones who can instantly kill you with one shot. Uh, no one else really has that ability, and Ricardo also has a gun. Uh, he's also kind of a pain in the ass in general. So... The flicking of the Ricardos makes it a much easier section for us. Let's go. He's coming, good. So, there's two parts of this. One, I need to lure him to a certain spot. Two, I then need to trap him in said spot. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna run in the back of this room and go invisible. Here he comes. Oh, fuck you, come on. Walk to the middle. Come on, walk forward. Did he find me? No, right? <gasps> you fucker. This is over here. Good, we got it. That's why Morgan's good, by the way. That's why we use Morgan. Bevan, the tier one for 14 months. Yeah, it's been a while. Originally, I was thinking maybe I'd make it a little nice subgoal of the stream, suit. but this in a long time. it's exact. It's been a while since I played this game. It's been a while since I busted out the frog suit. I wanted to bring out the fun again for this game. It's been a hot minute, you know. And it's a very powerful flint talk. All right. Anyway, the flicking in the Ricardos has now ceased for now. It is much appreciated, chat. That we went well. That we we lived. The flicking in the Ricardos is now commenced. Or you know what? What's the word? Not commenced. Finalized. Concluded. So thank you for the good luck chat. I'm glad you enjoy that by the way. And hope you're doing good, Bevan. Honestly, I really miss Haunting Ground. Maybe we do this again. Ceased? I think Ceased might be the... Yeah, Ceased. Oh yeah, he got close, but we're fine. Like, I, I, I make sure we're good. Come on. The worst part, though, is that it's really easy to uh, fuck up and bring uh, Ricardo back too early. You may notice I'm not kicking any doors anymore. Why, why is that? So if I kick doors, that's actually going to spawn Ricardo in. If I make too much of any noise, I can respawn Ricardo back in. It's really unlucky if it happens. Uh, this is what happened during GEQ. I got a very unlucky Ricardo spawn. And then I literally just prayed to God that it worked. Come on. Come on. Go. Come on. Come on here. And it's funny too, because when I did the GDQ run, I got Ricardo during the worst possible fucking point. Come on. Like getting him after would have been okay. No worries, Bevan. No worries at all. I hope that you have been good. I hope the office hasn't been too hard on you. Hopefully work's been good. Go. Go, Huey. It's nice to have you here now. Like, if I got if I got fucking Ricardo during that run right here, would have been easy. Would have been fucking free. Exactly, sleepy space sheep. Yeah, dude, GDQ Ricardo is on something else. But I will say, if it wasn't for GDQ Ricardo, I don't think the run would have been as remembered as it was. So, that's how I learned to love the Ricardo and thank the Ricardo. 
Because originally that run felt like it was bad juju all over, but it just worked out. It really worked out. Because like, if you're wondering what happened, originally I was supposed to have like, an amazing time slot, and then I got pushed back like three hours. And like right during my run, right during my run, like right before it started, they killed the whole GDQ stream. Oh shit, that's bad. I should have ran. Where the fuck is Huey? There he is. And to flick the Ricardo? Well, you we can't have flicks during GDQ. It was a fun day. You know? I was super hyped, and it only worked out because it almost fucked up. No, this is a uh, haunting ground. Uh, Rule of Rose will come back in either October or people vote for it. Nope. Uh, well, I mean, kind of, but not really magical powers. Uh, this girl's kind of more like a soup. She has magical ingredients in her. Come on. So it's not really magical powers. She just sort of uh. She she has ma yeah magic ingredients. Let's go with that. The plot of this game is that you don't quite know why you're here. Uh, you just kind of know people want you for some reason. Uh, as you progress through the game, you realize that everyone wants something in your body called Azoth. Uh, Azoth is uh, essentially life essence, and it's very good and allows you to kind of have immortality. Uh, well, no, all the bad guys have a different way of getting said Azoth. Um, Daniela wants to take it out of your uterus and also use your uterus so she can have your uterus and your Azoth. So she can become complete, quote-unquote. Um, Ricardo wants to, uh, to get you pregnant with him so you can give birth to him and therefore he'll get the Azoth that way. And then the last guy just wants to drink you like soup. He's actually less creepy than Ricardo somehow. By the way, nothing I said was, uh, paraphrased. This is all the actual plot of this game. Yeah, that's the plot of this game. Oh, well, there he is, Emnus. Uh, the first guy, uh, you ever, uh, read of Mice and Men? He's not a bad guy. He's two. He's actually baby. There's a reason why we don't kill him, by the way. He thinks that we're a toy, and then later on, you know, when you, uh, do his boss fight, if you don't kill him, he sees you as an angel. So, he doesn't actually want to, he doesn't hate you or want you, he, he just thinks you're a toy, and he plays too rough with you. He's actually baby. Like, the, the most literal definition of baby. So he's, he's innocent. He's a good boy. Like, a lot of people think, that, like, Debilitus is creepy. They think he's, like, like creepy and rapey. He's like, no, he's not. He's fucking fine. He's one of my favorite characters in this game. He's literally just... He's a two-year-old. He eats all the weird meat? Yeah, he's a humunculus. He's essentially, like, a combination of qu like Quasimodo, but, like, or, but also Frankenstein. And he's also two. He's quite literally Lenny from Of Mice and Men. He's eating, like, fucking innards. He's, um, you know, not all there. And he thinks that you're a dolly. He's saying, my dolly, because he thinks that you're a dolly the whole time. And he's also easily dealt with, because you can ram him, you can hurt him, you can hide easily. He's meant to be an intro enemy, because, you know, he is innocent. And, yeah, he tries to hug you. His attack is hugging, but he hugs too strong and breaks your back. Ram him? Well, I mean, yeah, the ram is there. The, ra the ram is always a move. All right, time for the forest. This is one of the worst parts of the game. Uh, it's very RNG laden, so let's see how it goes. All right, I'm betting it's going to be left. Not bad. Down. And let's go left again. Maybe, actually. Yep, wow, first try. This is actually gonna gold, I think. Holy fuck. If it doesn't go, it's definitely good. By the way, Ricardo's such a villain, chat. He's such a villain. He steals the frog suit. I can't believe it. What a villain. He's taken away the frog suit. Why would he take away the frog suit? I can't believe it. Exactly, the dastardly fiend? 
I can't believe it. He took the frog suit. He's the worst he is. By the way, right now Ricardo's also invisible. Here's my favorite actually fact lore point. Am I dead? No. We're fine. That's actually fine. Yui, you suck. So I bet you're wondering why can't Fiona see Ricardo? Right? Maybe you want oh, so this is really easy with this section. It's really easy. So why can't Fiona see Ricardo? Uh Ricardo was doing experiments on us to find out when we'd be uh ripe for pregnancy. So a part of that was also putting don't see Ricardo juice in our eyes. So now that we have don't see Ricardo juice in our eyes, we can't see Ricardo. Did he win? No. Again, watch the game. I, I, you, there's very easily answered questions. If he won, we would not be playing the game right now. It would be over. The answer is indeed alchemy, but I love the I love the notion. Okay, to become invisible, he put don't see Ricardo juice in our eyes. If you're wondering, how do you know that? Huey can see him. Yeah, Huey doesn't have Ricar don't see Ricardo juice in his eyes. So that's why I want to use Huey to attack during this portion. Huey. And like I mentioned earlier, Ricardo's major plot point is he wants you to give birth to him. You heard that correctly. Huey. He doesn't have that was for permission. If anything, he's the exact Huey. opposite of that one. Hell, I actually got warned for this game on GDQ because they didn't want me to ha show anything bad with Ricardo. I like this is the only time I've ever been warned for a GDQ run. Well, to this date, I'm pretty sure I've ran the most explicit game at a GDQ event. I mean something else? What do you mean? No. Everything I'm saying is very accurate. And that is that is a good joke, the man. It is a good joke. The plot of this game, Ricardo's plot, is he wants you to give birth to him. So he's doing an alchemy, I don't know, an alchemist, scientist experiment, something. What is an alchemy thing? Surgery. He's doing some kind of alchemy ritual that allow, allows him to go inside of your uterus. What I've done for Ricardo got me? This. There, you can quit game. Transmutation? That's also a fitting word. And good. Come on. Yeah, I I could just reset it. Uh, I kind of had a weird point though, because I was at that point where I wasn't dead, but also like I I couldn't really recover it that well. So I was kind of worried originally, but it all worked out. But yes, Haunting Ground to this day is the only game I've ever been warned about during a GDQ, and it was before I even ran the game. There's not a lot of content warnings, but. You know, Haunting Grounds are really heavy games, so I understand why I got it. And also, they entrusted me to actually follow that rule, so it makes sense. Stay. Good boy. Stay. Hold on, I fucked that up. That's fine. My bad, my bad. Go. Go. Yep, best possible times calculated from the current run. Um, this marathon is a... It's, our, it's like, it's, it's a meme. It's, it's not really a meme run. I'm the only one who really does this. What happens if he catches you? He rapes you. I'm not kidding. Like, all the creepiness of Ricardo is very, very, like... The sounds he makes is uh, that of uh, violating Fiona. There's a reason why I was warned for that, to not to die to Ricardo. And there's a reason why Ricardo scared the shit out of me. Uh, this isn't me doing any euphemisms. This is all blatant what happens in this game. Well, also, if you don't believe me, well, let me just kind of show you one of the lines of Ricardo. Also, Chad, I'm going to teach you how not to pick up women. Uh, if I, for the ladies here, I'm pretty sure in most cases, you probably won't be a big fan of, uh, if a guy tried picking up like this. And, uh, gentlemen, uh, definitely do not pick up any ladies like this. Let me show you. Although you will laugh in the context of, since you know we win, Come on. but, uh, 
I mean, this game is quite horrifying. One, two, three. All right. So, here's how you don't pick up women. We made a bridge. Nice little bridge. Also, since I've been going really unrestful in certain parts, I've been uh, watching cutscenes because it's fun. Fiona's more, um, I can see that. Fiona. All right, here it is. Why must you defy me? Why do you run? Let me into your womb. So just saying, I'm pretty sure that doesn't work. If I had to... Uh... Wager a guess, I'm pretty sure asking that would probably get you slapped, and hopefully worse. Huey. Oh shit, move, 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 move. Help. Huey, kill him, sick balls! Huey. Go. Good job, Huey. Perfect assisted, perfect. I need it, Chief. Hey, don't worry. Chat, can we get some gachi, ba uh, gachi boss or gachi gasms? Cause don't worry, I'm about to show you a better cutscene. Have you ever wanted to watch an uh, an old man suck the life out of a younger man? He, he sucks him so hard. He literally kills him. An old man sucking a, a younger man until he dies. That's it. An older man sucking a younger man until he dies. I would hope more. I would hope more, Junibug. It's the gachi base. I'm not kidding, by the way. It is quite literally an older man sucking a younger man until he dies. Assisted has the right combo. Now this part? I am not kidding. It's very literal. I've seen that before. Hopefully on Twitch and on another site. You kissing your homies goodnight, perfect. Also, I know what the fuck you're talking about, Evan. Evan, you're just really spamming. I don't know, it's a bit weird, dude. See? Sucking, uh, giving your homies the good suck until they die. There you go. There you go, Shanks. Perfect, perfect. Hey, I wasn't kidding. I told you. It was an older man sucking a younger man until he dies. How's it going, sweet? I hope you're doing good. You gonna be all good of him? Oh, it was weird spam. I don't know why, but... I just just tone that down. Hope you're doing good. Uh, well then, can I... Oh, yeah! Well, no, alright, so, if it's more likely Fiona may have been based on Ashley, and then Jill Valentine's based on this Fiona. Um, because RE4 did come out first, I believe. And then, and this game uses a lot of RE4 assets, as long, along with Devil May Cry assets. And this game also uses Clock Tower. It's really assets from every single Capcom game to that point. Also, don't worry, for being such a good boy, we're gonna reward Huey with a tower. You see, Huey gets to keep this tower, so I'm gonna lock him up here. Bye, Huey. Welcome back, Natalie. Hope your lurk has been good. If you're lurking, keep lurking. Say goodbye to Huey. He's now locked at the top of the tower. We don't need him anymore. Morning to you. Yep. And that would add up. This game uses a lot of borrowed assets. And that's why this game counts as a Clock Tower game, by the way. It was meant to be a sequel to Clock Tower 3, but they didn't want to pony up for the license, because Clock Tower 3 fucking bombed hard. So why spend money for a license when you can make a new IP yeah, out of, you know, existing things? So this game's a lot of passion. And that's the general idea. No, I mean, the chill model changes pretty heavily from, like, RE1 to RE5. And yeah, that sounds about right. Yep, that sounds about right. 
So essentially, the Clock Tower 3 team wanted to go for an act for another game, and they just essentially were like, Alright, fine, maybe you don't get a lot of money. Deal. And then they made this gem of a game. So, did you guys like an older man sucking a younger man until he died? It's one of my favorites. Anyway, uh, the end game is actually really easy, because we actually have a major speedrun skip. Uh, what's going to happen right now is that this game does not really uh, differentiate between the stalkers. Uh, Fiona's in Street Fighter V, if that counts. No! Alright, fine. So, normally if you continue this way, you'll actually get a stalker who will chase you, and that's bad. However, I can actually do a really interesting glitch, uh, and that is the luminescence, those blue orbs, actually count as stalkers according to the game's code. What does that mean? Well, let me show you. Also, anything from RE5 is going to be uh, ripping from this game. Yeah, Cammy has a Fiona costume. Nope, yeah. That's that's what happened. Cammy is Fiona. My first horror game? Sanho. So I'm able to kind of beat the enemy there. Now, a fun byproduct is normally after you pass that part, uh, you hit phase two of the enemy. Uh, so Lorenzo will start crawling after you. Instead of uh, having that, this happens. Keep in mind, Lorenzo's model is supposed to spawn in and like angrily crawl towards you because now you've hit phase two in a boss fight. Uh, this gives a whole boss fight, which is nice. It's going to be very scary. The worst enemy of all. It's an empty hallway. And the empty hallway is aggressively approaching you. Alright, there we go. He's not there. The model that they use, actually, is based on the enemy chasing you. So since I bugged out the previous cutscene with the Luminescent, the Luminescent disappears. I don't actually have anyone. By the way, if you're wondering about Huey, what happened to him? Don't worry, he'll find his way. So, during this boss fight, you're supposed to turn on the machine and fight him. However, he never actually spawned in, so it's considered the fight to be done. So now Huey is back with me. And now we're at the end of the game. Also, another part about this is the game kind of uh, is expecting you to look around more is going to punish you for it. Haunting Ground's a bit of a weird game, and my main issue with this game, and this comes up with a lot of people, is Haunting Ground simultaneously rewards you for exploring, but also heavily punishes you for it. So you don't quite know when to do what and how to explore. So, for instance, uh, exploring during this section of the game can only lead to trouble. You don't want to explore here at all. That's bad. Meanwhile, certain parts early, if you don't read a puzzle, if you don't explore, you'll die immediately because you didn't take the time to look around. And it's kind of odd that they really throw you for a loop between you don't really understand the risk and reward of it all. Normally, horror games try to make you understand that doing certain things are good for you. Uh, this game kind of, um, you know, circumvents that. It sort of flips it on its head. It's like, oh, you looked around too much? Okay, now you fucked up. Uh, now you uh, summon the stalker because you decided to look around too much. Which, fun, but it does lead to an issue of player enjoyment because, well, now we have to deal with that. Also, I'm saving time. No, I'm not. Alright, chats. Time for more gachi base and other emotes. If you have 4 p.m. and other cock and ball torture emotes, feel free to post them. We're hitting the final boss fight. The final boss fight of this game is actually straight up cock and ball torture. I'm not kidding. We're going to be kicking a man in the dick until he dies. It's probably my favorite games to do this strat, by the way. The CBT, if you know what I mean. Time to die, Lorenzo. Kick his dick. Oh, God, what a punch. Here we attack him. Kick his dick. Or flat, flat him, yeah. But post flat him. If you have a sub, put post flatten. Kick his dick, flatten it. Kicking from behind too is painful. Exactly. Like dicey flatten. The dogs are flying. He does. By the way, Lorenzo survived for two thousand years and trained his dick like those monks. You ever see those monks who repeatedly hit themselves in the dick? That's Lorenzo. Oh, he is enjoying it. He really is, Kaiser. We haven't got any explosions yet, though. We actually want to get fiery dick kicks, because I powered up my kicks to do fire. By the way, this is one of the sole reasons I love New Game uh, Plus. Kick him the dick! Futile. 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 
Huey's doing good. Fiona's not doing so hot. There we go, finally. Grab his dick and twist it. Keep kicking it. The twig and berry strats? Exactly. Oh no, he's kicking Huey. By the way, if you're wondering why is the strat ideal over, let's say, doing the rocks? Because the way this fight's intended to be done isn't by kicking him. Normally what you want to do is you want to kick those like little beans on the ground into the fiery pit in the middle. By doing that, that summons little things of fire that he'll step on. The problem is, on New Game Plus, the RNG actually allows you to get a faster fight by dick kicking. Because we made the powder shoes. Uh, powder shoes do an immense amount of damage. So in theory, if you got six powders in a row, you instantly win the fight. And that's faster than anything else. Anyway, now it's time for the end of the run. Oh shit, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad! That's fun. It can be rough, but we can still do this. Alright, also, you ever see the movie Man on Fire? Because that's what this game is like right now. Good. Alright, please, please, please do not kill me. Wow, that's fucking quick. Okay. So it is based on speed. Alrighty. And then if you ever want to be traumatized, look at this fucking ending. Like, holy shit. Even after all the dick kicks, he's still going. I feel so bad for Fiona. By the way, I'm gonna put my frog suit away right now. Come on, frog suit. Yeah. Dude, he's so fucking determined Neon Shadow, it's wild. This is her uncle? This is her, like, her grandfather. It's worse than uncle. It's like her grandfather. So her grandfather is just trying to drink her like a soup. Good job. GG. Alrighty, that was Haunting Ground. I hope you all enjoyed that so far. We're gonna watch her ending. Uh, we're gonna watch the whole ending here. That's a decent length. And then we're getting into Night Cry. Fucking Night Cry, dude. Night Cry. I hope that you've all been enjoying the stream so far, chat. I hope you've all been having a good time with this. I like doing these games. It's a fun time. I hope that you enjoy them, too. Um, I don't think we're going to do a break in between Haunting Ground and Night Cry, because my bladder is actually good for once. Uh, so we're going to go straight into Night Cry after this. But for right now, I am just going to say, if you haven't enjoyed the stream and are liking it here, feel free to shoot us a follow here on Twitch. It does support the stream. It's free. As well, we have things like Discord, Twitter, Instagram that all, you know, are good ways to keep up to date and are nice other platforms to check out. Night Cry, nice try. Yeah. As well, uh, any, uh, any Prime Gaming? <laughs> hey, thank you for the follow. Any Prime Gamers? No. But here's the developers I was talking about. I'm so happy I'm out of the frog. I feel good. Hey, we hit 18, uh, 18,600. Sweet. That's nice. Oh well, yeah, also again, Debilitus isn't a bad guy. Well, no, because, you know, you think that he might be a villain, but like I mentioned, he's not a villain. Well, the frog's always gonna be in here, Garbage Jenna. That's why I have the frog emote, by the way. That is why we have the cozy. By the way, I think our cozy emote might be the best cozy emote out of all of them. He just look at him, he's so cozy. And his little frog. I like him. Also, hey, look, there's your scissors. It's a clock tower game. <laughs> The frog suit stays on during sex. Oh, perfect, Manicor. Well, actually, fun fact about the frog suit. I went to the hospital in a frog suit. Uh, I covered that frog suit in fucking blood. I had to go to the hospital, and I fucked up my eye. 
Thank you, Nightmare Milk Wire. That's actually really sweet. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad that you enjoyed them. I'm glad that you're using them. Or someone's using them over there. I'm assuming you. Otherwise, sweet. Oh yeah, DeBiltis is a nice man. He just the, he just the groundskeeper. By the way, if you want to know what happens to Debilitus, uh, I'm pretty sure what happens is he just kind of tends the grounds and does house chores, and he was also the cook, so he doesn't really die. So if it makes you feel better, he just lives in a castle now, and he owns the castle. Alright, what did I get in that, by the way? I got a 109. What have I, what have I gotten so far? Let's see, 109, 130... 104. I got a 104 in Ghost Head. Holy shit. 104 Helen, 56 Jennifer, and a 49 Block Tower. Oh, that's a, that isn't too bad. The man likes to garden. What can we say? You ever turn for whiskey time? Define whiskey time. Welcome back. I'm assuming you have whiskey in that you're not driving home with whiskey, right? Good to see you, Alex. Hope you're doing good. Anytime to work. Also, chat, I finally can do this. Check it out. Turn off the system. Woo! Also, another fun part. Another I'm glad that. I'm glad then. Another fun part, chat. We gotta go from here to here. Look at that. Now we're on the big screen, and now we're wide screen. We're no longer on the small. Now we're on the big. Hey, whiskey's a good time, though. What kind of whiskey are you drinking, if you don't mind me asking? Hopefully I got the good shit. Alright, chat. Now, I'm gonna log into Steam. No taking my private information, okay? You got it? I'm glad. It looks like it was fun. I saw Lefty on Phasma. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Seems like a fun time. Lefty, Lefty likes to do a little trolling. He's a fun guy. I hope you're doing good, Alex. No licking the Ming Mong here, by the way. As long as Lefty doesn't catch you. He catches you. I gotta break your legs. I'm sorry. That's my rule. He catches you. I gotta break your legs. Alrighty. Bada boom. Time for Night Cry. So, let's talk a bit about the history of the Clock Tower series. Haunting ground happened, and now what the fuck is this? Why? Well, also, don't ju don't don't judge my don't judge my windows. They're my windows. Don't judge them. They're my. It's my screensavers. Shh. Don't judge them. But what happened is in 2006, Haunting Ground came out. It wouldn't be another ten years until we see Clock Tower content return to society. Why is that, you might ask? Also, uh, my background is from Alien. So, I don't remember the artist who did it, unfortunately. I, I downloaded the image years ago. It is Newt, yeah. I found an artist who did, like, a really cool thing of Newt, and I was like, I love this. This is great. Also, I can do that. Cool. Cry time correct, nervous. I like your name, by the way. That's fun to say. So, Night Cry is a weird game. If you're wondering why... Night Cry is the official Clock Tower spiritual successor. They legal. Oh, hold on. I need to actually move that window over to. Uh, let's go here. There we go. Because cool. uh, I realize it's covering the timer. This is the legal Clock Tower spiritual successor. It's around this time that Hifumi Kono wanted to get back in the world of game making. He wanted to bring Clock Tower to the newer generation. So he made a Kickstarter to make this game called Night Cry. Which is going to be the first fear again. It was going to be Clock Tower back to the roots of horror. Hey, thank you. It's a fun time. I like that one. Broken Pores, we'll be doing that too later. I hope you're doing good today. But with Night Cry, uh, with Hufumi Kono wanting to make this, he did Kickstarter. Originally, this started off as a mobile game. Later on, we found out... Um, he wanted to take it to a larger degree so more people can enjoy it. Um, it didn't work out, and let's see why. So, Night Cry is a bit of a, a bit of a fun game, a bit of an interesting game. Uh, like I mentioned, it was Kickstarter-backed. Uh, the goal was to make $300,000 uh, to make a genuine PC port. That was going to be nice and functional. By the way, you can see my mouse because this is a point-and-click game using mouse. Um, we're going back to the style of point-and-click horror games. However, this time, uh, the graphics are going to be a lot... Uh, let's use the word improved. 
As well, uh, the story of this game takes place on a boat. Uh, we're on the Oceanus. It's pronounced Oceanus, it's spelled Ocean Anus. Yes, I understand, or Oceanus. I don't know why. That's fine. Pink, you can have pink. Enjoy your lurk, Melkwire. Enjoy the lurk. Thank you very much. Just time by. I hope, hope you have a good rest of the day. Or lurk. Also, funny enough, Barry Burden's in this game again, so you know who Fumikono did it. So, it keeps the general style point and click. It looks great. It plays a lot more like Clock Tower PS1 than any of the other games have been doing. Uh, as well, if you're wondering what's with the weird interface, because you might notice some odd things, like for instance, there's going to be an inventory thing in the top right. That inventory is there because, again, this game was originally made to be on mobile phones. So you have a tapping system because it was meant to tap on a fucking phone. Meaning, this game was heavily designed to be a mobile game, and they only brought it to PC due to Kickstarter. Uh, this game was actually backed by a lot of high-profile people, and a lot of good names worked on this shit. Like, I'm talking uh, a lot of Castlevania game devs, Metal Gear Solid game devs, uh, Silent Hill game devs. Um, uh, uh, the music comes from people who worked on Metal Gear Solid. Um, I don't even remember the chick's name, um, but I know she did the music for it. Uh, it has artists such as Chris Darrell, has a lot of people, um, has guided Barry Burden, has a lot of the original Clock Tower developers, the original Clock Tower director, uh, the director of the Grudge movies in Japan, so the Japanese Grudge, not even like uh, North American Grudge, but the Japanese one. But, I mean, it hits a weird point that no matter how many, how much you have behind you, no, I, I remember the name of it, but I don't quite remember the name. It's not, it's not a uh, Michiru Yamane. It's something else. Oh, was it? No, I don't think it was her. Uh, it was a different name. Uh, I'm blanking on it. I'm going to look it up in a moment, but enjoy this cutscene. By the way, this is part of what they advertise the game with. Enjoy. I'll look it up really quick. Nobuka Toda. Yeah, it was her. It was her. I don't need to look it up. It was her. It was Nobuka Toda. I think I'm even bold, in fact. But I definitely know Nabuka Toda is the one I usually quote for this game. She did all the music. By the way, the game's really not responding. Don't get yourself worked up now. Come on. I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> what? You think a soda will get you? By the way, I want to mention bad. once again, uh, this is how they advertise the game. Yo. What the? I don't know what you'll think of this. What is it now? Well, uh, something's But this is when the Kickstarter. What? I said or wasn't it? Here grabbing my hand. Oh, Oof. Harry, the Gregory Peck Act is a I think it's the same model. Though. I think it is Vexacrypt. Anyway. Yeah, this is why you don't steal sodas. If you reach in the machine, you'll die. You wouldn't steal a soda, would you? Also, my favorite part, um, this monster right here, the Scissor Walker, who's actually really well designed, is designed by Masahiro Ito. Uh, that is the, um, one of the lead designers of art and art direction in the Silent Hill series, and he is the inventor of Pyramid Head. It's funny, because one of the Kickstarter options was that you can get Masahiro Ito to draw you anything, except for Pyramid Head. He would not draw you Pyramid Head. You cannot, you are not able to do that. Well, the moral of the story is don't steal the sodas. But we're also back with the Scissor Walker this time, and it's really well designed, actually. I really like the Scissor Walker. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite parts of this game. Also, funny enough, this game had a lot of people backing it. My favorite backer, uh, who heavily apparently proclaimed this game, was actually Sam Raimi. And if that name sounds familiar to you, yes, it's Sam Raimi. Evil Dead Sam Raimi. Spider-Man Trilogy Sam Raimi. That Sam Raimi backed this game heavily. His name's actually really prominently in the credits, too, for some reason. I don't, I don't know what he did with it exactly, but it's really fucking in there. I think he donated a lot of money to this game, oddly enough. He would be. And a lot of people like to wonder, how did Nightcry end up like this? How did Nightcry kind of end up like a joke? Uh, for one, I think they're kind of banking on getting more money, admittedly. I kind of, like Their goal was 300000 but their stretch goals went like really fucking far, and they barely made the goal they wanted. So, partly, the budget was literally on... Literally right at the cusp of what they had. Um, as well, at this point, I don't think any, they had a lot of experience in modern gaming. Um, 
and stuff like that. Thank you for the follow. A lot of the older point-and-click trippiness doesn't really carry over to the modern day as well as it used to. Like, oh, you have to find a fucking eyeball to, you know, stroke the dick of a, a giant, and then that's going to allow you to, I don't know, find a, a, a billiard so you can then solve a puzzle to get past a gate. That type of thinking doesn't work as well as it used to. Also, you have absurd shit like this, too. Like, Kofumi Kono's an absolutely creative mind, and I fucking would love to buy that guy a beer and talk gaming with him, and I love his work, but... You can't fucking make this in a horror game and expect you not to laugh. What? By the way, this crew member's name in the credits is listed as a fat crew member. And he dies. By getting slammed. By a concession cart. If you don't get the QTE, you will also die in the concession cart. The slammer? More like the rammer. I'm always going to die by slamming. Maybe, maybe in a different sense. Also, uh, Kickstarter backers are in the game. We have Koichi Yamazaki. I love showing them off every time, by the way. With his dog. And Aika Tenimoto. With her cat. Now, my favorite part about this game is it costs like 300 bucks to get that in that picture. I would have dropped 300 bucks absolutely fucking lootly if I could have. I just didn't have money when this game was getting kickstarted. Oh, it's great, it's, uh, Defective. It's absolutely great. It did not turn really healthy, that's right. But yeah, I kind of mentioned, by the way, the idea that, oh, what's that puzzle you mentioned that's like, oh, you need to do a bunch of random things? So, in order to do this properly, you need to talk to the ven vending machines. I think you have to get a coin, and from that coin, you then need to use it on a cash register, I think, or some shit like that. And... With that, you end up getting uh, a ring. You then need to use that ring in the end of the game on a certain survivor that you have to find, and then you have to do... You have to get a cue ball from them, or like an IQ ball billiard. Also, has to go in Cinder Day. I hope you're doing good. And then with the yeah, I've done this game with GDQ. Uh, this is one of my first major GDQ appearances. This is actually my first major GDQ. I ran at GDQX. But this is one of my favorite. Uh, like this is the game that really I think blew us up initially. Like if I can have two GDQ runs, I think were my best ones. It's Nightcry and Haunting Ground. I could have, no, it's I could have. Man's dying, he says. And that's just how a lot of this goes. Not Night Trap? I like Night Trap, but I feel like a lot of people didn't really realize I did Night Trap. And I, I kind of bummed out about that. Like, as I think, apparently that's my most, my greatest achievement. I think my best runs were definitely Night Cry and Haunting Ground. Also, here's my favorite answer to this puzzle. She just slams all the keys at once, all the buttons at once. <laughs> just push everything. It works. And it's not run. I sound whole run was fun, but I feel like my night cry, I really came into my own. Spooky's Mansion. Oh, that was a hot fix. I didn't do it for the main event. Yeah, Night Trap was blindfold. I put a lot of work into Night Trap. I put a lot of work in that fucking game. Just saying. Put a lot of work into that. Nightcry is really good. A lot of people seem to like Nightcry. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm wondering that the sequel to Nightcry is going to be The Fucking Crow. Now, The Crow's not in, but I, I heavily think it might have a... I think it gets in. I have a, a strong feeling The Crow is a good shot. You know? Go. Oh, I worked it. That's fine. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Out of the way, you. Good job, Monica. Good job. But honestly, I think Haunting Ground was the game that really blew us up, and then Night Cry was the game that kind of got us to a nice standing point. 
Although Sound of 2 is definitely a good run, I feel like without that I probably wouldn't even be streaming because, you know, that definitely helped boost us to a uh, thing, like, even a, a noticed. Like, it's actually really fucking weird, chat. When I got Sound of 2 into GDQ, I feel like all the big horror community started, like, looking at me as an actual runner. And that makes sense. I, I don't know if it does, but I feel like before that I wasn't really at all, like, you know, appreciated or anything like that or noticed. It feels like if it wasn't for that Silent Hill 2 run, uh, I don't know, I guess people they really wouldn't care, I guess what I'm saying. I'm a speedrunner? I am a speedrunner. I'm also a horror gamer. No, some senpai? Oh, dude, it was fucking wild getting that game in, like, game in, though. People actually started talking to me. It was really weird. Like, before that, like, you know, like... We had, we had chat. We had our chat. We had the close community. I feel like a lot of people warmed up to me after that one, though. Carefully, Pants. Very carefully. And we did it. Good shit. Now we're doing good hypnotic. And I don't know if that makes sense. No, it's not even people care about Sonal 2 more. It's Sonal 2 was the first big GDQ game I did. And it was, um, you know, I did it at GDQ X. I got one of the biggest games in all of horror into an event. And, um... It definitely, I guess, I think helped me just kind of get a base for things. That's why Silent Hill 2 is a very uh, warm game to me. Oh, that's well. It like, directly led to the revival of that game. So. It's neat. I bought this game and cried. And does someone know what game was the first game you played at GDQ? Uh, there's a bunch of them. Right? I can't believe it. Actually, it's been a lot more than that these days, but uh, I can't believe you're right. I actually lost count because speedrun.com fucking removed the count. Because that shite's. That, uh, that shite. That site's going to shit. That is true. So yeah, I pay a large reference to that Silent Hill 2 run. I understand what it did as well. Uh, a lot of people who, uh, you know, joined the community early are still here because of that. What was the opening game? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you might be able to check on Games Done Classic or something like that. I think they actually aired it previously, but you'd, you'd have to look at it. I genuinely don't know off the top of my head. GDQ VODs might help. But they have the schedule somewhere online. Uh, you can just look up Games Done Classic and I think they, you might be able to find it. They actually did it during the 10-year uh, anniversary of GDQ. They actually played uh, the entirety of the first uh, event for, like, the week prior. Search full time. Yeah. Special likes good people. He's good people. And it's funny, too. Uh, she's one of the only people I know IRL who also streams. I know that she streams, and I don't feel uh, weird talking to them about it. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, Pixel Master. Like, I don't talk to a lot of people uh, IRL about my streaming. Uh, like, my friends know. All my actual IRL friends know. Um, I don't tell randoms on Facebook. I don't want, like, oh, random I went to fucking high school with years ago. Also, yeah, Leonard is a god. He is a god of movement. Every step he takes is powerful. Yeah, Renzo. Time does fly. Yep, GDQ is all uh, getting up there. zanga has been here for a hot minute. I don't know why Alphalt's didn't pop up. Maybe try it again. I think there's like a slight delay on the cooldown. But yeah, I, I try to make sure that I don't tell people from, uh... High school, um, how I, uh, how I stream. I don't tell anyone, I know, no, I don't tell a lot of people from college. I don't tell a lot of people in general. One of my worst fears is having someone I knew try to come up to me like, yo, Ekdysis, can you help me? And then, like, I'm standoffish for that person. I don't really talk to them at all. It's like, well, oh, cool, what you're talking to me now, huh? Cool. I, I would rather not deal with that. That's what I'm saying, I guess. Damn straight, Sparks. Hope you're doing good. Hope you're doing good as well, Apple. Luckily, I haven't ran into that issue just yet. But I still live in fear. That's my one, uh, my favorite, my horrifying, uh, 
thing in general. By the way, time for some absolute stealth. A stealth master, if you think about it. He uses a baseball to murder his opponents. By the way, he's not sneaking. It's actually a moita. A moita. You see, you think it's stealth because he's walking past him. It's actually not. I was going to poke out. I'll be doing good. See how this guard's here? I'm going to walk right back there. You know why? He's gone. He fucking died. And not only did he die, Leonard fractured his mask. He sent him to the pocket dimension of baseball. Oh, yeah, speaking of baseball, I tried making a point earlier, and I totally forgot all about it. Uh, I'm actually, like, uh... So, in terms of baseball, I used to be a Dodger fan, but, uh... I guess I've vowed eternal hatred towards them now. So, I'm always going to root against the Dodgers, given the opportunity. Oh, it's great. It's great, uh, right over. I love this guy a lot. Leonard's great. Also, I like his wine bottle strat. Bonk. Oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Luckily, I haven't dealt with that yet. Uh, the only people I really talk to are all friends, and um, I talk to Spectralite. And I know um, Cheeto's streaming now, but she's coming to her own, so I'm not, like, no worried. A Giants fan? Nope. I am not. Uh, Professor Cato Roberts. I am not. Uh, I guess uh, if I were to be a fan of anything, I guess it would be the Rockies or the Angels. Uh, just because, I don't know, I don't really have a team anymore. Uh, correct, if you don't break the mirror, you die. I'm not a Dodgers fan because the Dodgers took my grandma's land. Yeah, we're doing good, Roy Shadow. That might sound like I'm kidding, I'm not. Yep. So I promised my grandma one year, you know what? I am going to go, from now on, no longer rooting for the Dodgers. I'm permanently against them now. Doing good. Hope you're doing good today. Good to see you. I am whatever team is against the Dodgers. That is my that is my rule. I have to eat all of them? Nah. Yep, believe me, I know all about that, Iris. I've studied a lot of the history of that area. I mean, forcibly by, uh, under the guise of helping. They paid for it? Uh, not really. I was under the guise of helping. Originally, it was an eminent domain case that was supposed to help the region out. However, they ended up um, canceling the whole project and under undercutting the uh, people. They bulldozed houses. They forced people off their land entirely. It was a very, very hostile eminent domain takeover, and they lied about what it was going to be used for. The reason why it happened was because originally, uh, this is like during the 1950s. I don't even call them this LDM. During the 1950s, they were going to repurpose the land and improve it. Uh, so the city of Los Angeles bought a lot of land in that region called Chavez Ravine. However, this was the 1950s during the second Red Scare. So what ended up happening was the project was deemed too uh, close to communism, so to speak. And it was a bit too in line on the Cold War tensions scaling up. So they kind of uh, pushed the project back. They realized later on they had all this land, so they ended up selling it to the Dodgers. The Brooklyn Dodgers at the time. Uh, for rather cheap, so they can bring them into the city. Uh, the denizens were told they were going to be getting their, you know, area improved. But instead, they pretty much got shafted pretty fucking hard. So to this day, and for the rest of my life, I'm going to root against the, uh, the Dodgers here. So they purposely bought the land to root out communism. No, originally they bought the land to help, and then later on, um, while midway through the project, it was kind of, um, uh, I guess public favor of that type of project wasn't really in favor, so they had to cut the project. So originally there was good intentions, later on they just ended up selling the land to the Dodgers. I sure hope there's not a ghost jump scare. I mean, it was the 1950s. I even feel like, you know, the whole idea of wanting to, like, change it, like, you know, delay it, I don't even, like, I don't have any gripe against that. That was an uppercut. I'll be doing good. However, they ended up turning around and just selling all the land despite the, um, the, the good intentions that they had. And they kind of turned their back on the community. So. Yeah. Anyway. 
Yeah, Dead Rising is good shit. I like Dead Rising. It's a fun game. Today we're doing some Clock Tower stuff, by the way. Alright, good shit. I'm also bitching about how they took my grandma's land. There we go. Well, thank you. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. I'm not sure which one you're talking about, but I'm glad that you enjoyed it regardless. Thank you. Alright, good shit on Nightcrab, by the way. We're almost done. Great Barbie with a tier 1 for 12 months. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors. And thank you very much. By the way, chat, we need some bone zones, some cat jams, or some rat jams. Because it's dance time. You ready? Correct, now we're Rooney. Back to a light note. I don't want to get too heavy. By the way, I learned this is just some weird... Yeah, this is like a fucking public domain song entirely. I didn't know that. Originally, I thought the song was a banger and written for the game. I was like, what? This is literally just public domain music. What the fuck? I heard it in a random YouTube video, and that's how I figured that out. So the way the party works is you talk to all major characters three times, you talk to all minor characters twice. There we go. Hey, it's not the only good assets of this game. I can name a couple of good assets, in fact. That joke will really sink in in about maybe 10 minutes. I can get this music for myself, that's true. Anyway, I'm gonna skip the Ocean Candy cutscene. It's fun, it's funny, but I've watched it way too much lately. You don't know jack shit about my assets. Assets refers to a very particular type of asset. Alright, let's go. I don't know jack shit my own assets either. I'm not exactly checking myself out. Exactly, Hudson. She's trying her best, bulkiest pick. She's trying her best. She leave the room before. That uh, still doesn't give any indication. Our baggy clothes. God, those emotes are perfect, though, assistant. I'm glad a lot of you are subbing. You know what? Debrixen owes me five dollars. Wait a minute. I just realized he owes me five dollars. I got him like three subs in one day. He owes me money, chat. Wait a minute. I just realized something. I don't think I'm going to get that money. Oh, She's doing her best. By the way, does anyone take a wild guess what Rooney's original name was meant to be? I'll give you a wild hint. What do you think Rooney's name was meant to be in a Clock Tower revival game? Take a wild guess. I'll give you a hint. It's exactly what you're thinking it's going to be. Yep, it was supposed to be Jennifer. Her name was meant to be Jennifer originally. No, not Shaq. Not Charles Barkley. Who would ever name a girl Charles Barkley as a first name? Or Shaq? I don't want to imagine that. You would, you would look at a baby girl, your own baby girl, and then you would tell her, all right, your name is now Charles Barkley. Why did they change it? 
They didn't want it to be named Jennifer again because that reeks of unoriginality. <laughs> Rooney's a better name by far. I think Rooney's a much better name. All right, now we can do this. For the wild guess. Oh, perfect. The wild guess. A social political rabbit hole? Nobody should be naming any child Charles Barkley. That is two names. I don't even go over the fact of that matter. Nobody should name their child Charles Barkley. If you want to name your child Charles, you can get into that, but no child should ever be named Charles Barkley in Fool. They said the name was Charles Barkley. Not Marles Charkley? No, you should never have two names. One name is fine. No, I don't think you should name anyone Billy Bob as well. Except Billy Bob Thornton, but I think Bob is his middle name. That only works if you're Billy Bob Thornton for that one. You have two names? Some can work, but not Charles Barkley. Again, Billy Bob at least can work depending on how you sell yourself. Like, again, I want to mention Billy Bob Thornton's fucking great. But, uh, yeah. No one's gonna be named Charles Barkley. What, Ecky D? My name is not Ecky D, though. That's a nickname. A Jake Paul? That's his whole name. <laughs> ah, perfect. There you go. Also, in general, I wouldn't pick the name Charles. And also, go. I know the topic you're trying to talk about. I still would not name a one-year-old girl Charles Barkley in any facet of the matter. If later on they wanted to grow up and pick a new name for themselves that they identified better with, maybe they grew up, uh, you know, you found out the little girl, um, you know, the whole time was actually a trans king, and they want to be named Charles Barkley, that's absolutely their own decision. And I would absolutely love my son in that case. However, I would never fucking name my kid Charles Barkley. That's a terrible name to give a child. I'm not saying the name Charles bad, nor am I saying Charles Barkley is a bad name. I'm saying naming your, like, let's say your last name is, like, I don't know, Smith. Being named Charles Barkley Smith as a first name is awful. It's terrible, exactly. No! Charles Barkley. I hate that one more. I hate that one a lot more. I name the Metal World Peace. I'm against that too. Also, Bubble Ball. Dave Bruno with a sword. Leo Popolovsky. I miss the sushi, by the way. Marlonia Legio. Steven Wagner. And Tamara Carrion. I miss my man who can Ozcan, by the way, and I'm forever going to be. So Wrong one. Uh. You're gonna call your dog- Well, Charles Barkley for a dog is fine. It's a dog. Like, it's like trying to name your daughter Khaleesi. Please do not name your daughter after Game of Thrones. Do not name your son after fucking Dovahkiin. It's an awful naming convention. No, don't, don't, uh, that's, don't do that, Wizzle Teats. I don't know what you're talking about, but don't do that. That's a, that's a little bit weird on that one. You name your kid Sephiroth? Well, every kid's gonna be Cloud, because I'm gonna beat the shit out of him for being named Sephiroth. Names are a very powerful thing. Name your kid Ivan the Unbeatable for lunch money. Oh, yeah, you do. You do. You do. I remember, like, there was the family that uh, named their kid Dovahkiin in exchange for Bethesda products. I like my name. My name is fucking simple. Simple names are fine. Hell, even fancy names are fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with a unique name. But I am saying that, you know, naming your kid after Game of Thrones is a dumb move. If you have, like, a really sweet name that's sentimental to your family values, that's fucking based, dude. But, uh... Yeah, if you name your kid after, like, Dovahkiin or Khaleesi, that's fucking dumb. Oh, right, locked. Uh, that's right. 
Name oh name your child Rage Shadowland. You're gonna name your kid the Hound. <laughs> Why the fuck could you name them the Hound? It's not Hound. It's the Hound. The Hound. It has to be the. See, no, that's a fun name. That's not that's bad. The Hound. The Hound. It's not even just Hound. The whole first name is the Hound. Well, again, having, like, a Lee is fine, I think. Like, Jason Lee is fine. But, there's many cases. The is the middle name. Ah, yes. His name's Hound The. Well, that's name is Batman. The problem is, if you're not built like Batman, people are gonna try kicking your ass. Nothing wrong with that. By the way, don't dox yourself if you don't like. Be careful, Chad. Just be careful. But I'm really saying, like, you know, generic names are fine. Unique names are fine. I'm just saying, don't name your, your children Khaleesi. Don't name your kid Dovahkiin. Don't name it Geraldo. Oh, I know my name. I'm named after fucking Elvis. I don't mind that, though. I hate that one, Pokey God. I hate that name. Well, even naming your kid Rooney would be better. The more obscure the game is, at least you can go with that. Boo Earns? Perfect. That's pretty funny, though, Assisted. That, that's, I feel bad for him, but that is funny. Ivan the Terrible? Name I, Ivan the Unbeatable for lunch money and see how it goes. You name your child Frank West. Perfect name. Absolutely perfect name. I'm glad you're, you're gonna name your child Frank West Perfect Calling your kids suck green Perfect God why see Sandra Cassandra see Cassandra's a lovely name see Sandra is a bit more cursed No, not that one either, Zanga. No, that's bad. Not that one. Although, I feel like in that case, if you have enough uh, backup to not worry about it, you can have whatever the fuck name you want. If you're gonna be the son of a fucking... what? Car Moogle? Tech Moogle? Whatever the fuck you want to talk about? Like, let's just say, I don't think that kid's gonna have any... What, what, who did that? Uh, Elon Musk. Like, if you're Elon Musk's son, I don't think anyone's gonna be giving you shit, but that's because you're, uh... You know. Yeah. Car removal? Yeah, that sounds right. I still think it's a dumb name, but, like... Monica. I'm not gonna say it, because, you know, they can pay to beat the shit out of me. Hey, this guy's giving me shit. Here's five dollars. Kick his ass. Rhymes. She has an anime profile pic. How can you not like rhymes? <laughs> no, don't name your kid Matt. That's awful. She's not forklift certified. She rammed it directly into the boxes. Oh, she's absolutely manic, but I like her energy. I don't think I don't think she's gonna cause any issues. I just name your kid Barcode? What, are you trying to fuck up all the coding securities? I do not like that name, Rylander. That is a beyond cursed name. Do not like that one at all. A JoJo ending? That's a long name, it's wordy. See, my name is simple. I like my name. I'm named after the king. You see, I could be tempted to name my kid Elvis. I'm not gonna lie. I'd be down to name my kid Elvis or ever a kid. Just name him fucking Elvis. Yo, Elvis! Time for your sandwich, buddy. Ignatius, hey, don't, don't do dumb names, chat. Okay, I'm gonna name my kid Elvis. No, I wouldn't name my kid Elvis. 
would be funny. You wouldn't do that. Elvis 2, perfect. No, I'm not named Elvis. I'm not named Elvis either. My name, I'm just named after Elvis. All right, let's go. By the way, chat, time for the best assets in the game. Tell me on that Elvis emotes, my artist hand got injured. Uh, she's actually currently undergoing injuries. So, uh, yeah, we might have a bit of a delay on that. From my understanding, her hand got stabbed. Also, time for uh, Rooney's ass. So I'm hoping that she's going to be okay. Rooney, don't turn around. Ass on full display. Hopefully. I'm hoping her hands are going to be okay. I'm definitely worried about her. But I'm letting her know the good messages from you, chat. I'm letting her know the good messages. Just get on injured. No, she, no, 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 no. We're going to give her plenty of time. Tolly's a fine name. Oh, one of her mods is named Tolly. Dr. Ryle Ever. Oh, perfect. You ever see anything? Can you see Rooney's ass? It's right here. It's all ass the whole time. That's why we have the ass emo, by the way. You can count the polygons? It's all ass fully on display. An absolute dump truck. See, best assets in the whole franchise right here. Not Towly, Tolly. By the way, I'm not saying all weird names are bad. I'm merely just saying don't name your children after video games. Or if you do, please choose one that's not very, very specific. Good name, James. That's a fine name. Dovahkiin, not a fine name. Dovahkiin's a very bad name, in fact. Do not name a kid Dovahkiin. Do not name a kid Vault Dweller. Steve is fine. Vincent's fine. Catherine's fine. Do you like the name Catherine? Kratos is not fine. Sephiroth is not fine. You're saying it's only named Grand Theft Auto V. Perfect. A uh, boy? No. Because, you have to understand, less people have played God of War than have seen the movie Bird Box. So everyone's going to think about Bird Box and you say it, and not what you- Oh, I, I skipped the cutscene. Shit. I don't recommend it, Strawberry Princess. I don't recommend it. Can you call your child the suffering? More like, I- Yeah, that's actually the problem, by the way, of the boy reference. Geralt's not a bad name. Yes, it is. If I saw someone named Geralt, I'll point and laugh. Sorry. That's not, if I saw someone named Geralt who was under the age of 20, I would point and laugh. If you're like fucking 50 right now, they're named Geralt. That, that's fine. I'm a dead horse. I'm confused. Didn't watch Bird Box? Yeah, a lot more people have seen Bird Box. You're gonna name your kid Metroid Prime. Perfect. Gerald is fine. Geralt is not fine. Walter? Walter's okay, but I know what you're referencing. This game is so odd. It is a roll. Exactly. Don't name your kid after the Witcher. I don't think Samus would be an okay name. I really don't think Samus would be okay. Amogus? Yeah, that's perfect. Amogus. I mean, Kiryu can make sense. I like a lot of the names of Yakuza are actual names, but depending on your background, you might be seen as a total weeb. So keep that in mind. Name you the kid Amogus. Perfect. I feel like Jennifer would get made fun of for trying to be a unique Jennifer. You'd be at the same thing as like, oh, it's Crystal with a K. Or it's blank, like people adding extra letters, like the Cassandra name. But why the fuck would I call my child Juo? That's a horrible <laughs> That's a horrible name to give to a child. No. You met Yennefer's? I've never met a Yennefer myself. Your name is not Juo specifically. It's an online handle. There he is. You summoned him. Or Juo. True? That's what I'm saying. 
The actual username Juo is fine. Anyway, at this point, people are just chanting names at me. So I hope they've all been enjoying Nightcry. Oh my god, are you good, Rooney? Holy shit. Fucking move. Rooney, fucking move. Yeah, honey bunny. We're going late tonight. We're going late. We're doing the Clock Tower full series. I'm putting a lot of effort into this. I hope you all enjoy it. Anyway, time for the most important part. I'm not going to skip this cutscene because we got to watch it. Ooh. It's time to take out the trash. God, it's already 6 a.m. You love this game, though? Me, too. It's a good one. God, I'm going to bed late tonight. This sucks. There it is. Take out the trash. I hear that, Wonders. I do hear that. Later, really? I'm going to bed late. Fucking I'm tired of the end of the ship. Also, I woke up early today, so it sucks. I had to sign papers. It was awful. Took a nap, though. We did, didn't we? We did. I mean, it worked, didn't it? That's the important part. It did work. Also, I love the stairs because Rooney's hair just, like, jumps for some fucking reason. Well, I mean, the original Clock Tower does that quite well, but this game, not as much. Yeah, look, there's the yawns. Oh, shit, man. God, my room's fucking hot as hell, by the way. I don't know why. I want that AC on if I can get it on. What? No, we're done with that. We're done with the name meme. We're done with the name meme. No, I just changed it between games. Uh, for the later half, we go to this one. We go to the big screen. But for the first few games, use the old one. That's me throwing darts. Get a 16. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what I say. Whenever I do these long streams, I'm just going to say, chat, any support is always appreciated. The long streams are fun, but they definitely do take a bit out of me. Thank you, Relever. So, we'll see how it goes. Alright. Oh shit, Rooney, you fool. All worked out. No, we'll stream tonight. Yeah, we'll be good. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I think the previous day I went to bed at like fucking 10 p.m. It just, uh, right now I'm looking at going to bed probably around 9. Or 10, 10 a.m., sorry, not p.m., a.m. Oh, it's fun. It's fun stuff. It is fun stuff. And we'll see how it goes. Alright. Exactly. By the way, I think I want to make Pee Wee Sherman a follower emote when we finally get that. I'm going to say that right now. I don't know when we get follower emotes. We're like one of the only people who haven't fucking gotten them. When we get it, Pee Wee Sherman's gonna be a follower emote. Cause I wanna remember Pee Wee. She has so such beautiful eyes. I ever looked beauty in the face. It's pretty good. Why didn't we get follower emotes, by the way? That's my question. Why does Twitch hate me? I'm not on the front page ever. No follower emotes. I'm not Latin American enough to join that event. Uh, apparently we just didn't make the beta. Uh, we're like one of the few channels that happens. So. I can confidently say because they hate us. Yeah, I don't know why some channels get them and some don't. It's really weird. Yeah, follower emotes are a thing now on like every other channel that's not us. No, I don't need big titties. We're fine. Also, text him with the tier one for 27 months. 
An absolute classic lad. I hope that you've been well. Heck yeah, I might cry. Yeah. Thank you very much. I hope you've been well. Enjoy your third Twitch, baby. I hope that you are doing good. I don't think Enigma has them. I don't think Spectralite has them. A lot of people don't have them. I know a lot of people do. I don't know why. Yeah, I have no idea how they pick and choose. It's weird to me. But how are you doing today, Texan? Hope you're doing well. We're almost out of Nightcrab, by the way. This will be good. Let's see. RNG? Nope. You just woken up. Morning to you. One, two, three, four. Tired? I hear that all too well. Well, yeah, but that'd be a lot of the fun here. And, you know, I get to do a couple of memes that don't quite work anywhere else, but you can post here. I think that'd be nice. Like Shiwi Herman. Alright, the answer is A, P, M, F, T, E. Oh, the answer treat me? Mostly well. The only game I really fucked up on, I think, was uh, Clock Tower 3, oddly enough. Um, I just got really unlucky during Corroder. But yeah, if we eventually get them, it'll be fine. Also, I like how Rooney always takes the eye, not the money. Aww. Poor Rooney. No money, just the eye. Hey, salvage bar as well, but tier one to three months. You must not roll? Hell yeah. Enjoy the bloody scissors and the emotes. And thank you very much. Hope you're having a great day today. Hope that you have been enjoying the stream. It is very much appreciated. Alright, I'm gonna try to not skip the cutscene, but oh, I'm wondering, if the light's on, does that make it easier to skip? I'm no. Surprised. Hey, look, it's Barry Burden. I'm not kidding. That's actually Barry Burden, also known as Vigo Bradsov. I'm Vigo Bradsov. We met in the cargo hold, Rooney. A belated greeting. Welcome to the Ocean. Hey, that's neat. You enjoy your cruise with us. Exactly. I want follower emotes already. I don't know why we don't have them. God, chat, I'm having to pee like a fucking racehorse today. Oops, all piss. Don't struggle, Rooney. Rooney sandwich? I wonder who it could possibly be behind the mask. Who could it be? I hope it's not Jerome. If only the subtitles didn't give it away. You okay, Rooney? Monica. What are you doing here? Wesker? Perfect. I told you I would be right behind you. No, I'm drinking a lot of water today. I'm drinking a lot of fluids. Forget about him. It doesn't matter how much of a big shot celebrity he is if he's lost his mind. Alright, good shit. Good, good shit. Anyone follow me on Instagram? Let's see. I was like checking out. Kind of. Alright, and almost GG. Almost Open. GG. And... You just gotta use the eye, and... GG. That wasn't that bad. That was pretty good, uh, Nightcrawler. on. Alright, time for the most metal cutscene of all the fray- Actually, I guess it's not really the most metal one, because Remothered happens. But, uh... I fucking love this one. You know? You're right. It's Sorry, good. GG easy? Exactly. Rooney, do the thing already so I can go pee. No matter what it takes. No matter the cost. No matter the cost. Thanks for the fall. Rooney? God, I fucking love eye mutilation specifically. It's something that so infrequently happens, but it's such a good trope. That's not how eyes work? Dude, it's so brutal, right? 
like of all i think my horror like tropes like that i think my favorite's ripping out eyes I, it's something about it's really fucking cool revenge is yours revenge is yours Destroy oh yeah the man who also chad uh, they actually recorded me here's what i'm going to be doing if i get rejected from agdq I can also say, here's Barry Burden when he realizes his paycheck might not be cash, cashable. No, this can't be. Wait, wait. Hey, no, 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 wait, wait. Oh, it's trippy. It's trippy, Naga. Exactly. Well, again, he, it, this is actually a live recording when they told him he won't be getting his full paycheck. It sounds like a joke, but it might be more accurate than you think. That doesn't make a sec. Alright, chat. So now that Barry Burden is dead, what's going to be happening is we're going to be watching uh, just the brief ending right now. But I have, uh, I think I think one more pee break, and then I think we're good for the home stretch. I've, had to be, I've, drank, a, I've drank pretty much the whole bottle like fucking three times now. So, uh, you can imagine why I'm drinking, I'm peeing a lot. Um, I, also, it was two times the water, uh, one time caffeine, so. And, uh, and this one. Yeah, yeah, so, what's gonna happen right now is, once we get to the credits, uh, we're gonna be going to be right back. So I'll say right now, if you have been enjoying the stream, feel free to shoot us a follow here on Twitch. As well, we have things like Discord, Twitter, and Instagram. Are good ways to keep them up to date offline, and they're just nice places to be in general. Anyway, enjoy the ending here. It's a good time. Once the screen fades to black, I'm going to be standing up, and I will be right back. I recommend you also do the same. We're going to be, you know, just a few minutes. So, you know, do what you need. Stand up, get water, touch your toes, all that jazz. Don't die of blood clots. That would be bad. Also, enjoy the credits. Let me know if you see Anal Master 19 in here. I wonder if it'll be long enough for us to see that. But yeah, that's the ending. Uh, that's how it goes. Anyway, mods will be in charge. We also there's a name Chris Daryl. That name is gonna come in handy soon. Wait, really? For which part? Probably though, yeah. I'm not sure what you mean though. You mean me having to go pee? Yeah, I need a, the name Chris Daryl. Oh yeah, anal, yeah, the name Anal Master 19 is in the credits. You, you'll probably see it. Let me know if you see it. It's going to be on the left side if you see it, so be careful about it. Anyway, be right back.
Hey, put your phone on. Good timing. Good timing. Oof. 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 You saw Animal Master 19? Perfect. I'm glad we all saw it. Good timing on these credits, by the way. I hope I didn't miss too much, Chad. I hope I didn't miss too much. First off, back to blue. Uh, second off, I want to do two things. One, we're hopping over to Remothered right now. So, I'm going to change the title. And uh, I'm going to open my window, I think. There we go. Uh, Remothered. Oh, I fucking love Animal Master 19. That guy's funny. I, uh... It's one of my favorite ones to see. Alrighty, time for Remothered. Tormented Fathers. I hope this game's installed. I swear to God, it's not installed, you piss. Oh no, Tormented Souls is not installed. But I have Remothered installed. Alright, while I, while I install this shit, I need to open my window. Because I think all me breathing has been making my room, like, fucking, I don't know, dizzy. Not busy, but, you know, bad. Man needs oxygen, chat. Fresh air. Yeah. Whew. There we go. Open a window. Crack and open. I'm pretty sure my PC running this whole time is not good. You know? Alright, I'm waiting on my mother to boot up. Is it going to give me issues? What the fuck's going on? Mothered, come on. Come on, remothered. Ooh, it feels so much better. Opening the window helped a lot. Yeah, I think I need the fresh air coming in my room, you know? Uh. Remothered? Are you gonna work? No. I guess we'll wait. Hold on. Hold on. I have an idea. I think I know what's up. I think I know what's going on. I'm actually wondering. I think I, I think I know what happened. Hold on. Oh, the fuck up. Oh, nope. There it is. Boot it up. Okay. I have no idea why the fuck it took so long. Oh, it crashed. Oh. Never mind. I guess I was just waiting a long ass time. Thank you, Chris Darrell. Very cool. There we go. Now it's fucking booting like a dream. Sleep well, Tatsuya. Sleep well. I'm glad you've enjoyed the stream so far. Why are you in a tiny window? You know what? Fuck it. Let's do this. There. That works. No, we're streaming. We're streaming later. We're streaming to uh, Sunday. Sunday will also have a stream. This is my way of, uh, you know, showing appreciation. This is my way of going a bit harder. So. And that is why I've been saying, you know, any sports appreciated, whether it be a follow to the channel, people who might be new, checking out other social media, or, you know, anything else. It is always appreciated. Alright. So, let's start talking about Remothered. What the fuck is this game? Why are we playing it? Exactly. Also, Relever, thing of the five gifted subs. Going to M7JD. No! Fiss. Engine of Creation, to Rugak, and Big City TV. By the way, I'm heavily worried that I may have installed this game on my external drive. And that might make the game run like shit. Uh, I hope it doesn't. Uh, if it does, I can... Yeah, this is taking a while. This is a long load. Hey, thank you for loving those. Thank you again, Raw Lever. Not only for these ones, but for ones earlier. Huh. Yeah, this is a... Alright, let's just see how this goes. Let's hope it doesn't fuck up, right? Anyway, 3, 2, 1, let's go. Hey, 
There we go. So this is Remother Tormented Fathers. Uh, let's talk about this game a little bit before we're entering the house and getting through the early game. Remothered is essentially... After the failure of Nightcry, uh, the guy, Chris Daryl, decided that he kind of wanted to take the challenge into his own hands. Uh, actually, since the year 2012 or, two or so, he actually wanted to make a straight-up Clock Tower remake of the original game, the SNES game. And they even had a uh, concept art for it, which is supposed to show that. And if you've ever seen that concept art of the original concept for Remothered, and correct hello. The original concept was going to be exactly the remake of the original Clock Tower game. So what ended up happening was um, Chris Daryl, you know, after working on Nightcry and kind of, uh, you know, meeting a lot of people with that, was able to make his own game. Uh, he made his own studio, kind of made an indie project, and he made Remothered Tormented Fathers. Essentially, a lot of the staff that worked on Nightcry ended up hopping over ship to this, including people like Nobu Kotoda and a lot of the game developers. And this game plays a little bit different. So this game's not a point and click. It's going to be a lot more like Clock Tower's Barrier Haunting Ground, where it's third person. Um, you know, I can move around. I'm glad. I'm glad that you enjoy it, Big City. Also, I guess I'm not going that slow. There we go. Yeah, this is loading fine. Oh, this is the weird initial boot up that was really fucking odd. I never had that long of an initial boot up, but I guess we're doing okay. And a lot of people do like to give this game some flack. I think Remother Tormented Fathers, the first game, this game. Also, if the loads are long, I think it's because this is on my external. Remind me, I need to fucking reinstall this game at some point. Maybe put this on my C drive. Because <laughs> this is really fucking bad. <laughs> it's not the game's fault. I think it's because I just installed it poorly. No, that's Broken Porcelain. Uh, this game didn't do that. This game actually still uses speedrun tech to this day. Um, I'm just kind of wondering what the fuck happened to my game. There we go. Yeah, Broken Porcelain will talk to the failure of that. Uh, my external is just a hard drive. So. Uh, I, I wasn't really expecting you to great loads, but also I, I think it's the more I've been using it, the worse it's been getting. So I'm kind of thinking maybe I should, uh, yeah, maybe I should just buy an SSD. What's up, Anatra? What's important? so much to do every day i couldn't waste but yeah I, and I i will honestly say this with a straight face you this no, no, no anal master 19 oh, didn't uh, contribute to this game sadly then, then he did not home. unfortunately i live near here if needed he can contact but me. to kind of go a bit more into this game do i install and reinstall it at one point i did i might need to do that again i haven't played the game since the last time we did one of these marathons i met her just a couple of times She's and if i remember correctly i i got a 3649 on it so i'm not that worried I should back up my external, probably. But you know, when she's home, she listens to the same music. But the Tormented Fathers actually ended up being the best horror game of 2018. Oh, that's what I was thinking. Like, uh, if I really need a game to function well, I was gonna start doing on the um, my internal drive, because I have an internal hard drive as well. That's just you know massive file size. I don't really care about the loads. Um, that are fine. That's fine. I'm sorry, it happens. But the reason why I say that this game... Oh, not that. The reason why I say this is the best game of 2018 for horror is because nothing really came out that year. We joked about it a little bit earlier during this marathon, but the largest game that came out around that time would have been Agony. And Agony was the horse to win during that period of time. And we all know how Agony turned out. Bad. 2018? Correct. Keep in mind, nothing really good came out in the year 2018 for horror. Resident Evil 2 Remake came out 2019. RE7 came out 2017. 2018 had a massive uh, lull in content. Are those going to be fucked? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't have a way to fix it right now, so let's see how this goes. Alright, that was easy. When you reach a goal for Agony? I mean, I'm down to put on 1,400 subs, actually. I kind of claimed that one a little bit earlier. So if we hit that, I'll do Agony. I guess I'm down with that. I'm interested. But for right now, let's see if we hit the first goal. Or the not the first goal, but the second goal, I guess. So, proof of concept for the original Remothered was supposed to be a Clock Tower remake straight up. 
I don't think this game's wasted potential. I think Remothered 1's a solid game. I earnestly say with a straight face, Remothered 1 is the best horror game of 2018. Now, you know, there wasn't a lot of horror games in 2018, but I think Remothered itself worked quite well, Montrite. And the reason why is because this game kind of formed more into its own. It decided to go past the part of doing a straight-up Clock Tower remake. Um, originally, they were going to make it the Orphanage, they were going to do a lot more on that. Broken Porcelain explored that idea a little bit more, and hell, Broken Porcelain actually suffered a little bit because of that. But the first game, I thought was just stellar. It's a good experience all around. It's, you know, indie game when it came out, like $20 to buy it. This game by no means really had many flaws. Felton's a great fucking villain. I think Felton is very charming. I think this game hits a twist just a twist just right. I think it borrows from the old Italian horror of Clock Tower without being too um what's the word? Stale. I think this game it does bring a nice fresh perspective to what a Clock Tower game could be like. To the first game. Broken porcelain we can trash all we want. But Tormented Fathers is fucking great. And exactly. Yeah, that's fine. Oh god, let's just do that. There you go. My load! The loads aren't the game's fault, by the way. Those are my fault because I installed it poorly like a dumbass. Uh, it's okay, though. We're gonna make it work. We'll make it work. There we go. Juo, you need to add a load remover. That's what I say. Yeah. And yeah, the house is nice. Uh, I think a lot of the uh, realities that set in once you play this game are quite fun. Uh, I think the Bigby Wolf voice actor hit the nail on the head on what he had to do. I knew it. This wasn't safe? What didn't you like? Stop oh, I didn't get hit. Holy oh, shit. Oh, that's fun. What didn't you like? As an earnest opinion, what did you not like? You weren't invited. I hope I'm good, by the way. Even playing this game on release, the only issue, funny enough, was in the sound effects of this game. Uh, this game didn't have a lot of, like, too many bad bugs on release. Uh, this game was also pretty decently patched. Hold on. So, uh, hold on. This is considered a Cannish Seagull Clock Tower. So, they don't own the license. But, however, let me tell you something about Clock Tower as a franchise. Well, not that one. Not. Clock Tower as a franchise died after two. There's no Clock Tower canon after the second game, Clock Tower PS1. So nothing actually matters in the story because Clock Tower 3 is full of shit. Uh, Clock Tower 2 The Struggle Within is full of shit. The story doesn't really go together. So all the games have the similar themes and backgrounds of you know, kind of worked in that Clock Tower perspective. What are you doing? And they also were all kind of made by the general same people who made the franchise and they're all very like games. It's kind of like doing like, you know, like let's say for a good example, like Penumbra for instance. Hold on, am I gonna be good here? No. You know what, let's better say. Actually, I think I got that. My skates, right? Plot center, not so much gameplay. What's wrong with the plot? Honestly, I don't think this game is stupid. Oh shit, alright, that's that's fine. Let's play this safe. I don't really see what you're getting out of that one. I think the game makes sense. My only issue is that they really hammer home the big pharma bad. And while it, you know, it's a bit boring on that aspect, I don't think it's horrible. Pretty much, Naga. Like, that's even the original Clock Tower franchise. Struggle then in, uh, right, you know, like, 2, Ghost Head, um, th that game, and Clock Tower 3 don't fucking relate to the original games at all. Also, I'm gonna do this. Whee! Look at that. I think we're fine. Yep. Cool. Exactly, Kylo Ren. Tony Hawk's Clock Tower. You got it. Alright, let's head back. That was rare, but it worked. Like, a lot of the plot points make sense of this game. They even announced in the very beginning they wanted to make a trilogy of games. So a lot of the cliffhangers, that's fine. And if you're saying those stupid parts of the last 10 minutes of the game, that last 10 minutes of the game doesn't, you know, ruin a whole game. 
Oh, even in the beginning here, you're running away from, an, you know, a naked old man. For me, that's fucking tight. I think that's cool. Hold that thought. Go for it. Applying to Dying Light? Dying Light's story was shit before that. Dying Light's gameplay element was ruined from that point. But even then, it was still fun enough where I could say I enjoyed the game and finished it. But the ending, the whole story of Dying Light was shit. I was bitching the whole time. If anything, that actually proves my point that it doesn't mean make it a bad game at that point. Because the game itself was rather fun. I just kind of wish the final boss was actually good. But then people also told me they fixed it. And overall, I was able to beat the game to completion. Naked old man? Oh yeah, this man's full-blown, like, showing his ass off. Watch. Look. You saw ass on that. Exactly, Juo. Yeah. Honestly, I don't really think it's illogical or convoluted. It makes a lot of sense in the way it goes. I mean, actually, I don't think it's illogical. Convoluted, sure. Illogical, no. I think the game's logic makes plenty of sense. Convoluted, absolutely. fucking lutely But also, so is a lot of the Italian horror media. That's true, Naga. That is true. But, uh, Finvara, I'm glad the naked old man is the, uh, the jam fee right there. I'll grab that. Still here. Good. Oh, is it on Dying Light? Dying Light's story's fucking dumb and they treat it like it was gospel. Uh, the ending ends on a literal QTE when that game is entirely, this guy's such a badass. Uh, the fact that the final boss is QTE was the fucking dumbest decision you ever could have made. I think it's one of the worst end games I've ever played in my life. It wasn't enough to ruin the game for me, but I definitely bitched. Yeah. Apparently, people mention it's fixing the DLC, so I don't mind that. Fumikono's a, coom a coomer? Absolutely is. So is Chris Darrell. And the final boss is Shadow of Mordor? God, I don't even remember the final boss of that game. <laughs> you might need to remind me, because I genuinely don't remember how that game ended. Chris Darrell's a coomer. He fucking retweeted Rosemary Reed 34 on his Twitter. Four button QT. Yeah, I'm not a fan of QT final bosses this at all. Not a place for tourists. The final boss of Sly Cooper 4 is also shit. Look at Sly 2 of you onto a final boss. You have the gunner section, you have the fucking puzzle section. It's all great. Here on the story of Dying Light, Johnny America's like a CIA plan to go into Turkey or some shit to save America. I don't fucking know. Also, there's the old man ass, see? Right there for you. Yeah, it's like it before ended on a QTE boss fight. It's pretty bad. By the way, that's the actual plot of Dying Light, and then you realize Big Pharma bad. I mean, this game also does Big Pharma bad, but it's not less stupid. Spoilers? Dying Light fucking sucks. Y'all spoil that game all the time. Fun game. Just absolute dog shit story. Oh, Sly 4? Have you not, have you not played Sly 4? Also, however, gifting us up to Johnny America. Thank you very much. Hopefully Johnny America will one day stop by. Oh, and that too. Johnny America immediately fucks up, gets zombified, and then he like just falls he falls upward the whole time. Fables 2 ending was also dog shit. I'm glad that you bring that one up, because I fucking hate Fables, uh, Fable 2's ending. At least the at least that's an actual mechanic though in the game. Like I feel like if you're playing Shit, wrong button. Alright, I'm screwing up here. That's fine. Maybe I'm not. Nope, I am. Nope. Okay, let's do this. Okay. Are we going to play the Dying Light DLC? Probably not. If Dying Light wants to pay me dosh, though, fuck you, yeah, I'll play it. I think I was if Dying Light was down to sponsor me, I'll play it. No, I'm even kidding about that. I like Dying, enough, Dying Light well enough that I'll play the sequel. And, uh, if they pay me to play it, fuck yeah. I enjoy the game well enough, but I don't really plan on doing more of it right now. Fable 1 was solid. 
But Fable 2 had the issue where you, you can beat the game by not even playing. Which kind of blows. And this game's final boss is really fun. I actually really like the finale for this game. I think it's actually a uh, pretty good horror finale and how good it can be, at least. You know what game I feel really bad about? And it's the saddest story ever told in video gaming. Because it's so sad because the game is actually really fucking cool. But the reputation of the game just got done dirty. You know what game that is? We... Anyone know? I gave you the first word. We... No, not Wii Sports. We Happy Few, yeah. Fucking We Happy Few got done so dirty. By the way, if you want to see why I like Be Mothered, oh look at this shit. Look, all right, so not this, but look at this shit right here. Okay. I hope it. Did, I hope it plays out the whole thing. Do it. Do it. Do it. It's not one cutscene, right? It's two. Shoot. Yes. Okay. Good. Look at this shit. Is this why you came here? Doctor. Like, this is what makes me love this fucking game. This scene right here is like, I think the the peak of this game. I tried to warn you. You should have listened. Here's you with a fucking dog catcher by the neck. You just found out a big plot twist. He has the film. And just, just watch. He, he has ass, Kaloran. You gotta show it. I think how fucking metal that is. It picks him up by the neck with like a dog catcher. And to leave them there. Things die and stay dead forever. Oh, it's so fucking cool. Other things die and just linger. I'm gonna follow. Uh, sir, sooner or later, everyone will find out the truth. I already told you the truth. My daughter left us. As an air rocker, hope you did good. One afternoon, we never saw her again. Fucking liar. You said that she came back, didn't you? <laughs> also, remember how Nabuka Toda did the uh, music in Nightcry? Nabuka Toda's amazing, no and she really kicks I ass in the music by uh, tracks. Pain. Just listen to the upcoming tracks, one of my favorite in all the franchise, and like adjacent franchises. Oh no, Celeste was the only bond between my wife and I. <laughs> Our marriage was more of a business deal than love. It was one of those arranged marriages where only the parents-in-law love each other. This is nothing to do with your daughter. On the contrary, if it Why is she hanging by the dog catcher? Because he grabbed her by the neck and fucking hung her up because she broke into this man's body. house. But you said you were protecting Celeste. From who? It's more than you can handle, miss, and you would not understand. It's true. I might not be able to understand. But right now... I believe Celeste decided to leave be because she was terrorized by your morbid intentions. No, it's not true. And yet, sometime later, she comes back home. Oh, yeah. She's based on an amalgamation of 90s heroines. Oh, it probably would have. But it's called The Effects Writer. She was there. It's based on Jodie Foster, uh... It wasn't Celeste. It... A few other characters, Jennifer. like a Scully. A general amalgamation of 90s heroines, but thanks to you, legally I, I distinct Jodie Foster. That Jennifer was to blame for my pain, my disease. Yep. I could not it's legally distinct Jodie Foster. So one night I it's like how Jennifer Connelly is in the game. And there she was, tempting me. I could not let her hurt us again. No. Can't Some of the effects would look better if I tuned up the graphics, but I had to turn them down for speedrunning, so I apologize. I didn't have any other choice. Disgusting murderer. You're a murderer. Oh God. Anyway, here we go. Forgive me. I was just following I guess her Bone Zone. I guess Bone Zone you, works for this. You came to us to, to free us from evil. Exactly wondrous. Oh God. It's the red nun with the goat, and then this scene right fucking here. Nabuka Toda fucking kicks it out of the park. He's praying to the goat god. You're on the fucking wall. Look at this shit right here. It's fucking amazing. The opera singers. Oh, capital B in Bone Zone. Capital B.
You get down, hold on, you get down. Guess how much right after you get down? You run away, you run away, still chasing. Is that moth? There's a lot of moths. And then, look at this fucking shit. Look at this fucking shit, dude. Bone sword, red nun, deep voice, ominous present, the chanting of Dr. Reed. The amount of everything that goes together is so fucking good. Also, the villain's a fucking fr he's afraid. Oh, so I messed up the glitch. The villain runs away! You know how fucking cool that is? Name another game that does that shit. Where the previous villain is scared of the new villain. God fucking damn, I love this part of the game. Well, both of the games Scissor Man, but you it's like, you know, going from Debelsis to Daniela and you realize the real fucking threats coming into the game. It kicks so much fucking ass. And a lot of the plots just do form together. It's a bit convoluted, but a lot of it does chain together. By the way, I'm doing a glitch right now. Uh, this glitch is a red nun glitch. If you save and load, you just get rid of the red nun entirely. In order to let two, it happens. Ooh, I might, I might, I might need to try that wondrous. Oh, I don't want to do six hours of game. <laughs> six hours of speed run. Oh yeah, like the amp up of enemy design is really fucking good there. Like, it's generally one of the best moments in all of fucking horror gaming that I can really think about. There's not a lot of moments that hit you that hard. And also, the mystery starts to build up, too. It's a Christmas game? I might need to take a look at it. Jennifer. Hey, you know, the game does have its issues. I'm not going to deny everything. Oh, when this game came out on release, they actually had to nerf it. You know why? They had to nerf it because every single time you're walking around, Feltzum keeps saying E-I-E-I-O and fucking cocks every 30 seconds. And, you know, like, it's a bit, it takes you a bit out of the, uh, the element, and that's, and I get that. But I think for the most part, this game does a lot of the stuff it tries to do very well. It succeeded to great lengths, and I truly think this game was the best horror game of 2018, if only because not much else was coming out during that time. And, and definitely, you know, even if other games did come out that were worth their salt, I still think this game earns its weedy, so to speak. I think this game absolutely kicks ass. And it really made me sad when Broken Porcelain came out, because I believed in Remother. I believed the whole development cycle. Well, it's the fact that the Red Nun scares the naked old man. You know? Think about what we want about naked old men and how scary they may or may not be, but the fact that the Red Nun's terrifying the old man... It's horrifying. What are on Broken Porcelain development? I think they just got too big for their britches. I think they gained too much confidence. I think they were less of an underdog and they're kind of more thinking they're on top of the world. Uh, there's a lot of hubris that ultimately just kind of led to its um, downfall. These days, I think the game kind of shaped up fine. The story itself's not terrible, so if you're into the story, that's fine. But a lot of Broken Porcelain's issues, which we'll talk about when we get more to that game just over there, is because of hubris. I think hubris is the main factor of that game. This game released as a, like, not even double A. I think this is like a fucking single A title right here. This is absolutely indie horror at its finest, I think. Having a Clock Tower inspired game, being able to keep the, new, you know, the style of like Haunting Ground and Clock Tower 3 and building it up to this, I really geek out about this. And as much as I like to meme on some of Chris Darrell's stuff, I genuinely think he had a great mind. I think he absolutely knows how to nail a game. I merely just think that his largest issue was hubris with Broken Porcelain. Nowadays, I don't know if they fix Broken Porcelain. Also, my main issue with this game, uh, I think with this game's issue, is that um, they definitely shot too hard too early. Uh, I was mentioned in chat, one of the reasons that um, it wasn't liked was because it was a bit illogical and convoluted. It's not so much that it's illogical, convoluted, absolutely. I'm not going to deny that. It's absolutely convoluted. But when you hear why it's convoluted, it was meant to mirror the fucking Dario Argento trilogy of movies. This is essentially meant to be kind of like, you know... Suspiria. A lot of these games are trying to mimic Suspiria quite heavily, and it, it reeks in Broken Porcelain with that Suspiria. Also, new jump scare. Jump scare is actually pretty good there. You don't expect it. And also, when you have this batshit villain who uh, is uh, threatening to kill you, and now they're watching TV. Oh, shit. I messed up there. That's fine. I didn't do the skip. I might be dead. And then nuke the game on purpose by Juo. By the way, I'm doing a really large risk, and I might be dead, chat. Oh, God! Well, that actually might work, actually. Hold on. Is it cartoons? Uh, she is watching cartoons, actually, funny enough. You want to betray me? No! 
All right, cool, worked out. Yeah, I'm doing the old strat. I miss the. I like my strat though. Yeah, the heel thing gets shit on, but I don't. I don't ever judge the heel. No, not the Susperia. Susperia. It's, a, it's like sussy. Uh, Susperia. It was an uh, Italian horror film made by Dario Argento. That was in Rainer. And yeah, Argento has made some great horror films. And also, one thing I like about this game as well is you have an Italian man making Italian horror. I think that's, you know, you can kind of see the passion for those movies. Not to say Hufumi Kono's bad or anything. I'm merely just saying that I think Chris Darrell understood it a little bit more. Yeah, Zesperia is amazing. And also, I'm not going to claim this game is perfect. Um, my biggest complaint about this game is... The ending is absolutely, I really hope we get a sequel. I think we're going to get a sequel. Are we going to get a sequel? Here's a bunch of lore dump. Hey, we're going to get a sequel, right? I really hope we get a sequel. You're going to buy the next one, right? Here, buy the next one. And that's, that's what it is. Heavily. I know, Dario Gento made horror films. His most notable one is Suspiria. All right, well, I hope I make it. Here's a fun glitch, by the way. You can actually ignore her entirely. And then you can go pick up a brick, and you can just go right here. And if you do it right, you can actually avoid doing a fight. Guess who didn't do it right? <laughs> me. That was me. All right, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. Run, run now, run now. Your sister. Lucio, Lucio, I believe that. All right, eat veal. Stop, sinner. As you flip the red onion in the books, that sounds neat. All right, that should work, I think. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. We got it. We got it. <sighs> That's kind of funny, though. Maybe I can get her with my power. Oh, Silver Moon, you know, you know what's coming up. You know what's up. And yeah, like I'll even mention most of the Clock Tower series is shit. Like my opinion of this game is, I think this game is a notch underneath Haunting Ground. I think Haunting Ground edges this game out by a wee bit. Like if Haunting Ground's a solid, let's say nine out of ten, this game's like an eight. I think this game's a solid eight. Like I can call this game confidently an eight to me. And like that's a good eight. That's not a bad eight. That's a that's a good eight. Like if Night Cry is a negative ten, this game's a solid eight. By the way, I'm a guy who uses the negative scale because if you know something's bad fun, I you know I think it's still think it's solid. Also, you notice my room's getting brighter. That's the sun. I opened my window so I wouldn't die of computer heat, and it actually helped. It's a sun? Oh, is that? Oh, shut up! It's a star. I know. Ha ha ha! The sun's actually a star. You're dead. Also, here's a fun boss fight skip. Uh, if you break all the mirrors early, you can actually avoid a boss fight. It's actually a creepy boss fight too. Uh, the whole thing kind of makes you, uh, you know, question reality and, like, you have to look around you. You're kind of tripping. Alright, I got it. No, let's get the long throw. Let's do this. I fucking whipped it. That's fine. Good effort. Yeah, it was late for me. Oh, yeah, we're going, we're going hard today. You know, I did the wrong order, but that's... Actually, I didn't even do the wrong... I did. I did. I did. I did the wrong order. That's fine. Nah, uh, the third game, to my knowledge, is probably going to try focusing on maybe the other Celeste. Like, the most logical way to do the third game would be based on that. I might not work. I might actually have a good raid or host target today, because we're waking up early. As in Bruno? We might actually have one, so I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a look right near the end. Let's see how that goes. I need bricks. 
This game definitely does have one or two themes that I think could be done differently, and Broken Porcelain kind of makes it worse. But I, I think ultimately the the intention's not like horrible, horrible. Uh, like I could raid Charisma today. I could. I could. Also, here's a fun RNG section. We have no idea why the fuck it's RNG. The amount of bone stabbings is actually RNG. Also, the bone sword coming in the sewers. She knows you're here. Also, I'm gonna do this for content. Chat, you ever hear the phrase throwing for content? Actually, hold on. Let me, let me get to the next checkpoint, then I'll do it. I sure is. I don't want to do phase one again. I'll go to phase two, though. Alright, by the way, let me just see how grisly some of these deaths can get. I don't mean to bully poor Jody Foster here. I know they patched the sewers. How so? Time to throw over content, chat. Fucking bone sword in the eye. Bone sword in the eye, dude. This game is grisly. This game is violence. It's fucking great. It's everything a horror death should be. Oh yeah, it's 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 absolutely the Dead Space 2 vibe. I can mention I love when shit happens to eyes. I don't know why. Like one of my favorite uh Horror gore tropes is eyes. I don't know why. Your bones on you did. It is. It is rad, Patchy. Yeah, like you can tell why I love devotion. You can tell why I like a lot of games like this. Like, ooh, it's good. It's good. It's a good trope. To me, at least. I love that scene in Hostel. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it makes you wince, but I love it. That's why, we, that's why we have that as an emote, by the way. That's why we have that as an emote, chat. You're no longer cool? Why is that? They can't be the same person. Also, here's the fun speedrun skip. Uh, it was found by Joe Gnome. Uh, you can throw a brick down this hallway. You've skipped the entire fight. It happens, Nate Rocker. It happens. I hope I did that right, by the way. I may have thrown it too early. Oof, I may have thrown that. I may have fucked up. Oh, yeah. Actually, I think it worked. Eat a dick, Drew. Eat a dick. I was when the killer's behind the victim the whole time just watching them. Enjoy oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, Strider Princess. One that I think is really... I think the best one that does that... The best one to do that... I like Broken Porcelain. I just think Broken Porcelain has a lot of issues, and I'm not afraid to mention a game has issues. Roll the horror? Maybe. Maybe. I was just taking another wine bottle. That's okay. There we go. Also, here was a... Here's a fun skip we can do. How's it going? Is that... Kyo? Ka Kao? Oh, you're doing good. So, normally you have to block the door for uh, unblocking this door. But... Uh, if you do that and then immediately go back, you can just, uh, have it land perfectly. Also, a natural getting to the Nate Rocker. Thank you very much. Also, yeah, Strider Princess, my favorite one, my favorite one, is in the ring. The original ring. Uh, not the original, but the North American ring. You know what about Clock Tay somehow got here? Uh, were you watching Reliever or Raya Lever? No, North American Ring. North American Ring has a perfect fucking moment of someone standing behind someone else, and it's so fucking good. They are the host, by the way. Hope you're having a good day today, though, by the way. If you have any questions, you know, do feel free to let me know. I'm more than happy to answer. All right, by the way. Sir Brick, thank you. Brick! You want to kill me? I said correct the first part. What, KO? Cool. 
Hope you're doing good, by the way, Pagan Zero. And thank you again, Unnatural. We give a sub to Nate Rocker. But yeah. Well, I know, I know Rye Lover's name is actually Reliever, but she likes me calling her Rye Lover. That wasn't a flashlight, it was a brick. See, there it is. But yeah, depending on how you came in, it could be that, it could be just wandering in. Oh, I didn't know that. Neat. Sort of depends. Look at that, chat actually saved some time. Holy shit. Cool. I wouldn't want to watch The Strangers again, by the way. I know it has the guy from Always Sunny in it. I think it's funny. Can I show the death scene? Alright, Joe, but it's going to cost a hefty fine. A single bit. One bit to see the death scene. From anybody. Alright, that works. One bit. I said time, and I'm merely going to lose it because I'm about to kill myself to show off a cool death. Thank you, brother, for the four biddies. No! Watch. Also, Bruno, DNZ, gifting a tier one to Ellie Niu. Thank you very much. Also, enjoy this. Pop! Like fucking grapes, dude. Holy shit. See it twice? You only get it once, unless I fuck up. You get it once. Only once. So what happened? Unless I fuck up, then you get it twice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But thank you, Bruno, very much. I hope that you're doing good today. Thank you for paying it forward from Ellis's. Yeah, the reveal is nice and everything. You learn more about things, and it's fun. Yeah. And yeah. She went game what she did. So now she had God War 3. Well, a lot of the stuff in this game is based on a lot of Italian horror media. You want to go after a party? You know, same. I totally had this kind of walk too, Strawberry Princess. Also, even cooler, you start fucking tripping out and seeing her everywhere. Although normally the effect's a lot cooler because it's brightening your lights, but uh, or brightening your screen, but uh, I kind of fucked it up. By the way, I'm going to show you something really disgusting. Content warning, extreme fucking violence. Uh, absolute fucking gore. It's going to be up here. I'll just say right now. I'm showing it. Because I need to close my I need to close the blinds so it's not as dark. Extreme fucking gore coming up. You are. But did it show up here or the second one? Why did you come here? I'll do it wait, hold on, is it the second cousin or the first one? The last for you. What? What the I don't want to mash skip. Which one? The part where she actually wakes up in the dream. Don't? Okay, fine. Some days when, when my thoughts are clear. There we go. Is that the fuck? Shush! Shush! My father's back home. But yeah. Uh, hold on. Let's see. Oh god, okay, I'm about to look at that one wonder. I'm about to look at that wonders. I was wondering about what that was, and I'm about, right, I'll have to look at that after stream, I'm curious now. I played Overblood 1. I know you do Overblood 2. I'm like You mentioned your uh I wanna say six hours of cutscenes and hoping the game doesn't crash. Without knowing I started calling her Jennifer. I was obsessed. She liked it when I called her Jennifer. And she left. Why did she come back? I would have to stop her. Yeah, Felton's story is a very sad one of abuse, and I feel I feel it's a really sympathetic story. Oh my father. Father. Jennifer again? The Jennifer one, this one's like, you know, the reference. Yeah, it's it's sad stuff. Also, uh just enjoy uh This is probably the most brutal violence you might see in any of these games. Also, the music again. Can you hear me? 
Well, I, I, give, I give content warnings when it's really fucking violent, because it's pretty severe. Ooh, there it is! Oh, God! Scissor Man! Oh, here you are. What did you do? Why? You fucking. Ooh. Yeah. No. 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 Anyway, uh, I'm not gonna spoil everything here, but you saw what I wanted you to see, so let's fucking go. Back to the game. We're all good, by the way. If everyone worry about violence, you can let them know that we're good. Old boy? Is that in Old Boy? I'm you see It's visceral. It's fucking visceral. Also, you ever see the uh, movie Man on Fire? <laughs> fucking love that joke every time. Alright, I'll have to watch Old Boy at some point. It's recommended a lot. A turn? Yeah. I just want to make sure you're all good. If you're curious, uh, there was a set of, uh, let's just say emojis posted in chat that kind of identify that, of what it was. Yeah, just making sure. Just making sure. And very often, like, if there's ever anything really severe, I, I warn people. I, I don't like being the guy who's like, oh yeah, just look at the absolutely fucking gross out visceral gore. Like, some people like gore, some people don't. I want to make sure people are aware of that, so... Whenever something really bad happens and I'm aware of it, I try to warn people. If I can. Nice. Also. Bonk. So I'll say right now, this is actually one of the plot points I think confuses people. Uh, so right now, Gloria's trying to kill us. Um, she doesn't like us. She was the Red Nun. And going more into the game right now, um, a lot of people are wondering, why can't she see? Like, what's with her eyes? A lot of people wonder this. The game does explain this quite well. Uh, explains it very well, in fact. Um, the reason why her eyes are going to be having issues is because we're jamming a needle full of cortisone in her eyes. Uh, the file that we read mentions that, uh, due to her physical state, she is heavily susceptible to cortisone specifically. Meaning that if she gets it anywhere in her eyes, it's like fucking dumping acid on her face. It's fucking horrifying and horrible. It can absolutely devastate a person's body and their, you know, the whole face. Yeah. So we're stabbing, uh, not only one, but... Two needles of it. And also, um, sunlight exasperates the uh, effects of it, so. That's gonna point that out there right now. Shit, I didn't get it, that's fine. Alright, let's throw a bottle. Bonk. That's fine. Alright, getting a needle in your eye is fucking bad. Also, this is the final boss right now. And I kind of like this final boss. It tests things that you learned. Can you throw things at stalkers? Do you have backup weapons? Uh, you have to watch out where you're going, because not only does she show up if you open the wrong turn, the, the moths will also show up. So you have to be careful of the whole fucking thing. And I actually think this is a very fitting final boss fight, oddly enough. Because um, in a horror game, having a final boss, you can't really just damage them, right? It doesn't make sense for you to be able to just kill the big bad in some cases, like in a clock tower game. So really, just having the test of you moving through an area, I think, is very important. I have the slow crawl now. Don't do that. And also, here's a good example. Right now, I need to move that cart, um, and I need to sneak by her. She can make her way over to the cart, so I distract her. I can't blame you. I can. Good to know, then. Good to know. Also, exactly natural. Exactly. I think this game's final boss is actually really nice. Uh, it constantly is throwing fun stuff at you. You don't know when she's going to be coming out. Uh, every time you make progress, you're wondering, Oh, am I going to be good? No, she pops right back out. And you got to figure out what the fuck you're doing. Also, I love the trope of, like, bleeding eyes on someone who just got their eyes injured. And then you learn the light does indeed damage her. Because, watch, the light... And ruins both her and the moths. 
And also, I'll go the wrong way for right now, for example. If you try running forward, you'll run into moths, and then the moths will distract you. And, you know, if you get distracted too much, you might catch back up to you, which is really rough. And also, if you try going right, there she is! So it really throws you on your toes at the very end. And even at the fucking finish line, man, at the fucking finish line. Let me show you let me show you what happens here. So let's assume you did everything right, you're fucking perfect, right at the end of the game, right at the goddamn ending. If you think it's over, it's not over. Cuz she pops right at the end. So you better run to that fucking button. If you forget, you can absolutely die. Anyway, GG. We're gonna watch, uh, the whole fucking cutscene. It's a long one, so... I'm gonna check my phone. By the way, another violence content warning. It's gonna be, uh... It's gonna be kind of similar to some of the eye ones you've seen. Let's just say that. So you're cool with eye stuff. Uh, well, I got a fun thing for you. Also, another moment I personally love, and I bet you can imagine why. I'll be doing good enough for canvas. Oh yeah, content warning. Definitely a bit of content warning. But yeah, devotion emotes. If you got them, post devotion. Like dicey devotion. If you got them, post them. That's a good time for it, trust me. Here it is. You know what's coming. Oh boy. God, it's so fucking... And they drop down. Eee, right? Dude, not only that, she's still fucking going at this point. It doesn't show it? It shows the aftermath, though. Oh, it's the fucking unnerving, like, you know, villain. It's the, like, unrelenting, unnerving. It's fucking horrifying. It's metal as fuck. And then, even fucking blind, she goes for the tackle. She goes for the tackle. She just blinded herself. She doesn't know where the fuck she is. She goes for the tackle in the first fucking spot. What did Chad? An absolute goddamn Chad. I love Gloria as a villain. I think she's an amazing villain. And uh, I like her. Oh yeah. So now it's a long cutscene. Um, a lot of people do complain about this one. Is there a female Chad equivalent name? I guess it'd be Stacy. She's an absolute Stacy. The Chad Gloria versus the Virgin Dan. No, it'd be the Virgin. Uh, I guess Vigo. Oh, she's tragic. She's really tragic. Well, right, so people mention this all the time. Oh, how isn't she dead? How is she went through so much? How isn't she dead? Because you didn't fucking read. That's all my fault. You didn't fucking read. That's why. Her file says that she has advanced fucking regeneration. They only used it to improve the phenomenon. She's infected with a disease, which actually allows her to like, like you know, you know, like Wolverine regenerates. It's kind of like that. Oh, right now she's writhing in agony because the cortisone fucks up her eyes and also the sun makes that worse. So she's currently dying slowly, but that's why she's not immediately dead and she can talk. We were all test animals at the plantation. They used us. Exactly. They made us believe we had been touched by the hand of God. So we can skip this if we want to, or we can watch the whole thing. Um, realistically, if you're wondering what this boils down to, it's Big Pharma Bad. They really wanted to ham, like, ham in the idea of the sequel, like, oh, it, I'm not the villain, it's actually just, Big Pharma. Just forget. The was created as Half the dialogue is personal and I like it, and then the Phenoxyl parts are kind of, eh. I think they're a bit... Disorder. They really wanted the sequel. The horrors. But then, you know, when you learn more about these characters in Broken Porcelain, you kind of understand it a little bit more, I think. Forcing her to live as a man. Meltiness. Just like all of us. So yeah. He was a victim. He could only count on the results of the experiments of the plantation. When they withdrew the Correct, uh, the market, Thank you. Thank you. That that's a great example of what happens. Wyman. That fucking bastard. Said to 
downsizing parasites and mixing them with the. And drugs. a lot of the finer details that we're, uh, they're talking about, you find throughout snippets of newspapers throughout the game that you read. They kind of mention why certain families are getting revenge against other families, and it, it does add up. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you only watch the cutscenes, yeah, you're gonna be missing a bit of information. If you didn't read the notes, and it's like playing a Resident Evil game. You're like, oh, why zombies? Oh, here's why zombies. They tell you. Sooner or later. Now I understand. Dalton always told the truth. He just wanted to protect Celeste. And yeah, from although I think the main uh, way you can describe this game is a lot of tragic characters. From his Jennifer. All right, let's check Such out Twitter world. while I'm waiting for this because this is fucking forget. long. Forget everything for her, and he was the one to push her to leave. Why isn't Resident Evil in an action? It isn't a resonance. It's a wow, what a mansion. That'd be neat, I think. That'd be neat. I still have unanswered questions. The first one is right? Yeah, the first Resident Evil's in a resonance. And later on, they just sort of went for the title. It's not too late. It's just not your I'm out of water again, by the way. Holy yeah. fuck. I think a fan game called The Resonance of Evil. It may be the end of everything. And maybe we're. Already dead. Oh, my own mo. And neither of us knows it. <laughs> I'm not the one who is crazy here. <laughs> Maybe we both are. Hmm. We live in a society, exactly. <laughs> One well, right, but they had to change the name to Resident Evil in the U.S. because of I licensing issues, because I think some band had the name Biohazard. Cutscene starting to... Yeah, it's long. It's a long cutscene. I mentioned this. Uh, they really wanted to go for the sequel bait. But also, I play out every cutscene and every ending of every game, so for the VOD's sake, I'm going to leave it. This was not a gift. This was not from God. It was fucking stupid science. And those two things have never been compatible. We believed it. It's true. And like I mentioned, they really wanted to go for a sequel. And it's really apparent right here. It's like, hey, we're making another game. Are you going to buy it? I, I don't. You're going to buy the game, right? I don't know. I, I don't remember. I, I can't remember. It's all confusing enough. Starting here is where I think they should have gone. Like, no, make it like I half and start on their relationship. I, made it all my life. I think having Gloria and Rosemary be more like, you know, I forgive you or I'm not going to hate you anymore. I think that's fine. We were... Oh, yeah, it's absolutely a setup. Like, it's very obvious to read, and I, I get that. They should bang? Who says they don't? I'm also, look, it's me. Nothing like this. This is all just farce, discount store garbage. Me. You know, now I remember. I too am discount store garbage. Is that any worse than regular store garbage? I would stay for hours staring at the emptiness. I know that man. He's me. <laughs> exactly, Strawberry Princess. Honking? I could see it. I see it. I, I hear it. Well, thank you, Unnatural. I was worth $15. By the way, here's the cheesiest line in the fucking game right now. Not this one. It comes afterward. I think Gloria nailed her part. Rosemary kind of, uh... Hot topic did. That is how we save our memories from oblivion. That is how we are remothered, tormented fathers. I was just having a title drop of that I shit. I'm looking at the fucking top of the world, which is so much better. What? If Carl is real, I hope he is made of this love. Also, surprisingly enough, I guess I was actually pretty good on my loads, even with the issues. I already have. Smoking. I like Gloria's VA though. I wonder if she did anything else. 
Still alive? Yes, I mentioned she has regeneration. Because you don't listen does not mean this is bad. They actually do set that up. Oddly enough. Alright, Gloria, remother. Voice. Let's see, she Let's see what she's done. I'm kind of curious now. Lonnie Manila apparently did that. What else are you in, Lonnie Manila? Sonic Adventure 2? Who the fuck did he play in? Wait. Isn't that Rouge the Bat? Yeah, she's fucking Rouge the Bat and Ivy. <laughs> All right, but I explained it at the beginning of that. That's what I'm saying. I explained it. All right, neat. All right. Yeah, she ain't bad. Wait, that may also mean she's Eriko in Illbleed. Huh. Neat. Like, that's the difference right there. Damn, Joey, she'll let her join. Da -da -da -da. Like, that's what I'm saying. I understand watching a game on a speed run, but if I explain at the beginning of that cutscene, like, oh yeah, uh, you know. A goodbye that spoke of hope. That, this is the blank? Hope? You mean to say oh, the naked old man? He died. A, a he fire. He has tongue ripped out. Her. He was brutalized. No. Not at all. We're still gonna have this name show. He gets this one. He's not gonna get the next one. He'll get this one. Oh, uh, the, the naked old man is actually uh, Bigby Wolf from the game The Wolf Among Us. Uh, I don't remember the exact name of the guy, but he plays Bigby Wolf. Uh, so if you know who does that, um, I think it's... I, I, I can't remember the fucking name off the top of my head. But he's a really good voice. Actor. Yeah, it's Bigby Wolf from The Wolf Among Us. Adam Harrington. I didn't say Steve Harrington, but I'm pretty sure that's the gotcha based guy. Uh, where is this? Oh, I need to change the title. Hold on. You didn't know he was an Amogus? Haha, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I know they say, Che, you're either a sussy baka or a bussy saka. All right, anyway, on to our final game for now. When Remother 3 comes out, I'm down to add that to our repertoire. But for now, on to our final game. Dude, my favorite thing when we finally get around to Catherine, by the way. Also, uh, if they have a mod, actually, I could do that right now, I think. There. When we finally get around to Catherine again, I can't wait to tell you the voice actors of certain characters, because I'm excited. Home stretch, you're a mod? No, you're not. So, what happened afterward? Why did Remother Broken Porcelain get the reputation it got? If I geeked out so much about Tormented Fathers, why don't I do it about this game? You might be wondering. The story of this game is still really convoluted. They really amp up the Suspiria aspect, and they really amp up the original Clock Tower aspect. Um, also, we're gonna immediately hop into the game, so, uh, we can just fucking go. We're not gonna worry about any time to spend. We're just gonna be going forward and moving on. Uh, we'll make it quick. No, so this game really wanted to tie into the Sperry idea. The way I describe this game is it's lesbian moth Titanic. Um, they kind of wanted to, I guess, really test the waters on being double A. Uh, let's assume the original Remother was an indie game. It was like 20 bucks. Uh, this one, I think, sold for 40. Uh, they amped up production. Uh, they made it more efficiently. However, the hubris of man. The hubris of man. They used Modus Games this time, and I think another company, I don't remember. Um, but Daryl Arts ended up working with another dev. Hey, yeah, there's a Catherine poster right there. Catherine's Horror, by the way. Yep, Catherine's a horror game, and we're going to be playing that around Valentine's Day. There we go. So the game looks better. I'll say that right now. However, I'm playing on the 1.03 patch. Uh, the problem with the 1.03 patch is shit like this. When the game came out, it was massively buggy. 
No, that's not a large issue. Buggy games exist. It's not the end of the world. Oh, the gamers are complaining about the bugs. No, hear me out. Also, oh, Wondrous gifting a sub to Lesbian Mothman. Thank you. That's a, that's a quality gift sub right there. To Lesbian Mothman. I really hope this account that name. So, we do. We still got the stream going. We're going hard today. Like I said, we're going hard. We're not plastic today. We're hard. So, the problem with this game's bugginess is originally this game was slated to come out in August 25th of uh, 2020. Right? That was the original release date of this game. August 25th, 2020. It looks great. This game looks absolutely great, I want to say this right now, by the way. I think they nailed the graphics. I think they nailed even a lot of the controls. But... Uh, originally what happened was they wanted to release it at August release date, and then we got hit with COVID. Now, this isn't a slight to broken porcelain. I'm not going to judge people for having to work during COVID. I I, I think it's very mean. It, like it's, it's mean, it's like absolutely gamer, like, what's the word? Fucking bitching if you complain about trouble development due to global disease. That's not my problem, that's not the issue. Now, if you're wondering, oh, then why are you complaining about how it turned out? The issues weren't COVID-based. They were not. So, they pushed this game back by a few months to say, okay, October 25th, we got this, we're gonna go with it. First off, apparently during a lot of the development, when, um, you know, the game, um, you know, the testers were testing out bugs and stuff, a lot of things were suggested, they didn't actually patch them out. They're like, no, we want that in. No, we're not gonna do anything about that. No, this is fine. So a lot of the issues in the game were actually brought up immediately uh, by the beta testers uh, and by the, clo you know, the CV tiers. But they didn't listen. They didn't want to fix those issues. And, you know, I guess, you know, maybe they're going to take time on it. However, here's the real nail in the coffin that I think pissed a lot of people off. So originally, like I mentioned, it was going for that October 25th release date. They wanted to kind of market it with Halloween and give it a few more months. August to October makes sense. I don't judge that. Now, what I do judge, they moved it forward by two weeks. Wait, what? What are you talking about, hey, man? I don't even mean. Oh, you're not getting my Michelobes. Those are my Michelobes. Yeah, you don't get my Michelob altars. They're mine. I'm not drinking today. Okay. So the issue is they, they moved it forward by two weeks to October, like, I think, uh, 11th or so. Why would they do that? Alright, so they're moving it forward, they're confident. Are they? No. Because around September, late September, uh, a special game, and now, yeah, closed beta testers, actually closed beta testers, though. Around late October, around you know, late September, Amnesia Rebirth announced it would be releasing with a ha like near Halloween release date, which is right around the time Broken Porcelain was going to come out. Now I understand not wanting to go against one of the top dogs of horror. When you're kind of you know get, getting your landing on, you had your first successful indie game, going against Amnesia Rebirth, that's fucking hard. Amnesia Rebirth like fucked up by the way, and it sucks. So it's even funnier. But I understand maybe why they don't want to give me with that. So so what they did, also how's it going, Tinley? What they fucking did is they pushed it forward by two weeks despite not actually fixing something. And then you're wondering, oh, so why did they push it forward? Because when the game came out, it was riddled with fucking bugs. Uh, everyone played it. Anyone who got codes was laughing at it. How we, um, I made a video on, um, you know, on YouTube. I have this thing where I kind of showed off the game and all its bugginess. I thought the game was fine story-wise and element-wise. You know, it's funny because I actually like this game more than Amnesia Rebirth, totally, but it is ne it's right to be afraid of that. I understand that. You, like, no one doesn't expect Amnesia Rebirth to kind of fall in, like, you know, fall into the abyss. Um, a lot of people figured Amnesia being as big of a title as it is was going to be hitting a home run, and it looked pretty good because it was supposed to be a lot more like Soma for Amnesia Rebirth. So this game released early, and released with a bunch of fucking bugs. They had a hot, like, it was pretty much got like three patches in the span of like a fucking week. And like, it was horrible things. It was like, all right, the models are too fat, you can't run through hallways, certain boss fights took, so, yeah, Rebirth was crazy big for the hype. Which is why this game wanted to release early, so they didn't have to compete with that hype. Now, I don't mind the idea of releasing a game early if you truly feel passionate about your project. But it's incredibly obvious to see it wasn't passion. They went because they didn't want to compete with Amnesia Rebirth. I think what they should have done is they should have waited. Hell, even delay it longer. I think people would have been okay with that. I really don't think people would have minded as much. 
they had a lot of good faith with Tormented Fathers, and they did a really good job with that. Oh, I love Tormented Fathers. You heard me gushing earlier about the Red Nun, about Felton, about all the moments. And while this game has its moments, it still doesn't hit the same, because, like, a lot of the add-ons were just sort of weird. And then also, further on, as they kept patching things in and out, a lot of the patches aren't really fucking fixes. Like, I showed you the galloping, uh, vaulting glitch. If you're wondering, how did they fix that? They fixed that by preventing the ability to turn your camera during vaulting. That's not a fucking fix. You didn't actually fix the issue. You just fixed the ability, you just removed options from the player. That's all you did. That's not an actual fix, homie. And then later on, to quickly hotfix a speedrunning glitch we found, which is very specific, where you change your settings mi m during the middle of an like a section you can't move, they ended up immediately hotfixing that because Juo found it, which is fucking hilarious, by the way. Like I love that fact, but it's really sad. Also, uh, this is fun. And then you also have other weird decisions and choices. Uh, one of the ones that's very notable is the fact that. There we go. Let me explain this in, uh, nicely. All right, for anyone who has played this game, I would like you to uh, uh, um, answer this question. If you actually know the game, if you tried playing it, did you know that this game has an RPG mechanic, an RPG system? This game is technically an RPG. Did you know that? So this game has a system of moth keys. And what the moth keys do is they allow you to rank up your skills, like you can rank up health, you can rank up your moth powers, and you can get these moth key collectibles. They're all over the game. And I can actually show you it um, pro after I beat the Gloria boss fight. I'll show you. Um, they don't explain anywhere that this is a thing. You have to randomly find the box and hope to God that the moth keys that you found, which are random collectibles, actually work. I'll actually show you Black Hole in Deep Space. Also, like I mentioned, with some of the models being too fat to pass, like, you know, people just trying to beat the section, like, trying to run through. If Andrea got in a hallway, you literally couldn't pass her. Um, you would probably be eating, like, maybe two to three hits the whole time. There's no way past her. Even if she threw you, you just, you know, would keep getting thrown around the whole time. Like, this movement right there, that wasn't feasible. You are pretty much trapped in the corner until she got you out. I mean, I'm still trapped in the corner, but, yeah. Oh, exactly, Valor. And there's nothing in the game telling you that you can do that thing. There's no hint. There's no tip. You're just expected to find a fucking random mechanic in the game that's never explained. That apparently is very crucial to the game's uh, difficulty wave. Now, obviously, we're going to be good at this because we're speedrunners of it and we're used to the gameplay. But the common player is not going to be good at this. They're not going to have the same understanding. And, I mean, that's fine. But the problem becomes, if you want that to be a major mechanic and kind of balance your game a bit around it, yeah, you need to you need to fix that shit, homie. That's a bad fucking thing. Also, I need to I need to do the patio and just fill it next. Also, here's another fun one. Uh, this was asked about by all the closed beta testers. Uh, apparently, this is intended. No cutscene. You don't. You don't die. It just kicks you to a load. Um, that was fully intended. You just wee, and then it's like, wait, what? What just happened? Make a make a splatter sound. Make a blood sound. Make fucking anything. Give us some indication my character died. I don't mind a joke death. Also, here's a moth key. So we're gonna grab one right now. And this game's like, all right, genuine level. Mm, well. On release four now, maybe like I don't know, six. Um Fun level, I think it's fucking negative like nine. Negative nine if you count fun level. You count like just straight up level not including like oh it's so bad it's good. Um I'd say like a, maybe a six now, maybe a four when it came out. Maybe even less than four, I'm being kind, because I like this game, but also I'm biased to these types of games. I think if you had had no idea about the game, it's on a random horror game, it's a fucking two. It was pathetic on release. I got in the closet early. Not even less than three? Oh ho ho. But no, I would give it a four genuinely. 
And also, the story's fine. Like, a lot of people like to critique the story. The story's not the issue at all. The story's deep, but I, that's the style. It's not that bad. Yeah, the game itself is a complete mess. And it doesn't matter how good a story is, your game has to be fucking playable. Have exhausted. the bugs been fixed? Yes and no. One like, one of the bugs I mentioned, like, they fixed the vault glitch, but the way they fixed it was by removing the ability to move a camera. How much is it on sale? Admittedly, I haven't actually tried the new version entirely. It's just sort of slightly played around with it because I want to see what they did. You know what we ought to do? I think we ought to do an all cutscenes uh, run of this game where I play through the current patch and just see how that, like, see if it's improved. Give it a chance. We might do that. I think we'll do that uh, sometime soon. Also, we gotta explode again. That's fine. Anyway, uh, this boss fight originally took six stabs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw, and then we're going to duck and stab. This fight originally took six stabs. That's fucking awful, by the way. Like, I, I think people didn't realize that this was an actual boss fight. Nowadays, on the speedrun, it takes two. Also, I like the, I missed the angle. They had to patch that out because the fight was so difficult. All right, so now, now, I, that was a really good split, but let me show you something. So Andrea's dead. You know what I mean? Just, I think two is reasonable. Two is fine. Six is way too fucking much. So, in a random fucking corner of the map, there's this box. If you click on the box, you'll open it. And for a certain amount of keys, you can power up your character. You can power up things like Barrier, which is blocking doors. Escaping, which is Sprint. Uh, shadow, which is um, Noise. Uh, sharpness, which is Defense Items, like the Knives. Uh, they tell you the power up to uh, Health Recovery, so you can heal faster. Uh, you can power up Tools, which is like Sounds and Aversions. Um, noise Movements. Luck, so you can do that one. Um, and also, it scales, so the more you level up, it's fine. And you can also power up your moth powers, which is kind of the funny thing, because they expected you to do this. We're not going to do it, but there's a whole fucking RPG mechanic system. A whole fucking RPG mechanic system that's nowhere in the tutorial, it's nowhere in the game, nowhere is the system explained in the slightest. And that, it's shit like that. Like, make a tutorial at this point. Make it be, no, make it, maybe make a cutscene where you, where you find the box or something. And it, like, you know, maybe kind of like how Cheryl finds the save point where you see it hurts her head. And it's like, oh, what's this? Oh, I can save here. Literally anything would be better than what they actually did. Missing. There we go. But they didn't do it. Six stabs, uh, stick, six stabs sounds like a Six Flags parody. Also, like, the new Lord's Man looks weird. Uh, they really, uh, thicked her up. She is a thicky bitch in this game. Uh, also, I'm pretty sure, uh, the, uh, creator of this game cooms to Rosemary. He retweeted Rosemary porn, so. Uh, I think he cooms her. I mean, more part too, dude. Horny's horny. You, like, I mean... We love, we love, uh, what's his name? Uh, Tetsuo Nomura, and he cooms Diabrea. Everything you said before, I believe you. Porcelain and everything. I'm not kidding. Are. I'm not kidding, Merlin. I'm really not kidding. Also, Adeptus, thank you for the Prime Gaming for four months. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors, and thank you very much. The same walking stick you were talking about. See? It was all an act. That's true. That is true, Amir. That is true. If there had been, it wouldn't have been his. I don't. I don't understand. There's no time to explain. They know who you are. They know. And also, I like the plot of this game, though, actually. I mean, no, I think it's fine to, you know, it's fine to be a cooler. I'm merely just, I'm going to call it out as I see it. Like, I'd rather someone be, like, someone be horny and embrace it than someone, like, I don't like the Hideo Kojima style. Hideo Kojima's a coward with that. You can like his media, but he's an absolute coward when it comes to cooming. 
I assure you, it's absolutely necessary. She breathes through her clothes. It's actually really deep. You know, you have the Chad. She has a fat ass, because I like fat asses. For, uh, what? Uh, 2B? That's an absolute Chad move right there. I think fans actually sent him, like, a fuck ton of, uh... 2B porn. Anyway, here's the glitch. If you can't move, if you rebind a control, you can actually move. This is incredibly situational. You would never run across this normally. And if you did, it really wouldn't do much because you would probably want to read the dialogue anyway. So you have to specifically try to break the game to do this. We asked them not to do it, and they merely spited Juo because it was funny. Exactly, the Chad Taro. I'm glad. Thank you, Derbosaurus. But yeah. Oh yeah, so the way they fix this glitch is normally when you vault, you can turn your camera. Uh, the way they fixed it is that it locks you into the vault, so you can't look back during vaulting. Imagine playing Dead by Daylight and you can't look back. Whole time? Hey, you! I'm here! Oh my god, I can talk during this? It's fucking funny. Come here, Lynn! Lynn! There she is, by the way. Bye, Lynn. Oh no, that's fine. Again, being horny on main is fine. I'm merely just gonna call it out. But, you know, you can be a chad if you embrace it. Like, Chris Terrell's a chad on that shit. He's not afraid. He fucking retweeted porn on the character. He thicked her up so he can coo more. That's fucking funny. I give him credit on that one. Oh no, I think it's fucking hilarious to do it, especially usually down patch the game, but, uh... <laughs> it's funny because, uh, I think they really wanted to spite Juo. <laughs> it is a chad move. I give credit for that move. All right, chat. Let's continue the game. Also, in terms of the power-up thing, I don't actually know if you can power up anywhere else in the game. I only know of the one box. I haven't looked around enough to find more boxes. Exactly, Tamaki. So I don't. I don't judge that. Like the only person I really judge on that is uh, Hideo Kojima. He's like, I, I no. She breathes through her clothes. She has to be dressed like this. Does she? Does she? I mean, I'm not going to complain if she is. Just, it's okay to embrace the horny if you really want to. Oh, look at RE7. They did it. Awesome. Everything with this glitch is you can kind of fuck with the game a bit. Sleeping. I'll have to be as quiet as possible. I'll be as quiet as possible. There you go. Oh well, yeah. Also, I mean, like, despite like me every now and again critiquing Hideo Kojima, I actually I respect on his work a lot. Um, I admire anyone who has passion to do what they like. He's great. I, I think he does fine stuff. I just I I'll forever give him shit on the fact that it's okay to it's okay to do it, dude. It, it's okay. I'm not gonna judge you. If you want to coom over quiet, it, it's not the end of the world. It's okay to admit it. Oh yeah, a lot of devs will admit that fully. Wait, Ariana? Like hell, I mean, look what it did. It, like, I don't even have to mention Ari Village Marketing. It definitely works. Like, people can mention all they want about the horny, but it absolutely works as a design tactic and a marketing tactic. It's a fire extinguisher. Maybe I can use it to my advantage. Oh shit, I got shot. Also, here's a weird boss fight. Am I might gonna die? Dude, he comboed me, holy shit. That's not fair! He put his gun against- I- I got bugged by the bug master! I can't fucking believe it! <laughs> Trying to loop me, huh? Imagine Dead by Daylight, instead of getting looped, they just jammed their hand through the fucking wall. Is that swagger? He's beyond swagger, he beat my ass! What do you mean it hurts? It's fucking fire extinguisher. That's what I'm supposed to do. Hey, right, sounds good, assistant. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for being here throughout the whole marathon, pretty much. You really should, shouldn't you? It's funny.
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, man. Exactly, he's in his element. He's in the elements. Anyway, here's a fun speedrun skip that uh, was found. I want to say this was found by uh, Shishijima. You can do it, Jen. Oh, shit. Wee! Look at her go! Wee! You are. Amazing, right? Mother Acherontia. By the way, just place move replace the word Acherontia with Hesperia. Also, you can throw things. Oh no! No, she was actually she was faking it. What a liar! I can't believe it. What a liar! Exactly. Now we're Mary. I'm not your Mary. Oh no! I can't believe I teleported backwards. Oh, I'm not gonna lie. This is like one of the funniest things I've ever seen in a fucking game in my life. This line right here. You know what I will say? And I don't give this game shit for it. A lot of people like to comment on this. Uh, our character here, Celeste, Jennifer, whatever you want to call her. I think her cursing is actually really good. I think that's fine. I don't mind her cursing. And the thing is, a lot of people mention Jill Valentine cursing. I don't really care about Jill cursing. Jill always seemed a lot more level-headed. I know she's stressed over the time of Raccoon City and all that, but, like... I don't remember the original Jill mu doing that very much. You know, this character's an angsty teenager. I totally fucking get it. It's great. I have to be careful from now on. Fuck. Oh, you too, Elisa. Oh, you too. Exactly. Like, I always kind of, like, like expected Jill, like, the calm collected. Obviously, everyone has interpretations of Jill, and it's really not that, like, it's not a big deal that she curses. She's been through a lot of shit. It just, I don't know, I think cursing in a game like this just makes a lot more sense. Like, this character's a lot more, let's say, weak in comparison to Jill Valentine. And this character is, uh, effectively a runaway orphan with moth powers. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, I fucked it up. Yeah, I, that's fine. Alright, let's play this safe. Let's play this nice and safe. I was doing my little shallow rain. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, like, in this game, I kind of like the, you know, kiss my ass dickhead. I like some of the cursing that this character does. Ooh, that's a hard one. Why is this one so fucking hard? Go back, go back. Thank you. Oh my god, two in a row. When I find you. Thank you. Oh, fucking three in a row? Piss off. It's shit like this. Three stealth checks in a fucking row. Look at that shit. And then he's still just waiting outside the door because the busted AI. Also, invisible dog death. Sorry, dog goes F. Oof. Poor dog. Also, Christo really has something against dogs, and I don't know what it was. Good, look at that. Emergent? Well, it's weird, because, like, later they desecrate the body. And it's like, why the fuck would he do that? Hey, I think of those. That old yeller? It somehow feels worse. Like, it's, it's needless. It's it's horrifying. I guess it's meant to make the characters seem meaner, but, like, I don't know. Also, back to the fun glitch we can do. So I can do this. Okay, stay with me. Nope. Don't leave me. Shit, she's coming they want you to use your moth powers. You don't have to do that. He does nothing? Well, no, the, um, the dog was barking and, uh, I guess, annoying uh, the lady there, so she stabbed it because she's pissed. Oh, it's sad stuff. Also, dogs... Dog's still there. Anyway, now we're gonna do the mind power thing. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the trope in general, though. Like, eh, it's a lazy trope these days, I think. Here we are. This should be a key somewhere. Ashman like, I don't like you like John Wick, but I've just never been a fan of that trope. Uh, that uh, trope. Oh, I think didn't, didn't the Last of Us two try to pull that shit too? What do I do? Oh my God, you killed a dog. You're just as bad as the villain.
Exactly. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Hey, fucking move. He's going. Anyway, here's a fun glitch. Just use me running. I'm gonna do this. Boom. Boom. She just zooms. Boom. Also, uh, thanks to the glitch I did, I'm not gonna break the entire game. Uh, there's a scene here with, uh, let's say lesbian basketball. Uh, we're gonna have it entirely blacked out. I don't know why it happens. For some reason, doing the glitch I did just blacks out the entire fucking thing. Oh, yeah. It's just a weird point to make, though, Caliban. That's what I'm saying. From my understanding, from what I've heard. Yeah, the Roomba Nun's funny, though. Yeah, this is actually Erico from our Gloria is actually Erico from Illbleed. I didn't realize that. You learn something new every day, huh? Dream on. <laughs> it's only two weeks away. It is. We can work on it together. All we need My favorite part, by the way, is I'm gonna show you the line at the end of this when it says Abdul Jabbar. Uh, as always, I'm gonna show you the batshit insane things about these games. Uh, I'm gonna lift my hands, both of them, when we get there. Just to show you, because right now I'm skipping some things. Um, I still don't know if this is here, but read the subtitles. Read the subtitles right now, okay? Read the subtitles. This happens in the base game, too. It happens also in... Yes, watch. Why does it... Why does it skip it? It says Abdul Jabbar leave this body. Where's the line? Why would you write that? Why is it there? It's such a minor fucking thing. Abdul Jabbar? And then it just cuts. Where the fuck would it cut? Like, did you not get the whole recording? Did you not say leave? Also, it's like Kobe, because you know, they're playing basketball. But now, you know, back in the, whenever this game came out, fucking old, it would be Abdul Jabbar, uh, you know, Kareem Abdul Jabbar. So, Abdul Jabbar. But, like, it's just be Abdul Jabbar leave this body, not just Abdul Jabbar. I feel like they didn't get the whole line, but they still wrote it down in the subtitles. I don't fucking know, man. I really don't know. Also, remember how I mentioned they just seem to bully the dog in this game, and I have no idea why? Uh, well... Bomp. They jump scare you with the dog. See, that jump scare doesn't seem as fun as a lot of Tormented Fathers ones. Oh. Why are you bullying the dog more? The dog didn't do anything. No! Uh, when I played it casually, it did the Abdul Jabbar. When I did that casually, too. At least in the original patch. I don't know about now, but I know for a fact... Oh, ah, no, not again. Has the game proved since released? I'm not sure. You got the full one? That must have been in the update. Sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah, fuck. I keep forgetting about that every time I play this game. Also, fuck, fuck them for making that. Yeah, you're telling me, by the way. You're telling me. I keep forgetting about that. That's why I don't run this game all the time, by the way. I'm sorry, chap, for hurting your ears. You accept my po- Oh, I, I clicked off. What the fuck? Okay. Tinnitus? What the hell is going on now? I'll do it on the base stream other broken porcelain that's preferred. I, I I don't think you want it on this one. But remind me later, I'll do it on the base one, you know? How did it end up here? Also, here's a fun thing. Hey, look who it is. You're just sort of crouching. Oh no, what a jump scare. Yeah, yeah. If I don't do it today, I can do it, uh, tomorrow, possibly. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Like, again, some of the decisions are really just fucking questionable. Yeah, I didn't get a, I didn't get Abdul Jabbar the whole thing. I only, I only got the, uh, like, the one-off line. Oh, God, I got greedy. Hold on. This is bad. Let's play here. Holy shit. Dude, you're so aggressive right now. Please. Think of the children. Nope, not here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Bop. 
Where, this is the uh, porcelain. He actually like porcelain. I like his bone sword. I like his uh, I like his stuff. I think porcelain's kind of cool. Hey, there we go. And there's also weak delight. Like I'm kind of making him a bit cheesy, but I do I think the do thing is actually one of the better parts of the game by far. Uh, there we go. Anybody there? Lynn, can anyone hear me? I'm trapped down here. Can somebody help me? Sounds good. Sounds good. We. Somebody. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why Shallow Rain. It's it's fucking awful. So Wyman one's tinnitus. I gotta remember that. Wyman one tinnitus. Explain to me what exactly are we looking for? Shh. All right, let's hold on. Let's go. We have to be quiet. Ashvin always keeps some cash in the office for small emergencies, etc. Let's go! Can I vault this? I can't actually. I game does not let me vault. Way. That's kind of funny. I haven't played it in ages. I didn't know she can't vault. It will be two years in November. Huh. I needed a roof over my head. Oh, right, the VA is fine in this game. I think she's fine. So, here's the new maid. What about you? How was the Flemington girls and whatever it's called? It was we're here. And before that? I run away, at least. All right, hold on. I have to do this again now. Up, up, up. That's what I remember. See ya. Lynn, it's a sad story. I left it in the past. Good morning, Candy Court. Do we know good? To rewrite it all. Change life. Change name. I can't vault. You're like a whole new person. You were tiny. You walked, obviously. Also, uh, this game has the most, uh... Have you been trying to realize... Lesbian pride representation scene I think I've seen in any game. If that's your jam, again, this is Lesbian Moth Titanic, so. If that sounds interesting to you, I think you might genuinely love the story of this game. What do we have here? Look at this. Let's go crazy, would you say? I don't know how long it takes, but you know what? Fuck it. Let's watch it. I keep talking about it. Let's watch it. I almost forgot. You finished it. Titanic? Correct. We have to try it immediately. But how? Like, I'll show you. Help me out. What are you doing? I'm gonna let you watch this. Let me know if my description's right. I've been describing this as like one of the gayest moments in all the video games I've ever played. In a good way, by the way. But the lesbian energy is probably the strongest I think I've ever seen in any form of media. Keep talking about it, so I don't want to actually show it. Hell, the scene actually edges out them actually fucking making out somehow. I don't know how. I haven't played Bayonetta, so that's fair to me. I told you, it's like that shit from Ghosts where they're doing the pottery together. It is a ghost, isn't it? And I told you it was. I told everyone. Yes. These two actually kiss later in that game, in this game, and that is, like, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, it's less, it's less lesbian energy than this scene for some reason, and I don't know how to fucking define that. There's gals being pals, huh? <laughs> there you go, Sleona. There you go. What is Ghost? It was a movie that had, like, Patrick Swayze and, like, he was a ghost and they did this pottery thing together. Tell me it's all Whoopi Goldberg, though, so it's kind of weird. Oh, it's so fucking romantic. Oh, they do kiss. I didn't even remember. Oh, they almost kiss. They almost kiss. All right, they got cock blocked. All right, boy, well, actually, what? No, what's the what's the lesbian equivalent of cock blocked? Clam jammed? They got clam jammed. Oh no, I like it. I like it. I'm actually not insulting it. I'm just saying, like, it's very, it's very, uh, what's the word? I like it. Quat swat? Yeah, that. I actually like the relationship between the two. It sounds like a memeing, but I actually do enjoy it. I think it's actually one of the better parts. 
It just, I don't know a lot of media that actually just straight up plays the uh, les lesbian relationship that hard. And that's not a bad thing, by the way. I know it sounds like I'm joking, but it's actually not a bad thing. It just more, very often you don't see it. Like, there's also, there's always the meme of what, burying your gaze? This game doesn't really do that. At least not in a conventional way. Or not, like, how it would be expected. You know? Also, hold on. Oh, it's never my favorite fight. Check this out, chat. Here's the boss fight. Oop, time to stretch. Can't remember that's official. I like I like the I like the twat swat. That one's kinda of funny. Fuck. <laughs> I, I have to do something. What's the opposite of saved by the bell? I Hit by the bell? Elisa. Blocked by the bell, maybe? Oh, you really could cut out the knife. The tension there is so fucking. <laughs> History said they're really. Oh yes, Jet said Drift. History said they're actually just really I good can't. friends. I can't. How do they have time to do that? Oh, it was the middle of the night and they were being sneaky. They were trying to steal uh, the man, the guy with the guns, money. But instead of stealing the money, oh, they had their uh, very romantic moment. I cheered for the romance. I'm happy for these two. I have to hide. At least until I manage to build By the way, uh, the voice lines here are supposed to indicate that you powered up your character. So she's going to say, oh, I can do it, I can do it. But since I never powered up my character, it's just kind of throwing lines out. Oh, yeah. Love always finds time. Yay. I can do it. I can do it now. No, we can't because I never powered up this character. Oh, yeah, this is the entire boss, by the way. Um... You just have to wait for the moth power to activate in the top right. Once that activates, you um, unlock the door, but it's no major deal. You might get an RNG event if he expects you in here. Uh, it doesn't look like I got it. Really? Yep. This is the whole boss fight. Cool, right? All right, back to phase two. All right, and... Oh. Well, now we're going to the actual, actual boss fight. Phase one kind of sucks. Phase two is fun. By the way, whenever you shoot any part of her body, her ass shakes. All the needles go directly to her ass. It's called a gravitational pull, baby. I mean, this is still a clock tire game. You know they're including a fat ass. See? Oh. I think they expected you to shoot here because it's funnier, but if you shoot like anywhere else, it still affects there. You hurt me. Yeah, it's tricky. Also, you can actually see him crawling in the vents. He vented, haha, <laughs> get it, Amogus? Also, I'm wondering how you do the fight, how you're supposed to know. Uh, she'll say shoot the fucking lights. That's uh, it's not. Also, here's a fun fact. Uh, clock tower. We did it! We did it! I don't see anyone following us. Exactly, Chobi. Uh, he's a bit sussy. Venting, correct? In the loudspeaker. Exactly, black hole in deep space. Simply took out the cave. Porcelain's kind of sussy. Why did you do it? Poor porcelain. Let's see how Instagram's going. I ended the sequence. You're free. That's exactly what they wanted to No, do. you'll see. The exact reason why you ended up in this fucking place. I, in one way or another, porcelain kept us all guarded. Someone else will take its place now. And it's going to be ten times worse. It's only a matter of time. Oh, Shen, you shouldn't have. They will never let Damn, yeah, 15 followers are from 300. Oh, Fuck yeah. Too. Explain, for God's sake. What did like you do? This. I have warned you not to touch anything. Yep. No, so this is originally supposed to be a makeup, the, uh, a remake of the original Clock Tower, and also the entire team that worked on Nightcry, which is the official spiritual successor, pretty much wanted to make another Clock Tower game. So they made Remothered. Remothered came from the failure of Nightcry, and Nightcry developed as a, an attempt to remake Clock Tower uh, with the name Spiritual Successor. So that's why these games count. 
So they pretty much took all the people who worked on Nightcry and brought them over to this project. <laughs> well, I mean, Tormented Fathers. And then this one, I don't know how many people worked on this one, but, it, you know, it's the franchise. Yeah. Look, she vented. <laughs> All right. Also, I've wanted to test out a glitch because I don't actually know if it'll work and I've never tried it, but now I'm curious. Now I'm actually curious. Madam? She really should. Why are you... All right, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh my god, wait a minute. Did Is this actually currently using the route? Wait, what? Wait, what? Can I ram this? It doesn't count. Okay, it doesn't count. I thought it would count. By the way, here's a fun glitch. Uh, you can actually uh, get out of the wheelchair early. Or do you only need him? It didn't help. Also, I'll try that again. I, I want to test this out. Let's see how quick. Let's see how early we can do this. Wee! Nope. I guess you need the control. The remote. Come on, Reed. You can do it. Oh my God! It put me too far back. That's fucking funny. Okay. Uh, how about you put me back? Wee. All right, so it doesn't help. It's funny, yes, yes. but it doesn't help. Anyway, we yeah, Nightcrawler is made on three. Oh, the Remother's budget wasn't much better. Yes. The door. At least for the first it's game. Also, uh, you're about to see why this is called Rosemary Reed's Initial D. Bump 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 ba da 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 bump 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 ba da 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 do 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 Wheelchair drifting. Fuck you. Fuck you, you piece of cool. Shit. My things. Also, here's a fun part. Also, I wasn't lying. They like they made her absolutely uh, thicker than the last game. Good puzzle. Oh, bingo. Fuck. Son of a bitch keeps rambling on and on. We do. We do, Tamaki. We do. Why won't you give up? Don't you understand? Deja vu. Also, we only take the gun. I'm still really far ahead, even watching uh, the piano scene. That's kind of funny. Oh, no, not yet. Hold on. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Wait, am I? Actually, hold on. She is. She really is Shanks, isn't she? Cool. Oh, never mind. I'm somehow currently fucking two minutes ahead. I don't know how, but I am. Alrighty. Time for the... The real final boss. So, the icing on the cake, by the way, was the amount of repeated voice dialogues. This patch still has it, but on this game's release, uh, the phrase... I gotta find that fucking bitch there upstairs. Maybe I can use my power. Uh, I think it was burned into the minds of gamers during that point. Oh god, it's in the fire shit. Don't burn me. Thank you. The protecting her, but it looks like they retreat from the fire. Cool. Thanks to the infinite combo game. Very cool. Cool. All right, let's see how many times we get. Maybe I can use my power. I have to be quick. I have to find that fucking bitch there upstairs. I know she's there. Maybe I can use my power. One. I have to concentrate. I 
Where is she? There's that fucking bitch there upstairs. Maybe I can use my power. Oh God! I have to be quick. I have to find that fucking bitch there upstairs. I know she's there. Maybe I can use my power. Oh, she's right there. Oh, wait, hold on. Nope, she's there. Get away from me! God damn it! Oh, it is funny, and it's funny that it, like, repeats and, like, loops and shit. Also, like I mentioned, they kind of expected you to buff your powers, so, uh... A lot of this portion is kind of a pain in the ass. I have to go find that fucking so a lot of people had issues with this power. part. It took a while for a lot of people to beat this shit. Because of how, uh... Undertuned your power was if you didn't power it up. The game expected you to power up. So, if you didn't power up, you're just shit out of luck. Exactly, Lone Mouse Wolf. Oh, I didn't even get that hit that time. Also, the fact that she can break it in the middle of it, so, you know, even if you're going, she would break it. I have to be quick. I have to find that fucking bitch there upstairs. Maybe I can use my power. Alright, there we go. That should be too cheap. Exactly. Either way, three bricks does it, and then you should drop. Yep. And then phase two is also awkward, because you're just aiming a nail gun. Isn't it grand? Good fight. Maybe I can find that fucking bitch there upstairs. Maybe I can use my power. Right? Lynn's not gonna be peeing blood because she got beat to death with bricks. Maybe I use my power to throw the bricks softer. Maybe. Is that a record? I don't know how many you've had. That's a lot. I think the most happens when it came out, it just kept happening. Like nothing had happened the game like nothing could beat the game release for that. Ooh. Wesley? Oh, who the hell are you talking about? Go, get a rat. Good She's cracks, like baby. It's in the utility closet, Jen. You do remember where the key is, don't you? Maybe I can use my power. Alrighty, and ba da ba 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 ba. Cool. I, I don't understand. Why do I feel like I've been through all this before? It feels like. Alright, almost done. Through. Can almost remember the it's also kind of weird that I mentioned this earlier with the power-up, but the only box I know about that you can find is that one in the really, really early game. So, the problem becomes, uh, there's not really much else to upgrade. So, if you don't upgrade in the early game, you're not really going to be doing it again, you know? Only maybe, only maybe. Also, we have magnetic titties. See? It's really, it's really windy in this room. It's really windy. I remember. I have to go back. Who? Who are you? You can stop it. I only slowed her down. That's all I. I don't know why it happens. I'm assuming it's maybe the wind or something. But uh. the parasites. You're the only one who can awaken me. Awaken them all. I don't actually know. Anyway, I hope that kind of explains a lot of remothered uh broken porcelain funny enough when this game came out it was supposed to be called uh going porcelain but the problem is it sounds like danny phantom wanting to turn into a fucking toilet That's Lynn. well that concept's you hilarious uh no someone who's trapped in a limbo what could be used as a push think jen think Also, Wyman doesn't actually spawn in, so you can actually sort of juke him. The film. <laughs> See? I remember that day. And then the dialogue will carry over into the loading screen. Now I 
Arrogant. Oh, managed to move around the hotel unnoticed. It was all connected. Oh shit! No, I have the bug. I got the bug. Cool. Uh. I hope that's gonna kill the whole run, by the way. What day is it today? Nine nineteen. Okay. Literally little my shit game. Better have auto saved. I swear to God, if you didn't fucking auto save me first. Sunday the nineteenth. There we go. Yeah, for some reason there's a bug where if you load in too early, you can't interact with anything. I have to reach the cinema. I don't know why. I'm mean, I don't know why it happens. I think it's something to do with that like, glitch we did. Um, I don't blame the game. I don't blame devs for that. That's that's my fault. But for some reason it happens. Doom. Also, back to the fun of it. Boop. Hey you! I'm here. Hey you! I'm here. Hey, I'm here. Come here. Hey, I'm here. Okay. No. I have to I have to hide. Oh no, I got found. Oh, don't worry. I'm outside the room. Maximum stealth. Don't worry about it. Maximum stealth. Okay, you I have to find the film. Gotcha. Before saying good No 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 Hey, I'm here! Also, I love the strap with Wyman if you uh with Ashman here. If you run far away, he just sort of doesn't realize he has a gun. Okay. I have to return to the basement Like if you just go to the back of the room, he's like, wait a minute. I can slap you with this, so he'll try to approach you. This way. I love the way she rams doors, by the way. Absolute rammer. Yeah, you'd think. You're having a gun, you want to be ranged, not point blank. I guess uh, Ashman missed the memo. This way. Oh, come the fuck on, dick. Oh, thanks. All right, now question, does anyone here like uh, Silent Hill Downpour or Dead by Daylight? Also, there's Gloria. Gloria was actually the girl the whole time. Oh, plot twist. That's why Gloria hates you. Anyway, anyone ready for uh, Downpour or Dead by Daylight? All right, Toxic Survivor Man right there. Look at her. All right, it looks like you're going forward. Are we talking about Bussy? This is the worst game of Dead by Daylight. She teabags you every time. She pallet stuns you. She's running flashbangs. Head on. It's fucking awful. Flashlight stuns, pallet stuns. Meanwhile, you can't even get an attack in. If you attack her, it actually goes slower. So we're just waiting. Oh, that one's Curse Watchers. We can't leave. What's supposed to be a cool final boss fight? Sad, because doing damage does jack shit. You're not expected to do damage. All doing damage does is give you voice lines. Who are you trying to kill? So right now, we're playing as this guy because Lin took control of the Red Nun powers. This always been confusing, but it does add up. Um... Once we beat this guy on the first fight and we broke the, um, like, the seal or whatever the fuck it's called, what ended up happening was, um, we allowed a new leader to take over Porcelain and everyone else with my moth mind powers. So, what happened is we found a way to break her moth mind powers and instill our new moth leader, which is our lesbian lover. No bloodlust? I know, it's sad. Dude, I'm doing so bad the crows went over to me. How sad is that? And you could actually slap her if you want to. You poke her with a bone sword. But the problem is, it doesn't help at all. It doesn't make you faster. Because the whole section is gated by her shooting you. So it's not an actual fucking final boss fight. You're just waiting. And look, she dead-hearted too. Is it even worth it? No. Nice, Nordson. So sad. I have to... 
be strong. And correct, he's a Harvey. That is true. Bussy was mentioned. Also, my favorite thing is that you can vault with this guy. For some reason, Lin can't vault, but this guy can vault. I don't fucking know why. I don't have bamboozle though, so it's a slow vault. And then this is what it's like getting hit with a purple flashlight. See? You're on fire. <laughs> oh well, that's how it goes. <laughs> Also, this game has multiple endings, but they're rather inconsequential and don't actually matter, so you can just pick whichever one you want. That's it. I don't know why they even put multiple endings. It's the same result. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna let you compare the scenes. So this is the other, uh, you know, romance scene. Tell me which one you think has stronger lesbian energy while I close my window. By the way, pretty much done with the game at this point, so I hope you enjoyed it so far. back. I have to return to my parents. But what about the contest? I'll be there. there I go. promise. <laughs> yep. Sad train lesbians? Honestly, the other scene was had way stronger lesbian energy. This one's sad. Hell, they even get the kiss this time is the funny part. They actually do get the kiss. But them not kissing was somehow stronger lesbian energy, and I don't know how to define that. Good for them, though. Yay! What an odd name for a violin. All right, anyway, let's finish the game. Also, if you're wondering, wait, what do you mean Titanic? Wasn't Titanic got some old, some old lady who jerked off her old, you know, her young love? Yes, it was. Ashman was right when he said Lynn was the Wyman's inheritance. And the only thing that he loved Oh, it really was does. His Alzheimer. So the story of the game is that uh also everyone's done. Uh it's an old lady fucking retelling the time she you know was getting all the lesbian action while some guy's looking for his dead sister. And that's the whole fucking story. Exactly, I agree. I agree, Jade Vampire. I agree. This guy's looking for his dead sister and trying to find information out, and this old lady's just, you know, getting fucking, you know, turned on telling the story of her lesbian love. What the fuck, dude? She was one of the other Jennifers. One of the 14... What was Rosemary doing all this time? Rosemary was Lynn. Kidnapped so, with Rosemary killed. getting old, she got Alzheimer's and Before forgot everything. Successfully found the right that's one. the fucking... That's Rosemary's story. She Maybe. fucking gets Alzheimer's. What is up? Not Lynn much. How's it gonna go? Managed to come to terms with it. It's like the end of Titanic, but, you know... For all these years... She's kind of playing with the emotions of a guy looking for his dead sister. To my memories... Also, the first game baited you thinking the old lady was actually and Rosemary. No, it's actually victims. Jennifer or Celeste. It's the main character of this game. The ending's sweet, though. Sure, and watch it. She, went back. she never made it to the, the competition. The, the love world. never flourished. Rosemary lived her life. Times. She ended up killing Gloria. She found more information. That, baby. Nice. Hopefully it'll be safe, Goat. Be careful. Oh, actually, if it's work Wi-Fi, be very careful, because they can track your internet. And they can track your internet if you're on that. Be careful. And then also, Rosemary's goal was punishing the guy that kidnapped all the Jennifers, which she got her wish. She did it. She killed the guy who kind of caused the whole thing to happen, or didn't kill him, depending on the uh, opinion. Oh, this game actually has great scenes. I think maybe in October we're going to revisit this and do the uh, most recent patch and, like, do a full, like, lower playthrough. As I want to do that again. I haven't done it in a hot minute, and I kind of want to see how it is. Maybe the fall, by the way. Yeah, be, be, just be careful. <laughs> and... No, we're not doing Garfield. And... She would exactly, <laughs> Scootsman. Perfect. Theater. 
on the stage. Well, thank you, Tamaki. <laughs> By the way, here's the most important skip. So, since Chris Daryl is mean to Juo, the actual most important skip is normally Chris Daryl's name will show up. And watch, you can't normally skip it, right? You can't skip it. Guess what? If you alt tab, you can actually go to main menu, and then you can skip it. And that's the Chris Daryl skip. I found that one. It has no practical usage, but it's funny. And I only make that joke because he was very mean to Juo.